Welcome everybody to the Qatar Airways GK Kite World Tour. Inside the water, like everybody want to win. It's gonna be a good show. We now have like the best showcase. Sure, it's a privilege. It brings out the best in us. The level can fully be shown when the conditions are perfect. It's time to show it. Let's get it. Who are going to be our new world champions? go in the world, one airline goes further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. Welcome to the Lords of Tram. It's the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup. Sorry about that laptop just coming in the screens there. I'm Lewis Crathen and Ruben Lenton is joining me next to me for a full day of epic action. We've got over 35 knots Already, Ruben, are you ready for this big 14 hours, Kana? I am not sure if I'm ready, but a very good morning. Thank you, Lewis. Absolutely beautiful waking up to so much wind already. And uh, yeah, the guys are uh, ready to crush it with Lucas Ceruti, Stino, M Stino Mull, and uh, Joris Herwijn. Two Dutchies and a South African. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a great battle. Yeah, so we've just joined in then uh, with a couple of moves already on the board. Ruben, who do you think is going to win this one? I always love to ask that question. That's a gnarly one, but uh, Luca Ceruti has just definitely got an epic bag of tricks and uh, ready to send it to the fullest. He is uh, in the lead already with a 6.23, uh, with uh, Stein just following him. And uh, yeah, let's see. It's all about landing your tricks, and uh, anyone can take it. Oh, definitely hasn't got the height on that one. That's going to be a, a missed trick. There, I think that was uh, that's Yoris on the North kite board, boarding kite. Yeah, we got a. Uh, you can say Stein, I can say Stino. Sounds a bit cooler, I think. Stino. Stino, let's Stino, call him Stino. Stino. I mean, it says Stino on my screen here, so I'm going to go with that. Um, Stino on the Cabrina and uh, on the on the duo tone. He's in the white lycra, riding full power on his eight meter, I believe. Look at the spray coming off his board, and he's going for a beautiful takeoff with a nice mega loop. Late back roll. I think he wanted a little bit more, but at least he's getting a, a nice score on the board for this attempt. 
15 meters there, and this is a sign to you at home just uh, how we're starting off today. Way over 15 meters already, 78 meters in distance from the surf wrap, 500 euros from the surf wrap for the biggest jump uh, here. And I reckon that's going to be up to the 30 meter mark at least as the day goes on. Yes. And it's nice to get that data coming in so that you uh, have a feeling of how high they're going. And 15 meters, it might not sound that high, but once you're on the, on the water there hanging off your kite, it uh, definitely feels high. And uh, the record is going to 35, so we still have some room to play with and to see some progression throughout the day. Already. Can he get the ball back on his feet here? That's the second chance he's had there. That's a really well executed trick there, Ruben. It looked like he chose the second phase to put the board back on his feet. They tell me Yoris is a massive addict, massive kiteboarding addict, Yoris Heroin, and that is an unbelievable move to get his account going now. He'll be ticking over nicely with two moves. 100%. And remember how this works. They actually get seven trick attempts in this heat. Uh, and once that is finished, the three highest scoring tricks on the board will actually count for their overall score. And then it's uh, up to the judges uh, to decide who comes out on top. God, we've gone straight in here, Ruben. Uh, lovely shot there. Really nice, sharp angles. This guy needs a raise, whoever's on that camera. He's doing a good job. This guy needs to up it a little bit. But uh, he's got a toughie. He's facing straight into the sun. Here he goes then. Luca Tiruti from South Africa. Multiple front roll rotations and a big blowout on that landing, Ruben. It just didn't come so nicely for him. I think that might have been a contra loop as well. Wow, that was uh, combining three rotations with that loop and the board off. So it's combining three moves into one. No wonder he crashed out on that one. It's a very technical trick. And uh, he's also just waking up. So just getting started. And hopefully he's going to get the, the landing on that in the next attempt. Luca Ceruti, young gun from South Africa. And here we got uh, Stino. From the Netherlands, there you can see riding very powered on this 8 meter. And I think uh, we will see the wind increase as well as the tricks and the height. Here we go with Stino with a nice kite loop board off from the fin and landing it super clean. Yeah, that was nice and clean from Stino. Um, he's done really well in this event over the last years. You know, he's really kept himself uh, kept himself fit and strong. He works down the gym all the time, I've been told. He's... Uh, really into his fitness and uh, his nutrition. He eats really good foods, stays away from all that bad stuff like McDonald's, Burger King's. He only does, uh, I think he only does KFC out of all of those set th three. Um, but he's very strict on his diet and uh, it's good to see that that's, um, he's being rewarded. Meanwhile, not the height really would have wanted it. Whoa. Whoa, 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 you can't land that. No, you can't land that. Ends up in a bit of a tomahawk. Just coming up a bit unstuck there, Joris. Uh, with the board, Ruben. Yeah, I think he was going for a boogie loop board off, but then, uh, yeah, he didn't get the height and still wanted to squeeze in a one-footer there, actually putting him in an, uh, another rotation, and he couldn't control the landing indeed. But, uh, he, yeah, he definitely didn't have a good takeoff, so he didn't get the height and not the time uh, to perform his trick uh, right. Here comes Luca Ciruti then. Another rider donning a helmet. It's good to see this. He didn't like it. He didn't fancy that left foot forward. He disappears behind the bush and now comes into R4 with a right foot forwards. How does that body language look to me? I don't think he's going to boost here right foot forwards. I think he's going to set himself back up to come left. All the riders then getting 40 seconds to perform their tricks. That's enough time to, to sneak four attacks in starboard and port. He's coming back now on a port. Left foot forwards. You see the corner is the sweet spot. It's really, really flat. You see him looking for the gust, looking for the power. He's going for three forward rotations with that kite loop. Ends up with two and a half. And uh, only 10 meters, definitely not the height he was looking for. Sometimes you just cannot time the gust or there's no gust at the moment of your takeoff. And uh, when you're squeezed in the corner, you have to commit and uh, perform your trick. Otherwise, you will score a, a zero for that attempt. Stino looks like he's setting up right foot forwards here to me now. He hasn't messed around at all with how quick he's been able to get ready to go right foot forwards. He was right deep in the pocket there from an early stage, Ruben. He's eyeing up right foot forwards, but it, um, I'm not sure if it's actually him to go here. He might be waiting for Yoris. Uh, his flag is up, actually. The white flag is up to the left-hand side there, which is another indication we get to the riders. Here he goes then, right foot forwards on a starboard. What's he got for us here? Massive mega loop, laid back roll with a board off. 
and also sticking it clean. There you can see he's jumping to the right side instead of the left side, and I think the judges really uh, like to see uh, the vari variation on that. Yeah, and just thinking about his last moves here, Ruben, he's actually demonstrated the ability to do a mega loop ball off switch tack as well. That's taking the board off with a different hand. We saw the right hand. Uh, sorry, the board come off with the left hand as he came to the to the left. Now we've just seen him riding right foot forwards, pulling on that back hand with the left hand and actually taking the board off with the right hand. That's really skillful riding for me. And I'm sure the judges will be aware of that. A lot of them ex-professional kiteboarders that were very high up in the game. They do not miss a beat with things like that. So it's Steen O'Mahl who's really taking it to the other riders here in round one. Heat one of the men. Joris going for the double back roll. Kite loop board off with two added rotations on the way down and he is just not keeping it together unfortunately for Joris but uh, yeah that looked uh, like a complicated trick there Lewis it did get a bit complicated he almost went too big in the end that was uh, quite big he had a lot of time uh, in the air and he just for me just the board didn't come on he had a window of opportunity to get that board on solid to the feet once you get that on it, it appears to me that the riders can then fix the landing but if you haven't got that board on there's a lot of uh, a lot going on in the brain here. Now, Luca Ciruti needs to replace that 2.27. It's going to be with a right foot forwards manoeuvre that he tries to do it with. Here he goes there. Oh, no. I don't know. He looks to to be coming back left foot forwards. Apologies there. And remember, like, when the guys have to take off the board, they still have to loop the kite and absorb that yank. So if they're not in the right position, they can, can get pulled off balance very easily. And to put the board back on, they have to tuck themselves, make themselves small, which often ends up in another rotation, but Lucas Cerut displaying an epic move here. Contra loop with at least a double front roll rotation with a board off as well for Luca Ceruti. That would be interesting to see what that scores. You can see all the scores live as well. And uh, all you have to do is go to our website here. It's the GKA Kite World Tour. Click on the live and you're in the game. All of this lovely live data coming in from the Surfer app, which all the riders voluntarily have as well so you can see it we've got 10 just 10 meters there but it's the distance we like to see how long they're in the air and the for me i like to see the speed through the air stino mole to add to his account going up with a huge board off uh, i think that was a doobie that was following the screen was hard to tell ruben Dub double front roll doobie so yeah with two front rolls and a, and a kite loop that's called a doobie loop nice name that very nice name and you invented that lewis and a so board uh, I came up with the boogie loop, which is one a single front roll with a, a kite loop. And uh, Lewis edited a rotation and called it the doobie loop. So getting very creative and def definitely pushing the envelope. But and what it's we stuck. Can you believe it's stuck? You know those times you <laughs> make something up silly. It's stuck. What? Back Co of the net. Come up with a silly name and it just sticks. Well, doobie like, like, uh, like they did with Ruben Lenton. <laughs> Pretty classic. Got some signature moves on my name. <laughs> anyway. Not all of them stuck, though. The spring roll, for example. No, that was... Uh, the yeah. Megaloop laid back is just too good. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, Joris wasn't getting a good takeoff. No, uh, Maybe he heard our conversation there. He just heard spring roll and just thought, <laughs> oh, how, did, how was that allowed to have had? What an opportunity that was gone begging. Is that something you regret, calling it the spring roll? Well, actually, you let, I think you let the public call that spring roll. Exactly. Um, but I think the Megaloop laid back just says what it is. It yeah. also sounds great, so I'm happy with that name too. You got the boogie loop in there, I guess. That got was, uh, got the mega loop, got the boogie loop, uh, yeah. Mega loop handle pass. We, uh, yeah, this is true. We, we don't talk few. about that. That's banned from talking about the mega loop handle pass. That's officially banned. Nobody wants to talk about it. Even the top level Oi. of echelons in kiteboarding, as we're seeing right now, Dioris, can he get this landing? And he's just gets done over again on the landing. We've just missed that one, unfortunately. But I can tell you, it will not add to his scores. But what a beautiful morning here. You're here with me, Ruben Lenton and Lewis Cretern, reporting live from Barcares here in France at the GKA World Kite, Kite Stop here with the big air riders, the best big air riders in the world. Yesterday we already had an epic action with the, the women's round. We are waiting to, uh, to get the semis and final roundup later off as well. And here we are on the way with heat number one of round one of the men's division at the GKA World Tour. Let's remind you how this thing's being scored then. Uh, on your screens there is the total of their three best scores. Now, to my knowledge, they're getting seven trick attempts. It might be six in these early rounds, so I apologize. We will be able to tell you. Is it six or seven? 
six events, six six events in their first heat. No, it's, that's a bit harsh. Six events, six tricks. So 50% of their trick scores will count. Their highest three actually. So you could. Oh, what has happened there, Ruben Lenton? That might count as a trick. Oh, was it, that a trick? That looked like a trick to me. He, he took off from the water, so he was airborne, but definitely not intentional. And this place is very tricky to ride. Very challenging conditions. Super strong wind, and very gusty. And here you see him making the most of the gust and traveling super far, catching a lot of speed mid-air because of that loop and covering a lot of distance. So he was uh, covering 78 meters with a 14 meter uh, height. So their three best tricks scored out of 10 is their total score, which is a total out of 30. I'm no mathematician, but I'm pretty sure I can work that out. It's out of 30. So really you want to get three good tricks in there. You can't just copy the same trick. The judges want to see different families and categories for example a back roll mega loop a front roll mega loop a contra loop perhaps adding variation there is no variation score here as your heroine really needs something big here and that is what he doesn't need he doesn't need a big floaty jump right now might look nice and fun but that big bomb out's not going to help his scores no unfortunately that was not what he was looking for he needs more than that he is finding himself in the third place in this first heat against luca ceruti and stino mull and uh, yeah, he didn't need a big floaty jump. Like Lewis says, there's a lot of different combinations the guys can make out there. But are we going to see any tens today, Lewis? We definitely have the conditions here in Barcares. And what do you think uh, we're going to see I later think, on? I think we are. I think if there was ever a setting for this sport to be pushed the way it is right now, it's here. This is where we are seeing the riders going the biggest. We saw the world record nearly beaten in height um, just two days ago here at this very spot with the guys warming up. You know, 35 meters plus was what um, uh, Jamie Overbaked done on the water. But we now go straight into the next heat. Oh, wow. What a heat this is. We've what got a belter. Kiel Fluke needs no introduction. One of the riders pushing the sport massively. Aaron Hadlow has been keep competing here for the last 50 years. Uh, and Nicolas Gambier is also out on the water. Yeah, what a heat we see here. Um, we see a Dutchie. We see a Dutchie, and we see a Brit, and a Frenchie, and uh, we'll uh, jump straight into some highlights. Fumble a bag, now I will not fumble a bag. Fumble a bag, now I will not fumble Welcome, it's the Lords of Dram, DKA Big Air, Night World Cup. They're doing the draw behind me. There's so many riders from all around the world here for these 40, 50 knot wins. Day one, we're starting with the ladies, but we've got three or four epic days ahead of us. Stay tuned. For now, the plan is running the ladies all the way to the final. Stay tuned. Oh, Crazy action out there. Tricky for sure for these girls, but they're they're all sending it and some big scores coming in today. Jules, like, I'm really impressed. Congrats. Oh, I don't really want to put myself in a lot of risk, but if it comes to it, I know that I'll push through and do what I have to do. What an absolute belter of a first day here at the GKA in Barcares. The women have absolutely been throwing down mind-boggling action. And the heat has just been postponed because the wind got too much, 72 knots. So we're just taking a little break and hopefully we can fly around to more action soon. Stay tuned for more epic big air. Cheers. Welcome back then. Here we are at the Lords of Tram. It is the GK Big Air Kite World Cup. I'm Lewis Craft and Ruben Lenton standing next to me. What a belter of a heat. 
we're going into right now, Ruben. Absolutely incredible. We got Nicolas Gambier from France throwing down for his first trick attempt of this heat. We got uh, Gilles Vlucht already put a trick down uh, with a 6.93. Great opening score for, uh, for Gilles Vlucht there. Looks like uh, Aaron uh, scored a, a three, which is uh, yeah not not up to his likings, I guess. He's a uh, five times world champion freestyle, also uh, won the Red Bull King of the Air a couple times, and uh, yeah, he's hungry for more for more wins. It looks like. Yeah, right now he won't want to be going in with an opening trick as a three style, but here is Hill, and he's still just there. You go. He's just working the classics which just as an old school big air rider gives you that feeling that maybe you could still be out there dealing with mega loop back roll to start with nearly a seven a big boogie loop is going to score nearly a seven those moves that was a still, double that was a double yeah i didn't even see the kite yeah wow it, it's so kite loop twice so uh that is Gil Vlucht. he invented the double mega loop so uh he added another loop after the mega loop which is uh definitely sketchy when performed right and performed in these kind of conditions getting super high and really looping that kite twice and then hopefully landing it clean so we're going to see more of that today and here's Aaron Hadlow taking off you see a little pre-pop building up a lot of tension and just going for that mega loop back roll board off and he's getting another lifty lofty jump for another Can he take two rotations <laughs> oh what a lifter wow Aaron Hadlow is going to have at least 10 seconds I think in the air there and that's uh Something he's been telling me, he's getting a lot of lift here. He's got 11 seconds in the air, 104 meters during that move off surf wrap data. I think he's already gone in with a record here uh, at this competition. Didn't have incredible massive height, but it was a pretty impressive move uh, considering that data. Yeah, that's uh, what you see sometimes happening here in the very gusty, strong conditions. That after performing a massive trick, the guys are still in the air. The kite will catch another time lift and just keeps them floaty. And uh, Aaron was able to add another two rotations to his trick and uh, land it clean 100 meters down the line. So here we got Nicolas uh, just going for the kite loop. Unfortunately, not getting his board off the way he intended to, but uh, definitely putting a little score on the board there. So it wasn't all for nothing. What sizes do you think these uh, these guys are out on right now, Ruben? I believe they're riding eight meters. Um, I think the winds will still pick up throughout the day. So... Uh, yeah, the eight meters are uh, definitely great big air kites. Maybe feels even on a seven. You sure that was a double? I am pretty sure. You're not 100 percent sure. Not 100 percent, but I. I got kite I loop front row on my screens here, oh. which still may well be scored like that or written like that. But we're about to find out because it's he might just start doubling everything. His kite st spins so quick you can hardly uh, even see it anymore. But um, it's yeah. been said to have made some people cross-eyed. <laughs> I'm sure about that. Yeah, following these guys' tricks, uh, absolutely mind-blowing. So uh, we're going to see lots of doubles, hopefully some S-loops, which is uh, when you do a mega loop and you decide to uh, change the direction mid-loop, creating a moment of free fall. And uh, yeah, you need to be high enough for the kite to catch you. I don't think he's powered enough here. He's coming back right foot forwards now. He's uh, definitely been working his 40-second time limit here to take off. I think he's got no choice but to take off. Uh, no, he's going to get one more. They're pretty flexible, the judges here, as of the, the gust. That's the whole point of giving them 40 seconds each. They're not in the heat altogether riding at the same time. They're given this space. It's a small spot here. But let's take a look now at what we've got from Gil Vlug as we cross to our wide angle. No, he wasn't powered, Ruben. He was pumping that bar. I think he's on a seven, Yeah. maybe. Like let's see what's on kite. the beach. Yeah, we've got a nine and an eight on the beach. I think he's out there on a seven, so where the wind was quite strong at the start. I wonder if it's strong enough. Now, what do we think Aaron Hadlow's on out there? I think Aaron is on an eight. He uh, likes to get the height and uh, yeah, he won't do a double loop on this kite anyway. So I think yeah, he's uh, chosen the power. However, n none of the riders seem super powered at the moment. There might be a little lull in the wind. So let's see how that plays out for these riders. Should they go for like a kite change, mid-heat kite change? Well, this is very something I was just thinking about, mid-heat kite change. Their kites are all the way downwind here outside our live stream booth and the judges booth. So there's no easy kite changes that can be done here unless you get your caddy right up on the sandbar or whatever bar you call that where the riders are. Just to the left of Aaron Hadlow there. You can see, look, those flags down to the right of your screen is where all the other stuff is. So Hadlow looks like he's going right foot forwards here, Ruben. Going for it. Yes, big. 
Contra loop. It's big if he can stick it. He's got this all day, hasn't he? Aaron Hadlow doesn't crash these. Doesn't even butt check, I don't think, there, Ruben. I think that was just the spray in the way, right? Yeah? Yeah, let's uh, let's keep it that way. Let's see what the judges say about that uh, contra loop board off with two front rotations. No, you can't be biased as uh, anyone involved with the live stream oh, or anything like that. Come on, mate. Aaron. Come on, England. <laughs> you're allowed to, you know, you're allowed to care about your so friends. Who do you think is going to win this heat? Like, who's got the... Aaron Hadlow. All right. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'll support my Dutchie, Giel Vlucht, uh, with his double loops. I think he's going to... Come oh, on, strong guy. in the next few ones. Oh, oh he's got stuck backwards nearly there. No one wants to be stuck backwards, but he fought it. Ruben, was he in a position there where he may as well have gone round with the back roll? What do you think? Yeah, but it seemed like he wasn't feeling very confident and in control, but he got flung in a little backward uh, rotation, but didn't commit to it. Even if he just turned his head to the left, he would have completed the rotation. He may have got stuck backwards even there, though. You know, you really got, as you always taught me, you got to send it to get that full rotation. But here is Gil... Luke, this heat is really kicking off here. We're already over halfway in. What's Hill got for us? It's a double mega loop a board off. See, what, with a, a, oh. was that a rotation at the end there? What the hell happened there? Just before the landing, squeezing in another forward rotation. But here, even there, he wasn't getting the height, but still, his kite looped double. So I think he is definitely riding that seven meter kite, which we were talking about earlier. And uh, yeah, you can see Hill flucht. Uh, stomping that trick, even not getting the height he actually needed for that trick. So he's a magician. So that's come in as a kite loop board off uh, category, Ruben. So you may well have been right earlier with the kite loop front roll. It's, um, after talking to Mallory earlier, head judge has explained to me it's about evolution of the trick families now. So uh, a front roll mega loop or front roll double mega loop will count in the same trick family. Here is Aaron Hadlow, clearly looking like he's going to go off left foot forwards here on a port tack. One hand. This is big from Aaron. Wow. What? Whoa. This is huge. If Aaron Hadlow can stick this, it's outrageous. What, taking it like a boss? <laughs> what a move. He went straight up there, getting so much height. And uh, let's wait for the surfer app data to come in. That was a massive boogie loop board of 14 meters. Look at the distance this guy is traveling. 86 meters, 86 kilometers. Aaron had those, still got it, everyone. That was an unbelievable move. That was lovely to see out the window. How many more years are we going to see this guy delivering on our screens? He's Pull, pulling a Kelly Slater. <laughs> competing for so many years and maybe, still maybe, still the goat. Maybe even pulling an Aaron Hadlow. <laughs> so he's got uh, nine seconds in the air on our previous move, and he uh, seems so very well controlled in the air, knew exactly what he was doing, and he knew that he needed to land. So he was playing it kind of safe, but definitely uh, getting some nice scores on the board. That was a 6.57, if I'm correct. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was just it was high, you know. It was high. Let's see now. I love having this data from the Surfer app. To compare. Let's see what Nicholas Scambia's got. He's got nothing for us there. Didn't quite find the gust on an eight meter kite. Nice and big and clear on that Nash kite. I've always felt, you know, you need the big numbers. Make it clear to everybody. That's or if it. If you really want to be sneaky, put the wrong numbers on for competition. <laughs> you know, at least let us see. I can see a five meter being flown on the beach by Nicholas Scambia's caddy. Maybe he's going to come in for a kite change here. But Gil Vlug. He's able to do kind of everything on this site 7 and nearly all of his kites, even 12s he can loop. Flying in left foot forwards now. Is it going to be a double? Yes, it is with a delayed back roll. Easily getting the kite rounds there. And um, he's pushing it now, Ruben, with the doubles. He's definitely pushing it, but he's not getting the height that the judges like to see. So maybe he should switch up to his 8 meter, which is going to be a little bit harder to double loop. But uh, we've seen Giel Vlug do it before. Uh, I think he's just going to stick to the 7 meter for this uh, for this heat because going for a mid-heat kite change will cost you some time and will cost some stress. And uh, yeah, let's see what uh, what happens next. It's interesting for me then. So 10.8 meters on that double loop with a delayed back roll. He scored higher than Aaron Hadlow's kite loop front roll board off, which was almost a third higher, 15 meters high here. So they've they're giving him some uh, some points there definitely for the... You know, the innovation style moves with the double loops. Aaron Hadlow, meanwhile, going massive on a back roll, board off, getting spun around into multiple rotations. He just couldn't take oh, that one. Oh, and his kite released. No. I think he ac accidentally hit his quick release. Or is he hurt? I don't think the landing was that bad that he hurt himself. I think he accidentally bumped the quick release and the kite flew away. You saw his bar shoot off. Is he all right? Hadlow's swimming in here. Now he's all right. He's swimming back to the beach. 
So uh, that's a bit of chaos going on. He uh, just lost his kite, released it, so uh, swimming back to the beach. No. He won't take that jet ski. He'll be telling that jet ski to do one. I'm pretty sure of that. Meanwhile, on your screens is Joris Herring. But Aaron Hadlow swimming back to the beach. He's got one more trick attempt. I don't think Aaron Hadlow's going to get back to to another kite. But he certainly uh, he certainly hasn't accepted that jet ski. That jet ski. I wonder what he said to that jet ski. Get out of my way. Like as soon as they, uh, the riders accept help from a jet ski, then it's game over for them uh, because they have to uh, run the heat on their own powers. And here, Nicholas just not getting uh, his tricks together on uh, in this heat. Aaron Hedlow in uh, second place for now with Giel Vlug leading uh, yeah, well ahead with his double loops. So Aaron is swimming in, trying to rush for his last trick attempt. But uh, I think he's in a... Save second position, but Aaron never likes the second place. No, Aaron Adlow still thinks he can get out there and perform this trick. He's got, he's basically coming in after Hill. I don't think there's any way Aaron's going to get back out there. But here comes Hill Flug. He's already looks like he's got this one in the bag, and yeah, he knew. It's a bit of an anti-climax to the end of this heat. Aaron Adlow swimming back, but still important that Aaron swam back to the beach so that he didn't get disqualified from the heat room. And they still ask that of him, even with it all said and done in this heat. Um, Aaron has had to make his way back to the beach but it will be Nicolas Gambier with one more trick so he can change things as far as the scores with Aaron but he needs a pretty big move to do so he needs uh, almost up in the echelons of a, of a high 9 to do so 7.70 yeah he's down almost 10 points here so he actually needs can't do the maths Ruben does he have it in the bag or not I uh I don't think... He, oh, he's I coming to he's the beach. He's got, has he got another move or have we missed? Uh, two is Aaron Hedlow launching another kite? Yeah. Oh, no, but... Hey. There's lots of confusion going on. But in the next heat, uh, we've got Mark Jacobs from New Zealand. We've got Arthur Gilbert from uh, France and uh, Josue Son from Brazil. Very international, exciting heat coming right up. As it thinks he can get his move in. He's been timed out on the screen here, but Aaron's going to give this a go right foot forwards. Aaron Hadlow going out. He's got one more move. Can he get? He's got the red flag up of uh, Nicolas Gambier, which means I think Aaron might have missed his go. Yeah, he's been given a zero. He's actually been given a zero, Aaron. That's pretty harsh. He was pretty quick to swim back. There he is, Aaron Hadlow, already recovering his kite. Um, but Nicolas Gambier also hasn't had his go, which is interesting. He was waiting. He was giving Aaron some time to uh, to go for his attempt, but yeah, it looks like yeah. He, he, now Aaron realised that his and flag he's annoyed. is annoyed. Aaron's annoyed yeah. there, visibly annoyed, putting his hand up in the air to say, "Look, come on, I couldn't have actually done that." So we're going to see Nicholas uh, going airborne, but looks like he's holding back, turning around, going to get a little bit of a better run up. To yeah, perform his trick. He looks well powered though. Look at the spray coming off his board. He's hanging into that kite. I think he needs an 8.93 in his third category here to try and overtake Aaron into second place. I don't see this oh, happening for me. Now, again, a miss, missed attempt here from uh, Nicholas. Unfortunately, not getting the trick in that he uh, was hoping for. He uh, must be feeling well gutted. So we're here uh, in round one of the GKA World Tour Stop here in Barcares in France. You're here with me, Ruben Lenten, and of course, Lewis Cratern. We've got eight heats in this first round, and we have just finished heat number two. So coming up is heat number three with Mark Jacobs from New Zealand, Arthur Guilbert from France, and Jose Son from Brazil. Very good turnaround then for Aaron Hadlow in that heat. Great result for Gil Vlug, who really didn't really get super going into his best moves, but... Uh, Showed his class there with his extra double loops and so on. But Aaron Hadlow, oh, as this wind absolutely nukes it now. He nearly made it a miracle out there and got out, and actually got out with his last move. So very unfortunate for him. Looked like his chicken loop, uh, or oh, he pushed his chicken loop as well. So tough deal for Aaron Hadlow, but he's showing everybody he's still got it with some of those big moves. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you're having a lovely day as well.
and uh, the wind is absolutely cranking here. It's going to pump throughout the day. The forecast looks looking absolutely fantastic. We had a waiting period of a month from the 1st of April until the 30th of April. And already on the first day of the waiting period, we are finding ourselves here in Barcares with the world's bi best big air kite boarders, male and female, battling it out for that uh, championship title. In this world tour, we have uh, two stops, maybe three, and uh, the overall best will ov obviously be able to uh, crown himself the world champion. And uh, we are seeing the best action unfold here in front of our eyes, coming up with Mark Jacobs, Arthur Gilbert, and Jose Sun. Thank you for joining us then. As uh, Ruben just said, I am still Lewis Crathen here, and this is still Ruben Lenton. We haven't been replaced in that short 10 second period where we were last introduced to you. We can see you all on YouTube watching live from all around the world. This is a really special day for kiteboarding. We're about to see some epic stuff out there. We reckon we got a big 14 hour slobber knocker. See Mark Jacobs here in the blue light crowd going for his first trick attempt of this heat. Heat number three in the first round of the men's division of the GKA World Tour. Looked like a mega loop with a delayed back roll board off to me there. And that was big and high. And uh, hopefully we get his uh, his data coming in. And uh, just going big straight out the blocks then, Mark Jacobs. So comfortable as a big air rider. And you can't, you know, you have to not forget this guy was also a very good freestyle rider. Able to be the ultimate professional and just switch disciplines straight away the surfer app they all got it on them they're wearing these phones they don't have to be brand new they can be old ones they just run the software and they give us this live data track your sessions with just a phone or a watch you don't have to take a phone out there if you're not so comfortable with your brand new phone they yeah. should be you should be waterproof these days though no but yeah you can just download the, the app on your watch and uh, simply wear your watch out there to uh, to get the data what's this here um, iphone 10 you got ruben on the table is that nine or it's an iphone 6 mini s <laughs> okay. Of course, right. the 14 Pro Max coming right up. Best quality. I bet they give that to you these days, don't they? Maybe. I'll give it to you in a second, mate. Uh, okay. Um, here we go. <laughs> here's here's Arthur Dilbert then. On uh, looks like quite an interesting well, a rewind for us all. We were looking at the kite. He's not happy about something there. Just throws his hands up in here. 4.7 meters isn't going to set the judges' booth alight. That said, nobody should want to set the judges' booth to light. Yeah, I was going to say he's going to score a, a 0 0.5, but he's getting a 0 0.63. Definitely unhappy with that. Unfortunately, he didn't have a good takeoff and, uh, yeah, wasn't feeling it. But it still counted as a trick attempt because he did leave the water indeed. His board was airborne. So, yeah, the judges will, uh, will score that. All the riders get seven attempts and three of the highest scoring tricks will make up their overall score. So the maximum amount of scores that they can get in one heat is actually 30. And uh, yeah, then you have to score three tens. And I do have a feeling that we are going to see some tens uh, today at this event. So definitely stay tuned. Thanks for watching. And it's going to be epic. Josie San then. Don't know much about this guy, but maybe I should do. That kite looped very slow through the window there. But he had lots of height. Not a bad start for him in the red rash race to complete that first um, set of tricks. There's an Aaron Hadlow walking back that right below us here with a bit of an eagle's nest of lines below us. He doesn't look happy about saying, Ruben, I just want to go back to that comment about setting the judges' booth alight. Of course, it was a figure of speech. However, back in your day, you know, you had some times when you weren't happy with the judges' decisions and it wasn't uncommon for you to put your fist through the judges uh, booth it was made out of wood back then you probably wouldn't want to do that it's a metal solid container but sometimes watch, watch me go watch so, me go <laughs> you score watch me, me a start 0. working i'll, I'll work on, on it door. give me a week and i'll make it through <laughs> there but um mark jacobs but, coming up full speed going for that front roll double front roll with a contra loop and an added rotation and board off so three rotations forward whilst taking his board off and Looping the kite with his front hand, which is called a contra loop. I don't think it's going to score massive this. Very technical, but I think this was below 10 meters. Um, so I think the riders really want to be hitting this 15 meter mark to get something massive. But just just uh, wrapping up that um, conversation. But you sometimes you've been out there riding for for years in competitions. Do you sometimes unhappy with the judges' scores that are given to you? I mean, of course, it's uh, with any judged sport, I believe, that uh, it's a judge's interpretation. And also for the riders, they might have a different feeling of what should score well, how things are feeling out there. 
But we have uh, very skilled judges here looking very precisely at the height, the extremity, the flow, the execution uh, to see what makes up that perfect trick. So I do believe there is a, a nice rule book and uh, the, the riders know this by heart and uh, yeah, trying to put the best performing tricks on the scoreboard. And here we see Arthur Gilbert, unfortunately not getting the height he was hoping for. Also looping the kite with the front hand, which is a contra loop. But he, yeah, what we want to see, what the judges want to see, is getting really leveled with that kite when you loop the kite. They want to see the height in that trick um, and the extremity, like the yank, the amount of power, the critical angle of that kite. And obviously uh, the technicality uh, also scores very good. A big warm welcome to you then on this Sunday morning here on the 2nd of April. It's 8.49 a.m. here in the south of France. We're just a couple of hours north of Barcelona. It's, uh, we've got all our coats and jackets and everything warm on this cold, catabatic wind coming from the Pyrenees and going all the way out to the Mediterranean. It's a westerly to northwesterly wind that's coming here. It's a beautiful sunny morning, just a bit of cloud over the mountains in the background. It's a beautiful setting here to really push the boundaries of big air. It's our first big air event of the year here with the Lords of Tram. It's the GKA now official event at this big air World Cup here for the second time here in Bacares. It's the fifth edition of the Lords of Tram and the Big Air really taking the spotlight here. I'm Lewis Krath and Ruben Lenton is with me and we're really getting into the groove of things here as Jose Sun going up with that red rash vest, blue north kite, back roll, mega loop with a board off, just sticks that landing down. Wind looks like it's dropped a little bit here, Ruben. Yeah, that's right. You saw him dropping from the sky a little bit, not getting the height he was hoping for, but he managed to, uh, to do a rotation, a kite loop and a board off. So combining all of that in one trick, still good. I think the riders are kind of waiting for the wind to pick up. Um, unfortunately, it is a little bit working like that, that it goes a bit up and down as the, the weather comes through. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at guys getting ready for the next heats here, going out on sevens, Ruben. And I think if it stays like this, you'd, you're not going big enough on a seven right now. Uh, or maybe I'm wrong, you know? No, I think uh, eight meter, nine meter will be great. But the guys want to have a, an easy looping kite. And still getting the height on that seven will be great, but that only works when the gust and the wind are here, full force. See Mark Jacobs, I think he's riding his eight. I think he's underpowered, big time. Pumping the kite here, that indication to me, if he's not on an eight, then he's definitely, I mean, he's a bigger guy. Muscle always more than fat, of course. Um, so bigger guy in that respect. And he is, I don't think he's going to be powered enough to perform. He's going to max out all his ties, right foot forwards here. And you can see the height isn't there for Mark Jacobs. Oh, that's a big caner. They're the sorts of annoying landings in big air where you get injured. You don't get the height that you want and the time to, to land comfortably. Ruben, what's going on out there? A big blop out there from Mark Jacobs. He was taking off, trying to give it his best, but unfortunately not getting the height. Couldn't really complete his trick. And there you saw him crashing onto his board on the water. Thank you for all of you joining us. Uh, we are looking at your live stream comments today and uh, interacting with you. And uh, yeah, yeah, Ben, ben Rutman, cheers for tuning in, bro. All the way from South Africa. Great to see viewers from everywhere around the world supporting this big air kite event here in Barcares in France. And we see Arthur Gilbert also a nice bomb out on the landing, not uh, fully completing that trick. I wonder if that's going to be uh, scored as a crash or a massive butt check. There on your screens then is Josu San. We don't know too much about this rider. He's a north rider. He's just composing himself now for his third trick here. He knows it's his time because his flag is being raised on the beach. The massive screen on the beach here is also displaying his countdown of 40 seconds. He will be completing his third move. He's got two tricks counting so far, but uh, they're not the best scoring... As such, can he improve on that, riding left foot forwards towards the northeast as we look to the west? He says no to a left foot forwards. He didn't fancy it. It is still very early Sunday morning. There is not a whole lot of spectators on the beach just yet, but it is slowly filling in. And I'm sure the action will build throughout these uh, these heats coming up. Here we've got Jose, Jose San. Cool, he generated a nice bit of height off there. I think that was a nice pop as we saw him explode up into the sky 
I think he's going to be happy with that move to the right-hand side here. 13.4 metres, and he covered 71 metres with that data from the Surfer app. So he's uh, making that north kite work quite well, and uh, maybe the wind is just coming back. That's the tough thing for these riders. These strong wind gusts come very much in periods here, Ruben, as we now turn our attention over to the former King of the Air champion, uh, Mark Jacobs, who's riding a bit further down in the zone now, maybe to get some more wind. He definitely looks to me like he's going to jump here, Ruben, bar uh, an equipment malfunction. Very, very talented guy. Here we see him spinning fast, double forward with a loop, but not getting the height and power he needs. Um, and yes, as you say, Mark Jacobs, very experienced competition rider, coming from the freestyle background, very technical maneuvers, keeping that kite low, doing a lot of power, but then switching up the discipline to big air which is uh, for him a natural progression. It suits him very well. He can do tricks both ways, so going to the left, going to the right. And uh, yeah, this is just a powerhouse and hungry for the win in each, uh, each competition. Yeah, we can hear this wind coming back now on our live stream booth, starting to shake a little bit more. Just going back to that Mark Jacobs last movie. He's so experienced. He just knows straight away his trick family. His kite loop, back roll board off then a contra loop front roll board off and then going for a kite loop front roll the variation just filling his categories up nice and early on but um here is a mega loop board off just couldn't quite take that landing and blows out on the landing then is uh arthur Gilbert, and he's ended up with an absolute devi with the kite there landing leading edge down into the wind was that a chicken loop blowout as well maybe I'm not sure, but there you saw that he was riding with his right foot forward, getting in the air, looping his kite with his uh, backhand, and then taking off the board with his front hand by the fin, and then actually performing a tic-tac, which is when you grab the board by the fin, you swing it around, so you throw the board in a flip, grab it by the handle, and put it back on your feet. And that all whilst looping that kite, and uh, yeah, hopefully landing it clean. Well spotted there, Ruben. Now he's okay, he's relaunched his kite and got rid out the other side of your screen. But meanwhile, Jose Soon is currently in second place. And I think he's going to upset Arthur Gilbert here because that is a nice move there. Landing his fourth trick now and that's going to fill a nice... Oh, we've got the replays the coming in now. The loop board off. So this is Lewis' signature move, two double front rolls. I don't think I can do that one, no. And then he's adding a board off to your trick. So a dooby loop, so... A double front roll with taking his board off and do buff. I think I'd call that do buff. <laughs> Let's have a do buff, mate. But absolutely uh, great to see him still getting the height. Even the riders are not that super powered yet at this moment. Uh, he was still jumping very vertical, getting a lot of lift and uh, having enough time to perform his rotations and board off. Here we go then. Mark Jacobs, a bit a bit higher on that one, but still not much past the 10-metre mark for him. But I wonder if he just doesn't need to go that high at the moment. So you were asking us on the comments here, we can see what sort of kite size is. It's sevens and eights out there. Um, and I think that's down to... Uh, the riders could easily take nines if they wish. But they, they want to be out there with these kites ready for the double loops as well. And we do know that the the wind will, will pick up. The flag, someone's asking how they work here. It's very simple. These riders are taking it in turns, in sequence, to perform their tricks. The flag will be raised on the beach with their colour rash vest. The big screen on the beach will also be coloured with their rash vest and a timer will tick down from 40 to zero to give them a chance to find the best wind. We feel here it's the best way things to run. It ran like this last time as uh, Arthur Zilbeer with a much higher mega loop board off. He's going to get a lot of swing on that and uh, yeah nice landing for him Ruben very, very clean landing so there you saw Arthur Gibert in the wide rash vest putting a nice score on the board I think it was uh, quite a basic trick but getting the height um, looping his kite properly doing the board off from the fin with his front hand and uh, yeah absolutely super smooth clean landing so I think that will uh, be a nice score for Arthur Gibert who is finding himself in third place in this heat right now and you can see there's the 18 minute timer it's not counting down it's just in the uh, how do you say it? It's for the aesthetics. It's like, you know, it just looks nice, I've been told. <laughs> it looks nice. It, yeah. Because it's not really due to time. It's more the seven trick attempts that which the riders get. They get 40 seconds to perform their takeoff and land their trick. So, um, sorry, six trick attempts in a heat. And the three highest uh, scoring tricks will actually uh, make up their overall heat score. 
This guy's pushing to take Mark Jacobs uh, out in this heat, really, to, to catch you up with the scoring and what's going on here. It's a nice replay of Joe Susan, the man we know not as much about. The doobie loop, uh, lovely doobie loop there, really controlled, really nice and big. And I think he's trying to push here for first play. He's going higher for me, but is he going as technically, um, uh, you know, big as Mark Jacobs? So he's probably going to start having to think about which tricks to replace. Mark Jacobs has got two tricks in and around six or above but here now this is bigger for mark jacobs a contra loop double front roll board off how has he landed Whoa. that ruben lenton that was super sketch super close but he managed to keep it together there so here we go for a nice replay of that trick by mark jacobs he is getting a bit higher than his previous tricks he's doing a double front roll board off with a contra loop and an added rotation so three rotations whilst having his board off and looping that kite and just making it in time for that landing some of you asking for the handle pass on the comments here for Mike Jacobs, and uh, unfortunately, when that might be, might be, uh, might have been 2020. Unfortunately, I think that might be done here now. We'd still love to see someone send a big one. Now, there's one rider that's not, not here competing that's really grabbed my attention out in Cape Town. That's doing massive hooked in jumps and unhooking and sending mega loops as well. You must have seen this guy, Ruben. I've forgotten his name, but I definitely think he's got that in the bag to unhook miles up in the air and handle pass i'm loving the, that we'll, we'll see is unhook done in these competitions ruben i can't wait for it it's uh, one of the most extreme things you can do to unhook from your harness so taking all the power on your hands on your arms on your body and uh yeah then performing a handle pass so if you miss that bar then definitely a, a guaranteed epic wipeout but if you manage to unhook with a big air trick then uh, you definitely score some good points in my opinion now, one guy that I've been rumoured has been training like non-stop, Ruben, with his unhooked moves. You ain't going to believe the name I give you now. Who might actually have moves that no one's ever seen before. You know who that is? I have no clue. Toby Brewer. No way. Strictly unhooked. Here is Arthur Dealbear then. Not quite getting the height he would have liked to. I think he's going to have to settle for third here. But yeah, Toby, Toby Brewer, strictly hooked, apparently. Uh, is going to be strictly unhooked. I would love to see that. What a come! That would be epic, no? After all those years coming back and then being the best at unhooked. I'd I'd just love to see a mega loop board off uh, and then with, combined with a handle pass. That would, just one move. Just enter the competition. One move, leave, go. Oh, straight you need in. you need three high scoring tricks. It doesn't matter. That just one just ten be, just and one just get ten out of there. One five. statement. Yeah, one st <laughs> one statement. Statement move. Yeah. Flash rider. <sighs> We have a streaker in the competition area. Oh, no, that's uh, no, Mark that, Jacobs. That's your live other stream on your phone of <laughs> another event going on right now. So a well, big welcome to all of you then if you have just tuned in. Uh, we're pretty underway here. Heat number three is almost getting wrapped up, and it's got to a very crucial stage here because there is 2.3 separating Mark Jacobs and Josu Sam. What's he got for us? Is he going to replace his 4.67, which is in the Kite Loop front roll category? The wind has just dropped again a little bit, though. Yes, you're right. Jesse Richmond's kite loop front mode was pretty amazing, but they almost felt like there was a limit on height with that move. That you hard to do. It had to be an early send of the kite. Oh, here he goes. Right foot forward, going for the double front roll board off contra loop, and sticking it clean. Little grab on the end of that as well. So that will open up another category for him. He hasn't got a contra loop in there. Um. That was a contra loop, no? So yep. it's been crossed out on my screen that I've got for him here. I'm not too sure about that. So I think Mark Jacobs is uh, Mark Jacobs is going to take this one.
So here we see uh, Julian Hoon looking for his takeoff. This is uh, Liam Whaley, Clement Hood, and Julian Hoon battling it out here in heat number four of round one of the men's division of the Qatar Airways GKA World Tour stop here in Barcares, France. You're here with me, Ruben Lenten, and of course, Lewis Crathern, streaming live. We're actually situated in a very nice commentator boot with the live stream running. We can see right down on the flat water section where the riders are performing all these epic big air tricks for us today. Situated. Situated, yep, that's it, Lewis. Right here, we got a nice view of all the action. We do. It is uh, an incredible location here, and we just have to look out the window if we want to see any of that extra detail. I'm always a big fan of being able to give you that live view because I'm here, you know. I don't think we want to see this stuff going where I'm in my bedroom, waking up in my PJs, pretending I'm on the spot. I'm right here. I can tell you the temperature of the water, the smell in the air. Spring is in the air, but it's a bit chilly today. Some of these riders donning... Just come stand uh, closer to me. Oh, thank Luke, you, come Ruben. Here, <laughs> Some of these riders donning balaclavas, but Liam Wiley, no problems in this colder temperature here. Taking off. This looks like a big explosive move for him with a mega loop back roll board off. Nice and controlled as he goes through the early gears, Ruben. Yeah, here we get a little replay of Liam's trick. He takes off, pushes hard against it like he wasn't getting super high. He was looking for a, a little bit more wind in that uh, trick to just really lean into it. But you could see that, uh, yeah, the amount of pressure and power he put against his kite actually, yeah, didn't uh, catch the right gust to pull through. <laughs> thank God, I thought I was so baked, I lost my sense of hearing. Well, thank God you can still hear us. There was a little button switched off, a little mute here on the live stream commentary boot. But uh, we're right back at you, mate. And a uh, nice comment there from Cruiser. My wife feels the same when I'm away from her. Nice to have you on board with us today here at the Lords of Tram. It is the GK Big Air Kite World Cup here in the south of France in the Baccarès. I'm getting really into the swing of my local oui, language oui, now. Oui, oui. Le Baccarès. It's the Baccarès edition of Lords of Tram, the fifth edition of Lords of Tram, the second time we've returned here. They had three editions in Grusan. This F1 kite is being worked up and down and up and down like a yo-yo. He's <laughs> visibly underpowered to me now, is Clement Will he make the 10 meter mark on this jump? This is devastating. With what size kite has he got out there? That looks tiny. That must be a 7 or below, but I reckon you could probably do a tack on a 13 meter out there now with the wind dropping that light. It really has come down to 20 knots just at this specific moment. But of course, with that lovely shot of the wind turbines in the background, the wind is there. Your fave, wind turbines. They are my fave, and they're the future of all mankind. Nice, cheers. And women kind. Thank God I look like one. Someone said to you, you look like a wind turbine. Yep. Is that, wow. That's it. That would be no friend of mine. I believe it was my wife. I was doing the helicopter, mate. Is that a kiteboarding move? Might as well be. There is a heli loops involved in kiting. Like after the riders do a massive loop, then the, they will fly underneath their kite and then they will actually perform another heli loop to land softly. But Clement... Definitely not happy with the power and the wind in this uh, trick attempt. He's uh, got it. He's putting his hands up, which is a sign. A whopping 6.7 meters there, which clearly shows uh, the struggles with the wind just dropping down. And as we said before, this is such a difficult event to kite swap because they have to come all the way downwind to get their kite. They're basically going to miss their turn. And I wonder if this is going to be something that's... Uh, brought up by some of the riders in that it's just so hard to switch kites in conditions like this where they are substandard big air conditions right now for me, Ruben. And uh, I wonder if the race director, Clement, um, sorry, Cedric, who is um, very similar to Olaf Van Tool. We miss you, Olaf. We hope you're well wherever you are, but he's doing a great job under your wing, I believe he was for all those years. Bit of a dip in uh, this heat, Ruben Lenton. Yeah, the riders are just waiting for the wind to kick back in and really uh, try and perform the best trick attempts, but it uh, doesn't look like it's kicking in right at this second. So uh, let's see what the judges and the race director do with this heat. Liam Whaley, though, with his D-Lab, a very light kite that he's got right now. He's up against an F1 uh, and a North. Let's see, because all it takes in, in a heat is that you're 
uh, guy that you're competing against goes and does a big one. Look, the wind looks like it's coming nicely for Liam, and you just say, well, well he was fine, so, so I'm fine, so what? Yeah. And he is fine, Ruben. Jumping around 10 meters, doing his rotations and board off, and the classic clean Liam landing. And what we've seen Liam do, he's playing around with his landings as well, landing backwards even. So I'm curious to see if we're going to see some of that. So that's one front rotation, taking the board off, another front rotation, and an added rotation on the way down. So that's three front rotations whilst looping his kite and taking his board off. So a very technical move. He was going uh, 12 meters high and covering a distance of 50 meters. So that's a nice data from the surfer app. 1080 degrees. Or 1080 to be exact. And uh, oh, a rewind, a rewind here for uh, Clement that we can see sometimes happens when you've got that small kite and there's not super tension throughout. You can drop out and spin back the other way. So it always feels a bit weird. Like when you do a rotation forward, like you're so focused on rotating forward and all of a sudden the momentum goes the other way. And like you do a rewind and it's almost never intentional and uh, always feeling a bit awkward out there. But he was managed to land it and. Uh, yeah, the judge will take that into consideration for sure. I don't believe he's on a 9-meter F1. I think that might be a 6 upside down. That definitely doesn't look like a 9-meter to you, Ruben. we got a, one of our eagle-eyed commenters there, Sebastian, saying he's out on a 9-meter F1. Do you think that's a 9, Ruben? I think he's got the stats. Looks now that it's definitely not Six. a 9. I think that 9's yeah. upside down, Sonny Jim. There's lots of kites laying on the beach here. The riders are all pumped up and ready to go. And uh, we're here in heat number four of round one of the men at the Qatar Airways GKA World Tour stop in Barcares. I'm going to add to that very descriptive um, description of the beach here. There's also lots of mountains in the background. See a bit of snow, mate. Snowman? Where's the snowman? I'm going skiing, mate. Ciao. Yeah, this uh, mountain in the background, which I should know the name of. I think I used to know the name of it. It it's usually a has a snow mountain. Snow mountain. Apparently it's called. Uh, that was uh, clever. Right, there's the scene then. Just look, everyone's too calm on the beach there for me. Those kites are flapping around, looking pretty okay about things. This guy's running back up when We've got no sand going berserk or anything just yet. As the wind to me looks like it's just shifted perhaps around to the north a little bit. So can these riders squeeze any more out of it yes they can't they can all the mean while that riders are going that big backside block side and comes out of the board ruben into the cartwheel that's not going to count unfortunately for uh julian a classic cartwheel yeah as you can see here he did a little pre-pop before the takeoff he's going with two forward spins and he wanted another one on the way down but unfortunately yeah, not having the height for another rotation off balance falling off his board not cartwheeling as hard as we can see it sometimes it is one of my signature moves as well and here you see that he is actually unhooked getting dragged off his leash is that a big deal then i wonder if his legs got caught up in the kite and uh, yes this was one of your signature moves ruben i oh, believe oh there we see liam going for a bit of a rewind there as well but the wind's starting to come back now as you can see those white caps on the water as we had that little lull here there is julian hoon who's also on the commentary team going back to, to get his board. Ruben, you mis just mentioned that the cartwheel uh, was one of your signature moves. And I believe, I think the first time I saw that one was out, at, um, maybe it was at the Mega Loop where you were doing yep. a demonstration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and first move straight <laughs> out the bag. Almost broke my neck on that one. But uh, At least three, uh, three uh, overs and unders on that one. And then we saw it again, <laughs> I think, at another... First move straight again at my demonstration. A straight cartwheel, broke the board in half, out of my boots, classic. <laughs> they're just one of those crashes that even though you think if your friend's okay you can't stop laughing it was just anybody that receives a crash like that we've all received them but those ones were special then we saw the steam train into the wave at king of the air that was, oh. that was a good one as well sometimes it does look like a uh, rag dolls behind these kites and uh, yeah most of the time the crash actually looks worse than it really is they often walk away from it and i think that's due to the forward speed we have so we kind of skip out of it like yeah, a skipping rock almost. And uh, the worst is when yeah, the kite is not catching you. You have too much downforce with a lot of impact. But here we see two back rotations and an added rotation. So three backward rotations whilst looping his kite, but also not getting the height and the power he needs to uh, to land clean. I think the worst is when you just don't come back up, actually. That's never a, never a good one to have. And uh, hopefully we don't see so many 
of those again um, just to answer some of our questions here so yes it's the three top scores that count out of their six trick attempts there so the maximum you could get scored here is 30 that's with three tens that's what i would do yeah i, I mean that's probably a good strategy i don't know what these guys are messing around <laughs> with these fives and fours but actually they don't have the conditions in all seriousness to be pushing their tens right now and I want you at home, wherever you're watching around the world now, I want you to remember this moment right now where we're pretty chilled. It's the morning. The wind is not up. Because I can guarantee you as we go steaming through this another three, four hours, even an hour's time, you just don't know where we'll be. When this wind picks up, this thing gets epic. So just remember this moment where we were having a bit of fun. It's quiet. It's calm. Because this atmosphere is going to change big time later. And we may well see the world record height uh, kick in. So cancel everything you're doing on a Sunday. This is the place to be at the Lords of Tram. It's the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup in France. And you're watching live with me, Lewis Crathen, and Ruben Lenton next to me. is Liam Whaley finding the gust. There oh, we yeah. go. Big multiple rotations in the back row with a board off. Pretty sure that was a, a mega loop backhand as well, Ruben. Yep, three rotations for Liam Whaley there. A nice takeoff with the first back roll, taking his board off during that second rotation and adding a rotation on the way down whilst he's putting his board on. That's what I said. Like, the guys will have to make themselves small again when they tuck for putting the board back on, and that's when they often get swung into another rotation and then completing that on the way down just before the landing. But remember, the guys do need the height for completing that trick. And uh, as the wind increases, like Liam Wade, or like <laughs> Lewis Crater says, um, the weather conditions do depend the atmosphere and the type of action. And here, this is a very serious spot with very challenging conditions. We have the world's best big air riders battling it out today here at the GKA World Tour stop. So popcorn is great for breakfast. If you are watching this live stream right now, we just missed the trick here from uh, Clement Hood. That was my fault. I was distracting the the director. Yeah, cheers, mate. Sorry about that. Was uh, the, nice was one, Lou. On the job, as always. Was it missable? Uh, yeah, it wasn't super high, but he landed it, so it uh, will pop up as a score for her, uh, for Clement. Well, as long as it wasn't, you know, like the world record jump. That, I mean, I'd really feel bad if I if I missed uh, missed them. We got a few supporters for Jamie from Workham. Workham. That's work uh, one of the highest places of unemployment, I believe, in the Netherlands. Work them. <laughs> work them hard, mate. Uh, so here we see uh, in the red light crowd, Julian Hoon, not getting the height, but still performing that back roll and taking his board off. But, uh, yeah, not going to score super well because he was missing the height. You see all the riders uh, riding past the edge of the beach there, uh, really parallel to the beach, riding into that corner, looking for the gust and timing that takeoff perfectly. And here we see uh, Liam Whaley. He's not bothered about, uh, you know, the difficult wind conditions here. And this is what separates riders from the other experienced rider. A guy like Julian now is probably thinking, what have I got to do to end up in a competition where I'm absolutely lit on my eight and seven here? It's so annoying when that's what you specialise in. Liam's been doing this for years now in big air, even at a young age. And he's just finding the big ass massive contra loop with a board off. And he's going to oh. definitely not land this one. Ruben Lenton, what went wrong there? And the devastating yank at the end. Oh, yeah, he just didn't have to hide there to complete his contra loop and get his board back on his feet. So here you see he's going for a takeoff. He is doing the front spin, taking his uh, board off with his backhand. The kite looped but swung him too low and uh, unfortunately uh, resulting in a big wipeout. I wonder if he hit a New York Yankee on the way around there because it really did push, yeah. push him downwind. And this wind looks like it's coming up a little bit. Not really the height also that Clemens really struggled with height too. Another rider that must feel like, come on, how long will this be until I get to compete with 40 knots and above? This guy, we always see him on his social media channels riding totally lit. But Julian Hoon, he looks a lot more composed here for me. I think he's going right foot forwards here, which we call starboard in uh, in sailing. Riding to uh, to his right hand side. It's a world sailing event here. And I always feel that the way we utilize this space above water is just so unique and really defines uh, our sport. Sailors must look at this and be like, wow, what are these people doing? We're sailing for a bit and then we just go paragliding. 
They're, they're having the best time on the water. Kite surfing is definitely an exceptionally beautiful sport to uh, participate in, but also to look at. So uh, thank you guys for, for tuning in, supporting this rider, supporting the sport, and uh, we're ready to take it to the next level. Remember what happened yesterday? We even measured gust up to 72 knots. What a landing, Ruben. Sorry to interrupt you there. That was an incredible landing for Julian Hearn. He looked all day like he wouldn't get round there. He got the board on in such a small amount of time. And could that be the move that helps him, um, you know, really push up from where he is right now? I doubt he will uh, get into the second position, but uh, let's see what the judges say about that. Here we see in the blue rush vest, Liam Whaley building up full speed. Just going for a straight board off, not the... Not the power he was hoping for during the takeoff, so just going for a, a straight floaty board off. Not going to give him the scores uh, that he needs right now. Although he is in the lead and uh, he's not too too gutted right now. Floaty board off, uh, often referred to as the FBO. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. A big FBO. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. Lots of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started Welcome back here then to the Lords of Tram, it's the GK Big Air what GKA, it's hard to get that A in when you say it quick, GK, the GKA, Big Air Kite World Cup, I'm Lewis Crathen and standing alongside me is Ruben Lenton and this is maybe the heat that uh, could be the real electric one of the day so far, Ruben. We've got Jeremy Overbeek up against Jeremy Belando and Lucas Gramstrup. And here comes the world record holder for height over 35 meters. Starting off, how high is he going to go? And just starts off with a mega loop board off. He can do that in his sleep. Yep, that is uh, still a very basic trick for Jamie. That was definitely not the, the height he was going for, uh, aiming for uh, in this trick. Like you say, he's got the 35 meter mark. Uh, as a world uh, world record right now and he jumped there two days ago here at this spot so as the wind increases we will see uh, the riders getting uh, closer and closer to the 20 meter mark and then the 25 meter mark and hopefully to the 30 and beyond so uh, s yeah stay tuned for uh, for more epic action unfolding and here actually all the riders are under 20 in this heat in this particular heat it's all the young guns we see Lucas uh, Gramstrup, who we've seen riding in many big air competitions from Denmark, looking for a pre-pop with a nice doobie contra. Mm, I like it. So two forward rotations and then a four uh, front hand contra loop. 
here you can see he does a little pre-pop just before he takes off just to build up more power and tension uh, for that uh, for the proper takeoff two forward rotations contra loop and an edit rotation so three forward rotations and very nicely styled and controlled there for lucas gramstrup from denmark yeah he'll be happy about that ruben um that was a nice start for him not getting scored massively it looks like that i mean that was 13 meters up in the sky and uh yeah no massive score coming in so jbo on top at the moment here he is on that li um, lime green green and black slingshot kite left foot forwards jbo also making a big name for himself in big air he's finding himself uh entering all the top events around the world now and uh Winning he's a few. Up, he's up there. Yeah, he's winning a few on the podiums here and there. He's got all the tricks. Uh, definitely the height, the technicality. He can combine everything into one trick. And he's just uh, looking for some uh, some more power. He can jump to the right, to the left. And uh, also with so much style. Sometimes getting a little bit too excited, I feel. And uh, yeah, not working into his competition strategy always. But um, yeah, he landed on top of the podium before. So let's see if he can do that throughout this event. Was he okay? Didn't injure himself landing on top of the podium? Yeah, man. There, you, you can see the height. Whoa! Oh, what? His foot accidentally yeah. flew out during takeoff, but he still managed to perform an epic contra loop, keep rotating, controlling replay. that board. Can we get a replay on this? I'm screaming it out for the director because I think there was a rewind somewhere in the middle of that. It just looked like he'd been rotated back round. I don't know if we're going to get a replay. <laughs> let's uh <laughs> let's see we have had some good replays today but that one 15 meters pushing it over the 15 meter mark that's where we want to see these big air riders going then 64 meters in distance as well and that just sends one out here to jbig oh, you're still scoring uh close to a six which uh, is good for a kind of an accidental foot slip and he still managed to recover that mid-air uh, sometimes when your takeoff doesn't go according to plan you often abort your attempt but Jeremy just went so high and was able to control his his maneuver mid mid air, just adapt and move on. And let's see what Overbeek's got for us here. Now we know he's such a confident rider out on his own. What can he do in a big heat like this? It's Oy. a massive mega loop back roll with a board off into multiple rotations as well. And of course he can prove that he can ride with the others. Let's not forget he finished on the podium at King of the Air. Uh, at the end of last year in his first ever attempt at riding in that competition. So he's really come to age. Ruben, you're a Dutchman. Are you proud of all these big air riders coming from the Netherlands right now? Oh, 100%. I'm so proud of this whole community. We all support each other. We all push each other. And uh, it's just amazing what the next generation is doing, how seriously they take this sport. It's a true passion. And the technicality and performance we are seeing from these riders is absolutely mind-blowing. Mind that was a really nice answer, Ruben. But I want to know, do you think the Dutch riders are the best? If it ain't Dutch, it ain't. You figure it out. Much, maybe. But yeah, I, I think uh, the Dutchies are definitely uh, on top of their game when it comes to kiteboarding, especially big air. We are uh, crazy enough. We eat plenty of cheese. You guys could really do with speaking to your football team right now, you know. You're really not having it. Maybe... Uh Mind your own business, mate. Maybe our football team could speak to the rest of our riders back home kiting, you know. Yeah, We've got man. Aaron Hadlow out here. We've got Max Tully. He's also one of the future pros in our sport. But you seem to have so many Dutch riders all the time, so confident in the, these competitions, and they're always up there in the rankings. But meanwhile, back to the action. We've got a bit of a lull in the wind right now. I'm sure you can see that online. It looks very flat. And we can see that any of you that don't kite surf, when you see these kites moving up and down, that is a sign of trying to work more energy into your kites here you don't need to do that when it's very windy you lock it you park it and you go but maybe gramstrup can find some wind here i don't think this is going to be big I pumping the board but yeah not getting the height he needs i don't think that was scoring for this attempt because i look like one of your jumps ruben yeah thanks mate going massive massively close to the water <laughs> Uh, cheers, Lou. Sorry, that's not true at all, actually. I've seen some really big stuff from you. Um, flying on short lines, actually. We, you, you've been into the short lines a little bit, going way over 20 meters uh, in Cape Town. Yeah, I remember riding short lines back in the day, even 2008, uh, riding 15-meter lines on the 9-meter kite and really looping the kite down low. 
Then for many years it disappeared, but now we see the guys uh, changing up their uh, their line strategy as well, just because it gives a more dynamic and uh, aggressive feel to that loop. And I'm super addicted to it. It's, uh, it's a new feel for me. It really ignited my stoke. And uh, I can't wait to go out for a massive session myself shortly. I want to know, Ruben, like whilst we have this wind lull currently in the heat area, and this is really low right now um, for go, this can go for a fishing trip. Uh, I, <laughs> I want to know, so you just mentioning your short line. How do you get short lines like that? Do you get the scissors out and cut them, or what do you do? I, I did get the scissors out the uh, last time just because I had a little photo shoot planned and I forgot my other bar, so I just cut them, knotted them up. No, 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 I'm just kidding. We want to take our line seriously, and uh, I get them uh, made up by the Kite Mana shop. They always help me out, get my gear prepped. But, uh, yeah, definitely find a, a shop, or if you're handy yourself, fix your lines. 15-meter lines is uh, definitely fun to play with. It still catches you nicely, and we see the wind kicking back in here for uh, Lucas Grumstrup. Yeah, he just went into the second rotation. So that was two back rolls and a half into that meg loop. I love how he just committed to that rotation as well. He was over-rotated on the way up. Was that a rock? What even is that? Is it's that, a cameraman with a is helmet. Is that someone just really still? Yeah, it's a statue. What is that doing there? Okay, <laughs> so that's uh, an interesting <laughs> rock in the in the zone there. That's or maybe someone's put it there as the optimum takeoff point. Are you allowed to do that? Some uh, some reference. Okay, so yeah, it's just uh, perspectively that looks bigger. That looks interesting. There, someone's done that overnight. I want to know who that is. Um, <laughs> left foot forwards. Then is uh, Jeremy Belando who's coming in, and uh, these riders just they're under 20 now. You know, they're teenagers out here in the World Tour pushing the levels of big air, and it's just so entertaining to to watch. You know, I don't know about you, Ruben, but I love riding. I always want to be out in the water, and I never imagined I'd be comfortable with talking and looking out the window at what we're seeing. But it's so entertaining, and you're just so amazed about what you're seeing that you, you can deal with it. You, you can watch it and enjoy it. And really, really, really enjoy it a lot watching. Uh, one thing that is very frustrating for the riders is this low in the wind. They are ready to perform their best, most extreme, the highest, best tricks that they can possibly do, but they need wind for it. So if the wind is not there, it's really, really frustrating. And you're just asking yourself, when is there enough power? When is it kicking in again? And uh, yeah, unfortunately not yet here for, uh, for J-Bo. Uh, he's turning around, trying to, uh, to wait for the wind to, to kick back in, to give him enough power to perform his best tricks. And you don't just think it as kiteboarders inside. You physically say it to the wind sometimes. You have these battles come with the You're like, come on. Give me something, you know. You have these incredible moments as kiteboarders. We all have them. And uh, maybe Jeremy Belando has had some words here with the wind gods because he's really found some power. Lovely little land, you know, just really like control. I love the way he touched that down, Ruben. So the wind is there in the gusts here, Ruben. That was uh, only coming up as 11 meters. It looked a bit higher to me, Ruben. Yeah, this spot uh, does work a bit funny like that with a bit going up and down. So you really have to feel it, be in tune. You, you think you cannot see the wind, but these riders can read the wind by looking at the clouds. They can see the trees, they can see the sand fly and the movement of the water. Uh, even the spectators blowing over like we saw yesterday, measuring a 72 knots coming through uh, after the women's uh, division there. So let's hope the wind uh, will build strong like that because uh, the riders are ready to throw down and take on the most wind we can possibly find today. So uh, the forecast looks promising and... Uh, yeah, we are just waiting for uh, for Jamie Overbeek to find enough power to perform his uh, epic move. Remember, they get six trick attempts. Uh, they roughly have 40 seconds to perform their uh, their trick. Obviously, with a little bit of slack in there, if there is a little low in the wind, they will uh, be allowed some more time to uh, to find the right takeoff moment. And here we see uh, Jamie Overbeek trying to find that that speed, the right power, riding into the corner where it's nice and flat. He does the preload pop. But unfortunately, not feeling uh, feeling the gust here. Not happy with that. But uh, he's such a, a consistent rider. So yeah, he just spent so many hours uh, training on different types of kites as well, practicing many board offs, many rotations. I believe he did like eight or nine rotations. Uh, you should look uh, look him up on YouTube for some more incredible kite kite surfing action. Uh, these young guns are uh, definitely a uh, yeah, at the top of their game, and I love how seriously they do take this sport, uh, training off the water, uh, looking after themselves, their diet, their mental health. It's uh, it's all uh, part of the puzzle to be feeling the best out there and at the top of your game in the, in big air kiteboarding. 
Oh, nice crash there from Lucas Gramstrap in the red Lycra there. Unfortunately, not uh, not putting a score on the board for this trick attempt. He's going to be Gramstrapped about that. Absolutely Gramstrapped. Because um, this heat here, he really needs to step up now. Because, we, you know, we're getting through to the halfway point here. Riders, have, we've had that lull, and uh, they've been given a little bit more time. And uh, right on your screens now, with clearly lots of power, leaning back, getting that edge going with the blue rash vest. It's J Jeremy Blando or J Bo, as uh, as we know. Here he comes. It's definitely going to be a lot more higher. Double back roll, wow. mega loop board off into a third back roll, Ooh. and a wonderful landing into toe side. Ruben, that is a really skilled landing. I like that. Smooth operator here, Jeremy Berlando, doing a nice preload pop, taking off super powerful. Going into that back roll, and then as he loops the kite, he gets a massive yank, does the second back roll whilst taking off his board, and then adds uh, his other rotation on the way down whilst putting his board on. So three backwards rotations, a board off whilst looping that kite, and absolutely nice, clean, neat landing for Jeremy Berlando. Scoring a 7.27, um, very well in the lead in this heat. But here comes Jamie Overbeck with his answer. He's got all the technical skills and tricks. With a doobie loop board off and an added rotation on the way down, not getting the height that we're used to from uh, seeing from Jamie Overbeck. Yeah, Overbeck's uh, up against it here. Here's the replay of that last move from the Ozone Rider. Just wasn't up there to start with. I wonder if he wanted to double that maybe, but the wind is coming up enough. Another clean move from him, but you really want to be trying to get through in first here, these riders, but... Um, it's tough. It, no heat. I mean, how many times have we been in competition and said, no heat is an easy heat, but we're actually serious now. In the past, we may have been just saying it, right? This is now the truth now. j Bo, j Beak, and Gramstrup are fighting out to try and dodge the second round here. That's a big miss. You know, you're going to miss at least two or three hours of riding if you can just advance in this heat. It's a contra loop that's not going to score great as the wind just drops down, and so does... Uh, so does the rider. Graham Strupp just can't link things together now. That's four tricks each for these riders. Let's remind you then, it's their three best moves that will score. And I wonder if this is going to be the pattern of the day, Ruben, where we get these highs and lows. Very similar to life. But it's all about making the most out of those lows. And that just shows you how in tune you have to be with Mother Nature. And this uh, all comes down to experience and also confidence. And then you need to open your bag of tricks uh, at the right time. And when you have enough power, you can get the right height. And here you can see that Jeremy is definitely finding the height to rotate three times, taking his board off. And this time he was jumping to the left. I think it was a contra loop. So here, oh. No, he's pulling with his backhand. So it was a normal kite loop with three front rotations and super clean landing, full speed. That's what the judges love to see. Getting 14 meters high, covering a distance of 63 meters and seven seconds airtime during all of that. You've got to keep your eyes on this here in the Lords of Tram at the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup down in France because just when you think the wind is lulled, it's picking right back up now. And here comes Overbeek. Cameras had to zoom right out with that triple. He's going into four front rolls with a board off and a contra loop, I believe. Ruben, that, and their judge is going to like that. Four times front ro rotation. We're looking at the hands here to confirm which side of the bar he's pushed. I think he's got his left hand on the bar there. Yeah, I do front hand. Yeah, front hands. And so a contra loop in that category for Jamie Overbeek. And he hasn't contra looped yet. So scores coming in here. Looks like a 7.0 on close. my scores. And that has made this one spicy. Definitely. How many trick attempts? Jeremy has one trick attempt left. Jamie has one trick attempt left, and we will see uh, Lucas Gramstrap going uh, for uh, two more trick attempts left. And he knows he needs to pull everything out of the bag to uh, even land in that second position. But Jeremy Berlando and Jamie Overbeek are uh, running uh, very close in this heat. So let's see uh, who can up their scores in, uh, in the remainder of this heat. Yet to see anyone come in for a pit stop and change down smaller um, to take that on yet. And it's very tight, the amount of time you get. To come down, we're in ride back upwind and i think that will be interesting because i feel like we're seeing a bit of a different strategy now with the riders maybe the equipment's allowing it ruben in the past we might have seen riders go out on a nine and do big individual loops then come back in and change to a seven maybe even a six and start doubling i think 
a lot of the riders have got very good at making seven and eights work in lighter winds, and perhaps they can even double them as well as go big, which saves them this pit stop. In an area like this where it's quite tricky to make the pit stop, I can see the other ozone kite on the beach in front of me outside ready for um, Jamie Overbeek, but it's 400 metres away from him, so I don't think he's likely to change it. Meanwhile, Gramstrup still just does, it's just lacking the height a little bit for me, Ruben. So what happens if, uh, if you get third place in this first round? Uh, you will be going into the second round and you will be facing someone that's finished second in the first round. So even second is better than finishing third. However, the real golden position here is first place, skipping straight into the third round, giving yourself a break um, and knowing that you've got through um, potentially to the latter stages of the event without going out um, at the first opportunity, which is always, always devastating, Ruben, when you go out last, so, you know? So the second and third place will battle it out in the second round and uh, they will get mixed up, and uh, only the first place goes to round number three, which obviously uh, saves some energy. But uh, it is Sunday, the guys are just waking up in this uh, round number one, heat number five of the men's division here at the GKA World Tour Stop in Barcares in France. And really this is all about j -Bo and Jamie Overbeek, who are now separated by six point one. J Jeremy Belando with a 5.97 as his lowest scoring trick. That is from the Contraloop family. So are we going to see an improvement of the... Co yes, we are. It's ah. massive. This is a biggie, Ruben. This is a biggie. It's over 15 metres. Can he stick it? He's got a fight. Oh, oh he got bounced out. No. Bombing out. Oh, Lewis just slamming his head against the container because he just cannot believe what we just saw from Jeremy Berlando going absolutely massive. Doing three rotations during that contra loop, but unfortunately... And a bounce out of all things. Oh. A bloody bounce out. Oh, no, not a bounce out. That was harsh. And you know, the most devastating thing about it, Ruben, that why I went away and had a moment there is we will never know how that is scored, ever. We will never find out how that was scored. And it would be scored a zero, Lewis. Crashes don't but score. But what it would have been scored. What it would have been scored, it would be well up there. It was there. up there. That I was into eight. the nines, maybe. In, in, uh, into the eights, I think. Just be like that. But here, he was getting close to the 20 meter mark you see on the Surfer Data app. Wow. Um, That's the biggest jump so far in the competition. Overbeak, meanwhile, going for a contra loop of his own. What does he need to try and improve here? What taken a, I've, I haven't com composed myself here. Overbeak currently had. Uh, Here's the replay of Jamie going massive. He's trying to improve his. Con was that a contra loop? No, it was a normal was loop. Oh, He's oh, looping yes. with his backhand yes. because he was riding right foot forward, going up, going for that doobie loop bored off by the fin. I don't think that's going to be enough, maybe, to improve his jump. So he wanted to... Oh, it's come in as a 6.77, and I think he needed more than that. He uh, He's knocked oh. out the 6.37. No, he needed, I think, 6.9, 6 maybe. So it really did get close. Yeah, he did need that extra uh, 0.27. Unfortunately, not getting the height on that trick attempt. So Jamie Overberg, we will see him in round two by the looks of it. But here on the last trick attempt, even if he scores a 10, Lucas Grumstrup will find himself in round number two as well to hopefully uh, better his scores to move on into this competition. What an epic heat, Ruben. Uh, we're going to wrap that one up there and go to a commercial break. Ruben Lorenzo Casati, who is the King of the Air champion, Valentin Hunderop from Spain, 
Is that a Dutch surname? Hunderop. That is definitely a Dutch, uh, Dutch surname. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Valentin Garat from France, who's uh, really kept himself in the game in Big Air. And I think he entered this one last minute at the expense of um, someone else, maybe. I can't, I can't remember. But Valentin Garat keeps himself competing in Big Air. And I've noticed that he's taken out a lot of the GKA second uh, discipline events where there's been Big Air thrown at some of the other events around the world so i think he's going to be one to watch here we've still got the other names up there in the top left hand corner that will be replaced when this one starts we've already seen some big action here at 9 45. jay bow going big on that slingshot yeah he was really stepping it up there Definitely, it was uh, yeah, slingshotting himself into the sky. It's a good name, isn't it? Ruben used to be sponsored by Slingshot, so did I. Yeah, the definitely. They, they good days. They supported uh, us and the sport very well. Always a great vision, great products, and uh, thanks for the love and support throughout all of this. And uh, also supporting Jeremy uh, Berlando, one of the, the top leading talents of this next generation. Cassati then opening up his account in this heat. It looked like a contralute with a board off to me as we see these scores coming in already nope it wasn't a contra loop it was a kite loop apologize i didn't get my wide angle in there i should know really really should know shouldn't you i wasn't really paying attention there as much as i should do so i apologize but well, he's opened up with a 6.13 sometimes it is very hard to see what they're doing if they're riding left foot forward right foot forward are they pulling their backhand or front hand that's the best thing we can look at but there is so much to look at like you're already mesmerized by that takeoff and by the time they are in the air, they are already flinging themselves in some rotations. So this was uh, two back rotations and looping the kite. Backward or forward, Lewis? Uh, that was backwards. So I looked out the window. Sometimes our shot here, if we don't pan out enough, we can't see where the kite is going. We actually saw on the shot there it was a backhand. So a 4.50 kite loop background. I think that's bang on because that mm. move is the first t tends to be the first rotation you learn. The delayed roll. It's very easy. Um, it was nice and floaty. There's not so much risk in it. So I think that was quite good judging by the judges, even though he went 12 meters high. However, we now turn our attention to Valentin Gara. Wow, what a bomb out there. He just didn't get any help from his kite that finally gives him some power. And he, caught, he took some time to surface there. Uh, I'm not sure. Wow, can we get a replay on that one? Any replay? No replay on this one, but it's okay. It was a bit of a crash for Valentin Gara. And uh, he opened his account with zero. Hello again to everybody joining us from around the world. We can see all your comments today. We're interacting with you today. I wasn't yesterday. Whoop, whoop. Yes, we are. We can see your comments coming in. So if you have any questions, please just drop them in the box and we'll be happy to, uh, to answer them. As we can see, a beautiful takeoff. Not really getting the height, but uh, Lorenzo Cassati, our current Red Bull King of the Air champion, who definitely uh, gave it his all. Looking for the right wind. Here you see a nice pre-pop. Going for a, a doobie loop, so two forward rotations and kite looping the, the kite with his backhand. Unfortunately, not the move that he was uh, aiming for. Like we say, very challenging spot. We have the best big air riders here on the spot throwing down for you today. And uh, here we see Valentin Garat. No, I think that's uh, Henderop. Yep. Rubes with a nice big mega loop back roll board off into a second rotation and really cleanly landed here. This guy's got some style. I'm interested to see his hang time data. We've got a nice replay coming here. The old Premi pop. Up he goes, round, board off nicely. And look, this really demonstrates control to the judges there. I think that was around the 12 or 13 meters in height, but it's the hang time, I think. Six seconds. Yeah, that was pretty decent. So I think we're going to get around a, a solid six. If I had to guess around that mark, maybe a bit less, a bit more. I'm not a judge, Ruben. That's why I always prefer to come in here and talk about it. It's not official what I think. I can get away with it. It doesn't ruin someone's career if I get it horrendously wrong. Not enough talking going on in the judging tower for your, uh, for your taste. No, it's silent in there. Yep. And uh, here we can watch the best big air action coming at you live. Lewis Crathern and here Ruben Lenton. And it is not about the hang time, but it does add to your score. Like the longer you are in the air, people are just mesmerized by the jump. And especially at this spot, the riders will be able to get that second and maybe even third loft 
in the jump. Are we going to see a lot of that today, Lewis? And how do you actually score that? I think I think we are going to see a lot of that as the winds get stronger and stronger. And um, you know, I had a nice, clear discussion with Mallory at the start about the, the the categories. Just to remind you, can't copy the same move three times here to try and get three big moves and get your total score. So anything with a double loop is considered in the same family as a single loop. But meanwhile, Casati goes straight out of your shot. And we picked him up here, but he just he just you just know he's going to land this. He knew that was important that he landed that because that is the commentator's curse sometimes. I think the wind has got nice and uh, consistent. I almost want to use the word consistent <laughs> here, Ruben, because it just looks like it's a solid 30 to 35 knots now. It will get windier. It will get windier today. We just know that. But now maybe it's even pushing a bit higher than 35 knots. Kites are roughly between seven and eights. So I don't think we've seen any nines out there so much, Ruben, for those of you asking what kite sizes they are but this rider here valentin valentin Hendrop thomas vht you it, see him uh, releasing his front hand so actually taking off with one hand so he can lean even more into that takeoff it's a technique that we see more and more uh, being used by the riders besides the actual pre-load pop uh, what this does is like they get a little pop before they actually take off so they get airspeed and they can lean into that takeoff with a lot more power riding on their rail and kicking with that back leg against all the power of the kite it was a technique that i don't feel you could have had in the old days with the sea kite you just had to have two arms on the bar you let one hand off of that you're in trouble and what it also is helping the riders do Ruben, is open up their body to what well, we've all been there when you're riding and you get a bit tired and you just want to open up win and you take that front hand off i'm a firm believer that two hands on the bar is ultimate control and focus but we're seeing especially with these these high aspect kites pulling further around the window they really want to drive these kites into the window and above them so just releasing that hand allowing the body to turn giving them giving these riders much better angle into the wind it's become a common bit of technique well spotted Ruben 100 percent it's all about edging and uh, timing your uh, your jump right and uh, then controlling uh, controlling it throughout and having a strategy is very important. Like we're here at the Big Air World Tour in Barcarès in France, and these are the best Big Air riders in the world. And they have to perform a variety of tricks. It's not only kite loops to the left, it's kite loops to the left, to the right, but combined with board offs, also combined with kite loops the other way, so contra loops, that's looping the kite with the front hand. And the judges are particularly looking at the height and extremity of all these moves. Yes, Yannick bringing those contra loops into our sport a big hello to Yannick if you are watching anywhere yeah, around Nick. the world hope you're doing hope you're doing well when we miss you in the yeah, big buddy. air scene right now we know you'll be back one day with some new I wonder what you're thinking of all these different moves meanwhile that's a big premi pop from Lorenzo this is a biggie Ruben it's up into the 20 meters category I think it's going to be over 10 seconds maybe in hang time can he stick it yes very well uh, performed there by Lorenzo Cassati and this is especially why he gets rewarded because look at the height he was able to catch and this is what we were talking about that second kind of lofty lift after your jump he found himself still at like eight meters height when he completed his trick and then he was able to just maneuver his way down for a soft and clean landing I think that might be one of the few jumps that's gone over 110 meters in distance so far today 70 meters in height that was an impressive move, Ruben, but I want to draw your attention to one thing there. We looked at our screens there. Maybe you noticed this at home. I didn't see the kite during that move. I didn't see that loop come low and level with him, and I think that's a factor when you're riding such long lines, which can perhaps get you up in the sky. We want to see the kites coming level with these riders for the real top scores. But here's another nice move from Valentin Hendrop. So you're kind of playing a, a pros and cons game, Ruben. We're flying 24 meter lines. Yep. You get well up there, but then you lose that extremity of the kite coming low and down. Exactly. The gear that the riders choose and, uh, of course, the, the kite size, the line lengths, it all contributes to how extreme and gnarly your trick can be. Like Lewis is saying, with longer lines, you're able to catch a little bit of a, yeah, more height in your jump, but the loop is less critical. It's less extreme. So we will have to see what the judges are going to do with that throughout the event. We like to see the critical angle of the kite, getting the kite real low, seeing the slack in the lines and a full on yank. So the riders travel a lot of distance uh, during their trick. 
The other reason to tune in today as well is because there's lots of new kites around on the beach. I'm seeing even a blank duo tone out there. It's exciting. This is really pushing development uh, in big air kiteboarding right now. And you might even see some of these kites on your screen where you think, what is that? There's definitely lots of kites now with the Lua um, and, and lightweight materials that I didn't know brands were doing before. So that's one of the exciting reasons for you to, to tune in and try and spot these new kites. So at the top of your screen, you can see the names. And in the red light cry, I don't know why there is not a color indication in front of their uh, names, actually. Uh, sorry, that's missing. Um, we can see it here on the live scoring, which you can also tune into at the GKAKiteWorldTour.com. Then click on the live and you can scroll down to, uh, to, to the actual uh, trick scoring. So there you can see that the riders will have six trick attempts and their highest uh, three scores will uh, be combined for the overall heat score. You see the 18 minute mark at the top of your screen, which is not counting down. It's a, a rough rough idea of the timing of each heat, but uh, the heat is actually made out of uh, trick attempts. Each rider gets six trick attempts, and uh, of course they have to land it and better their scores in a variety of uh, trick families. Here with a... Oh no! Oh, I hope it's deep enough there for him to, uh, to get away with the landing. It looks like he is okay. I'd, li I'd like to... Wow, this is going to be... One of those replays that you don't want to commentate on, but you do, because I believe he's landed this incredibly. He's had this a malfunction there. This he's come move. out. The, the way he's gone in there, I think he's okay. As long as he does, the chicken loop's gone. Um, he touched his quick release midair, and uh, unfortunately, during his rotations, taking the board off, yeah, he touched the. He was cranking the bar so hard that he actually touched the quick release. The kite was released, and he just fell down from his leash. Luckily, he is okay. He is uh, reeling in his bar, but this was a, yeah, what a, what a crash. 9.58 in the morning. Come on. This is only the morning here. Wow. Uh, yeah, we're staying here. We're saying to the director, we need to, t we need to carry on talking. Just, uh, I don't want to go into the corner of the live stream booth and have a moment to myself. I, I feel like I've, I need to get through what I've just seen. Um, so we've just seen a kite, um, Ejection. I nearly said the wrong word there. Um, from <laughs> top of the <laughs> I mean, it was that much of an explosion. Yeah. I could have been uh, <laughs> forgiven for using that word. So, in this, we're sorry. The scores are not as they seem. First and foremost, here, these are not the correct scores that you're seeing. That's been pointed out. Exactly catastrophic. No, actually, no. It wasn't catastrophic equipment failure because we think he actually activated the chicken loop release. Ruben, you have done this before, and it's cost you a big injury in your life. Yes. And you recognise that straight away because the kite did not go away, which means that it wasn't a blowout as such. It, it stayed leashed in. But it um, is not an equipment failure, but I do count it as equipment failure as well because why do we as big air riders? Have a quick release like that. My hand is moving up and down so many times past this quick release. And I definitely don't want to hit it when I'm 20, even 30 meters up in the sky and come falling down just from my leash. No, I don't want a quick release. Well, But uh, it is making the sport safe. Yeah, we, we have to think about your we, usual riders that maybe can't jump 20 meters but here. In big but air, uh, we have the best big air riders in the world here. They can get rid of the kite in some other way. We don't need a quickly accessible quick release just like that. A quick release is used by beginners, by intermediate riders, also by the pros, but I'm sure we can deal with it um, yeah, with a bit more risk. But uh, the quick release has definitely made the sport a whole lot safer. It's just with the touch, a push away of the button that you can release all the power of the kite and be in safety in any case of emergency. So let's fill you in here. If you have just joined us, we've just had this massive crash here from Lorenzo Casati. And actually, to be honest with you, as far as how high these guys go, I'm grateful that that only happened in 10 meters of height rather than the 20 plus that these guys go because that would have been very different but the reaction from him to land as he did to kick that board off and land two fitted two footed straight down was pretty impressive we do have that one to show on our highlights show he looks to be okay but we're discussing chicken loop uh, release which we've actually seen a lot of here this would be i think something the designers are now looking at thinking about big air riders with all of their hands coming off the bars and grabbing the board and doing things it was easy in the old days we never used to do much just held on tight with two hands but um meanwhile this heat it's i mean this is quite hard to come back from even as another rider here as we see uh valentin uh, is this Val valentin garage is i this, think is we it, need a two-step quick is this a new heat riders here what is even going on here i mean i've just been uh, absolutely flabbergasted by what we just saw there and uh we're yet to see 
Lorenzo is swimming back, so he's had to <laughs> not, no, he's, he's had to swim kite. all the way back. No, no, he got his kite. He, he relaunched it, and now he kited it back. Um, so, but what is he doing? Is he okay? That is, uh, he landed in the shallows. I wonder if that board is okay. He's walking out of the beach here with the yellow helmet. Uh, he's limping a little bit. No, he's all right. He took it. He took it. I feel like he took it. And luckily it was deep enough. And he was riding a nine meter indeed. So, uh, yeah, that's why he was uh, getting the height and uh, performing some epic moves. I'm not sure what is going on with the, the scores that we see in the screens. Not often as a commentator that you are speechless, but those sorts of moments are difficult to to talk about. <laughs> but that comes with the job, I guess. As uh, Lorenzo Casati, one, two, three, four, five. So that was his sixth move, actually, there. And uh, we now see uh, another rider going absolutely massive. Uh, was that Valentin competing? Uh, Valentin Henderop, that is. We've got two Valentins in this heat. And, um, yeah, let's just see. So, yeah, that was him with a 13-meter jump. So we apologize. Those scores are completely not refreshing properly in the top corner of your screen. Um, but we can see online, just as you will be able to as well, a bit more of an update about this heat. And it's actually currently Lorenzo that's in the lead here with 19. So he might have done enough already. But this heat uh, only sees uh, one more trick attempt left from Valentin Garat. Frenchman, who is uh, ready to uh, give it his all. Right foot forward, building up the speed, feeling the pressure, the power. Is he going to jump or is he going to turn around? Looks like he's uh, slowing down, moving up his kite and ready to turn around. Looks like uh, the scores have been fixed as well. Valentin in this heat only landed two tricks. So this is his last trick attempt. And he's going for a kite loop laid back roll with a nose grab. And landing it clean, but definitely not uh, gonna up. Uh, yeah, or. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kite surfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. Lords of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Grouissant. After our third edition, the city of Barcarès saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcarès is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcarès for their trust.
Next heat up here then, Edgar Ulrich, Cohen van Dijk. How do you say his name properly, Cohen van Dijk? Cohen van Dijk. Yeah, just as I said, uh, this one's easy, Timo Bursema. Timo Bursema. So two Dutchies, and uh, then we have Edgar Ulrich, who is a Frenchie, here riding, uh, is it his home spot? I am not yeah, sure, but... I don't know. I feel like everywhere is his home spot. He's such a nice guy. I have seen lots of footage of him uh, riding this spot, performing some of the most badass tricks, and also on the snow. He also does snow kiting, where he gets some next level height. Oh, it's a biggie! Speaking of next level height, here we've got the... Took it, Cohen van Dijk. Cohen van Dijk taking it away in this heat. So the wind is definitely kicking in, and uh, we see the riders already changing the kite. I think Cohen is putting down his, uh, is it a nine? Eight, yeah, he's taking an eight uh, down. Oh, no, no it was a nine. nine. It was a nine. Good spot. Sorry. Um, yeah, so already a quick switch from Cohen. So Size matters. Whoa, look at the height Timo is getting here. The Dutchies are definitely not holding back. Covering a whole lot of distance. It's got to be over 100 meters here, Ruben. We can look huh? at 153 <laughs> meters on our surfer app data. Are you kidding me? This has just stepped up now big time, Ruben. Wow. Timo Bo with a big banger off the bat here. And just look at the acceleration into the air he's just got here. Looping a doobie loop there, going into a triple rotation. And just concentrate. All those minor adjustments, Ruben, so vital to the landing here. I love to to watch those moments. That was lovely to share that with you on that. Oh, wow, look at the wind, Ruben. It went white. Very, very well controlled, that trick. Even his first trick attempt in this heat from Timo Bursema. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, definitely taking, uh, taking the lead with a 5.8. A decent score as a first trick. And here we Whoa. see Edgar Ulrich also going massive. I think, uh, yeah, he was looping with his front hand. Rotating four times forward. Contra looping. And board off. And unfortunately not getting it together. Oh, no. Lewis slapping a dent into this container. But Again. what a trick and what a skill. Look, he had to adjust because he got a gust. Got some extra lift. And just managed to land it. But then it was super choppy and was not able to uh, ride out of it. And this is definitely one of those moments here at the Lords of Tram, at the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup, where things just get raised and you just don't expect when they come like this. The wind has picked up. The riders now have just performed their first trick. They've landed over 150 meters downward and they're swapping kites. It's almost meant to be that they've just used their nines, maybe even their eights, and they're switching down right now. So our cameramen have got a lot of work to do now as Cohen Van Dyke takes to the sky. Whoa. Double loop, delayed back roll. We really have kicked off on day two now. This is the heat that I feel it's happened, Ruben. You, Mother of Nature is delivering us the power that we need for this uh, GKA World Tour kiteboarding with a double loop from Cohen van Dijk and a back roll edit. Super epic trick. That's what we're seeing in big air kiteboarding these days. Not one mega loop, but two mega loops in one move. And what a kite change that was, Ruben, just uh, pretty much after his first trick. He's just kind of the first move he's done on that small kite. He dropped his nine on the beach. After that massive opening trick, he's come down, switched to a smaller kite and just gone straight in. And that's some real trust with your equipment. To not even send one jump and go straight into a double. This is going to be one of those heats where you just you just, you just, just wake up on a Sunday morning. And you're like, whoa, I can't miss anything from now. I'm going to give it my all. And that's what I meant with size matters. Like the 9 meter he was on before was not able to double loop. He switched up to his 8 meter and just straight out of the back. 7.43 for Cohen van Dijk for that double loop. And here Timo Boersma also performing a, an epic move. Here's the replay of that. A nice takeoff with a mega loop, laid back roll, board off, and an edit rotation on the way down. I think a solid score is going to be in the six. Nice landing that. His front foot didn't look locked into me, Ruben. He was still moving. You can't ever get your feet absolutely locked in after a board off a kite loop board off will must be a different story but they still show the skill sometimes to land sometimes even with the foot out the strap we see that magical landing where somebody just deals with it with one foot in and out and that's a hard one but now we turn our attention to uh edgar yeah might as well would have been in the judging tower i said Whoa. into the six with edgar Ulrich now flying to the through the sky Boy, is he now keeping it together? I want to see a replay of that one because we kind of missed it. Yes, thank God. Here we go. He catches massive boost, vertical lift. 
He takes his board off with that Contra loop again. Not as many rotations as his previous attempt, but definitely catching a lot of height. Let's see what the surf... Yeah, 20 meters, I was going to say. The Surfer Data app uh, with 94 meters distance traveled and 10.4 seconds in the air. Edgar Urwick, I'm curious to see what, uh, what he scores for that. That was definitely off the Ulrich to scale. But His own scale. But you see, the, the best trick in this heat was uh, Cohen van Dijk with his double loop. And now he's going for the S loop, which is a mega loop. But mid-air, he decided to uh, to change the direction of the kite, which is definitely super tricky to do, super scary to do. But here you can see Cohen van Dijk looping the kite backwards and then, whoop, moving it back. Well, that whoop. must be scary, Ruben. All of that free floor, you really look like you got to have a good body position in that move it's no good having a lazy mega loop rally into that one or you're gonna get it 100 percent lewis this is uh yeah the most extreme big air kite moves that you can possibly perform and as the wind increases throughout the day the height extremity and power is all gonna increase as well so thanks for tuning in here on this beautiful sunday you're here with me ruben lenton and of course lewis crathern broadcasting from you live lords of tram in barcares during the gka world tour now we're starting to see riders regularly going at 20 meters. Very inverted, that back roll at Mega Loop into a second. And can he make the changes? No, a bit of a butt check. Almost got helped by that bit of chop in the end. And uh, very inverted. It almost looks hard to work out. But this second roll telling us that that was a back roll variation of that move for Timo Bo. And uh, how's he doing right now? He's got 5.8 on the board, a 6.10. So, yeah, he gets very heavily punished for that crash there. Just a 3.60, Ruben. It is a third trick on the board, but looking at the other sort of scores coming in now, more importantly, the amount of wind available to these riders. These riders are going to be pushing for three sevens, I think. And like you say, every heat might as well be a final, but we're only in the first round, and uh, we're seeing some insane action. And all three of these riders have got the double loops, have got the board offs, have got the rotations. They've got a bag full of the most extreme kiteboarding tricks. And here we see Edgar Ulrich riding right foot forward, doing a doobie loop. So two front rotations uh, with a backhand mega loop. Yeah, nice and controlled. It's not in the seven. It's a good banker to have, but I think he'd be trying to kick that out. So they're getting six trick attempts, everyone. It's only their three best that score out of 10, a maximum score of 30. This man, Cohen van Dijk, already on 20 point. Three, six. He'll be looking to upgrade the 5.13, and it is the Doobie Double, which he's looked to improve on. So, yeah, he is. Yeah, he hasn't got a front roll mega loop category just yet, so this should kick out his kite loop board off. Here he goes up into the sky on this replay. There, the first kite loop's gone round into the second. Is he riding a 7 meter? This kite loop's well too fast. Like, and that's all, I mean, doubles are sick. They're difficult, tricky to do, but... In my opinion, he wasn't getting the angle. He wasn't getting the extremity for that double loop. Um, let's see what the, the yeah the judges score for this one. It's in the sevens, I can tell you, Cohen van Dijk. Well, there. seven point two. Yeah, so they're really rewarding the, the doubles. The double it loops are getting very uh, yeah very much rewarded, and uh, I hope we're gonna see uh, see them being done sicker and sicker. As Timo Boersma didn't get the loop in this uh, this jump, going for a straight board off. Not what he's looking for. It's not going to score well. Too basic of a trick for the World Championships right here, right now. Oi, Edgar Ulrich with the technique, with the style, getting massive height and landing it clean. We saw the wind is kicking in. Kites are starting to fly away. So this was a, a back roll contra loop board off. Very well controlled, very well styled. And let's see what the, the surfer app data tells us. How high was that trick? It was close to 15 meters. Edgar Ulrich uh, into a second position.
So here in the white light crowd, we see Cohen van Dijk going absolutely massive with this double kite loop board off. What? <laughs> Landing full speed, controlling the tricky ride out on the chop. Look at this replay, riding full speed, pre-pop. He shoots into the air, he loops his kite twice and getting leveled with his kite. I think he might have heard me. He heard my comments on the previous one saying that the doubles were not getting leveled, not that angled. And look what he's answering back with. A full-on line length double mega loop board off from Cohen van Dijk in the white Lycra. Up next, we've got Timo Bursma in the red Lycra uh, getting ready for his attempt. And he has got the double mega loops in his uh, bag of uh, tricks as well. So let's see if he can pull it out and can, can land it. But absolutely mind-blowing from Cohen van Dijk. 24.43. Wow, that was... A, did I just miss a 9.20? Yes, he did a double mega loop, getting leveled with his kite, and had a board off. So, you missed it, Lou. Yeah, that's uh, disgusting. Sorry. I know that the cameraman didn't miss it, though, and I will see it again on the highlights, I'm sure. But if you just watch that, sounds like you just did, Dan. You don't even know what to say. Here we go. Oh, he wanted a double as well, I think. Just didn't feel the tension, maybe, on the way up. That was uh, Timo Bo. Timo Bo, but it's going to be very hard to beat uh, beat Cohen van Dijk. And remember that the numbers two and numbers three will have to battle it out in the second round. This is only heat number seven in round number one of the men's division here at the GKA Kite World Tour Big Air Discipline. And it is a tour now, Ruben. We just had the once off last year. Oh, this guy's maxed. Uh, Maxwell maxed out I was going to say Maxwell maxed out. How's he doing, Maxwell maxed? Yeah, Billy Bill had his uh, ride with him today, checking out the event as well. From a safe distance. Like, look at these spectators. They are right on the beach, right by the action as the wind blows offshore here. And oh. we got Edgar Ulrich with a nice doobie-loop board off. I think he can name that one. That's got such an awesome inversion. And this is what I want to draw your attention to here now. Up he goes into the first front run. Here with the board off. Look at that front flip almost. It's got, it looks wonderful. That's really one of his own moves. And I think that move there for him is going to push him uh, a bit higher up with his scores now. It's probably going to knock out his 5.47. That was a kite loop front roll. Yeah, wow. We see him getting close to Cohen van Dijk with that epic move. Very well controlled there by Edgar Ulrich. And like you say, what a style. It also matters with what kind of style and commitment you perform these tricks. And you were seeing him getting fully inverted. Very difficult and very stylish. Here in the white lycra, again, Cohen van Dijk, what has he got for us this time? Unfortunately, not, uh, not feeling the takeoff on this one and going for a straight boost. Unfortunately, a missed attempt for him, but he is uh, still in the lead. That was Cohen's last trick, though, and uh, it was also Edgar. So Edgar really went for it to try and get the win here. Cohen wasn't to know that he was in the lead here by 1.23, uh, um, or he was probably in the lead by a little bit more before Edgar done that move. However, he's probably feeling confident. Athletes have a feeling about how they're doing. He won't be devastated he didn't get that last Timo, move. Timo, is he going for the S-loop? No, he's not feeling the takeoff. It's very tricky in these gusty conditions to always get a right takeoff. He's even bombing out of this just straight jump. And uh, that just shows you how challenging these conditions can be. It's going up and down. You have to be very aware, very in tune with your body, with your mind and mother nature. And just uh, combine everything for the better. Thank you guys for tuning in. Lots of tram is more than a competition. I'm always ready to catch the spot. <laughs> From the beginning, the desire has been to bring together the best riders in the world to develop the big air kite discipline. To make an event, you need a lot of things. A team, 
organization, authorizations, budgets, and more. We are very grateful to our volunteers, our media team, and our judges. Everyone takes part in and is passionate about extreme sports. You will find them in the air or on the water. Partners are also a big part of the event. We are committed to creating meaningful links and building long-term relationships with them. Welcome back here then. Uh, let's uh, bring in who's coming up next, Ruben. What a heat. We've got a legend, Andrea Principi. Um, yeah, actually... Uh, They're gone. They just disappeared. The oh, they're back again now. The master of uh, of the new tricks of the bigger generation. He's absolutely shown us that he is uh, leading the forefront of uh, bigger kite surfing right now, uh, with some of the most incredible moves. Also, Jason van der Spy, with a bag of tricks and a set of balls that uh, yeah will surprise many. If you give these riders the right conditions, then uh, they will perform some of the most outstanding moves. And completing this heat is uh, Simon Brown from uh, Germany. But we've also uh, seen uh, yeah, competing on more and more big air events around the world. Got in last minute due to an injury of another rider. And I want a big shout out to some of the people on the stream here. Baptiste, a uh, very good rider from Greece. How you doing? want to see you out here one day. But opening up this heat will be the current world champion, Andrea Principi, who may have been feeling a double on the entrance there, but didn't quite get the height he may have liked. I'd also like to say hi to Timmy. And I want you to know that Ruben has been typing on my account there. Yep. Um, there, yeah, there we go. Probably not massively over 10 meters there, Ruben, from the current Big Air World Champion. We see Andrea there uh, with the yellow helmet, uh, and he is riding the blue rash vest. And in the white lycra, we will see Jason van der Spau, and in red will be Simon Brun. So uh, the riders will get six trick attempts, uh, where they will have to perform different uh, tricks in different trick families. So rotating left, looping to the right, different variety in the moves. And, uh, yeah, the three highest scoring tricks will combine their overall result of this heat. And, um, yeah, looking forward to see who is going to end up on top. However, we've seen Andrea Principi really ruling the world of big air. I think the wind's dropped here. I don't think the wind is delivering what it did for that last incredible heat where we really saw Cohen van Dijk take to the skies. He was pushed by... Edgar Ulrich in that heat as well, and we were seeing stuff over 20 meters. We were seeing, seeing the stuff which is really what we all want to see by the end of the day here as the wind picks up. I think it's dropped a little bit now, and they just look too comfortable to me. When it's that windy, you can't just sit there and look at each other. The sun's come out, which may have affected the temperature maybe, but just seeing that arm off for these riders, you can't do that when you're absolutely lit. You just can't ride around like that. So they're going to have to really work for this heat. I think maybe the wind will pick up, or maybe I'm totally wrong. Let's see. Jason van der Spy. Kind of proves me wrong a bit there. Uh, with around a 15 meters doobie loop board off, Ruben. But like you say, it was very tricky at this spot. Like in the last heat, the wind did come through, delivering us some epic height, some epic action with massive double loops. And then uh, these guys decided to go out on the small kites as well. But then the wind is kind of dropping a little bit. Uh, here we saw Jason from the Spire in the white lycra still performing a great move, but not really getting the height that we saw in the previous heat. But it can change in a matter of seconds. The wind is what makes this uh, makes this uh, type of riding uh, go bigger and bigger. So it can just kick back in any second. Thank you guys for uh, for tuning in. With this epic action here. And Simon Brune opening up as well with a, a nice uh, move there for him. Here we're watching the replay. You see him with the front hand also leaning in to get a better angle for that takeoff. And you see him edging out with a back roll. Double back roll kite loop and an added rotation on the way down. So three back rotations with a mega loop. Yeah, nice uh, landing for him. That's a lot to deal with to just come into the event so late. I mean, he would have got the call less than 24 hours before the start of this thing, look, you're in. Someone's been injured. I think Posito Martinez was injured. But he's in and he's got to deliver. This is his chance. So many riders now competing here. So, cool, that's right up to the beach. Bit close to the sand there from Andrea Principi. This hasn't been the perfect start by the current Big Air World Champion, Ruben Lenton. 100%. That, uh, that was not what he was hoping for. He was uh, hoping for more lift, for more power at that takeoff. He was riding up super close to the beach, almost running out of space there and almost clipping his board on the sand. 
but uh, he managed to uh, yeah get a little airtime, but not the trick that he uh, he was looking for. So that's not gonna yeah. That scored a 0 0.56 for Andrea for just taking off and leaving the water. And here we see Jason van der Spy in the white liker also not getting the power and the height he needs to perform this uh, kite loop uh, back row board off. Yeah, he had to bin it there, and that tends to be the uh, the way the riders like to go in two foot, nice and straight. Penetrate. It's all about penetration into the water, Ruben. Tell me about it. It's a uh, it's a lovely day here. It's a beautiful Sunday. The spectators are rolling onto the beach to watch this action live, and also you guys uh, watching from the comfort of your home or wherever you are in the world. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying the show. You're here with me, Ruben Lenton, and of course Lewis Cratern. And look at the action here with Simon Brune, who is... Can't go. He can't go because he's body dragging in front of him here is uh, Jason van der Spaar. What does his timer say? I'm interested. The riders will have uh, roughly 40 seconds uh, to take off, but... Oh, he's going right foot forward, going into a massive doobie loop with an added rotation on the way down. Nice Simon Brune, nice landing there. Yeah, a nice decision as well because he would have been given grace by the judges there that part of the box was... Uh, busy with uh, it was actually Jason van der Spey who was retrieving his board after that penetration into the water, Ruben, from that crash. So he retrieved his board and has ridden out the way now, Jason van der Spey. But deciding to go right foot forwards then was Simon Brun. But here he is coming back left foot forwards now. What's going on here? No, this is uh, Andrea in the blue lycra, and here he's getting the better height. But just going for, uh, oh, he's going for an S loop. Did S loop board off. That was a very tricky one. Like, he wasn't going super huge, but with his kite being super fast, he still managed to uh, loop his kite one way and then the other way, but not as critical uh, as I'd like to see it. Let's see what the judges think about that one. Yeah, and when we talk about critical, uh, my mind takes me back to the sort of S loops that Gil Vluke brought into the game last year. He was throwing the mega loop Ooh. as it went. Only, you know, not 360 degrees. Oh, oh we got a kite on the beach. beach. That's going to go into the public. That is great work by one of the marshals down there. We've just had those sudden gusts come in here in the south of France, in Bacheres, where maybe 40 knots just hits this place out of nowhere. Any kite that isn't sandbagged down on the beach just takes off. And maybe we're going to see a different second half of this heat, Ruben. It's all been pretty... Uh, casual at the start of this, you know, nothing above, I say nothing above the high sixes. That's still pretty impressive, but i got a feeling this win might make a return as we see the man from South Africa with the air rush kite. He's just turning around right foot forward. Do you want to be careful with a little Ooh. jump like that? Some of the nasty judges might feel that's a trick. Yeah, and there goes your trick of ten. But like you say, Lewis, there's uh, a lot of kites laying on the beach. All the riders have uh, pumped up all of their sizes from uh, ranging from five, six, seven, eight, nine. 9 meters laying on the beach, and you want to make sure they're locked with some sand so that they don't fly away when the gust comes through. And here, Jason van der Spuy catching a nice gust for that uh, double back row board off kite loop and landing it clean. Seems like he's a bit underpowered. He's a, a bit of a bigger, heavier guy as well, so uh, yeah, he might need some more power. But he also still wants to double loop, so I think he's riding a 7 meter, but he could have definitely done with a, a, a size bigger, I, I think. Very difficult, as we keep saying with these riders, because you've got this shot on your screen right now. Their kites are even further down uh, towards the cameraman here. So they've got to make this decision if they do want to swap. Can they get back into the zone? And it's there is no timer running here. The timer has now been removed, I can see. But let's focus really on Andrea Principi here. who's struck. He got the board off there, Ruben. Simon Brun, there with was a straight Simon. kite, a straight kite loop board off, and uh, you see that the the S loop board off from Andrea also got rewarded a 6.8, whilst his kite wasn't looping super critical. Uh, but yeah, the judges just love to see the double loops and the S loops, and um, that's what the riders will uh, will have to go for. It's the kites that are confusing me in the color of the rash vest. Simon Brun is donning the red rash vest, and actually Andrea Principi, your current big air world champion, is riding a red. All red kite. That's and they're all both wearing helmets, which is confusing. But there on your screens is the blue rash vest of Andrea Principi. This is a tight heat right now, Ruben. We have got less than two points separating all these three riders after three tricks. Look at what we're doing here when we're looking at the scoring as judges here, or as anybody that's uh, part of the game in big air kiteboarding. We know their three top scoring tricks count. So 
We know they're looking in Jason van der Spey's case. He's looking to add a third trick to his category, uh, to his point scoring. The others are going to knock out, hopefully, their smaller trick scores. So the 0 0.57 of Andrea Principi is what he wants to remove. And I think if he lands this, Ruben, yeah, he's definitely going to get more than a 0 0.57 for that. But in this shot, I also couldn't see his kite. So I don't know if it looped once or twice. It was also not super high, just above the 10 meter mark there. And um, yeah, let's see uh, if the, if it was a double, maybe a replay, probably not. I don't think it was a double. Um, the actual the scoring system won't tell. You can see all these scores coming in live. You can play the game too. Head to the gkkiteworldtour.com and take a look at the scores. And you will see them all on there, even with their names that they get given. So here it is coming in for that move is a... Kite loop board off 7.70 pushes him firmly in the can Jason van der Spey Oi. reply. I boarded that, uh, that takeoff there. So uh, just waiting for a better gust, waiting for some more wind. I mean, the wind is there. You just have to find the gust and time it well here on the flat water. The music is pumping. The wind is pumping. The sun is shining, and this is Jason on the spot not getting the right uh, trick attempt here. Bit sneaky, this. He's getting a feel on the way up. I think he needs a 7.94 to go level with Andrea Principi. He's 12.93, 20.87 ahead, Andrea, with three moves. This could be big. He's found a gust there into that doobie board off with another rotation. Very good landing there, Ruben. I don't think it's going to put him in to first, but it's definitely going to be putting him into second place here. Yeah, but I had the feeling he was a little bit underpowered in that move. He was just trying to look for uh, for that jump there. Uh, already two times of boarding his takeoff and just not feeling it, but yeah, he was able to perform his doobie loop board off and then added rotation. Um, so still bettering his score uh, with a 6.57 for uh, Jason van der Spy from South Africa in the white Lycra. So up next, we have uh, Andrea Principi. No, sorry, Simon Brun going for his trick attempt in the red Lycra. And he's going for the contra loop board off. No rotations added, but another clean landing. He knows uh, he needs to uh, put scores on the board. It's very important. So here you see, leaning in with that front hand, taking off, taking the board off with his back hand and then uh, looping the kite in a contra loop. I wonder if he wanted a double there, Ruben, because he's already got a 5.33 in that trick family, and he's just gone and done it again, and it scores exactly the same on my system here that's already come up, and it's uh, not going to give him another trick. I think he would have been better off replacing that 4.77, which is in the kite loop front roll category. Someone is asking uh, what kite Andrea is on. Well, as the sport is progressing fast, uh, the brands are uh, allowing the riders to help with the development of these products so that they feel exactly the way that they need to feel and performing, uh, yeah, to keep up with the tricks these riders are performing. So Andrea is currently riding a prototype. I believe he's on a six meter. But uh, yeah, the kites get faster, more lift, and uh, yeah, they get lighter, more direct. And that's how the progression of, uh, of this sport and the equipment uh, is happening. I'll give you a little bit of an insight then. It's obviously a secret duo tone, but it's a three strut duo tone. So that kind of gives you an idea of what model it could be. Here he goes then, right foot forwards. What's he got for us, Ruben? Whoa, massive double loop. Holy moly, the answer, what a landing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh <laughs> that was close. Ruben, I, thought he, was gonna, that one. I thought he was going to bomb out of that, Ruben. Can we get a replay on this one? No replay. Amazing. We don't have Aww. a replay. You just have to replay it in your mind. You maybe can, when you, you can go skip to bed. back on the screen. That's true. Yeah, you could do that. Really mess your YouTube stream up. Like but yeah, I was looking out out of the window and it looked absolutely incredible. He was uh, catching some light height and just going for the double loop with the board off. Here, Jason on the spot in the white lycra. Also landing it clean, so getting some. Uh, some more scores on the board there. I think he's going to edge out uh, Simon Brun there with this move. So he's going for a back roll, then taking the board off, looping the kite, going for another back roll. And, uh, yep, covering some nice distance as well for Jason van der Spy. Yeah, nice kite angle as well there for him. Kite loop, back roll, board off coming in. He's not getting massive scores, though, for that. And I think uh, we're down to pretty much Simon Brun is going to complete our 
first uh, five tricks here. They only get six tricks, so we can start to get an idea of what's needed on these last tricks. Uh, biggies are needed, biggies. Absolute belters of tricks we want to see. And oops, unfortunately, not this little uh, yeah, missed trick attempt for uh, for Simon Brune. He wasn't getting the, the proper takeoff. Still went for a little kite loop, but it's not going to score well. I think uh, 1.2 or something. 1.27. Ruben, you're Maybe so we'll good at judging those sorts of tricks. Maybe 1.56. 1.27, I oh, think. Oh, well, I already came in. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Should have stuck with your... Stuck with the initial uh, how thoughts. How do you yeah. learn to judge a, those trick scores like that so much? Was that the sort of trick scores that you got yourself? Experience, mate. <laughs> First-hand experience. I've been doing some research on the... Uh, yes, that precious. <laughs> yes, that's a 1.5. Uh, Get yes. in there. Trying to score as low as possible <laughs> while still fully going for it. <laughs> what was your best ever lowest score? I think a 0 0.83 whilst I was giving it my all. What the heck, no. Andrea Principe going massive again with his <laughs> Oh, that come holy from? moly. Yes, we get the replay on this one. See, he takes off, he does the preload pop, fully edges, jumps very vertical, takes the board off, spins forward, and does two kite loops. So a double kite loop, uh, boogie loop, yeah, board off. Yeah, Sick. so uh, let's work that out. Has he shut the door firmly on the other two riders? 8.43. Trying to sneak into first place. I don't know. We're going to have to work this out. Simon Brun hasn't got the highest scores. Jason van der Spy has been, unfortunately, yeah, he hasn't got three different trick families. So Jason van der Spy then, with his last move to take first place, needs a ridiculously high score. He needs something like a 9.96 here. If he has a chance, this is going to have to be off the scale. It's going to need to be a double. And they didn't quite get the height that he would like. He's trying to confirm. A doobie contra loop. Yeah, so I think that was a misunderstanding of his trick families there because he had a kite loop board off. Then he went for another kite, a kite loop back roll board off, a kite loop front roll board off. And then he went for another kite loop back roll board off in his uh, fifth trick attempt. So he's... Um, I think he's copied a trick. He's going to be devastated when he comes back. And I was in the contra loop family at least this last move, so he should have a third trick score come on there. But really, it's Simon Brune versus Jason van der Spy for second place here. I think he'll get away with that without a takeoff for Simon Brune. So this was uh, the final heat of the first round of the men's division at the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour stop here in Barcares in France. You're here with me, Ruben Lenton and Louis Crathern, and we are reporting live. As we go through this epic action, we have seen some incredible heat scores already. And I think my favorite one was the double kite loop board off from, um, from uh, Cohen van Dijk getting very critical and leveled whilst having his board off and uh, just covering so much distance. We'll be back shortly then as we continue on with the men. Let's go to a commercial break.
Welcome back then to the Laws of Tram here. It's the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup down in the south of France. I'm Lewis Crathen and I'm joined by Ruben Linton. Ruben, we've just seen the first round of the men. It's been pretty epic action actually already. What's the time here down in Bacares? 10.41. We've seen big crashes, jumps over 20 metres and we now continue into round two. First heat, who's coming up here, Ruben? It's uh, Jamie Overbeck from the Netherlands and we've got Nicolas Gambier from France who both got second and third in the first round. So now they uh, get another chance to battle it out and uh, hopefully make it through to the third round as well. So only Jamie or Nicolas is going to go through. Let's see who's going to yeah, take it to the skies and perform the best moves. Thanks a lot for joining us here on the live stream, wherever you are. Do let us know on the comments on the YouTube. We're actually interacting with you today. You know, I, I tried to keep focused on the first day and do my job, but now we're here answering some of your questions. Some of you are asking what kite sizes we see in the sky. Fives all the way to eights. It's actually quite hard to tell with the small kites these days. But out on the water now is Jamie Overbeek. And I believe that he'll be leading us into the start of this heat. Up against uh, Nicholas Gambier. One of these riders will be going home, Ruben. Yeah, so we got uh, Jamie Overbeek in the blue Lycra and uh, on the red kite. And then we have um, Nicholas Gambier also on a red kite. And uh, he's in the white Lycra. So I think uh, Jamie's going to kick things off. He's riding his uh, 7 meters. And the wind is very challenging here. It's very hard for the riders to know which kite to take out. And Jamie Overbeck just going into this heat with a nice mega loop. Laid back row board off and an added rotation on the way down. So two rotations, a board off and a kite loop. That seems to be the standard these days. Combining three different tricks in one here at the GKA Kite World Tour in Barker S. In for his first trick then comes Nicolas Agambier with that white rash vest. That's uh, it's pretty simple with two riders for us to work out who's got what kite. He's on a Nash. It's Nash versus uh, Ozone. Ozone Beak. Doesn't yeah. really work, does it, that? Jamie Ozone Beak. Yeah, it works. Does it work? Yeah. You like that? Okay. Well, watch, it, watch him make it work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's doing wonderful things for Ozone brand that you're passionate about Ruben but can he deal with this uh, first challenge of the day which is going to be in the form of Nicolas Gambier answering back almost identically to uh, Jamie Over I think they're going to be similarly scored 6.07 for his kite loop back roll board off for Jamie Overbeek what's Nicolas Gambier going to score higher or lower Ruben come on higher or lower I think a little bit lower okay no I'm going to go higher all right fine let's be, see what the judges way, think oh someone didn't like it ah lost Oh no, have, have I lost? Oh, big time. Yeah, it was big it? Big time. I liked it. I didn't mind. Maybe it was on the other tack. I thought it was 11.1 uh, meters, 80 kilometers through the air that he went. That's what I liked about Look, it. So full massive. speed. Jamie has a nice technique of getting that air time. He's also the current world record holder at oh, 35.4 meters. And uh, yeah, here you can see that he's always very confident to land clean. Here's a nice replay of this massive kite loop back row board off. It was the same move as he first did, but I think he just wants to better that score. He's unhappy about it. He just, his own personal pride, he was unhappy about it. Big thanks for the nice comments. Um, it's always nice to read that we're doing a good job. You know, we have to deal with tough times. Tough, we're, tough people. Tough people that don't like what we're doing or saying, but we're really enjoying being here in the south of France. It's very accommodating. This event really knows how to do things. And just... Just look at the work these camera guys are doing. How about a nice comment for the camera guys? Look at this cut the director's got here. Nice and tight. Zooms out. We get that nice takeoff. Zooms out. They've, they've nailed it. Oh, do you think he wanted the double there, Ruben? No, Maybe. not the double, but he wanted more. But he didn't have the power, not the height. So, uh, yeah, pretty basic trick there for Nicolas. And there you can see Jamie already did two trick attempts. Remember, riders get six trick attempts, and the three highest uh, scores will make up their overall heat score. But Jamie actually did the same trick twice. So you have to do it in three different trick families. Um, and Jamie just was bettering his 6.07 score with a 6.4 score. So let's see what Jamie Overbeck is going to do next. But it's uh, going to have to be a different trick than a kite loop back roll. He's going to need to add in some front roll or do the contra loop. And here he goes. Yeah, like I said, it's a doobie loop, so two front rolls with a board off, and I believe an added rotation. 
Yeah, an extra half, I believe, if I want to be... Look at him leaning back, getting his hair all <laughs> blown into the wind. There you see two front rolls on the board off and an added rotation, indeed. I remember those days, Ruben. What, when you had hair? Yeah, just yeah. blown around. <laughs> and then I remember you with scissors cutting off... Yeah, that's because you didn't jump high enough. That actually, you did. Lost that actually did. That was outrageous, that <laughs> game. We had a game, some <laughs> silly TV program you and Aaron were doing, where we had, uh, way before the luxuries of the Surfer app and um, other various forms of data recording for our heights, we had these shadow boxes on our boards. I beat Azo on that day, and for the TV show, I had to pretend I lost. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah, was harsh deals that was, uh, I've never forgotten about we that. Oh, this, oh, he didn't loop it there, Ruben. Um, can he get his foot back in? Oh, oh no, he had to failed. get rid. Sometimes it is really shallow there, and uh, the riders will have to be very careful, even landing without the board, to see how they're going to penetrate the water and not hit the bottom. But yeah, uh, coming back to that conversation, Lewis, uh, we did cut off your dreads that time, and it was maybe not fair, but it was it made great TV, Lewis. Well, that's all that counts, isn't it? Exactly. These days, it's all about the views, the likes. Hit like, subscribe, and share. Hey, who cares if someone's depressed for a year? As long as the TV <laughs> looks good. Oh. All right, don't worry. I'll get over it. <laughs> One day. <laughs> here we go then. Massive big boost here with the Contra Loop. Do be bored off maybe into three rotations there from Jamie Overbeek, who's starting to work through the gears here, Ruben. This is really critical for me that he gets through this heat now comfortably because your nerves could start getting to you. There's so much expectation on your shoulders. You've just got on the podium at King of the Air, one of the biggest events in kiteboarding, your first attempt. You just broke the world record. Everyone knows about that. Everyone's on your case here. And it only needs one other rider to decide he's going to have the best day ever and, uh, and knock you out. Day, or or yeah. maybe even if he doesn't even have the best day of himself, Jamie, over, but he's got to stay focused and uh, try and call on his experience, which isn't, loads in big air competition but he started well but he's uh, one of the riders that spends the most time on the water and definitely uh, yeah loving lots of disciplines and uh, loves uh, spending some time in the air and also here Nicolas Gambier in the white lycra landing a trick getting another score on the board it wasn't super high it wasn't super extreme and Jamie's just uh, super confident with his riding he knows what he can do he knows what he needs in order to uh, to win this heat and he's well in the lead right now he already uh, did three tricks in the, the three different categories. So he did his back rolls, he did his front rolls, he did his uh, contra loop, a normal loop. So now I think he might need a, a trick going to the right foot forward as well. Or just uh, focus on bettering his scores because he can score way better than uh, six and halves. So he's got the, got the tricks in there to, uh, to really go big. But it is challenging conditions, uh, Lewis, here. Uh, the riders really have to yeah, find the gust find a good takeoff spot, and really hope for the best. And they've got to adapt. You know, they have to forever be adapting here. And uh, one form of adaption I can tell you going on right now, Gambier is riding down to do a pit stop. How quick is he going to make this happen? But you will not see that in your shot. Jamie Overby, I think there's a double coming here, Ruben. It's Ooh. one, no, it's a huge mega loop uh, with a board off. That's got to be over 100 meters in distance. Look at that, over 116 meters. Oh, then we can see. Yeah, I want to see. 116 meters for him. Um, that was pretty big. 71 kilometers through the air. That was a really big move. Marcus hacked off with the with the world record. Please check the surfer leaderboard. Uh, we're talking about the Wu World Record there. Uh, you've, you've got the Surfer app, of course, uh, bringing us the live data during this event. Amazing to get some stats. Is uh, Jamie going for a kite change? Or what is he doing? What is going on? What is... Yeah, he is going for a kite change indeed. He's switching between his uh, edge and now he's taking on the Enduro. A smaller kite, which is better for the double loops. It looks uh, tiny, Ruben. This looks like one of the fives of the fuels that I used to... What is this kite? Oh, this is a it's very, very tiny kite. kite. Yeah. So after this move, I'm going to try and get the camera on this pit stop here. Yeah, he just relaunched. 
So we got uh, Nicolas Gambier just looking for a, for a proper takeoff spot, finding the gust, building up his speed, really pumping his board to build up that tension, feel the pressure. And there he does the preload pop and he goes into the air. Oh, he goes for the double. Yeah, he just landed the double. Did he just, did, or did he pull out of that? I just came into that one late. I want to see that one. He, but it wasn't yeah. the super critical high scoring double in my opinion because he wasn't getting the height. He was just hoping to make it make it around and land clean. Luckily, he didn't uh, didn't hurt himself on that one because the double loop does at the the extremity the cri critical time of the move. Overbeak in control then of this precarious position in round two, which no one really wants to be in, but unfortunately 66. 0.6% of the riders in that first heat will find themselves in round two. Only one of the three advancing into round three. Overbeak didn't want to be here, but he's reacted really well. And he's doing well here. He's got this one in control. Nothing over five from Nicolas Gambier yet, but there is still time. There is one more move from him. This will be Jamie Overbeak's final move here, Ruben. And he's switched to his small kite here. We're most certainly going to see an attempt at a double. His body language looks good to me here, Ruben. He pulls on the bar, back roll, mega loop. Looked like a rewind. We've had an S loop rewind there. I think I'd love to see a replay of this. Are we going to be able to see a replay here? No replay, I'm being told. No replay, unfortunately. But I think um, that might even come up as innovation uh, here. But uh, switching kites then for a double. We're not seeing so much of that. Yeah, that's what these riders are doing. Uh, different gear choice. Jamie is riding the, the seven meter edge to just get the massive height that he was uh, showing us before. And now he wants to get a bit more technical with the double loops uh, for which he chose a, a different uh, type of the kite. Enduro? It is the Enduro indeed, which is a, a bit of more of an open C-shape uh, profile, uh, making it easier uh, to, to double loop. It just uh, spins a bit quicker, turns a bit nicer. and. Uh, oh, nice. I like what? this. Nice effort to finish. Oh, he's back brake. Oh, it. no. Broke back mountain on the end. Oh, he got it about that one. Yeah, that was a nice effort. This would have been his highest scorer, Ruben. Sorry to interrupt you there, but what a way to, to finish in the competition. I think he knew his days were numbers here. His wow. days were enduroed. And yeah. uh, he just couldn't take that back breaker at the end, unfortunately. So that is going to go in the way. Are we on seven trick attempts? We are on seven trick attempts now. Yeah, so they're up one more trick attempt as they're now head-to-head. -head. There's no third rider here, which changes things. So, yeah, we did get an innovation score. 6.9 that came up for Jamie Overbeek. Can he get the height to really push up? No, he's mugged that one off. So that's going to be Jamie Overbeek's last move. And to my knowledge here, I don't think he can be overtaken. No, I'm right. He can't be overtaken because it's uh, 20 to 12. And he would, uh, he would need over a 10 here, unfortunately, for Nicolas Gambier. This one's for the crowd. Is he going to try and go for a double loop here, Ruben, just for his own peace of mind? I think he uh, wants to show the crowd what, he, what he's got. And uh, at the trick before, you could see him confidently going for the double. So he might go for it again. But I don't think he has the wind or the power for it now. Oh, yes, he does yeah. go for it. Come on. Yeah, boss. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Nice punch up to the sky. And that's got to be a great feeling. Nice to have this replay on there from the Frenchman, Nicolas Gambier. Talk me through this, Ruben. Amazing. Great takeoff, diving straight into that fr uh, front spin and just keep looping that kite. So a double kite loop with a front roll. Um, absolutely nice. Nice work by uh, Nicolas Gambier. Unfortunately, not enough to uh, overtake Jamie Overbeck. I can see his scores coming on the back end. There it is in front of your screen, a 6.10. His highest scoring move. He'll be really stoked to leave the comp in that fashion, showing everybody that he also is on the double loop train, which is steam training on its on its way to the future. 100%. So you're here in the second round of the men's division at the GKA Kite World Tour in Barcares in France. And in the next heat, so heat number two of round two, we will see Valentin Hundrup uh, going for uh, yeah his uh, second chance to uh, make it further in this competition. And he's taken on Joris Herwijn from uh, the Netherlands. So it's uh, a Spaniard versus the Netherlands in these challenging conditions here. Super gusty. And yeah, we're seeing some uh, epic big air tricks displayed already. The forecast is looking nice and steady as the wind will pick up throughout the day. 
And uh, as the action unfolds, we will definitely see a lot of progression in height, in technicality, and just the extremity of this big air action. We've already seen some epic double loops. And uh, now there's just some uh, confusion with the names uh, going on. There's the wrong graphic on the screen. But uh, we will come up with uh, the stats of heat number two of round two. And I'm just uh, looking out the window here. And uh, Nicolas uh, definitely stoked on his uh, riding and uh, the adrenaline pumping. So here you see Valentin Hoenderop from Spain against Joris Herwijn from the Netherlands. Also two young guns ready to, uh, to showcase and give it their all. Uh, I still don't see their, uh, their kite. Oh yeah, I see Joris riding out, looking on a very sizey kite. It must at least be an eight. And uh, the wind is definitely picking up. So um, yeah, let's see uh, who's gonna take the lead in this heat. So in the first round, uh, the numbers two and three actually have to battle it out in this round, in heat number two, or in round number two. Uh, so they get a, a second chance. So it's not straight out and go home. No, you get a, a second chance, which is very nice because uh, these conditions are very challenging and uh, it could lead to some upsets. So um, this format works well. So in round two, we have, uh, we have eight heats with a lot of uh, good riders uh, still coming up, trying to make it through. And uh, the heat will be, uh, will be running with uh, Valentin wearing the blue Lycra and Joris Heroine in the white Lycra. So we got uh, Liam here stepping up in the competition or in the commentary booth, not in the competition box. No, <laughs> good to join you, Ruben. Thanks for thanks for having me. Lewis just popped out for just a quick breather, but here we are, round two, heat number two. And uh, what have you made of it so far? Absolutely mind blowing action. The, the guys are going for the doubles, pushing it, and uh, I think we're going to see some increase in height as the wind really seems to be kicking in right now and not the not wearing off anytime soon. Wow, what a massive kickoff! for uh, Valentin Hunderop in this uh, in this heat. Yeah, I've been super impressed with his riding, actually. I was just down on the shore just for the last uh, sort of 15 minutes, and he was actually one of the riders I got up close and personal with, and uh, just uh, shows great control. He's always sort of, you know, doing little grabs on his way down as well. Nice style, and uh, if he keeps it all together, he could be uh, a force to be reckoned with. Unfortunately, they're skipping out on the landing, uh, which uh, will be calculated as a... Yeah, as a crash, unfortunately. Um, let's see what yours heroin is going to answer with. Also got some massive tricks in his bag, so I think he's riding his, uh, his 8 meter. He seems very powered, leaning into it. Look at the spray coming off his board. Leaning into it with that front hand, going for a massive mega loop, laid back roll, and an added spin, covering lots of distance, but too much speed on that landing. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, just coming in, coming in hot there, Ruben, and uh, you can see going for that nice big mega loop with the late back. But yeah, you can see the wind definitely starting to to increase now, and riders starting to gain a little bit more distance downwind, and uh, it's only going to get stronger as this afternoon comes on, because right now local time is just hitting bang on the money, 11 a.m. So it's only going to get windier. And that's it, and you saw that the the gust was just throwing him off balance during that rotation. And uh, let's see what uh, Valentin has got for us right now. A massive mega loop laid back, board off, and an added rotation. Very well controlled and landed. It's going to be a good score for Valentin. Yeah, he's a rider that comes out of Tarifa, so he's used to that sort of big air conditions and recently getting in some last minute training. And you can see they're just keeping it all together. Big mega loop, as you mentioned, with that rotation just to wrap things off nicely. And in Tarifa is often uh, riding Balnario, which is also a flat water spot where the wind is blowing offshore. Um, yeah, creating a very nice buttery, flat, smooth takeoff, um, which we yeah we only need wind and water in order to take off. We don't necessarily need a wave or a kicker, which can be nice, which yeah. can add to the action. But here the spectators are right on the money, right at the action, and see the riders jump and perform right in front of them. And uh, here you can see the mountains in the back. And um, yours, heroin, ready to take uh, take on some more action. You couldn't be any closer to the action, could you, Ruben? I mean, you're, you know, you're right you're where you're back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the crowd's now starting to filter through as, as we come towards the afternoon. And yesterday we saw 
I'd say around that four or five o'clock, it really did kick in. And we've got a little bit more of a promising, sort of more reliable forecast uh, on the cards. So that Tramontana wind now just starting to kick in. Some heavy, heavy gusts. And uh, these riders, you know, we can see on the beach, the sixes, the sevens and the eights. They're sort of the, the money kites that are rigged and ready to go. Yeah, we uh, see uh, Joris Herowine still a bit downwind. He is making his way upwind, ready for his uh, second trick attempt. Or third trick attempt, yep. So the riders get seven trick attempts in this heat, and three of their best scoring tricks will make up the overall heat score. And the winner will obviously uh, continue to the next round. In yesterday's action uh, in the women's division, we also saw some great wind. And uh, I'm actually curious, how far did we make it yesterday with the action of the of the ladies? Did we finish the semis yesterday? No, so we, when we, we join the ladies at some point today, we'll be kicking things off from uh, from that previous heat with uh, Natalie Lambrecht and uh, Angeli, who were, who were going big. I think they managed to get about three trick attempts done in their first semi-final. But that's where we'll be picking things up from where we left off with the women. So lots of action in store for us today. And uh, Barcares is delivering some epic conditions. And the riders are hungry to take the win. And uh, this is uh, in heat two. You can also follow the live scoring if you just log into the GKA KiteWorldTour.com and then uh, scroll down to uh, live heat scoring. There you can check uh, what all these trick attempts will score. The scores are uh, in different trick families, so the riders can do repetitive moves. They can try and better their score of a certain move. But it's always better to just have three different tricks on the on the scoring board before uh, going into that strategy. Because in these challenging conditions, you can also skip out on the landing because it can be quite choppy and gusty. So, yeah, depending what happens uh, mid-trick, it can be very challenging to uh, to get the scores on the board. So that's the first thing you want to focus on for sure. Yeah, for sure. And in round two, we've got eight heats. So we're on heat number two for round two. So we eight heats for round number two, and then we're gonna push forward onto round number three but let's remember as well that the heats now Ruben you know if you lose you're getting that one-way ticket home because you know if you lose now you're out of the comp yeah then, then you'll be gutted all for nothing or at least lessons learned yeah. and on to the next one because the next one is over for us in uh, in Tarifa which is interesting in a few weeks time yep Tarifa also a great bigger uh, bigger spot one of the windiest places in Europe just like here in the south of France, the wind is always uh, pumping through, which uh, which we love as big air kite surfers. Yeah, we sure do. I bet you wish you were out there, no? 100%. I uh, hope uh, there will be time left, and otherwise uh, tomorrow I got my kit with me, ready for a mega session on my short lunch, I think. So uh, <laughs> looking forward to that. Go out there and uh, show them how it's done. But right now well, on your screen, Val <laughs> Valentin going up. Not quite getting the height that he's uh, been getting on the last maneuvers, though, Ruben. No, definitely not. But uh, it was very technical. It was uh, two forward rotations with a contra loop, so also looping the kite with his front hand. But like you said, he was missing the height, so I don't think the judges are going to love this too much. And still waiting for scores to drop for Joris here. So you can see there, 12.36 Valentin made up of a 6.33 and a 6.03. But two crashes for Joris. So... He's going to be uh, looking now just to get a, a trick dialed down, just get, gain a little bit of confidence and uh, just get something on the board as his heat just carries on. So yeah, obviously the smaller sizes are a bit easier for the riders to double loop. Um, the down, down thing is uh, with smaller sizes is that it's very hard to jump big on a small kite and especially after you did the jump. It's easy to get into the air but controlling the landing and actually having enough lift to land softly is very difficult with small kites. Um, so yeah, the guys will uh, have to choose the right gear to perform their, uh, their different tricks and uh, hopefully come home with some big scores. Yeah, we're going to see some big scores. That's one thing for sure. That's a promise. We've seen a big score come through for uh, Cohen van Dijk in one of those previous heats. Mistake, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we were in the, sort of the 9.2 if I remember. Rightly, I think he got for his uh, double kite loop board off. One of the biggest moves that we've seen today. I can see him out of the corner of my eye now, enjoying the music, enjoying the vibes down here. But right now on your screen, Joris, let's see what he's got for us. Oh, he's going for an oh, oh. oh, no, that was such a hard landing. Yeah, he's going to Oh, need no, it. he's putting up his hand. Let's hope he's all right, but that was a massive wipeout. You see him here looping one way, 
Then deciding to loop the other oh. way. One of the biggest crashes I think we've seen so far. So much impact. Yep, definitely yeah. uh, in pain. Hopefully he's going to be all right. Yeah, jet ski's giving it full beans. So, um, yeah, that's part of big air kiteboarding. It comes with crashes, that's for sure. So uh, you always want to make sure that you, uh, you land softly, that your kite catches you. And otherwise, you hope you can ditch the board because it can come with a lot of mm. impact. These riders do train hard. They're fit. They're uh, very aware. And, uh, yeah, let's hope uh, he's going to be, uh, be okay there. Ankles and knees can uh, definitely take a toll on this. It looks like he's, he's managing to kick himself up onto that, though. But he's... Definitely in some discomfort there, as you can see, that right leg. But, you know, let's keep all of our fingers crossed that he's going to be okay. But as you said, Ruben, you know, if, you know, big air kite boarding, you've got to go for it, especially when you look at the, the 24 men that we've got in this in this uh, competition. It can be anyone's competition. That was an uh, S uh, slap. It was uh, an attempted S loop, but, yeah, he didn't have to hide. The kite was not reacting uh, Fast enough, so uh, unfortunately ending for a massive crash for uh, for Joris Heroin. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's going to be getting that board and going out anytime soon. No, so this uh, makes it uh, open waters for uh, Valentin Hunderop, who uh, can actually uh, yeah just uh, enjoy uh, a bit of time on the water to his own, or he can just save his energy and come back to the beach and uh, win it like that. Is he going to give the spectators a, a bit of a show, or is he just going to come in? So how long have you been kiting, Liam? Uh, it's been for coming up to probably about four or five years now. I've uh, learned in the sunny Caribbean. I was a bit fortunate over there, which was lovely. And uh, for sure now coming out living actually quite local to, to where Lewis is over in, in Worthing. I'm just uh, over on the uh, the Hampshire way. So southwesterlies for us and uh, not quite as strong as this. But, you know, I do enjoy it when it's around that 30, 30 about five knot range. And similar conditions, nice and chilly over in the UK as well. 100%. And how did you get into kite surfing? Like, uh, did you have a background in extreme sports, or? I actually grew up uh, on playing land sports on the, on the tennis side of things, and then uh, went and worked abroad. And there was a little water sports centre, and I said, you know what, I'm going to just dabble on that and see see where it takes me. And now I play no tennis, and all I do is kite. So now it's uh, the roles are reversed, and uh, obviously very fortunate and uh, pleased to be joined with the GKA, and uh, that's what I do full time. I'm with the tour, so plenty of travelling. I've been over in Colombia for the freestyle this year and we've just come back from Cape Verde for the kite surf and now here we are in France kicking things off with the big air so beautiful yeah, this is where we are and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way that sounds great Liam it's good to hear and what has kite surfing added to your life what has it brought you personally well I mean the people that I've met from it have been amazing you know and uh, nothing beats a good you know getting out on the water clearing the head just you the wind you, you, you know the sport that you love being able to just go out there and enjoy it, and regardless if it's you know the lighter wind days, and, and say something you like you're 12, or if you've got conditions like this, and you can really you know commit and uh, feel like you've had a, a, a good hard day at the office. 100%. Yeah, I always uh, feel great to rinse off the day or start the day with a kiting session. It's sure. like meditation, and like you say, spending time with yourself and uh, just uh, creating space for everything uh, that, that that's going on in the world. And uh, yeah, feeling good. Yeah, being able to disconnect. But I don't think anything beats a good session when you've got three or your four mates out there. You you know, you've got the spot. You, you're all out there shredding, having a good time, finishing it off with a little beer at the end. You know, you cannot beat that in my eyes. On the money, right there and then. That's uh, that's always a great feeling. And uh, I also love it how the kite surfing community is a really tight community and uh, everybody's looking after each other. It is our responsibility as well as water sports to look after one another and uh, yeah, to play it safe and uh, and fun out there. And everybody is pushing the level, and especially here with the best big air kite surfers in the world, competing here at the GKA Kite World Tour. Um, absolutely mind-boggling action. And we're just going to get ready for heat number three, also with uh, Edgar Ulrich in the blue lycra and Clement Hood uh, in the white lycra. Two Frenchies going to hopefully uh, battle it out. Here they are. Edgar Ulrich, also a young gun. We already saw him with some epic style. So, uh, yeah, look and see, uh, looking forward to see what he's going to nail against Clement Hood. Yeah, two big heavy hitters here. we got Edgar riding for Duoton. And Clement has actually made the old switcheroo recently and uh, has joined the F1 team. So, I uh, wonder if he's still trying to you know, just get iron out the cobwebs, get used to that gear a little bit. But, you know, they'll be our riders next on your screens. And uh, we're just going to keep firing through because we've got, as you said, Ruben, the best riders in the world for Big Air have joining us here in France and uh, what a time to be alive.
But a uh, little switcheroo up in the booth now. Lewis, it looks like you're back in the mix now for the, for the next heat. Yeah, I'm back. And uh, it was nice to actually just have a little walk on the beach. It's important to get down there sometimes. You really need to remind yourself how windy it is, how the kites all look, flapping around, sand picking up. You know, you, you can be very easily... Um, Fallen into the falling into the trap of comfort up here in a live stream booth where when we can hear the wind pick up, but you just from time to time must get down there. And more importantly for me, I like to try and kite um, at these events either before uh, before they're running, during if there's ever a chance. You know, I want to be feeling it. It's the best way to talk about it rather than be guessing. Um, but here we are then in round two, heat two. I know there was a question on the live stream for Ruben um, about kite loops uh, doubles today with the times compared to when we had the, the the likes of the sea kites and the fuels i think i'm going to answer it he's just gone off on his break now and we were actually discussing it a bit earlier that the, the amount of force through those old sea kites especially as we sheeted the bar in during the majority of the loop you hit such a power spike in the mega loop that you actually ended up flying towards it at such a speed that you very much were disconnected in fact that was the goal to to in my opinion, one of the real things I loved about a mega loop was that sensation of free falling when I really hit a power spike with the kite level of me. So we weren't really gearing up for that tension feeling where we needed to feel constant tension after a loop. And that's been the biggest difference for me as kites went more bridled and high aspect um, is that after a loop, the kite's still climbing. In fact, it can give you a higher apex in the jump after a loop now if the kite hits 12. And that's where the kites and equipment has helped us being able to open the door on these double loops is that the kites can loop that little bit quicker. They don't hit the power zone so so level. I mean, occasionally they can, but more importantly, the technique has changed where you see more and more people looping kites with the bar sheeted out to halfway out, which is really um, done so so that that leading edge is biting into the wind and, and and moving fast to the edges of the window. So that's my take on it. Maybe we get Rubens on it soon, but we get back to the action now. Valentin Handorop Thomas has started... Uh, well, no, that was the... <laughs> That's not the action now. That no, was, no, that no, was that's last because you've, you've been out on having a little bit of a breather, you see. But uh, we had a big, big crash. And uh, we do hope that Joris is okay. But up next, we've got Edgar against Clement. So that is your heat that's going up next. And uh, should be starting any minute now. I can see Clement on the side. Just out of the booth here. He's, he's got that kite in the air. Looks like to be maybe around the six range. So wind is definitely starting to pick up. They refer to uh, it as smoke on the water when it's uh, nice and uh, hot and heavy out here. When we know it's windy, you can see, you know, it's a, it's a super flat spot. But when the wind is pumping and the white caps form, the, the famous quote of smoke on the water is uh, being thrown around the beach down here. And that is definitely the way that we are going. We are going to be cooking with gas very, very shortly because these two riders, these two Frenchies, are up next. Round two, heat number three here. Lord of Trams, GK, Big Air, Kite World Cup. And you can see there the time, the ticker coming down from 20 seconds. So don't go anywhere because in, well, 16 seconds now, this heat's going to get fully underway. I think uh, my money would be on Edgar here. But Clement, is on, he needs the wind, really, this guy. And I felt like so many of his heats, he hasn't really been afforded the luxury of the strong winds that I know he's really preferring. So let's see if he gets that. And there you can see there. Nice. So super gusty spot here we have. But when it comes through, oh my word, that is absolutely massive, Lewis. Yeah, that was a biggie. That was up there. Oh, has he landed that? I oh, he, oh. oh, he can't take it. It looked like his board, his uh, foot come out, the, the boards wobbled out the board. 20 metres plus jump. <laughs> Just as we were starting to sit down in our new chairs here, Liam, we stood up straight away. Um, and again, unfortunately for Edgar, he's almost going too big. So can Clement reply to this now? He's gone miles there, 90 metres. It's recorded on our, um, our data there from the Surfer app. But Clement really has a chance to start this thing off well and go straight into the lead. It's their top three scores counting from seven tricks, remember. Here he goes. Lovely shot, this. 
Yeah, there's the win we're talking about. Massive <laughs> doobie loop. That's as nice as you can do that move to him. If he sticks this, oh, he's bounced out as well. Have we got a replay on this one? Maybe, yes, we have. <laughs> Director, so look at this. This is looking absolutely textbook in this move. It's about 17, 18 meters in the sky. As we watch the replay, it comes around from that last, it just didn't want to know. Sometimes your board hits a trough in that chop and you just get chucked off of it straight away. So unfortunately for both of these two, they started with zeros, but again, it's the landing that's causing the problems. They know these tricks inside out in the air, yeah. Liam. Yeah, Lewis, little, little quote that we throw around on the stream, you know, you've got to break a few eggs to make the omelet. All yeah, right. yeah, you do. And, uh, I don't know if they'd agree with you, though. If, if, we, if we're replacing that for breaking boards... <laughs> no, not at all. Make the omelet, I reckon they'll be hopefully not wanting to... Maybe, yeah, maybe the, the omelet being the final package, Exactly, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that, I that's what they're that. looking for, you know. Yeah, of course. Cool. Full windy commitment now. To, uh, to get cooking. But it's, it's windy now, Liam. We yeah, can hear it in here. We're starting to have a little shakeroo up in the live booth. And here on your screen, Edgar going for his second trick attempt, but not quite... Liking what he felt there, maybe just waiting for that slightly more bigger gust to come through. And I'm pretty sure he's riding a seven. He was riding a seven in his last heat, so I'm pretty sure he's going to be back on that seven. But actually going so big out of your camera screen there. So not quite sure what that was as if we weren't able to have a look. But Lewis, you were having a look at yeah, the Yeah, right foot forwards, that looked like a doobie loop to the right hand side there. So that was massive as well. So they really are start 18.7 meters. Oh, no, I can see the lot there. Looked a bit further than 50 metres. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. And through the air, he was going quite fast as well. So they're really starting to push. You just notice with that data, you can almost tell how windy it is when you see them jumping up and around near the 20 metres mark. You can just tell that they've started to really connect with the wind. The wind. Look at the water. You just tell by the water. Lots more white caps as well. So... Yeah, we're about to see something special here. It really has just gone white caps everywhere now yeah. in the water, Liam. This is a solid 40 knots now. Coming in, Clement for his uh, second move after a zero. Will he just go and try and repair the damage on that doobie? He will. Not as extreme as the last one for me. Can he stick it? He's really got to put this down. And he bounces out again. Maybe, I wonder yeah. sometimes, he's got the right board, maybe bigger nose on there, longer bob it. There's plenty of park riders saying he should have a 150 or something out there, but he can't hold the power so well with the big boards. He looks so odd on to land that, and he just can't stick yeah. it. It's a tricky landing at speed here in uh, Bacares. You see the frustration on his face there, sort of just lets that head go back and just thinks, ah. So, but, you know, they've got seven trick attempts, as we mentioned. So another chance for, for Clement, but on the money at the moment is... That is huge. Huge mega loop there. Edgar... Really starting to come into his own in these conditions now. As you mentioned, Lewis, it's a solid and consistent 40 knots out there. Yeah, it is. You just see by the water. And he'll be happy that he's put a, a landing on there. And uh, I can see uh, Edgar now with two tricks scored um, on your screens as well, which is good. A 5.73 and a 6.57. So it's given him a, a nice base to work off. And just a reminder for you again, if you have just joined us here, seven trick attempts. And uh, they're just seamlessly taking it in turns now. We don't even talk about that. Not quite the height that Clement would have wanted for that move, but it will be somewhere in the region of three to four, in my opinion, for that back row initiated mega loop for Clement. He'll probably be looking to upgrade that trick family because again we remind you that they can't just do the same thing three times they've got to pick different trick families and that can be simplified as much as thinking of front roll mega loop back roll mega loop a contra loop is a different family uh, a board off with a mega loop with a different family however if they perform a double kite loop in any form that would be seen as an evolution of that trick family to give you an example there then you know doobie loop or a doobie loop with a double kite loop would be the same so Hopefully I haven't confused you too much. But meanwhile, Edgar Ulrich with a back roll, mega loop, board off. Look at that control. He's had enough time there to stick a crap. Stares back at the beach and maybe at the judges to say, come on, do you want some of that? That was really <laughs> well controlled. That was straight at the judges booth there for me, that, that stare out at the end. Yeah, I wonder what Mallory is thinking about that. Our head judge probably thinking, who does this kid think he is? But, I mean, when you land the move like that, I mean... Why not claim it? You're out there, 40 knots, first big air event of the year, and you, you, you're laying it down. This is what we want to see. Well, his score will come up shortly. That's going to be above a seven for me, no yeah, doubt about sure. it. So 
He's really throwing the gauntlet down. 7.37 then for Edgar Ulrich. And a very strong move from him. As uh, we see the next two riders on the beach, looks like Arthur Gilbert is getting ready for his heat in a little while because these heats are going quickly. A crash from Clement. Clement's now up against it big time now as Edgar Ulrich starts to screw in some of those screws into the door of the next round with Clement on the other side, the wrong side of that door, Liam. <laughs> yeah, Edgar just putting the piece of the puzzle together at the moment. That was a 7.37 for his huge move on that last trick. So 19.67 is Edgar's combined three scores. And then we've got a 7.23 for Clement. So work to be done. But Edgar there on your screen, who's just you know hiding behind the bushes just at the moment, is going to be up next as we are in round number two. But heat number three, and we've got eight heats in round number two before we go on to round number three. But if you lose, you're on a plane home. Yeah, it's a long stint, this one, and it definitely helps. You definitely prefer not to be in it. But unfortunately, for two of the three riders in the first heat, which is a three-man heat, there's no way you can avoid it. Second goes up against whoever finished third in that first heat. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter with this no. standard. But left foot forwards then now is Edgar. He's not got the height there. He's committed to it anyway with a double... Oh, wow, how did he get the ball on his feet there? It won't be one of his big scorers, but nevertheless, it's another decent move. Yeah, I looked out the window there just because I wanted to have a little, little bit of a different view and I could definitely see that the height was nowhere near what he performed on his last trick. But he's in a comfortable position here. He's enjoying the conditions, just finding the mojo, finding the groove. And though I very much doubt there'll be any difference in Edgar's scores after that trick attempt but it's this man on your screen at the moment Clement who who needs to do work there we have it he's on an eight meter looked like an f1 trigger so eight meter kite for Clement and uh, Edgar's over on the seven it just goes to show you that uh, you know it's all about the choice as well these these riders we're seeing quite a few of them launch their kites before they head out on the water get a bit of a feel see how it is in the air and then they decide what they want to take out, whether it's going to be a, a seven or eight, or if they're looking to throw down those doubles that we're seeing just so more, so much more regularly now. Then those sixes do whip round very, very quickly. And here we go. Clement starts to engage for what will be his fifth trick attempt. And there we go. Lovely shot here. We do like it when we can see back from behind. But unfortunately there, camera guy just going a little bit AWOL. So we have missed that trick there. We do apologise for the camera angles on that one. Looks very much to me though like this is um, going the way of Clement, uh, sorry, of Ed <laughs> Edgar Ulrich coming in for a swap. Yeah, perhaps. he's coming in for a, uh, it looks like he's going down from an eight to a six, Lewis. So right in front of us of the live stream booth there, just switching to a smaller kite as we see Edgar Ulrich will be next to Trick though. Yeah, he's got a little bit of time now to just swap that kite. But okay, so while Edgar's there on your screen, Clement's gone down to, it's got to be a six. I mean, the thing's tiny. It's like a little wasp in the air, but he'll be whipping that round for a few doubles. I'm sure of it. Uh, but you can see Edgar also... Just making a few gestures. I don't know what, maybe what quite he's uh, trying to signal for, but maybe he wants another kite size as well. Maybe he wants to go down a size. Quite risky this from Clement as well. I think Clement's just kind of, uh, sorry, Edgar's kind of um, trying to translate to the judges. Look, it's been ages here, so I think he's maybe thinking this should be a zero for yeah. Clement perhaps. It is a long time to get back up into the zone here. And... Uh, Sitting in the zone with his kite is Edgar, who knows it's uh, he's waiting. How much longer is um, Clement going to get? So Ed, he's coming back into the zone now, Clement. And I've got a feeling now that the judges are giving more flexibility to the riders. I'd love to get the lowdown on that um, because it's not easy to make this quick change and this quick pit stop. But um, now I think there's a crash being scored for Clement now. Yeah, I can see you here. I just had a little peek and it looks like the screen's actually down at the moment, so which is why there might be a bit of confusion out there because I can just look and there's no... Normally what we have for our riders 
Is, yeah, they have a little look at the screen, but they also have a flag system. So maybe a little bit of confusion there. Yeah, I think so. But certainly, oh, I love this. This was lovely. I love the way he got on with that first front row. Come on. Oh, they just ended up almost no way that you could land that in the end. Like a plane that lost the wing is on his way down here. But look at this commitment to the first front roll. That's a true doobie loop for me. The second roll is where the kite's looped. And then he was just spiraling out of control. But now he's coming in for a switch then. Um, is Edgar Ulrich. This thing isn't done and dusted yet. There still is some moves to go. I can't see any kite in the air for Edgar, though. That's the only difference. He looked like he came in maybe requesting one, but, uh, yeah, he did just come back in. Just to have a word with someone on the beach. The wind now coming from a much more northerly direction. I can tell from that right foot forwards angle that uh, Edgar's just really might come into your shot from the left-hand side here. Now just riding, racing back. And there he is into the box. He just came in to actually have a little word with someone um, about the scores because we can see all these scores online as you can as well. And uh, he wants to know how tough this, tight this thing is. Perhaps what his lowest scoring move is that he, so he can know to replace that score. Yeah, maybe he's giving his caddy a little slap on the wrist. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah that kite should have been up in the air. Should have been ready for me. Yeah. Oh, what's going on? What do I need to improve? Here he is then. Don't think he's going to jump here. It's going to be a right foot forwards then from Edgar Urich, which to me would be looking to replace the 5.73, which he has on the board. I can't see what that move was at the moment because my scores are a bit slow, but it was obviously in the front roll board off category or perhaps not. And he opens up. Oh, wow. What a landing. There's a rider that just knows there's the moment where he's pretty much seals the deal into the next round. Look at this height. This is nice. This is up and above 15 metres for sure. And he's such a master at getting the board off when a bit board on, um, more to yeah. the point, when necessarily. And uh, that's a big move. And Edgar now, yeah, boots out that lower scoring five move. And uh, definitely looks to me like he's got the welder out now. He's done with the screws and now he's welding that door shut. It's... Uh, very unlikely. Clemmer. Oh, Clemmer. Whoa! Oh, oh, my oh. word, Lewis. That is one of the biggest crashes we've seen. Off goes the kite. Looked like he was going... I mean, let's just watch the replay and find out once again. That was nuts. Well, there's... Uh, the, the he went for the triple. <sighs> he went for three loops. Can we see the replay again? <laughs> again? We're going to try and I get that see. replay I, again. I, I thought it was a double and into... Um, back the other way that's that was my first feeling one, one two you're right he yeah. went for the triple oh he went my for the triple word loop. and it, he wasn't high enough wow so and there is a rider got to him very quickly so that's good to see what i mean these riders are, are, are pushing this is i i we it was funny lewis because i was when we were driving in this morning we were like is it the sort of event where we're going to... I was chatting to Mally. You know, is, is a triple going to be tried? Are we, are we going to see... Are we even going to see a triple at the moment be attempted? And there we go. He... Clement there. Going for the triple. I just... I'm keeping it, all my fingers crossed that he's going to be okay and he can walk away from that one. But that was ridiculous. And balls of steel to attempt that. I mean, those of you on the live stream here that have just witnessed that, that to me was the first triple... Loop and... That was also an incredible understanding of what was necessary in his heat. Uh, he needed a 10, and he could have still advanced with a 10 in this heat. I think he was down to pretty much his last move here in the event. And had he got a 10, it would have knocked out his 4.13. That would have been uh, about a 20. He needed a 10, and uh, I think he went for it. And what that really shows to me is not only like the level of commitment to try and be the first one to land that, Shows to me it's possible, and you very well... I didn't <laughs> believe it, Liam. I, I thought it had to have gone back the other way. There was a bit of a delay, Lewis, after that second loop. It wasn't like as, as quick, and maybe that's a sign, and like, is it, is it creating a little bit more slack in the lines? Yeah, I or? think that's expected. The more you loop a kite, especially if you're airborne, the less tension you have against yeah. it, you're going towards it. But what that suggests to me is that it's possible. He had enough tension to get, you know, he nearly, he done two and a half. He, yeah. he nearly was there, but such was the commitment that actually he couldn't form a, any form of a, a half decent crash as uh, we just see a nice big boost yeah, from, from Arta. Like Arta. So 
this is why uh, interesting pr propositions for the name of this loop there that we're seeing on our live stream comments. Thank you for joining us. Hospital we are still loop. here. Yeah, I'm not sure about <laughs> hospital loop. No. Um, uh, let's see. But you have just witnessed the the first attempt at a triple kite loop, and that is going to blow up around the world, I'm sure. Liam, did you think you'd see that uh, today? <sighs> uh, no. I mean, it's just bonkers that where, where these guys are pushing the sport at the moment and, and what they're willing to attempt and uh, and how far they're willing to push as well. I mean, I take my my hats off and, and you know, fair play. But mm. I do, yeah, I mean... It's definitely not going to be the uh, the first and the last. But also, is that now going to encourage when this Tramontana win... Because it's going to pick up. We know that for a fact. That we know that win's going to really start to come in. Is that going to encourage the likes of Hill to think, I know I've got the kites that whip round and are, and are super snappy. Shall I give that a go? I... I think yes. I think that uh, Clement wouldn't have been the only rider to have that in his mind today. And, you know... No disrespect to Claremont, he hasn't finished on the podium recently. He's been a very top performer, but if he had that in his mind already, then maybe some of the others had it in his mind. Claremont's definitely got the uh, the skill set to perform that. I, I, I almost start him to wonder, has he done that before, maybe? Like, and nobody's seen it. Like, what a move to have in, in your bag. But I think the biggest thing we take away from that crash is for me yeah yeah one as some of you are commenting on i don't think he was high enough but he still got he wasn't miles away from that but no. two it's definitely possible it's definitely possible to do it and i wondered certainly was there be enough tension let i mean we've seen riders with double kite loops to have loads of time afterwards so yeah. there obviously is time for it. i just wish him all the best now because i'm i think that he's uh, i mean i can only guess i think he may well have uh, his, his legs but the, the safety team is second to none here uh, certainly the GK and Lords of Tram and it was good to see another rider get to him quick the jet ski um, get in and out of there so very quickly so I think we're just making sure that he's okay and the fact of the matter is Liam this is part of big air sport right now uh, in kiteboarding that the risks now if you fall out of the sky I mean, I often think of the sport of paragliding and think, what happens if you make a mistake there? You can't actually make a mistake in paragliding. In our sport, you can. And I think that leads to people pushing... They're pushing the boundaries a little bit further because, I mean, I know as well as anyone, you can go over the limits in our sport and get away with it. And perhaps that's sometimes a bad thing. Yeah, I've... <laughs> I'm, a, I'm sort of, I feel a little bit like lost for words at the moment, just after witnessing that, you know. And we knew, you know, it was going to happen at some point, but to see it here, I, I, I was thinking, about, you know, maybe we would see it at this event, but definitely not at, you know, half past eleven in the morning. So that obviously gives you guys and girls at home a good indicator of just how windy it is at the moment. I mean, we've got solid 40 knots. I mean, some of the gusts that ca are coming through are full on uh if you haven't heard already we saw a gust yesterday come through which was recorded at you know around 70 knots 72 knots to be precise just upwind of the competition area so uh you know this is the sort of winds that we're dealing with and the forecast today is more consistent windier so we're going to see bigger maneuvers maybe some more triple attempts crazy doubles i mean it's just going to be pound for pound punch for punch kick for kick, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to call it, it's all happening here down at the Lord of Trams GKA Kite Big Air Kite World Cup. Yeah, let's give you an update then. I know some of you are watching from around the world and just want to know. I've just seen him actually carried off on a stretcher below our live stream booth. He was fully with it. He was actually holding his arm, which had one of those silver thermal things on. So I think he's actually an arm or shoulder injury, but he was very present down there and... Um, I can only tell you what I saw out the window. This is not at all official, but from what I saw, he was very with it, holding his arm yep. with a stretcher and was brought out by the safety team. So hopefully that's um, not a major injury to him. So best of wishes to him. But we move on with the competition now and uh, the jet ski is just resetting itself. And we, we knew there would be crashes here. This is big air. It's big air kiteboarding. And certainly the real reason you're going to get crashes and injuries in a spot like this is because it's flat water i know it's not dead flat but it's choppy when you're landing in the white water of big waves or a violent rough sea on an open sea 
you have a real chance to actually, the displacement of your body is highly more likely, but when you're on flat water, it is, I mean, I know the cliche is it's like concrete, but it, you tend to bounce rather than penetrate, so that's why the injuries are so much more dangerous. We go to a quick commercial break. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Croissant. After our third edition, the city of Barcares saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcares is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcares for their trust. Welcome back here then to the Laws of Tram. It is the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup. We're in the south of France and we've had some massive drama. We're not even at midday already. <laughs> I'm uh, here, Lewis Crathen, with Liam Dredge to my right-hand side, looking out to see, as you can see on your screen, and as you have for the last 30 seconds or more, the AP flag, which tells the riders, look, we're not starting this heat just yet. We've had a massive crash from the first triple kite loop attempt that I've ever seen, and that was from Clement Hur, who's been... Uh, taken away by the jet ski on a stretcher, we think it's just an arm injury, actually. So he appears to be um, at least conscious and well. So anyone asking about that, that clears that up to some degree. But um, turning our attention back to the action, which is about to start shortly, Liam, how would you wrap up this first uh, half of the day? Bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> One word, bonkers. I mean, we've seen... What was interesting was... We looked at the forecast and it was very much, we sort of had this wind scheduled from like first thing in the morning. And when we came, we, we had an early start this morning. So we had our, our riders briefing at 7.30 with the first possible start at 8. 
that all went ahead. We had good, solid wind. And for the first couple of heats, it was actually quite, quite solid. Not this windy, but it was good. And then it had that little bit of a lull and it dropped down a little bit. And we saw riders sort of on their nines. I know Cassati, Lorenzo Cassati was on his nine. And then all, all of a sudden now, Mother Nature has got us just thrown us, not one, not two, but multiple bones. And, uh, you know, it's absolutely firing. And, yeah, the only way I can sum it up, Lewis, is bonkers. Like, we've seen a triple loop attempt, which, you know, fair play to Clement for giving that a go. And we wish him all the recovery. We've seen, you know, Cohen van Dijk go for a huge double kite loop board off. I mean, it's just nonstop. Uh, we might be in here. That looks like a, a massive mega loop here to maybe start off this next next heat so let's take a look and refresh our scores here you can take a look at the scores as well here um it is the gkkiteworldtour.com and click on the live button that will take you through to our scores i'm still seeing edgar and clement up there so i don't think that we've moved on just yet but we will update you very shortly and just a nice, you know, you can see here, just gives you a sense of just how windy it is. I mean, our live stream booth is sort of getting the getting the shivers now. It's getting the shakes. And there's a kite that's just flown all along the beach as well. It Tramontana is kicking in now. It is super, super windy. This is what Big Air is all about. Yeah, you can see on your screen right there. Just look how <laughs> animated the flags are um, and um, just the nature. Look at it. That's 45 knots, maybe more. Now, even the water. <laughs> where did that, that's not even any waves here. I don't know where that spray come from, from one of the riders. So this nice panning mm. shot here um, is showing you the scene there. And it looks like the I can't see an AP flag anywhere right now. So we may well be going into this one. Let's take a quick look. I know, uh, sorry, we haven't brought you a full update. We are in round two, though, if you've just joined us. And uh, Sunday morning, time is uh, 11, is it 11.42? Is my Mac in the wrong place? Is it no, you're bang on, you're, oh, you're, no, you're bang on the okay. money there, Lewis, so, you know. Just to make sure, because there's been all sorts of <laughs> time changes lately. But I'm still bringing up um, scores. So there you go. There's the black and white flag, See that. which is different to the AP flag. Why? So heat abandoned on that last heat there so i'm pretty sure that is going back to the potentially the edgar and, and, and clement heat uh i mean we really are up in the sticks at the moment we are just chatting to our sports committee and trying to get all the ins all the outs and all the information so we can pass it on to you guys at home who are watching but right now we're just on a little bit of a standby while we're just sort of ticking along making sure everything is a-okay for the next heats because as you can clearly see it is firing here, and uh, it's only going to get windier. The blue skies are now coming out. Beautiful spot as well. You can just get a nice scenic feel for, for where we are, as Lewis mentioned, down here in the south of France. You can get to this spot by going into Barcelona, going into Montpellier. It's about two hours from both. And just there, one of our riders, I think that's Jason van der Spy, yeah, go riding there, coming out of South Africa, just uh, getting airborne. <laughs> Landing back in South Africa nearly. Yeah, cool. these riders just sending a few big boosts. It's, the, it's one of those moments uh, where the crowds sort of uh, need to compose themselves after this very dramatic start to the day. There's crashes, people losing boards. I mean, look just look at the water there behind. That's a lovely shot of a spectator that, you know, standing there way too comfortably for the strength of the wind. But there's this lovely natural protection from uh, the bushes and the, the land that just pushes up a little bit there. You can see that hill the left hand side so they're getting ready look at the flag man on top of that hill we fall back to them they're always there when our screen maybe fails on the beach which is the big screen ignore the green flag to the left hand side those of you that have competed in kiting before will think there's a green flag something's on that's certainly my reaction but the flag men or lady they are just raising the matching color rash vest to the two riders that will be competing and that tells the rider right you're up you've got your 40 seconds to go roughly because the judges do take into consideration wind fluctuations here, which can happen yep. a lot. The wind is good now, Liam. I think we've seen a lot of kites blowing around on the beach. There's 40 knots there. And that is what we're looking for to see that black and white flag lowered. And it should be the, uh, I think it's the blue that goes first. 
Uh, the the, the the yeah no the, the well the yellow is the two minutes before so the the red will go up four minutes then we have the yellow that will go up giving our riders two minutes and then it's uh, bada bing bada boom the right flag for the right rider goes up whether that's the blue also the black flag or the white flag depending on their lycra color they have the red and yellows and things down there as well okay so yeah. they've got the full shebang yeah so the whole the whole works okay so these riders on your screen now are just boosting for fun and to keep <laughs> a sensation of the wind and uh. So, yeah, I only see two flags here. Maybe so I see uh, a white and a blue only, and that's what I'm looking at as far as, uh, I think, once those, maybe there's separately a, a yellow. Yes, no, there is. So like, like what they have on the checkered flag there that's up, there's a separate yellow one that they stick up. And then the ones on those two larger poles, they are for the Lycras. Thank you for clearing that up, Liam. So it'll be the manual raise. Uh, I believe one, it was so windy, one of those flag sticks broke in half yeah. uh, a day ago. It's like a gym workout holding one of those things up, and you'll be absolutely stacked by the end of the day. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> it was hilarious to see the race, like, race director furious we didn't have a backup one. I mean, such <laughs> is the wind strength of this spot. Who would have thought you actually need backup <laughs> flags? It's all right seeing kites, you know, getting smashed to pieces and lines breaking yeah. and things like this but um it's definitely one of the windiest competitions that we have on the tour and uh we're going to cut right to us now in the studio liam and look we're wrapped up more yeah more super it's not as cold as it was last year though where that was the memorable year or maybe not so memorable where we did double pants double sh double trousers double t-shirts double everything we've probably nothing worse than around 10 degrees in here but as the wind picks up it floods through here and we, we almost know the wind's picked up because we get cold a little. Yeah, and um, we also know because the whole thing starts shaking. Yeah. But uh, you say that, I mean, I'm pretty wrapped up. I've got the beanie on. I've got about four or five layers. But, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, it's a little bit like home sometimes. And it's uh, on, a, on a good day, I'd probably say right now. It's a cold wind here. And I think that's the important factor to the temperature is that this cold wind is a catabatic wind. It's coming off the Pyrenees, the Tramontana, as it's known. And it comes straight to, to us on its way to the east, rushing out from the west so it really does blitz past us but it really gives us this flat water as it rushes over this sort of huge sandbar and this is just the most perfect uh, gladiators arena that we have for the riders Liam I yep. mean look how close the crowd can get it's easy to judge our live stream booth can see everything we're in for a real treat at this event always yeah I mean one of the great things about this this spot and uh, is just how close you can get as you know as the public you have you know you can go where we are just outside by our, by our booth there's lots of beach space and then if you go a little bit further down the the organizers have put like nice little walkways and you can properly get amongst the action and where the riders you, which you see are, are taken off with that left foot forward in that little pocket in that little corner the uh, the vibe down there the cheers that go on that's like a little little party down there that you need a little ticket to as you can see right there that's exactly what i'm talking about and that's why it's like the busiest section because it's where the flags are it's where everyone wants to get as close as they can touching distance yeah. from the world's best and there are the multiple other senses stimulated you can taste the water as some of the spray maybe gets on your face when these guys take off and you can hear everything, especially as a rider jumping there. That sound carrying into you as you're up in the air. And there is one of our riders just yep. popping into shot there. So we're still waiting for that black and white flag to come down, yeah. Liam. So we are um, just giving you an update. We are shortly going to continue here. As uh, oh, Who does that? They're just warming up, sending massive mega loops <laughs> out there, which you can see to the left-hand side. But Liam, whilst we have this small break, a perfect opportunity to ask you your... One of the members of the GKA here. Can you tell me a little bit more about how this is becoming a tour and how that's developing? Last year, of course, we just had that once-off Big Air World Championships in Trifa, which was really yeah. successful. But now there's more of a tour on the horizon. For sure. I mean, it's been one of the discussions that we've that the team have been thinking about for for quite a while now. And we know it's clear for for everyone as well that Big Air at the moment is is going through this surge where the boundaries are being pushed. You know, we're seeing numerous you know names popping out of nowhere as well and the, the young kids taking it to to the guys that have been in the game for, for quite some time now but for us at the gka we, we you know we saw this and we thought you know we had our tarif event last year and it was just the one stop but we want to do more than that and we've we're starting off partnering here with the lord of chance which is brilliant we've just started our big air committee as well so we've got six riders that are part of the committee and that's a a place of contact as well for the riders to give us their utmost feedback after the events, before the events, and also during the events, but also a place for the riders to contact other riders. If they don't want to approach, say, us during an event, then they can talk to you other riders. We arrange regular committee meetings going forward, and that will hopefully help develop more events at more spots, more locations. And as discussed, we've got the one stop here. 
we go to Tarifa, I believe the window starts from the end of May up until mid-June. And then we are keeping all the fingers, all the, all the toes crossed for, you know, having a third stop at some point, which at the moment we're keeping behind. We're not quite sure. We're not, we're not going to announce anything just yet. We're still trying to work it all out because when we put something out there, we want it to be, you know, confirmed. We want riders to be getting excited about it. But for us, you know, it's super important to have a big air tour and, uh, yeah, a great way to kick things off for the year. I think there'll be many people listening. Thank you, Liam, for that explanation um, of the exciting future that Big Air has, especially on the GK uh, and the GK platform. Um, some people might be thinking, why have we not had this for for so long ago? But I think one of the responses to that is that Big Air, it, it's so unique that, I, I mean, we have windows of up to a month. You can't yeah. just do an event on a weekend now. And Big Air probably needing the longest window out of any of the disciplines we need 30 knots to get going and show what big air kiteboarding is all about so i think that's part of the reason the logistics involved are really difficult yeah for us as a world tour as well you know we we have numerous stops we have the kite surf calendar we have the youth we have obviously the big air and the freestyle and with freestyle as well you know we want that you know we want the flat water and it's, it's also Similar in the fact of big air where you want the strong winds and you want to go to places that's nuking. Freestyle, you want to have those spots where it's nice and flat at that sort of perfect wind range where you can ride your 11s and your 13s. And at the moment, there's that gap for, you know, is it slightly too strong for freestyle, but is it slightly, you know, not enough wind for, for big air? So, you know, that, that's also trying to, for us, thinking about how we can bridge that gap. You know, are we going to look at maybe have a few more stops on the tour where, you know, we can go somewhere with a, a one week window, let's say, and, and run a big air competition. But in something like, you know, 25 to, to 30 knots, maybe just over 30 knots, because riders, you know, they can still, you know, pull those loops when they're around that. Ten. If we can get 10 meters at a good spot, you know, you can still put on a good show. Someone here, one of our comments, why don't you do a stop in Cape Town? I mean, of course, that's a wonderful venue. We already have of course, you guys having some great conversation on our live and we do really uh, welcome you on board uh, here in the live stream it's lovely to have you in there and uh, we do just uh, yeah. want to highlight that we are having a quick break i think they're resetting things after that um crash that we've just had and uh, it's quite tough on these two riders in this heat so we, we start to draw our attention back to these riders on the water right now getting ready for this next heat let's take a look it's the rider in the white Rash fest. So I know we have Jason van der Spa. I think that's Arta Gilbert, who's currently in the zone with that red kite, who's uh, just sent a big boost. Might come through your screen here in some way. Uh, no, he doesn't. Uh, that's the judges' booth there. That's not where we're speaking from. They've got a nice tinted window there, so uh, not many people can see in there, but they can see out. But here's our crowd now uh, looking on. And uh, actually, we've got a bit of drama to bring you right now. There's a kite in the zone now. And it's Arthur that's crossed his kite up big time. I mean, this isn't even a heat, Lewis, and these guys are just going out there. They, I suppose they're just like, this is 45 knots. I'm not missing it for the world. Yeah, yeah, but there's an important balance they've got to play here is that just jumping around and waiting for your heat to, to go on is, is tiring you. That's half an hour of kiteboarding now that Arthur, Jason actually getting out about 10 minutes ago, um, I can see him on the beach now. Has decided, right, I'm not waiting any longer out there. It's tiring kiteboarding in this strength of wind, especially performing your biggest moves, um, you know, that you've got to do. You don't ever really tend to do them in such a short sequence of time. We're asking them to do up to seven of their biggest moves in the space of less than 10 minutes, really, Liam. So they're getting tired. So, yeah, this, uh, there you go. There's uh, just from, a, I think that was a big boost. Lost his board there a bit, Arthur. He'd be body dragging back to it. No problem. But this is all the while tiring him out for this next heat. So, photographer there, who's uh, orchestrating things to the left-hand side. But this is the scene on the beach here at 11.53 in the morning in the south of France. And uh, that black and white flag still raised. So, I think we're going to have a few minutes more until we get started here. So maybe it's time to go to a commercial break. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple 
la transition environnementale, ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. Lords of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Goisson. After our third edition, the city of Barcares saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcares is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcares for their trust. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents.
Hearts of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Goisson. After our third edition, the city of Barcares saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcares is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcares for their trust. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises. Welcome back here then to the Lords of Tram. It is the DK Big Air Kite World Cup. We just want to give you a bit of an update here over the last heat, really, where there was a big crash. First attempt of a triple kite loop, and it's Clement Hua who is receiving attention down here. And we're just on hold to make sure that he's getting the, the correct treatment down there. I think he has, uh, well, I don't know, actually. I'm not down there, but I know it was considered serious. So we're just making sure that's okay. Ruben, a tough time for the event at the moment. Obviously, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in and sticking with us. Uh, obviously, this is uh, extreme big air kite surfing, and uh, we have the best riders in the world uh, competing. They're pushing it, and uh, Clement went, went for a triple uh, kite loop. Unfortunately, uh, crashed very hard, so safety uh, team is just looking after him, and uh, we're just waiting for everything to be back in place uh, so it's safe for the riders to go out again and uh, continue this epic action. So thanks again for your patience just while we get everything set as we should. But of course, as always, safety the most important thing here at the Lords of Tram and at the GKA. And we'll be back with you with some updates very shortly. But for now... What do you um, think about the triple? 
We're talking about the triple. Yeah, what do you think about the triple? I think it's crazy. I think it's possible. It is possible. I think it's possible. It just needs more height. Yeah, and I think w we were discussing that anyone watching that is like, hey, hold on a minute. I wonder how many riders had this in the back of their minds anyway. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's big. But I think this is a natural break, certainly here, for people to go get their lunch maybe. So um, there are some more updates coming in over the loudspeaker. And as soon as we have them, we get them to you. But for now, competition on standby. Thank you for your patience. Cheers. Welcome everybody to the Qatar Airways GK Kite World Tour. Inside the water, like everybody wanna win. It's gonna be a good show. Let's get it. Who are going to be our new world champions? further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together.
Welcome, it's the Lords of Dram, DKA, Big N, Nine World Cup. They're doing the draw behind me. There's so many riders from all around the world here for these 40, 50 knot wins. Day one, we're starting with the ladies, but we've got three or four epic days ahead of us. Stay tuned. For now, the plan is running the ladies all the way to the final. Stay tuned. crazy action out there tricky for sure for these girls but they're they're all sending it and some big scores coming in today girls like i'm really impressed congrats no oh, i don't really want to put myself in a lot of risk but if it comes to it i know that i'll push through and do what i have to do Hey guys, what an absolute belter of a first day here at the GKA in Barcarat. The women have absolutely been throwing down mind-boggling action. And the heat has just been postponed because the wind got too much, 72 knots. So we're just taking a little break and hopefully we can fly around to more action soon. Stay tuned for more epic big air. Cheers. Welcome back then to the Lords of Tram. It is the GK Big Air Kite World Cup and we have been on hold temporarily as we just uh, get everything reset. And uh, yeah, just 
regarding news on Clement, we can't give you an exact update on his condition, but we will do, as we're told, he's uh, just being taken off to the ambulance as we speak. Nothing is official as far as his condition. But it looks like uh, things are in place and Arthur Gilbert and Jason van der Spuy are getting back on the water. The sled is back on the ski. All safety uh, measures are back in place. So uh, ready for some more epic big air action right here. Thank you so much for tuning in and sticking with us here for the GKA World Tour in Barcares. I'm Ruben Lenten and you're here with me. And uh, Louis Crattern, obviously, giving us uh, the ins and outs and all the details of all this uh, epic big air moves. Uh, yeah, to get back to some of you, we don't have to run all day today. We have a whole month of April to do this competition. That is the win window, but I think they very much want to get as much done today as possible, perhaps going into tomorrow with this wonderful forecast. But, yeah, the yellow was up. Sorry, Ruben, do you want to come around here? You're hugging me here. Yeah, I'm just looking to see the flag. What's happening? Uh, I think yellow flag? Nothing. So the AP flag is down. Competition on standby can be removed that graphic although it's probably going to go away so there's the yellow flag and that's the guy with that workout and we will see in the blue light crowd jason van der Spuy, a very talented south african kid who definitely knows how to loop it on short lines long lines do the board offs all the rotations so he has got what it takes to take on uh, the win but uh, he's taking on uh, arthur gibert a local frenchman um, who also sends it absolutely huge and the guys are uh, feeling confident and hungry and ready to perform just gone past midday here, and, uh, you know, we want to remind you, this is extreme kiteboarding. That's not the first big crash we've seen so far, and that's why we have everything in place here. Jet ski, boat, and what was really nice to see with that crash uh, previously was just that the other riders come in, because they're usually first on scene. And you must take that, those of you that kiteboard that are watching here today, are you thinking like that when you're on the water, when you're with your fellow kiteboarders? You want to get, even if you're not sure... Or well, you wonder if someone hurt themselves a bit, go over there, check on them, where's their board, what they're doing. That is what makes our sport so unique is that we look out for each other like that. And that should be the first thing you do if you see someone come down hard. But let's turn our attention back to this heat then. South Africa versus France. Jason van der Spey against Arthur Gilbert. And coming in left foot forwards then with that air rush kite looks like Jason van der Spey. The yellow flag still up which we can see out of our window which uh tells we're going to move all the way around ruben if you want to come around here now because this Ooh, is the nice best. and cozy in this corner yeah it's, it's, it's what i like to call cozy corner nice i like yeah. being here with you yeah, it's and, a nice uh, spot here out the wind uh looking out if you've just tuned in to just give you a little bit of an overview we are in round number two of the men's division uh heat number four uh, getting on the way very shortly now with jason van der Spuy in the blue lycra and Arthur Gilbert in the white lycra and uh, how this actually works is they get scored on three of their best tricks they each get seven attempts so every time they do leave the water and take off for a trick they will get scored but only the three highest scores will actually make up their overall score so here goes Jason van der Spuy in his first attempt kicking off with a massive double back roll board of mega loop and getting that second lofty Lift and landing it clean. Well done by Jason van der Spy for getting a first score on the board. Let's look at this replay. He got shot up, I think, 15, 17 meters in the air whilst performing two rotations and a board off. That's a great, great kickoff. That is, a, yeah, it is, Ruben. Look at the, we'll get that surfer app data in shortly. I wanted to say, look at it. I'm so used to it being down there. But that was a big score. 6.97 coming in from our judges. And just to get back to someone that's asking why Carly was disqualified yesterday, uh, I can't officially give you a, an answer, but my belief is that I think she touched or accepted help from the jet ski or the boat, which is deemed as a... A disqualification a rider must uh, propel themselves back to the beach as they um, s sustainably can 100% so uh, once you're out there in your heat you have to uh, yeah m make the most of it with the gear you choose and definitely don't accept the help from the jet ski or uh, yeah then you'll get a disqualif disqualification and here we see Arthur Gilbert in the white lycra also taken off right in front of the spectators yeah, and that's he's, big. He's looping with his front hand, so there was a contra loop with a double forward spin and a, and a board off. 
Lovely control there at the end. We saw that kite come around there. The move's not over if you're riding out. You've still got to help with that kite. There is the contra loop. Getting the board back on in the second rotation. It's not dead here yet, Ruben. He's still got to do some kite work. As you see, that kite miles Ooh. behind him. That was really well executed. I think this is going to be a, a similar score maybe to, to Jason. They're going head-to-head -head out the bat already, Ruben. So like we say, you get seven trick attempts, three highest scores will uh, remain. You, they have to perform different tricks, so forward rotations and backward rotations. Jason from the Spire going here with a massive... A doobie, that. That's a big doobie, and that's my sort of doobie where I like to see the doobie. My original idea with that move was that it has to be on the second front roll that you commit to it that really makes it extreme. Kai didn't come super low on him there, though. Perhaps he just... Was, was a bit at the apex, Ruben, rather than just before on the way up where he would have got maximum power. But the height is there from Jason van der Spain. Again, another score uh, almost in the seven. So really throwing down the gauntlet then to Arta. How can he reply here, Ruben? Arta has started with a contra loop front roll board off. So are we going to see him go somewhere in the back roll, mega loop category, or maybe the front roll? We'll, we'll know soon as he takes off which way he commits with his, his head will we'll tell us. Riding full speed in the flat water section with a good takeoff here. And a massive kite loop doobie uh, board off. Ooh. Was it doobie or was it a single? Maybe single. I'm not yeah. sure. Let's take a busy. look here. So here we go. There's one front roll in there, which makes it yeah. the booby. The boob. The booby. The, <laughs> the booby boob boob loop. <laughs> I still have to but, find um, that one out. <laughs> interestingly, though, he didn't extra rotate. And I, I, I don't think he should be judged down on that as such it was high it was powerful sometimes i think the second rotation comes from maybe the technique being slightly out where they get thrown into mm. it when that, they put the board back on it just throws them around into another one it, it often gets sort of misconfused with a with a doobie loop but i think it has to be intentional from the start so let's look at this uh, replay from jason van der spy he's taking off nicely getting his height grabbing his uh, board from the fin and actually flipping it it's called a tic tac board off and uh, yeah, n with a nice kite loop. Might look like Jason's being a bit slower there. You can often think that with kite loops, but you have to get up there first. It's not about looping instantly and quickly. If you're going massive, you have to wait until near the apex of your jump. So sometimes it's not about that you're slower to loop the kite. Loops of tram. Loops of tram. I like it, Ruben. So here at the this Lord of Trams event, R2 get better. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. whoa. Just making a mistake in the steering there and absolutely wiping out full speed. What a recovery of his kite, though. However, he's going to be in trouble here now, Ruben. is Arthur Gilbert. He's going to be miles away from his kite board. The jet ski coming over to offer some assistance. He is going to be slightly in the way. This is a moment now where I think you just get straight back to the beach. Let's get him up on the screen here, Arthur. Great shot of him body dragging, planing through the water here. One plan in his mind here now is to just get his spare board. I don't want help from the jet ski or the boat. I don't want to be disqualified. If he gets back to the beach now, his caddy should be waiting for a board. And he may well not miss his next trick. And actually what's really lined up nicely for here is Jason van der Spey looks like he's swapped kite. Ruben, so that's bought him a little bit more time. So he'll come in, change his board. So he's starting to get some drama in this heat also. Look, look at the power that Jason is dealing with right now. There's a lot of spray coming off his board, meaning that he's etching hard against this kite. So the wind is definitely cranking through, which is uh, promising for more epic big air action right now. And Jason indeed changed his kite, a little bit of a smaller kite. So we might see some double loops, but uh, definitely some epic height coming up from Jason van der Spuy from South Africa. What's he got for us this then? Left foot forwards now, Jason van der Spey. He's done his kite loop back roll board off. He's done a kite loop front roll board off and a kite loop tic tac. So contra loop might start. So double loop. Oh, with a late back roll. Oi, just no crashing this trick. Unfortunately, going for the double mega loop whilst he was not jumping that high. Here you see Jason van der Spey taking off in the replay, going for the double kite loop and still throwing in that laid back. Oh, just coming down a little bit too short. The difficulty is you need the height, but you've had to change to a smaller kite size to, to get a kite that's quick enough to go around. So here is Arthur Gilbert now, who's made his way out into this zone. He's actually removing his other board. Now, I think this is um, 
This is interesting. He didn't need to do that. That of board course, should have course. been removed, I think, by the jet. That should have been taken out of the situation. Maybe the jet ski didn't want to go in the in the area. He's removing that board. I wonder if he's swapping it back to his other board. Oh, that's that's his quite favorite sneaky. Board. That's yeah, his it favorite might be his board. favorite. But that was interesting because his time is running now for sure. Um, but he just removed it. That's dangerous to have something in the way. So I think he's going to get a lot of grace here from the judges just removing that. But let's see. Maybe he did... Uh, he has been given a crash, though, uh, on my scoring system here, Ruben. That is trick number three, uh, although that maybe was his last trash, crash, actually. So, yeah, no, he is in sequence now, and he's made his way out. Thanks for joining us, wherever you are in the world right now. It is Lords of Tram. It's the GK Big Air Kite World Cup in the south of France. Been full of drama again. Day two here is I, Lewis Crathen, talking to you as a double loop goes on there nicely from Arthur Gilbert, who's up to here. Ruben Lenton is next to me, and we are talking you through only in round two here. But the 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 action is epic, Ruben. 100%. This is what we came for, and this is a nice S loop from Arthur Gilbert in the replay. So, so I landing got that it wrong. clean. Did what did you, what did you say? I said a double loop. Can you well, forgive me for that? No. I mean, it does look like it if you if you look. Quickly. It goes so fast. It goes so fast. So you yeah, might have gotten was, away uh, with it if there was no yeah, replay. The, but yeah, the, the replay did you in there. The and here, Jason on the spot, also going for the double. And now more height and throwing in that laid back and definitely landing this yeah, one. We like that. We like that in here. This is going to be a big score for Jason van der Spy. Nice replay here. And let's just look at the at the height he got already. He's accelerating upwards, Ruben, oh. which I like. On the way up is when you get the real belt in Mega Loops. That is going to score big. I think he might be up into the eights there. Yep. Ruben, maybe with that score for Jason van der Spy. Score coming in there. Um, maybe not. So seven point seven three. Seven point three seven possibly. Yeah. Let's have a. Why's your screen off? It's not my screen. That's why. Why is your screen dirty? Oh no, it's not your screen. Uh, Where did that lovely MacBook go? Of yours. Just turn me on, mate. We got uh got removed i mean the screen that's what happened you're in the screen i don't understand fair enough probably for the best maybe you understand at home back roll into a contra loop board off can he get the board oh, back he... on after guild bear yes he can he's a former world champion as well to remind you this guy knows what he's doing not getting the height like this is around a 10 meter mark I don't know why the surfer uh, app data is not coming through. Maybe the guys are not wearing it. It's uh, voluntarily to... Uh, oh, no, there's the surfer data. 11.2 height there, Ruben. Let's see, around the 10 meter mark. But yeah, not uh, the height he needs to take it on uh, against Jason van der Spa, who is throwing an S loop as well. He knows that he needed to step it up. And that was, uh, was done here by Jason van der Spa. Let's take a look at the top three scores from these riders then. It's very similar sorts of scores not much separating these riders Ruben 0.21 separating them Arta Gilbert will be up next with his sixth sixth trick attempt they get seven their top three count he's looking to replace maybe a, well, any of those tricks are similar enough that you might think I can upgrade one of them so Jason van der Spy for his S loop he got a 6.73 where Arthur scored a 7.03 so Arthur's one was uh, slightly more critical on his S loop so, uh, contra loop right. back roll board off only a 6.27. I've got a feeling this might be, uh, although if he changed down to smaller kites, I think they're only going double trouble now, Ruben. Definitely double or nothing from here on out. Do be double. No. no, didn't feel it, didn't get the height, which sort of indicates to me he was after a double. So he's going to have another chance, but it's going to be down to the wide. But what can this man do? His lowest score is a 6.8. Three. Very consistent riding, very nice, and uh, he's onto his last trick attempt. Is that right, Lewis? Yes, he is. Can he upgrade his trick, or is he going to go for a new? Is it a double doobie? No, he didn't find ah. it either. Oh, he might be regretting that one, Ruben. He opens the door for one more move. For Arthur, Arthur is back at the beach, though. What is he? What's he doing? Now someone's telling him on the scores here. This is crazy. Is he going to miss his last trick because of this? He's going to have to get on with this. I think he's at risk of being timed out here. Big drama again. 40 seconds yeah. they get to uh, yeah, to perform your trick or to go for the takeoff. And Arthur was uh, just chatting to someone on the beach to see what scores well in this heat. 
and how far he is apart. But they're going head to head. They're only like uh, 0.2 points apart. So uh, that is a, a critical time in this heat with Arthur Gilbert uh, having the last trick attempt. Let's see what he's going for. Interestingly, Ruben, because our major screen is down, uh, not in action, just below me now, it's actually not telling him how many seconds there are. He's going off a flag sequence, which is always working as a backup. So he's been able to bend the rules a little bit there and just come in. Find Not many of the riders have been able to talk to their caddy and actually look at the scores, which you can too, of course. GKA, KiteWorldTour.com, click the live. Arthur Gilbert knows he needs to find somewhere out there a What's point two be? one. It's got to be a double. This is going to be double it. Off. It's going to be it. And he's, can doing it. it. he's going to do oh, it. Oh yes! No, oh, he can't deal with it. Crash it! Damn it! He couldn't oh, deal with it. Got Ruben. it with that one. Like 16 meters high. And look at this replay from Arthur Gilbert in the white line cross, sending it straight up, going for the double lo or S loop board off. Sorry, oh, I was mistaken there myself. Oh, I just couldn't take it, and that will be uh, well. That will be a very very relieved. Jason van der Spey then. As, uh, as wow. Lou Bordov, that would have scored him very, very well. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, it looks like Jason van der Spey is uh, continuing to the next round for Arthur Gilbert. But uh, very nice riding and the wind seems to be solid, Lewis. It does seem solid, so we can't confirm that result until we get it in. But it looks very much to me that winning by 0.21, Ruben, was... Um, Jason van der Spey from South Africa, but of course, I am not an official voice. And in uh, heat number five of the second round here at the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour in Barcares, we've got Luca Ceruti in the blue Lycra, and then we've got Valentin Garat, Frenchy, in the white Lycra, coming right up on your screens. So who do you think in this heat? I think Luca's going to be hard to beat here, Ruben. I feel like he hasn't had his time yet still. I've always rated this guy as uh, my dark horse, the guy that's sort of, you know, but no one thinks about so much, but he's starting to become a bigger name now in big air, and I don't feel that he's achieved his, his, you know, his, his capabilities in competition riding. I've seen his videos. He can do everything. What I like about him is he can do the double loops, but he can go and take a nine in 40 knots and do massive kite level, more simplified moves as well. But Valentin Garay has worked his way up the big air scene very well. He's been winning the events on the GKA, the sort of um, second discipline events that they've been running. And I've seen that myself in Saudi Arabia last year where he just smashed everyone easy. Done the same again, I think, in uh, Colombia recently. He's a very good competitive rider, Valentin Garay. He's been competing uh, for, for years. The family name, the Garay brothers, everyone will know Sebastian Garay. You're doing a party with him. Or is he doing exactly. a party with him? Yeah, I think he's coming down to drop some tunes with us. So it's going to yeah. be fun later on. Yeah, so I imagine he'll be watching, but Seb um, very much leading the way with that family name from the early days in freestyle. Very um, used to being up near the podiums and being on the podiums. But I tell you what, I can see out the corner of my mind, out, out the corner of my mind. Well, I can see the corner of my mind, Aaron winning the event, but I can see him in real life just warming up below me now with his uh, standard warm-up routine. With Meanwhile, strong-looking quads there, mate. He's looking fit. Oh, there he sends it. What a takeoff with an S loop wow. in this heat. Luca Ceruti not holding back and firing it off straight out of the bat and unfortunately bumming out on the chop on this landing. But what a massive move to kick things off with here for Luca Ceruti from South Africa. That was huge, Ruben. Over ne nearly 20 meters on our surfer uh, app. Look at that. 94 kilometers an hour he was pulling in the end there. So really the wind is optimum for this big heat. Valentin... Needs a nice big start. Here we go. He saw that move from Luca and he was like, oh, I got to do something big, but not feeling it on this one and uh, aborting the trick in this uh, trick attempt. Better to abort than to be sorry. But Luca Ceruti, uh, definitely a, a, a roundhouse. He can do the short line mega loops. He can do the long line mega loops. He's got all the board offs, all the rotations, the contra loops. So, uh, yeah, he definitely has what it takes. But, uh, yeah, he uh, always gets some harsh deals in competition. So... Hopefully today is his day and uh, he can uh, continue and progress throughout the event. And a very different rider opposed to uh, Valentin Garat, who also comes from the Freestyle uh, World Tour. I have never seen Lucas Ceruti on hook, actually. Have you seen him do a handle pass? No, but I wouldn't be surprised if he could do it. He's a very talented rider. But the focus is on big air where there's not so much unhooking going on, uh, which I would like to now, see integrated yeah. uh, into the future or today, hopefully. Because uh, that ups the risk, ups the... Whoa, 
possibilities of moves. And here's just a massive straight mega loop from uh, Luca. He it wanted to, he wanted some more. I think he wanted to go for the S loop again, but he's, was just not feeling you know, stable he's really, enough. Really making that equipment work for him, Ruben. Just look how high. He, yeah, he was setting up for a double. I think there. I don't know. He just didn't get the feeling. Maybe he just thought, you know what? I need to stick this one. I think he's on longer lines. The kite wasn't at that super extreme low angle. It was still a decent angle though. But the height. 18.5 meters again. He's visibly going the higher of the two so far. Let's see what Valentin. Yeah, this is nice. Mega loop board off from Valentin Guerrero. Can he stick it? Oh, one oh. footer on the landing there. One footer butt check into a crash. So unfortunately, scoring a zero. Here you see uh, Valentin's replay. He's going for the massive kite loop with the back hand. He's grabbing his board by the fin with the front hand. And unfortunately, not uh, not landing that to uh, to score some some uh, some scores, score some numbers, score some scores. Yeah, that's the score. A few uh, questions coming in for us here. Will we see a ten today? I think we might do. But also, how deep is the water they're landing in? I don't know. But um, good question. But uh, yeah, not that I wanna deep. Want to find out? No, no. It's, I think it's deeper than not that deep. I'll get my diving equipment out. My uh, snorkel, which I always bring. Double. Uh, kite loop then, nice and controlled. And Luca Taruti is just trying to get some... I think he's realised here that both the riders haven't got major scores on the board here. This is by no means his best trick here. I'm going to guess that was around 15 metres, that move, Ruben. I wonder if we... How close can we get? What do you think before the data comes in? 12 metres. I win. Oh. 13.9. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe 15 was a bit pushing it much. but um, Well, just a metre off, mate. Pretty good. It's not too bad. It's nice we have this data here to work with. Maybe you can play the guessing game as well on our comments. So how high is this jump? That's with a, a contra loop. Contra loop board off from Valentin Garat. And is he able to stick it? Yes, he is. Yeah, he's going to be feeling good after that, Ruben. He really needs to. So how to. high was it? Look at this. You get the replay before the data comes in. Uh, if I had to guess, 14.5 if I had to guess. Okay, I'll say 14.7. Keep it nice Feeling and close. Good about this what do you think in the I comments? Feel, I feel like I'm going to be good. I've got a good chance for this one. Oh, oh no! no. Oh, God, Ruben, oh. Ruben, I saw it before the replay. <laughs> <laughs> what? I should have made oh, it a big bet there. What a deal. Actually, you said 15. You didn't even see it. So I feel like... 14.7. I feel... Oh, no. Oh, okay. Oh, whoa, whoa, Sorry. Whoa. I feel like you deserve that. That's uh, a big... Like, you a cheated. Double loop here, maybe. Oh, s loop board off. Oh, just How's he getting, taking it? Just getting it on in time. But that was very critical. Not the kite angle, but definitely the height. Like here you see Luca in the blue lycra taking off and he's looping one way and then deciding to pull it the other way whilst taking his board off, having to handle very quickly in order to perform that trick. The S loop, I like it when it's done at the critical section. You know, you loop the kite and then when the kite is down, that's when you want to switch it around. When the kite is actually completing the first loop and then you're kind of yeah, doing another down loop, I don't like it very much. So hopefully the judges keep a close eye on that. But uh, we definitely like to see the height and the extremity of these type of types of moves. So um, keep it up. Still waiting on that score for Luca. So uh, that's a big hang time. He sends it. This is massive from Valentin Garay. He's still in the air. Can he stick it? The all important. Oh, what? oh no. <laughs> Oh, again, his foot slipped out on the landing, Come dealing on. with that chop. Here, look at how massive he goes. Absolutely. 20 meters and doing the kite loop board off from the fin. And then see how his foot slips out and still managed to balance out of it. Oh, just cartwheels out of it, resulting in a in a crash. So, oh, bummer for Valentin. on the dot. And that looks, it looks huge. What a bummer for Valentin. He's got every, he's, he can go massive here. Valentin, if he landed that, would really have been mixing this. He, he would have gone into the lead, I think, there. Um, so, the trouble is now his board is somewhere in his own. If you could just see how far apart the two riders are now after a move like that, it's ridiculous. He's out of your screen to the left-hand side. He's not even in your screen. We're talking like four, 500 meters, maybe a mile. I don't know, this is getting crazy, but that was really something special from Valentin. His data is still on the screen there from the Surfer app. 20 meters. He's got his board back. That was genius. How has he got his board back there? And we've got Lucas Ruti with uh, three trick attempts left. Remember, he gets seven trick attempts, and here he goes for his fifth trick. And he does a double. Double mega loop with a laid back and sticking it glue. I think it's a rewind. I wonder if this is a new move here. How voluntary, I don't know. Ruben, Did he I'm get the rewind picked. on it? I think he got an involuntary rewind on this. Here he goes then. Straight into the double loop. There's one. 
Oh, then yeah, he comes that... back the other way round. That's outrageous. How are the judges going to score this? Whether or not he meant to do that wow. or not, Ruben, but that was uh, interestingly. Did he go for the delayed back roll on the first loop there? Was yeah, the and then yeah, he got kind of flung off balance and got spun around in a forward rotation again. So uh, yeah, let's see how the judges score that. But it's always very scary when it happens in the move. And mm. luckily he was high enough so he could turn around completely before uh, coming in for the landing. I think he got thrown around like that, Ruben, because he, so often we see that move where uh, the riders wait until the second loop, kind of where they know they got the tension. It's okay, that's the safer way to do it. It was scored as a kite loop back roll. So it was the back roll family that he initiated. Yeah, double. But the drop into the front roll came for me. Perhaps that strange period after that first loop. I, I think for me that, that has to be a bigger scorer than performing the loop in the second one. I don't know. I don't do those moves. Perhaps the riders will tell me differently. But just Let's as, keep far it as, that way. as far as how, how it looked... Oh, it's intriguing, though. You look at all this stuff, Ruben, and think, oh, this looks oh, like the next level, you know? Like, This is absolutely insane. Don't be afraid of kite surfing. This is not the average day uh, kiteboarding. This is uh, the best kiteboarders in the world throwing down their best tricks. So uh, this is the big air discipline here at the GKA Kite World Tour. And here we see Valentin Garat going again for that massive mega loop board off and unfortunately crashing it again. It's rocked him. It's absolutely rocked him, this... Uh, Double kite loop, delayed back roll, rewind. He's still trying to work out in his mind, was that a rewind or not? I just saw it. It's absolutely shaking Valentin here. Did the judges even see that? Uh, he yeah, was wondering. Know, maybe I should go in and tell the judges what that guy <laughs> just did here. Like, that was huge. And once again... Explain him how scary it really is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, you think you need to give him a better score for that? Uh, <laughs> go going in for the double kite loop is already scary. Then throwing in the laid back right off the bat. And then uh, getting a rewind, that's uh, absolutely incredible. Riding straight up to the jet ski and just holding on to it to DQ yourself. I mean, that was so good, that other guy did that move. But uh, he's been a bit unfortunate here, Valentin. He's currently only on 6.27, but this is why. is because this Luca Taruti has just been really taking it to him here as he starts to say, we could see something big here, Ruben. Back roll. Didn't feel it. No, he didn't feel it. Cancelled it. I wonder what no, he was thinking. I... He was still confused from the rewind earlier. Can we get a replay on that last one or no? Maybe not. Maybe. What, what was interesting for me on that last move there, Ruben, is that these riders, they don't just get a sense before they take off what the wind's like. It's actually possible to abort these moves with almost a commitment of steering the kite. You can flip it, fling it in there a little bit and get a sensation. It's the same with the mega loop. You can go a quarter of the way around the mega loop and abort before you... Uh, but look at the scores from Lucas Ceruti. He is uh, well in the lead here. Because Valentin unfortunately crashed a few of his tricks and now coming up with the mega loop late back roll, which is not going to score that well for him, especially if you crash, then you get a zero. But Lucas Ceruti well ahead here, and uh, I think safe to say that he's going to secure a spot in the third round. It really is showing just how hard it is to land here. The distance covered, once you land in that chop, oh. it's, uh, it's tough, Ruben. Like, so just... bumpy. I thought we had many speed bumps in Holland, but this is just another level. This is another level. But they luckily, do have a lot in Holland. They're annoying. They're awesome. You can get some airtime, mate. <laughs> well, they're there for a reason, Ruben. They're to slow people down, okay? Like, if you're being serious about airtime or speed bumps, we're going to have to chat about this off air. Back to the action then. Full speed, no speed bumps there for Lucas Rudy as he's taking off the flats here. With a double a loop. Yeah, double loop, but I uh, don't think it's going to up his uh, scores, uh, his previous scores. So here you have the replay. You can see he's riding left foot forward, he's taking off. And then just keeps pulling his back hand. Oh, S loop again. Did I? How did we miss that? What is wrong? Are with we that? blind? Are we staring into the sun too much? What is happening? But that was an S loop, not a double uh, double kite loop. So I don't think it's gonna score his pre or better his previous score. Forget oh, that. it just did. Yeah, he just upped it from 19 to okay. 20. All right, I think it's time we start getting on board with some scores here. Turn your screen bit. on again. Yeah, it's not my screen, all right? This is an this iPad. This screen, this random screen that you're touching. It is someone you else's You know the code, you know iPad. the passcode. Yeah, it's easy. So it looks it's like your screen. Claim it. the same numbers. Six are the same numbers. You can't Claim even need it. moron to forget that. Tell me the number. Um, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You tell me the number to your one. <laughs> You're already commenting under my profile on the YouTube here sometimes, so yeah. watch out for that. I've left the room a few times. I better scroll up and see yeah, what's yeah, been going exactly, on. But exactly. meanwhile, last chance saloon then for Valentin Gray. He's got two moves well, left. He's going for a boogie, but then cancelling now. Feel it. And uh, unfortunately, I think because he's not going to get a great score here, I think it's all over. They yeah. think it's all over, Ruben. But here's a replay of the... No, he was not feeling it. Not in the right position to continue that loop. So 
great uh, great call to abort it no matter how frustrating it is it's better to play it safe than sorry don't want to end up in a big crash and then uh, yeah mess up your uh, your last attempt but yeah, it is safe to say that Luca is going to progress to the to the next round uh, here on his last attempt ready to uh, to show it is all he's yeah, taking just off a massive just boost and that's to me that shows an incredible understanding of how the heat has progressed there to just decide I'm not going to do anything. He would have been, don't, you know, these riders are paying attention to the whole situation. He's been counting the other tricks of Valentin. He would have known that he's crashed X amount of times. And you have to feel really for Valentin here because he really did put some awesome moves in there with some massive heights, but the landings just didn't play out in his favor. But that won't be the end of him that we see in big air. Um, unfortunately, it will be at this event, but. And there you, can see, there you can see as well, like closer to the beach, the water is absolutely flat. And of course, a little bit more shallow. But where they land, like the further you travel, the more gnarly the chops get and the more difficult it is to actually land your tricks, especially when you're going full speed. Then it just gets so bumpy and uh, it's easy to uh, slip out of food or just completely bounce out of it. But uh, into this next heat of uh, round number two, heat number six, uh, with Aaron Hadlow and Lucas Gramstrup. It's uh, going to be an exciting one. So a big hello to all of you that are tuning in live so far. Hi, Mum. And, and uh, we're really appreciating your interaction with us on the comments. I'm Lewis Crathen, and to the right-hand side of me is Ruben Lenton. But on your screens, it's to the left-hand side. Yep. That is true, unless you're watching in the mirror, which we all do from time to time, I know. But the next heat coming up is a big one as well. They're all big heats. And I believe we've got Aaron Hadlow against Lucas Gramstrup. So it's the United Kingdom versus... Denmark. The wind here is now pushing above 40 knots, which is exactly what we want to see in big air. And Ruben, every single trick, not heat, it's just, it just just keeps on delivering here. 100%. We've seen some incredible double kite loops, S loop board offs, um, you name it, we've seen it. But as the wind is progressing and building throughout the day, I think we're going to see an increase in height. And actually, we're going to see some more extreme moves, even more extreme. Imagine that. So the stronger the wind, the higher the guys can perform their moves and uh, yeah, the sicker it's going to be. So thanks for tuning in. And you came to the right place because it's not just about putting big scores on the board. It's about having the right strategy, leaving some room for error if you do end up landing on a chop. It is all about the strategy. And Aaron Hetlow, who's going out just now, taking it on to Lucas Gramstrup is a very veteran, experienced, competitive rider. Always has the strategy, knows exactly which trick to do at which time, and that comes down to uh, yeah, very critical heats. And I'm very curious to see how he's going to play out this heat. Is he going to start off with some back rotations, uh, then some front rotations, throwing in the contra loop, and of course that all combined with some board offs. What do you think? Uh, well, I can tell you, unfortunately, he started with a crash, which we've unfortunately not brought to you there. So he has had a crash to start off. So he's going to have six tricks left to the seven of Lucas Gramstrup. But will he be, will he come up Gramstrup here? Or will he be, uh, sorry, I, need, yeah, I know, we, we were on the screen. We had I to go to the I screen. I missed the crash. Yeah, you did. Sorry. I was, we uh, all missed the crash. There we go. Straight up with the double here from Lucas Gramstrup, who's hungry for the win, but unfortunately not high enough to complete it for the landing. Nobody wishes a crash upon anyone, but I bet Aaron Hadlow was watching that kind of relieved. This was Aaron Hadlow actually coming in on that. Uh, or was it Aaron no, Hadlow? Was, oh, uh, no. I think this was the previous that one was, from yeah, Valentin uh, Garot. Don't, don't need that replay. So, yeah, it was um, Aaron with a crash. Lucas Gramstrup, unfortunately, with a crash. And Aaron would have been watching on thinking, oh, didn't want to start this heat one nil down, especially to a double loop um, already. So, um, But, yeah, Lucas uh, shows his confidence as well. Uh, starting the heat with a double uh, so let's see what Aaron Hadlow is going to answer back with does he have the height does he have the extremity in this move so starting off with this back roll kite loop board off just to get the score on the board not super high but uh, definitely safe uh, safe score on the board which can play a huge factor in uh, progressing to the next round here's that replay Aaron's got this one in the bag so good it's always been great at adapting Aaron now pre-popping into his jumps it's there's never been a stage in kiteboarding where he's looked at something and thought, I can't do that too. So it's still competing now after years and years and years. Ruben, you competed with him all those years back. But here he is still uh, looking good out on the water. But he's up against Lucas Gramstrup from the Denmark, who looks to be double. Was that a double? Yeah, it goes for the double kite loop and then uh, with an added uh, front rotation on the way down. So it wasn't super high, but he went committed for the double loop. So here you see, looking for the power, looking for the gust, taking off. Only around 8 meters height, I'll say, dropping pretty quickly. And then getting flung into that uh, front spin on the way down. 
I've noticed something interesting with a different setup that the riders are doing for these double loops, Ruben. Big bars are back in town, so extra leverage on your your bar is central. Look at Aaron Hadlow here riding in. That bar is no tiny bar like the days of those small wake style bars we used to use. But this is a big one for Aaron with a boogie loop board off. He wanted to grab there, but he decided not to mess about as he started to get chucked down and underneath the kite. Here we see the replay of Aaron Hadlow taking off in the blue light where you see him swinging up that hand just to put more pressure and go more upwind angle than uh, flicking himself forward with that loop and taking off the board. So a boogie loop uh, with a board off. Look how Aaron's landing these as well. He's been really on point as well. He just knows how important these landings are. Possibly the wind just coming down a little bit here is reflected in their heights. 13.4 meters for Aaron coming in. He's already starting to get two tricks on the board. He didn't fancy it yet. So Graham Strupp there. Is he riding a six meter? It looks like a very small kite to me. Well, I think Aaron Maybe might only seven. be on a seven. Who, Aaron or no, Graham Strupp? No, uh, Lucas, Graham Strupp, because he's just throwing doubles all over the place. Uh, where the six loops a bit easier, of course. So, um, yeah, he's not getting the height that uh, that is needed. You know, if you cross your eyes and watch a double, it becomes a quadruple. Cross-eyed. I love it. Don't try that at home. Cross-eyed kiteboarding. You've tried this? Yes. Only a few times, Lewis, but it's definitely great fun being out there and throwing some epic moves. I'm frothing to be uh, be back on the water. But today it's all about uh, the men's and women's big air division here at the GKA World Kai Tour in Barcares in France. You're here with me, Ruben Lenten, and of course, Lewis Crattern, uh, tuning it live from the tower. We've got a great view with the screens of the live stream, which you're watching. But we can also see out of the window and we see the riders Riding up into that corner, like Aaron Hedlow, taking off huge with a mega loop late back roll. Can he deal with it, Ruben? Oh, yes, he he's has. taking it. Oh, I didn't think he was going to appear from that big splash. What a take from Aaron Hadlow. Let's take a replay of this 50 meter. Very comfortable trick as far as things go here. Very well executed. He never seemed to be fighting against that kite. And but Aaron, we can do that trick. We can do that trick. Yeah, we can do that. And the other way as well. So hey, get us out there. I don't think he's going to score too good. It's well, a 4.6. It. Score it a 1. We can do it. I just want to see tricks that we cannot do. That we're scared of doing. True. Like, this one looks pretty good to me. Gramstrup can't take it, though, with an S loop. So Aaron had only getting a 4.57. I think that's fair from the judges. But what Aaron's doing here is really racking up the scores, Ruben. They're not stupidly high scores, but they're good, consistent scores. And he's now put the pressure on the man from Denmark, Lucas Gramstrup. Yeah, you see the difference in riding. Lucas is uh, definitely trying to go all out on a six meter, but um, yeah, not getting the height he needs to perform those tricks and uh, unfortunately not sticking every move. So that's why you only see one score of his on the, on the scoring board, whereas Aaron already has three scores. Did Aaron just come to the beach for an update on the scores there? I think he did. Look at his... Uh as well. I think he's just been back to the beach to speak to someone and see about what the scores look like so far. So Aaron's got this one at the moment. He's, of course, had four tricks, but so has Lucas Gramstrup. That is why Aaron's coming um, back in here a bit late because he did actually just come to the beach. They don't have much time to do their tricks, around 40 seconds, but Aaron Hadlow riding left foot forwards may have to... He's going right foot forwards here, I think, Ruben. Or not. Nope, he isn't. Got it wrong. He's gone for the double. Aaron Hadlow's got the doubles all day. Yes, what sticking that play. one. Ni nice double, getting some good height on that. Uh, he's stoked on it. Here we see the replay of Aaron throwing out his hand, taking a good takeoff. That's I think it nice. was only 12 meters high, but uh, definitely some nice loops in there. Good angle. Uh, definitely has that in his kite bag, if uh, some of you were wondering. Aaron now starting to upgrade his moves or trying to get some bigger score. 5.83 goes on the board now. So Aaron kicking out that score of uh, looks like a 4.57 kite loop back roll, which he'd done previous to that. It's a very clever competitor as Aaron Hadlow. But what can Gramstrup do? Can't get the rhythm again with that jump. And that could be curtains for Gramstrup. One, two, three, four. That's his fifth trick attempt. He's going to have to really go for it for these last two trick attempts. They get seven attempts, by the way. Didn't decide to go back. I think that was a good decision not to bring that kite this way again, Ruben. Definitely. But, yeah, it seems like he's riding a little bit underpowered. I think it is a six-meter, but I want to know for sure. I'm going to check it out when he comes back to the beach. 
Um, but Aaron Hedlow on his 7 meter looking confident and then still double looping that 7 meter. So, yeah, it's working for him and I'm curious to see what he's going to do now. He's just jumping left foot forward. Um, I think he might throw in a contra loop. I think he could do that double with a late back row, you know. Oh, no. Yeah, he didn't fancy that type. Oh, cool. That's just one of those landings where you think, what the hell's just happened? Just dropped out the sky. Aaron did not appreciate that from the wind there. The body language says it all. He's like, God, it's like, damn it, what happened? Bum. Yeah, we apologize. We got your flag wrong. We know that's wound up a few people there. We're not the flag people. We will personally have a chat with the flag man. Apparently, it's the Austrian flag, Ruben, but he's... That's just rude. I mean, come on. It could be further away. At least it's not far away. But no, I would also feel that I'd want my flag to be correct. But there's a lot of uh, elements going in to bring you this live stream here from uh, Barcares in France. And uh, all the pieces of the puzzle need to be in place. So thanks for tuning in and uh, looking at this epic action. Unfortunately, uh, Lucas uh, not performing the height in this trick because he needs a bigger score than this in order to overtake Aaron Hedlow. And I don't think he can overtake him now. Am I right? I or does he a need a 10? No, does he, no, even with a 10, he'll kick out his 2.60, Ruben. It's a done deal, much to the satisfaction of Aaron Hadlow, that just starts thinking about his own uh, country. Oh. Not happy with the dropouts he's received off those last two moves for Aaron Hadlow. But that just brings us... Uh, nearly to a close. We've got Lucas Grams up here. What's he good? What do you do now, Ruben? You're out of the competition. Uh, do you just maybe go touch the jet ski and be removed that way? Do you try a triple loop, perhaps, to try and get that one in the bag? We've seen that today. What would you do here if you were Lucas Grams up? Cry? Oh, on the water? No, yeah. There's not much you can do. I'll just uh, perform an epic move for the spectators like this. Double contra, but yeah, he's not getting the height on that kite, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, we see Aaron Hetlow advancing through to the next round. And into the next heat in this uh, round number two, we see Joshua Sam from Brazil against Simon Brun from Germany. So we, uh, we'll see uh, Jose in uh, the blue lycra, where we, uh, Simon will be wearing a white rash vest. So keep an eye out for that. go in the world, one airline goes further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. We're back then. It's Lords of Tram 2023 at the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup down in the south of France in Bacares. Can you say it like that? As good as that? Bacares. Action, satisfaction. We're definitely in for a treat. <laughs> that, was better. that was better than me. I wasn't expecting that. I'm going to have to improve on my Bacares. That was pretty uh, good. Yeah, that sounds that pretty, wasn't bad. Sounds so pretty badass. We're just, we're just, we're, we're, guess what? We're back in Bacares. Um, and we're south of Lucat by not far at all, actually. Those will remember the Mondial du Vent taking place year after year, one of the longest running events in the world. We've moved just south to this perfect location for Big Air as it's flat here. And on your screens now is uh, Josu San, who starts off with a massive 
Mega loop with a back roll, with a grab and a board off as well. It almost stops on entrance to the water. That was strange. So I don't think he's going to have a huge distance cover. I mean, it looked pretty big. But um, Just oh, right, maybe it wasn't huge, but it was a nice start to the heat nonetheless, Oof. Ruben. So at the same time where he's taking off, he's spinning backwards, reaching for his board and uh, looping his kite. So this was a, a nice move to kick things off with. Uh, close to a six, so a pretty decent score uh, on the board for Jose San. Ruben, why did you write IKEA bag under my name on the channel there? Just uh, be wary of how you take those comments. It's both of us here under my... That's dangerous. I need you to log in. Meanwhile, back roll, double back roll, mega loop into the triple. That's 1080 degrees. Is that even a word? 1080 degrees. 1080. Can you say that? No. It's 1080 degrees. 1080, 1080 sounds good. Yeah. It would be 1000. No, 10... Uh, Let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, simmer down. <laughs> simmer down here, okay. But yeah, he was spinning three times uh, whilst looping his kite, so uh, it was scoring a 4.6. He wasn't uh, getting too high, not too extreme. So uh, Jose San goes in the lead with seven trick attempts, only six left for both riders, and their three best tricks will make up their overall score. And uh, yeah, they have to be in different trick families, so the judges would like to see the riders perform backward spins, forward spins, uh, jumps both ways, loops, uh, yeah, with forward loops like contra loops and uh, yeah, epic doubles and S loops. There's a lot of variation uh, to be found in this discipline of big air, which is uh, yeah, a very natural progression. I uh, love seeing the sport grow, and uh, I think big air is for everyone. Everybody wants to fly and have a good time out there, so keep pushing. A sense of calm descends over the arena here. Not for long, though, as we see that nice doobie loop into a third roll. Did he stick it? Yes, he did, Ruben. I just peered out the window here as Josu San looking to um, stake his claim to advance into the next round. You're unlocking my... Well, not my iPad, of course. Is it now? You're, you're you don't even, don't even know how to get to the unlock. <laughs> what a failure that is. <laughs> <laughs> He's given up. It's not my iPad. <laughs> I'm just trying to unlock this. How can you not get not to the happening. unlock part? Okay. That, that oh, it's on the camera. That could be interesting. <laughs> nice little picture. All right. So one of these riders will go out. One of these riders will go out. But just Hussain is uh, he's up for this. Nice last move. Um, he's currently leading this one. But oh, I thought that was going straight down for a second there. Can't ride out of that. Surely you can't ride out of a mega loop. That is that a new move that's just come into my brain? Obviously not. Let's for look me at this do. replay. But um, mega yeah. loop Jesus walk. Could, I reckon one of the guys could do that. Look, he was almost in a Jesus walk position. Tuck, 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 run out of it. Put your board back on. That'll there's be one insane. for That'll you, be a 10. Michael McDonald. There's one for you to work on. <laughs> Landing into the Jesus walk. What have you done to this iPad? Okay. There we go. Nice work. Got Philip in the boot. How are you doing, Philip? Enjoying the action today? Enjoying it a lot. Nice. So, uh, what is the sickest trick you've seen today? The sickest trick was probably a crash, a triple loop in a contest during the heat, nearly landing it, unfortunately with a big crash, and uh, hopefully injured not too much or not injured at all best. 100%. He's uh, being looked after now, and uh, we'll report back later once things are uh, confirmed. But uh, that was indeed a gnarly trick, and we're definitely seeing some innovation being thrown down today in this competition. And, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, to this heat right here as yeah, it's on the way. Stepping it up a bit there for me there is Josh Hussan. Those of you supporting him from Brazil will be really stoked to see that kite loop front roll board off where the tricks are coming in um, very shortly. Yeah, nice score from him then. Four, f sorry, three tricks on the board for him now is, of course, it's nice and simple. I like that. I like that about the scores here. Um, it, it's good. It's all, oh, but this, oh, this is going to count as a crash from Simon Brun. So it's nice and easy for, oh, and a back break and slam there as well. No one likes to see a broke back mountain um, on it's the water. A, it's funny how you can take crashes differently. Sometimes your board can even 
uh, be used as like a shield. You can yeah, kind of soften your landing. Sometimes it can just block side you and really be more painful. When you kick your board off, you can actually land flat on your back or try and skip out. Like there's different ways to take a crash, and each crash is different and needs to be t yeah dealt with differently. Um, yeah, not on your head, Lewis. No, you, you. Well, I didn't actually land on my head. To be fair, oh, it looks like um, it. You lost all your hair, mate. Uh, did I? I think I. No, I did have some hair there. Oh yeah. Do you know what? I can't remember how I landed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, bo the bottom line there. But um, just going back to what you're saying about the uh, the broke back mountain style landing, or maybe the the backward starfish. What has happened there, Ruben Lenton? Has he hit a rock there? Wow. We, that, can we get gust, a replay on that? A mega gust has just got a hold of Josu Sanet riding along. This is reminiscent of a time. I've only ever seen that sort of thing once to Aaron Hadlow in Lucat riding along comfortably and then dumped into a hooked in Rayleigh Shoo. riding along. That's how much it increased. There is his board there. Great shot from the cameraman. And that is how much the wind can pick up here. 20 knots extra has just nailed uh, Josu San. He's a small type of rider as well. And uh, there's his board. And I think... I think he might get a zero here. Well, he comes through body dragging back here, but I think that might cost him his trick attempt there. But Ruben, the wind has just picked up here. There's us talking absolute nonsense for a little bit. The wind has just picked up, and now we're focused sharp for these big moves again. Oh, it's baguette time. Baguette time. Wee oui, wee. Oui. But no, uh, that was uh, absolutely mega gust coming through, just ripping him off his board. So, um, yeah, that's what can happen, and hopefully the wind uh, will keep kicking ass because uh, that's what we like. Lewis eyeing down some food. Hungry, hungry, hungry for more action. I'm starving for, for more action, Ruben. Although I've had enough for a year's worth, let's be honest, with uh, yesterday and today. Let's just give you a little quick rundown here. How quick can I do that? Yesterday, ladies, all the way up to the semi-finals, we've run some incredible action and crashes. Now we're in the men today. We've seen the first attempt at a triple kite loop from Clement Hoet, the, uh, I think he's, uh, is he Elevate? I think I should probably get that right. I think he might be. And uh, here on your screens, the wind looks like it's died a little bit as we see Simon Brun with a trick that he really didn't need right there so this heat's kind of just working itself out but just to give you that update and comment that he has gone off to hospital we don't uh, well there kind of is no update i haven't been brought anything here so perhaps i can get something from my events team to deliver to you so this heat uh, is uh, well on the way with um three more tr trick attempts left for these guys and what is it going to be? Simon uh, does need to get some scores on the board. We see um, Jose San ready for his trick attempt. He's got some nice scores on the board already with an overall 16.33. Um, so he's looking to, uh, to better his scores and hopefully he can do that. Jumping to the right or is he going to turn around? No, it looks like he's popping and jumping. And landing that one clean. Not sure what it was. I couldn't really uh, see it properly. Big shout out to Jez Hangtime Jones. Couldn't be here. He loves these events. Was and it the uh, Mega Loop laid back? Yeah, I think it was just the Mega Loop laid back roll. And uh, someone is asking, what is a contra loop? A contra loop is when the riders actually pull the loop with their front hand. So instead of doing a normal kite loop or Mega Loop with the back hand, where the kite continues as you jump, now the riders are jumping and then pulling the kite with their front hand so then uh, it's called a contra loop whereas the s loop it's uh, when they uh, jump they do a loop and halfway they loop it the other way so you basically get two halves loop creating a, an s kind of shape uh, i named it the s loop uh, 15 years ago 13, 14 years ago when I tried it for the first time on my 5 meter in the Netherlands during a massive storm. And here we see a massive mega loop with three rotations uh, being done by uh, Jose Son. Let's see if that's uh, bettering his previous score. So here he goes. Mega loop with a triple laid back. Spinning like a whirlwind. Tasmanian devil. Yeah, I think that works. So Simon uh, getting a bit closer. He uh, still needs to better his uh, 1.17 score. 
So let's see what he's going to do with that, which was a, an actual contra loop, but not as high and extreme and technical as the judges like to see it. Here you see the spectators who are uh, right by the water there, by the water's edge, looking at all the uh, action as the wind is blowing offshore here. The riders can really ride up to the beach. And here we see a boogie loop, a doobie loop. So two for, uh, forward rotations with a, uh, a kite loop. Not as high, not as extreme, um, but definitely uh, landing. So putting a score on the board. So definitely bettering that 1.17. Uh, there we see Simon Brun uh, crawling closer to Jose San to hopefully uh, make his way through this event. And uh, in the next heat, we have uh, Julian Hoon and Timo Boersma. Julian Hoon from France and uh, Timo Boersma from the Netherlands. They will battle it out for a spot in the third round. But this is uh, heat seven in round two of the men's division here at the Big Air. Discipline of the GKA World Tour. He's just finding the gas, building up his speed. You can see he's edging. He's probably going to turn around. Yep, he's going to turn around, jump right foot forward. And let's see what power he can find. Is he can? Is he finding the gust? No, the wind seems to be in a little lull, so he just did a, a low contra loop. And uh, yeah, we saw Jamie jump uh, 35 meters uh, two days ago at this spot, taken off the flats on his uh, seven meter edge. So absolutely going massive. Uh, these riders today are jumping 20 meters high and uh, imagine 15 meters on top of that. That's uh, absolutely ridiculous. The cameraman will have to zoom out a bit further for that. But um, hopefully the wind will uh, keep progressing today. The forecast is still looking great. So we're in for a treat. Thank you guys for joining us here with uh, Lewis Crathern reporting live from the Lords of Tram GK World Tour event in Barcarest, France. So he needs something like a high 6.8 if he's going to advance in this one. Cool, the wind really looked like it dropped there, Ruben, uh, at the end of this one. So low scores here. And as, as much as I can tell, that is the end of the road then for Simon Bruin. Big, good result for Brazil there. Looks like Josu San has taken the win there, Ruben. 16.5 to 14.24. Let's go to a commercial break. further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. So we are just waiting to kick off this last heat of round number two of the men's division here with Julian Hoon from France taking on uh, Timo Boerstema from the Netherlands. We've already uh, seen some epic action of these guys in the previous round. And uh, now they are going to give it their all to make it through to the next round. Both young guns 
And um, yeah, both have a, a, a nice bag of tricks where we see uh, Timo Boersma always jumping massive and going for double loops, S loops, combined with board offs. So um, this is going to look, uh, look great. In the blue light crowd, we got uh, Julian Hoon. And in the white light crowd, we have Timo Boersma. So uh, Julian Hoon ready to kick off this heat with a contra loop board off. Not jumping massive. Looks like a little, uh, little low in the wind there. But uh, hopefully Timo Boersma, who is, uh, I believe, on the seven meter. Hopefully you can find some uh, some good wind, some good power, and time to go as well for a beautiful takeoff. Enjoy your baguette, Lewis. He's having a quick bite in between uh, the tricks. You can also uh, watch the live scoring if you go to gkworldtour.com and just the scroll down to the live scoring, there you can see each uh, trick attempt being scored, where the riders get seven attempts with their three highest scoring tricks making up their overall score. And uh, the, the tricks cannot be repetitive. There have to be back rolls, there have to be front rolls, there have to be kite loops, double loops, S loops, and contra loops. They're all different trick families with uh, different direction of rotations and loops. And here we see Timo Boersma Doing a massive mega loop laid back with a board off and an added rotation. Unfortunately, bombing out on the landing. He was covering almost 90 meters of distance here. Look at that. Taking off your board whilst your kite is looping and yanking you like that is definitely critical. Unfortunately, the kite didn't catch him on time uh, for, the, for the landing. So that's uh, going to score a zero, unfortunately, for, uh, for Timo Boersma. But there, he already shows that he has got the skills, he has got the balls. And he knows what to do. Julian Hoon with a, a four on the scoreboard so far for his first trick attempt. Here he goes for his second attempt with a mega loop laid back roll. And just a lofty uh, safe landing there for Julian Hoon. Nice, we've got Lewis wiping down the screen, some dust flying around here as it's very windy. Things are flying everywhere. You see some uh, data from the Surfer app popping in uh, into the screen with 13.5 meters height. But here Timo Boersma with a massive doobie loop. Full speed, getting the second lift and unfortunately bombing out again. It is so hard to ride these conditions as any gust can just throw you off balance. Here he goes for a proper takeoff. Going very inverted for two front rolls on this doobie loop. But here he gets that second gust and just throws him off balance uh, for, a, for a proper landing. So unfortunately Timo Boersma crashing his first two attempts. Giving Julian Hoon uh, some space here. Where he goes for a massive doobie loop as well. Oh, that was beautiful. And landing it clean. Ooh. Julian Hoon is uh, giving Timo a Boersma a run for his money there. Look, front roll and then pulling it on the second uh, on the second front roll, pulling that loop and adding another rotation. So a uh, very nice move from Julian Hoon right there. Let's see what, uh, what he will score for that. 5.2. Nice. There was no board off included into that move, so uh, yeah, I think it's a, a nice reflective uh, score there for uh, Julian Hoon. And here in the white light crowd, Timo Boersma going full speed, edging into that corner right in front of the spectators. Beautifully done. A massive mega loop. Yeah, yeah. I, I expect to see lots of distance covered in this, Ruben. Um, yeah, just look how far he got whipped here. He hits a New York Oi. Yankee going around there. Lots of distance. Actually wasn't as violent as it might have looked, but I'm back, Ruben. I can uh, jump in shortly now. And uh, here we are on your screen then. It's Julian Hoon. The wind has really picked up. This is what this rider really likes. And I know he's been waiting for this moment to... 
Oh, no, no, he's done it. No, no, he's done no, it. No, we no, talked no, about no, unhooked. No. He's done the mega loop unhook. What are they going to score this? Yes, he lands it. Yes. What the heck? Yes. Did he take off it. still hooked in? Like, let's take look. Take off at... still hooked in. And this is oh, what we talk... mid air. Oh, I love it. Mid air unhooked. I thought he was going to go for the double unhooked. Look at this. Full power going through the arms. Ruben, we talked about unhooked maneuvers earlier. They are officially back. How is he going to get scored here? This has to be in the innovation field. And what does that suggest that could be on our way in the future of the sport? Are we going to see unhooked, hooked, so unhooked kite loop handle passes again? We, again, we do not talk about mega looped unhooked handle passes. They've been banned unofficially from talking about because no one can deal with actually the risk talking of it. About them. Only Aaron Hadlow can talk about it. I invented Oswald. that. I invented and Oswald the, Smith. The, yeah, sorry. The, Ruben, the hooking. It? Aaron Hadlow, Aaron Hadlow. Ruben Lenton, man. Jesus. <laughs> he, was, he was the I, last one to do them in competition, <laughs> I mean. Okay, so. fair enough. Uh, he, he definitely added some technicality to that Re trick. Ruben but. Lenton can talk about it. Aaron Hadlow can talk about it. Oswald Smith knows a thing or two about that move. But you can count on one hand people that tend to talk about those moves. But this... Uh, what did he get? Let's get to the point here before I don't... Open remember. up your iPad. What did he get? I, I, let's I, see, well, let's I, see the scores on I that. got that far with it. We don't need it on the iPad. We got it down here in my Mac, but... I love to see this stuff. So what has he been scored for? He's only scored five point... Uh, it's gone up a little bit. 5.9? No, it's okay. going up. How much higher will it go up nice. bit for a bit of innovation? But, yeah, just unhook. You know, it's quite straightforward trick, but I guess the risk is there. No, he scored a uh, 6.17 mm -hmm. for the... I mean, it was... Nicely done. It wasn't huge. Like, look at this S loop from Timo Boersma going absolutely mental, but bombing out on the landing. It's just not his heat. This wind is really pumping now, Rubens. We see a replay of just how high the riders are now starting to get up in the sky. Beforehand, we saw jumps to 10 meters. It goes all the way up to about 20 at the moment. So, yeah, this is getting very interesting. We're going to have a short chat about. Uh, surfer very shortly just after this heat takes place but uh, there's a lot of action to bring you from this heat now as uh, Julian Hun now going into the lead after that incredible uh, hooked to unhooked mega loop here what's he got for us Timo Ruben well oh, his foot unfortunately slipped out it looked like he was going to go for something unhooked again but unfortunately had to abort this trick because his foot slipped out and he couldn't perform uh, his initial trick and there unfortunately oh, it's come out the chicken loop Oh no, sorry, that was. Oh. Uh, and what's this? That is also the risk with uh, combining unhooked tricks that your chicken loop can pop out. Like here on the lid, his lines go slack, and now his chicken loop just pops out of his harness hook, uh, making his kite fly uh, yeah. off his leash. So apologies, that was Julian there who's just gone for his fifth trick here. And can he get back to his board? I think he's going to be okay to get back to his board. It's Timo up next. Uh, Timo from the Netherlands. Um, a national friend or t team friend. What do you call your friends in compatriot, I guess is a better word. A uh, bro. A, well, a country bro. Hey, no, I didn't know he was that close of a mate. <laughs> I mean, whoa. whoa. Uh, okay, so a bro of yours is in trouble out here, Ruben. He's got 3.50 and he hasn't got long left in this competition unless he starts sticking some stuff. He's got to land something here is the answer. Just a straight boogie loop. That's not going to cut it. It might do, though. It, he definitely needed something on the scores here because he's got three crashes, so he can't afford... He only has uh, one attempt left after this trick, so let's see what he scores. No, they are getting seven trick attempts, Ruben, so they will get... Oh, sorry, I was looking at uh, Julian. Uh, oh, but that was Timo. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So two, three, four... Five. He's got two, two trick attempts yeah, okay. left, so actually, um, he did... He could have crashed that, 5. actually. But, but if he wants... That 3.50 not to be part of his three scores, he needed something there. And that 5.8, I think that's quite a strong score. Yeah, did he know? go that double on okay. that? Did he go double? Maybe he did. Because I felt for like a 5.8, no, yeah, I felt like it was I, going double I think double he might have done, you know, Ruben. It was on my mind. But to come back to your question about uh, why Julian only scored a five or a 6.17 for his uh, yeah, mega loop unhooked, uh, is because it was just a straight loop. Um, it wasn't super high. The kite angle wasn't super critical. Of course, he was unhooked, but yeah, he still scored into the six, and uh, that was, uh, I think, a right score for this move. I agree with you, and I think going, I think it might be on his mind to throw a delayed back roll with that. 
because he definitely could. He definitely looked controlled enough and had enough tension. So let's see. He's got currently his lowest score is a 4.13 of a kite loop board off in the mix here. He hasn't got any high um, contra loops that I can see. So perhaps that will be his next move. It is a double loop. Is he going to get the kite back up in the sky? Yes, he is for Julian Hinn with all the local support. There, oh, and he yeah, emerges. He emerges from the spray. Still had to fight it, Phew. Ruben. Here is the replay of this. Hanging on to it. He's cranking the backhand. Full power for that double loop. And, uh, yeah, coming around nicely. A little butt check, but hanging on for dear life there and uh, making it happen. No, we are not drunk. We're just getting confused no, about all this epic action. I think they were talking about the riders. Oh, I can yeah, tell they... you they're not allowed to drink before they go out. It's very strict here. So that doesn't definitely work either. in focus. Uh, the riders, but um, no, we're. P but this is a very interesting heat because Timo does have the tricks in his bag to pull out um, to better his score, and uh, yeah, we're still waiting for his third score. So if it's uh, in the six and a half, seven ish, then uh, he will take over uh, Julian Hoon already. So this is massive from Timo going for the S loop. Oh, you couldn't really see the kite in his screen, but I could see from the way he was staring that it was an S loop. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, Timo just not having uh, having the time of his life uh, with the landings today. Yeah, so Timo is going to get one more chance to add to his trick list here. Is this wind really gussing up to 40 knots? No, maybe more now. It really, I mean, the sounds on our live stream booth are pretty crazy. Can Julian Hun uh, get rid of that 4.13 on here? I think he might be thinking contrary, but I don't know. I don't know if he does it this way. No, it wasn't. It's nothing. So he's going to be devastated if Timo can steal this for him. So Timo Borsema, he needs 6.14, I'm being told here. Did the iPad just die? What a devastator. Timo's boogie was a double. So a booby loop, we call that then, which was uh, someone's suggestion. But the boogie loop is a uh, single. Single forward rotation with a loop. A uh, dooby loop is uh, two forward rotations with a loop. And then when you do a uh, boogie loop with a double, then it should be a booby loop, someone said. So uh, that sounds kind of interesting. But radical, yeah. Thanks for joining us on the comments here on, uh, on YouTube. Chang, thanks for uh, tuning in the, on the live stream. We uh, are rocking it. And uh, this was the end of... Um, this was the end of uh, round number two here of the men's division Big Air at the GKA World Tour. And uh, we are going to move on to round number three where we have all the winners from the previous heats uh, battling it out. So this heat, I didn't really get the full picture of the end of this heat and I can only presume that um, it was a crash or something from Timo, unfortunately. But I'd like to invite someone over in to have a quick chat with them now. We've actually got... Herbert from Surfo is going to give us a bit of a rundown. Hey. Herbert, I know there's lots of people that are interested in hearing what you have to say about Surfo because we've got this lovely data coming in the bottom left-hand exactly. corner. So I'm going to jump straight to some questions for you whilst I have your time quickly here because I know you've got some stuff to explain about me. So please explain a little bit about the new version of the Surfo app and what people can expect. Yeah, exactly. So we're um, working on Surfo 2, Surfo 2 and uh, dot AI uh, artificial intelligence you know it's not uh, not just a hype term these days but uh, we're actually leveraging AI for improving uh, accuracy and consistency while tracking jump heights so um, one thing that is cool to talk about I think you might have experienced it sometimes today that sometimes you see on these jumps that the airtime uh, gets aborted I don't know if you have been noticing it today you know that that somebody does an eight second hang time and you get maybe six seconds or so Am I still on? Yeah, okay. Still on, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that, that's something that you're changing. So yeah, exactly, because this this kind of pattern recognition is is pretty hard. It's not really straightforward uh, on a yes or no, but it's um, it's very much uh, doable with artificial intelligence. So yeah, that's one of the benefits, <coughs> as well as um, more consistency across devices, you know. And how is this going to benefit you guys? So um, yeah, so the main goal is now now Surfer is supporting more and more devices like uh, the Apple Watch and the Android Watch. Uh, the main goal is to have it all really consistent, you know, and not uh, you know you don't want a phone or a watch to jump higher than another type of phone or another type of watch. So this is one of the main uh, goals of this whole project. Uh, the project has been going on for more than a half year, uh, and it's almost go uh, gonna come out in a, in a public beta. So uh, yeah. 
So there are all the sort of textbook questions that we needed to cover, but I now want to ask you something a bit more <laughs> yeah, off the record. Is that how does it make you feel when you're here at an event like this and you see your surfer app with all this data and everyone commenting that they're really enjoying <laughs> seeing the, the, these metrics here because they really provide us such a such an insight to what's really going on out there. How does that make you feel? Uh, really good, actually. I mean, it's a lot of work uh, and it's a lot of uh, sometimes a lot of stress as well. We're walking around with 24 phones here on the event. But it's a big pleasure and uh, to be part of this amazing event and to see people going absolutely to the moon. Like uh, Steno is here with a mega loop uh, board off to start yeah. this heat. But um, it's been a pleasure to have you very briefly yeah. on here, Herbert. And I'll now uh, let you return to the stressful environment of making sure <laughs> everything's working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's looking like it's looking yeah, after man, itself. Yeah, man, I don't have to do anything. So that's all good. <laughs> Thank you very much okay. for that insight. Yeah, so see you welcome. soon. Let's invite Ruben Lenton back. Oh, he's been enjoying that massive burger down there. <laughs> yeah, thanks for all the info on that, Herbert. Absolutely amazing data coming in and uh, yeah, making uh, extreme big air kiteboarding more uh, visible, tangible, and uh, yeah, to show how high we are going with this sport. So we got uh, an all Dutch heat here with uh, Stein uh, Mull, Stino Mull, and uh, Jamie Overbeek. A fellow ozone team rider absolutely sending it to the moon notorious for uh yeah just jumping over 30 meters consistently and um yeah performing so many rotations and board offs like let's see what he's doing it's over big not over baked look at this Whoa. absolutely going massive here jamie overbeck with a mega loop laid back row and an edit rotation uh and a board off obviously absolutely going huge Look at that, taking his board off during that first rotation and still absolutely high in the sky, coming in for that uh, heli loop and landing smooth, putting uh, on a nice score uh, for his uh, first trick attempt. Here, scoring a seven for that. 20.8 meters here, Ruben, 116 meters in distance and 8.5 seconds of hang time. These are metrics we don't see much so far today we're now into round three though of the men it is heat number one of round three jamie overbeck against stino mall and you've just joined us on our live stream perhaps you haven't just joined us perhaps you've been there all day waiting and watching this because this is epic this is big air kiteboarding taken to the extremes it is the laws of tram here at the gka big air kite world cup i'm standing here as i'm currently as lewis crathen and next to me is ruben lenton 100%. And in round three, we see eight heats of the best riders taken on head-to-head -head and uh, pulling out their best big air moves. Here we see uh, Stino Mill in the blue light crowd, unfortunately uh, bailing on this uh, trick. This won't score massive because, uh, yeah, he didn't perform the trick he wanted to do and, um, yeah, had to abort it. Now make his way back upwind. Ruben, you're an Ozone rider. I want a bit of insight on the kite that we've got from uh, Jamie here. What model is he flying? What size? Uh, Jamie's currently riding the edge, uh, riding full speed, boosting to the moon, very easy handling kite. Um, and he's utilizing the absolute maximum performance of this, where you can see his uh, doobie loop board off with three rotations. Was it four rotations? What a control, what a style, what a skill. Yeah, well landed that there. And it's nice to see this replay. There's something I want to point out here on One, this replay, Ruben. Two, is look at this unique style. Three, he keeps the bar right by, his, right by his head. That's unusual. He keeps this bar right up by his head. He keeps him actually quite straight. He doesn't tend to ride with a tucked, tight body position, James. It's very unique to him, but it seems to work for him. And he's laid down a good landing. Look at that stance as well. Someone asked me yesterday why we don't just lean back and deal with it in strong wind. You almost become a bit hunched over because you have to push that bar out to get the full D power as you're riding. So here comes Stino Moore, who's up against it here. He's been a podium finisher here before at Lords of Tram, but he's going for a mega loop board off with the fin with a back roll. Can he fix that? Oh, gets rid of the board right there. Very difficult, it seems, to try and repair the damage on a board off for the second time. Some of the best riders can get it on, but usually by the handle. Here's Stino took off uh, right from his rail, did a little pre-pop. Everything seemed to go according to plan, but then he was just not in the right position to put his board back on his feet uh, to come in for the landing. Ruben, there's a yellow ozone on the beach being flown here. Uh, why? Uh, I see a little enduro in the sky indeed, because we see Jamie Overbeck. He's riding a 7-meter edge right now, and uh, that kite is pretty hard to double loop, and uh, that's why Jamie has his uh, caddy on the beach, 
with an enduro i think it's a five or a six meter uh for yeah with that kite he can like perform yeah me. i think it's five so a little baby kite but uh, if he can still get the height and the double loops and perhaps s loop going that will be very impressive the, yeah the different shapes of kites will uh result in different performances and here jamie overbeek on the edge boosting to the moon rotating twice Three. Oh, crash. A red oh, goes in tomahawk style, feet first. Most important thing, I think, with these crashes, Ruben, is that you don't ditch the kite and you're not too far away from the board. So it can happen to anyone. This very consistent rider here. What went wrong here, Ruben? Contra loop just uh, didn't go high enough, not vertical lift enough. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, just out of balance to land this trick. But very cool to see him landing uh, two sevens on the board already. Very consistent rider. And uh, Stino Mill will have his hands full to. Uh, to try and beat Jamie Overbeck in this heat. Yeah, he's on the Cabrina, uh, Stino, more that white Cabrina out there, also on the same team as Lorenzo Casati. He's not happy about that first starboard tack to the right, so he's going to get a second chance there. The riders are allowed around 40 seconds of time. Just to the left of the screen, you could see his blue flag raised. It really is in the side of your screen there. That indicates to him it's his go, because they're not riding on the water together here. You might be wondering how there's been no conflict, no tangles. This is how we do it, it tends to be now, where the riders get the, the time on their own on the water. What's he got for us? He's got Jamie Overbeek just downwind of him. Nice take off this. It Man is, uh, back roll. yeah, on the switch tack. He can do these right foot forwards as well. What a landing, Ruben. Oh, wow. Straight up. He was very tight to that standing up that was a very good landing here's a replay you see him go in the sky he loops his kite and takes off his board with the back roll and uh, controlling it nicely a good score on the board for uh, Stino Mill and uh, you you know that most of the riders like you're either left-handed right-handed you do have a preference in which way you perform your tricks if you can do your board off and loop your kite to the left with your left hand that's great if you can do it with your right hand as well absolutely incredible my left hand is pretty useless, I must say. I mean, it does a few things nicely, but definitely no board offs. Um, so I will have to practice that. These riders seem to be very in control and capable to do tricks each way. So very nice move here by Jamie Overbeck. Yeah, I want to talk you through this replay, Ruben, because this one it didn't look like he had the most perfect of body positions. This all looks great up to here. And coming around here, that little wobble out there looked to me like he might crash, but he controlled that really well and got the tail just to make contact with the water and get a feeling. So that really was uh, a nice a nice landing from him. Yeah, exactly. That was uh, a contra loop with a, with a board off and two front rotations and a, a nice little dangle to save himself and get himself into a, a better position to come in for that landing. These riders are dealing with all the power that uh, Mother Nature is forcing on them today and uh, utilizing it uh, for their greater good, for um, yeah, reaching epic heights and uh, landing new tricks. We do like to see innovation as well, so never been done before tricks in competitions. Uh, I mean, most of it has been done already, but who knows, we might see some surprises here. Stino Mill with a massive contra loop uh, with three front rotations and a board off. That's going to be a good score for him. Here you see Stino take off. With a, f a front spin, oh, it was a double uh, forward rotation. I love this replay, so you can just look in detail what actually happened because it just happened so fast. And three things in one go, the kite loops, maybe once, maybe twice, maybe one way, maybe the other way. And then with rotations added and a board off, it's uh, yeah, quite, a, quite a complex puzzle to uh, take uh, everything in. Overbeat going for a back roll mega loop variation here. I think I oh know it would have been a contra loop. His left hand is on the on the bar, Ruben. So we're going to see a good score for this. Add lots of height, and let's really pay a bit more attention. First here. back yeah. roll, second back roll takes off the board, keeps the board off for a while, and then just controls the loop perfectly. Comes in for that landing, super smooth. Definitely adds uh, nicely to his scores. I think that's a very good word to describe his riding that someone's just uh, posted there. In our comments, please do get involved on the live stream here on YouTube, Controlled. He is totally in in control and, and in harmony with his equipment, actually, because that's a major thing. I mean, we always talk about confidence and trust and these things. He's going for a kite switch, no, Rue. He is. He is going for a kite switch. How have we missed that in front of us? Because meanwhile, we have to look at Steen Omar, who might be tempted to get on with this quicker to force... Oh, wanted the board off. Didn't I think, get Stino the board off. off. Will Steno change? I don't think Steno's got a kite to change to, but he's definitely on a big enough size that 
Uh, I don't know if he can double loop that one. Have we had a double loop from Stino? Yeah, yet? Stino. Yeah, yeah, I think he he's loop, double looped this in uh, in Cape Town, getting very leveled. But uh, yeah, Jamie Overbeck just uh, gave his uh, Ozone Edge seven meter to his caddy and switched a route for a uh, Ozone Enduro five meter. So uh, let's see what the Jamie's uh, doing with this. I hope he can still reach some heights. I wonder why he doesn't grab the six. Like in the King of the Air, we saw him double looping the six meter, whereas uh, now he's riding an even smaller kite. Steve Maybe he wants to go for the triple as well. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, they're joining us late today. You would have missed that triple attempt by Clement, who took a bit of a nasty crash on that. So we still await to give you an update on his condition. He was taken away by our safety team earlier. But meanwhile, right now, we've got two riders that have changed down for double trouble. Actually, actually Stino coming in for a six meter. He dropped down from an eight. So he was on an eight meter Cabrino. He's now on a six meter. And guess what brand, Ruben? What's that? It's, uh, the Cabrina, Cabrina. He's yeah, on the Cabrina. Oh, sorry, it's a bit, Stino, a, a sorry, bit of a trick question, really. There, I mean, it should have really been a Cabrina. There goes Jamie Overbeck riding on the on the shoreline. Yeah, he's going for the S loop, back row S loop. Not getting the height that we like to see from him, but uh, yeah, definitely completing the loops. So here you can see his edging. He's going in the back row, looping one way and then looping the other way. I invented a move in 2010 on my 5 meter slingshot fuel back in the day. Um, very stormy, very challenging conditions. There were definitely no other riders uh, performing any big air moves, so I had to figure it out by myself, uh, which was good fun. But now seeing these guys take it to the absolute next level is an absolute honor and blast. So uh, thanks to, uh, to everyone involved for uh, pushing it, progressing it, and sharing this beautiful sport with the world. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're here uh, at the heat number one of round three of the men's division of the Big Air GKA Kite World Tour. Stino needs something big here then. He needs something in the region of uh, an eight if he's going to advance here. My system's telling me that he needs 3.53 to lead, but that would be on top of his lowest score, which is a 5.07. So could this be one of the biggest devastators of the day? I think anywhere over a five, uh, an 8.5 and he's got a chance. This has to be massive from Stino. Double. Didn't fancy it. Oh, oh. He really did land hard there and stopped quite quickly, but he didn't fancy the height. He uh, he really was hoping for a bit more height than that. So I think that Jamie Overbeek has got this one comfortably in the bag, Ruben. He is, is he standing there? So he's walking. So that's how shallow it is. Was he standing? I think his feet were, his feet were touching the, the ground. Or oh, it's just that windy that he's being pulled out of the water. So is this the high? That's what I was wondering earlier. Is this the highest scoring uh, heat we've seen so far, uh, getting into the twenties? I think we have seen Cohen Van Dyke into oh, the twenties yeah. already, but um, both of these aids. riders pushing. It seems to be both of them are quite high up here. So it will be one more trick attempt then from Jamie Overby. That looks to me like it's all the trick attempts done from Stino. Yeah, definitely. Bragging about mega loops all day long, man. <laughs> Someone had to do it. <laughs> Just kidding, man. But um, yeah, we're all pushing this sport forward together. It's uh, absolutely great seeing the guys uh, share all the clips of, uh, of their new tricks online so that riders can see and copy it. Also, to enter some big air competitions, there's uh, video qualifiers. So the riders are uh, chasing down every storm to keep progressing and uh, capture their best moves on camera so that they can participate in the world's leading, uh, leading big air events. What's Jamie Overbeat got for us here then? You know, he knows he doesn't have to do anything crazy. He's already advanced here. I wonder if he's been told that. Um, but I guess the biggest thing he doesn't have to do is get himself injured um, here. He's pumping the bar uh, like crazy. So for me here, he is the last rider to trick in this heat. And um, I'm wondering why he's still out on the water here. Also, Stino just behind him. But anyway, here goes the last attempt um, already, I've got the next heat already up on the board. That's because it's just worked it oh, out. Oh no, double contra. So he went for a back roll, double contra board off. Which, uh, yeah, unfortunately didn't get enough height on this 5 meter. See, he takes off, he goes into the back roll. And then with his front hand, he is pulling two loops. So double contra loop, but unfortunately not landing it. And could easily have got injured there, Ruben, you know, trying to get the board on late like that. That was, um, I think, fortunately, he's, he's okay. But those two riders were in, and we apologize. We had Heel Fluch and Valentin on your screens that had come up, and that was the system that had worked out that, of course, um, Jamie Overbeek had advanced. So 
Yeah, in some ways, some of you talking about the kickers at Kite Beach, they do add something to them. But this, uh, you know, th this is really this constant contact with the water is giving the riders this nice, high, boosty jump. So next up here then in the Big Air Kite men's, it's... Double G. But it's G and a V. G, V, double G, V. Double G, <laughs> but it's G and V. Sorry, I, you lost me double there. Double G, that is uh, Gilles' uh, nick nickname because he invented the double mega loop. Taking it to the next uh, level. Okay, That's right. why oh, yeah, I know, I know, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know. I, I know that, yeah. And uh, <laughs> Valentin, <laughs> Valentin Hoenderop from, from Spain. Um, yeah, I mean, Gilles got a bag of tricks that uh, Valentin Hoenderop can hopefully uh, match. He will definitely try his best to advance to, uh, to the next round because now it's uh, winner takes all. So um, let's see. So are you, what are you trying to say to me here, Ruben, that whoever lands this triple will get triple initial, basically? Then you're uh, the triple G. So you could be, if you're Zara Hugenrad, you could be triple Z you or triple Z. Sounds tri a bit triple Z. Triple G, it's about the G. No, no, well, it doesn't have to be the G. It yeah, could be any letter. O -G. Well, well, that's, double G. No, but Heel is fortunate that G is the first letter. If it was, for example, it doesn't Aaron, have anything it would to do be with his name. Well, it must do. The G comes from OG. No, it's, it's to do with his name, Double G. You double don't know. G. You don't, we talk double about, gangster. We talk about this stuff when we're out on the beers, me and the lads. Well, you still need to talk about it some more to get your back straight, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a, a triple-barreled surname for us here, Valentin Hundorop Thomas. They've had to extend the box for his name there. That's uh, <laughs> interesting. But straight into things. Heel Flug starts with a double a kite loop with a delayed back row on the second loop. Punches the sky. He's pretty stoked about that. And he'll be happy that he's got the good strength of wind for his heat. We have seen some of them drop, but he seems to make it work on that ocean rodeo. Do you say rodeo or rodeo? Rodeo. Good. You're correct. Didn't nice. want to have to correct che you. Cheers, mate. Okay, 7.0 on the you board. You love correcting me. Do I? No. I don't. You're the best. Thank you, Ruben. You, We're having a great time <laughs> here. It's Lewis Crathen and Ruben Linton talking you through all of this. Can we see Valentin... With an Ooh, upset here. also wanted to going for a double, but I think what worked in Gil's favor is that he opened the heat with a banger over move with a double mega loop, laid back roll, which definitely got his adrenaline pumping. And here we see Valentin's answer, which is just a mega loop laid back roll with an added rotation, uh, which is definitely not going to measure up to uh, to Gil's first uh, trick. Score it for me, Rubes. Uh, Gilles Fleur? Uh, yeah, there it is. Too it's late. already... Uh, yeah. I was gonna four seven, yeah. I was going to say like seven-ish. Cool. There's another double... Double G move. Yes. Okay. That's that's <laughs> true. Yes, it is. Let me check here. Yep. G is the first letter in his name here. So that will be a double G move. And look, he gets that first loop done before the apex. He's going on the way up there. He has all his the time so fast. in the world. And he just keeps pulling it around very nicely. And uh, I think we're going to see some more solid performance from him as the wind starts increasing throughout this uh, event. And what is Valentin going to do? Is he going to go for a double? He needs to wham it all out. Oh, no. Again, the mega loop laid back roll. Ooh. Kind of the same move. I like that one footer, though. That's added a little extra. I think they might upgrade that. To a little a tiny bit extra. 5.5. Five. Or not. Against double G, you need to throw doubles as well. I mean, he's spinning twice, so it's something double. I'm curious, Ruben, what does the G stand for? I've been explaining you three times now. Well, what does it stand for? Gangster. Oh, I didn't hear you. Uh, okay. <laughs> <I> didn't <laughs> it comes from OG. <laughs> no, it's double double G. Uh, the guy's got heel vlugged here, not gangster vlugged. So we'll have to disagree on it. We'll agree to disagree. Gangster. G stands He's for? a double gangster because he throws double mega double gang A double gangster. Uh, exactly. Well, well, that's well, that's makes dangerous. sense to you. That's dangerous. It's having a gangster and then there's a double gangster. That's okay, enough gangster talk. But OG is on the water taking on uh, Valentin Hoenderop who has uh, got his hands full to try and edge out uh, Giel Vlucht who is just throwing doubles after doubles. And uh, hopefully some S-loop action as well. Giel loves to get, get the speed, get the height. And now he's going for the uh, double. Yep. The booby loop. With a double kite loop. Now, what I like about Hill here is that he, he seems to make these double kite loops stick, even though, he, I mean, he's gone pretty high there. That's a pretty high one. But his core tension is so good with the kite that he really gets every ounce of tension in contact with that kite, which is, it looks like what you need to get that kite going around. The last thing you need is to be going into a mega loop railies, which I've never liked that technique. You go straight towards the kite, Ruben, and you lose contact. You get that slack in the kite. These riders need tension to keep these kites working. He's got really good core position, and that's how he seems to get it round every time. Do I feel some tension here, Lewis? 
some line tension, yeah. Definitely. Whoa, Valentin Hunderop taking it to the skies with a mega loop, a laid back roll, board off with an added rotation on the way down. Here we see the replay. We see him take off, get into that back roll, take his board off, and then he's tucking himself to put the board back on and he flings into another rotation and then stylish with another nose grab at the end. He's got some nice landings going on here, hasn't he, Valentin? He seems to be landing everything quite softly, quite nicely. He's got a good natural instinct here. So here goes double G going right foot forwards. I tell thee. Finally getting things straight here, Lewis. I uh, very much like it. Thank it's you for all the comments and joining us here, uh, interacting on the, on the, the YouTube live stream. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to let us know and uh, we will address them as they come on. Uh, if you want to find out more about the, the actual scoring, besides the scoring at the top of your screen where you just see the three best scoring tricks, uh, you can also uh, look more in-depth at the GKKiteWorldTour.com website. So you can uh, get some more insights uh, there as well. Just click on the live in the top right hand corner and you will be connected to what we can see here. And we're really smashing through these heats today. There's a lot to run. We don't know if they're going to finish today, but it's, I think it's looking good. So in comes left foot forwards into uh, this special world sailing event, Ruben. It's a world sailing event. He doesn't look too powered. I think he's riding his... What is he riding? It looks like an eight, it's but a nine. He's it, been doubling it. Let's not get yeah. crazy here. Well, he's been doubling his nine meter as well. That's how fast these, these kites are. But um, I think it's an eight meter that uh, Giel Vlucht is riding. But double looping. See how fast that, that kite just uh, turns around. So he's looking for the speed, really riding on the edge, but looks like a little low in the wind. Can he build it up? No, nope, no wind. Giel is definitely a rider that uh, prefers being very overpowered, so give him 50 knots, uh, 60 knots, and uh, he knows how to handle himself. And we've got a lot of action in store for you as we uh, get through the through the heats in round three. Uh, coming up is also Mark Jacobs uh, taking on Edgar Ulrich. After that, in heat four, we have Liam Whaley from Spain taking on Jason van der Spuy in South Africa. And uh, Valentin uh, answering uh, with some nice tricks there to uh, up his scores. Steven Seagal, double S? No. No. No, okay. mate, that's All not right. how it works. Let's not go there, okay. No. All right, just thought I'd throw it out there. So left foot forwards coming in there. He looks powered now. Double board off. Oh, with an added forward rotation. It wasn't super high, but definitely a critical move. Looping his kite twice. Whilst taking off his board with his front hand. So he's taking off. He's looping the kite with his back hand. Whilst taking the board off with his front hand. Fully stretching out like a Superman kind of move. And as he tucks in to put the board back on. He gets swung into a little forward rotation. Just before the landing there. Uh, just missing this uh, trick from Valentin Hunderab. But it was uh, definitely not a double. And I don't think it's going to edge out uh, Giel scores. So uh, here you see Giel scoring uh, some nice sevens as well. So the wind is... Uh, They're saying, Ruben, that we will be able to get this done today by 7 o'clock. Um, I'm not sure if that's including the ladies. Some of you asking about the ladies yesterday. They're all the way up to the semi-finals. They had an epic day yesterday. Yep. Uh, some really big moves from them. But we are currently in round three. Heat two, Gilles Vlug against Valentin. And uh, Gilles riding around that box there, just trying to find every ounce of the wind. There are the spectators lining the shores. They're facing south as we look out to the water now, looking dead on around southwest. I want to see kite size. Mm. I think it's a seven meter. And that's kind of the risk that you take in these uh, conditions, which change going up and down, getting stronger, getting lighter. That on the seven meter, you might be on the power, just like Gilles finds himself here. Uh, he's riding a, quite a big bar on a small kite as well, uh, making it spin even faster. He's pumping. He's pumping. He's uh, Lewis with the double L. Easy. I didn't understand that. I uh, just did you open your mind, free your mind. <laughs> it's Steven Seagull. <laughs> I don't think it's spelt like that. Either way, here goes 
Peel fluked. And he's got the double oh, in here oh, on the... Oh, oh, he just got the kite ref. Wow, finally. We see a crash from Peel and uh, didn't um, maybe get the height he needed. He's gone for the doobie board off double booby, loop. Booby loop. Booby loop board off. And that was a single front roll, so it was the boogie board off front roll, but he's gone it with a double kite so loop, of booby. course. Get it right. I'm not sure about that. A Sorry. front roll with a double kite loop is a booby loop, so Whoa. booby loop board off. Meanwhile, Ruben, whilst we're discussing the booby loop, we've just seen a massive... That is upping it a little bit here. So it's 10 metres from Hill from his height from that last trick. But how high in the sky did Valentin get here during this mega loop board Why? off? With tic -tac, a tic-tac. With so a tic-tac. Did he land it? Yep. He lands all his moves so softly. He's landing softer than most here today. What are they going to score here for him? So very uh, critical to uh, take your... Uh, board off by the fin and then actually spinning it around grabbing it by the handle and then uh yeah putting it back on but the critical moment is when you actually spin the board around that the board can just fly away if you don't position it correctly uh, on the wind it can just take it away and then you land without a board land without a board crash without a board still waiting for that score to come in from valentine because it's been yeah double no Ooh, he just had to rewind. abort his uh, his move there but yeah getting a nice rewind during that move yeah, we are getting to the closing stage of this heat. Uh, Heel looks like he's been in control for a while. I wonder if he was thinking about bringing that kite round in an s loop there. Still, I want to see, what did that score come in from Valentin? From Because uh, I'm not seeing Tic Tac. In the, there we are. Tic Tac coming into the category now. 6.13 is what Whoa, he scored. This is big. Absolutely massive with three rotations and a, a mega loop. Oh, he can't take it. He just goes over the nose, and uh, one feels like he might need to take it. How did he crash this, Ruben? So he goes in the back roll, right on the takeoff, gets a nice yank, and then he's super high still, so he's just having too much forward speed. And, yeah, the chop is doing him in, so he couldn't uh, keep his balance on the on the landing there. And in the comments, joining us uh, is, as well, uh, Billy Parker, making me very happy seeing you, brother. I miss you. And uh, there's always an invite for you if you want to uh, come show your extreme moves. You're one of the most uh, badass kiteboarders on the planet, and uh, I can't wait to ride with you again and hopefully see you in competition. If you are still feeling fit and strong, definitely come show what you've got because you uh, definitely uh, yeah, always stand out in competitions and uh, can combine all the powered handle passes with the board offs and the mega loops. So let's see it, Billy Parker. So when you're mixing it up in the comments section here of our live stream, beware. Some of these riders actually form a king of the air riders. They know their stuff. Billy, we miss you around, actually. And uh, what is going on here with this very strange gust as my attention got turned to the water uh, suddenly with a, a, an Evo? Is, who is that out on the water in this next hit? It must have been Edgar Ulrich. There. He loves just, playing around, man. Like, even does. if it's not his heat and he feels the gust, he can just not contain himself and hold himself back. He's just sending it. And he knows this spot like no one else. And uh, he's been training here a lot of times. And uh, he knows how to handle the gust and get that second lift and just be very playful with it. What a what an athlete. Kite loop front mob. That was what I remember from Billy Parker. They didn't really know how to score it at King of the Air. He had that move down. He had it down. He's another one that gets added to the conversation with the hooked in to unhooked moves along with Tom Herbert. He had to be involved in that conversation, so we apologize. But let's get back to the present here. It's Mark Jacobs, a former King of the Air winner Woo! up against Edgar Ulrich, who's ripping right now from France. The Kiwi against the Baguetman. Both very skilled riders, very fit, very capable. And uh, we're going to see some uh, epic action because these boys have got what it takes. I think their bag of tricks is quite equal. And um, their preference of the tricks they do is also quite equal. So let's see who can go the highest and the most extreme in this uh, in this heat coming right up. Mark Jacobs from New Zealand against Frenchman Edgar Ulrich. And... Someone is asking, when does a trick actually count as landed? Because the last one was landed, but then he crashed. So he crashed. You need to ride out of it and be in control for uh, yeah, as long as you need to ride out of a trick. They ain't messing about here now. They're going straight into uh, the heat. So it's wow. a S loop? No, it's a booby loop. This was a booby loop. We don't have the same view as you back home, by the way. So uh, let's uh, just see what that was. You think it was a booby? Yeah, it was a double uh, kite loop with okay. a forward rotation. 6.57 from Mark Jacobs for that move to open his account. Here comes Edgar Uri. It's only 11 meters in height for Mark Jacobs, but it looked quite quite good. Muito top. It's a 
bit higher maybe from Edgar. Can he stick it? A yes, he can. Massive contra loop that was. There's the replay from Edgar Ulrich's trick. He goes massive. Yep, contra loop. Contra boogie board off. Yeah, good opening start then from him. Update we have from Clement now coming in nicely is that uh, he is in a stable condition. He is waiting to get an x-ray for further checks. So nice to receive that information that he's stable. He's in good hands and uh, yeah, he was still smiling. So that's a good sign. But what I find interesting is he look at Marks Jacobs with his S-loop. So it was a forward rotation with an S-loop. But uh, here's the replay of that Mark Jacobs move. He loops the kite one way and then up. I said S loop. No, man. Okay, we're going to need the comments here because I'm pretty sure I said S loop. And you said I said no. it's a forward rotation with S loop. Did it? So, well, but we, it's we right. did always go back on YouTube. It's, <laughs> all, it's all right. <laughs> you hear what you want to hear, uh, Lou. I do. But what I was going into is uh, the score that Edgar Ulrich got from his uh, contra loop was actually bigger than Mark got for his double. The height. They like the height. Look yeah, at his height. The, they need the height, yep. Again, a contra loop. Woo! Landing it. Was it a back roll? Did you see it? So I'm just having my score. Okay, here comes Edgar Ulrich. Here, yeah, so. into the back roll. Double back roll. Look at that. So athletic. So controlled. Keeping that board off. Stretching out the legs. Very stylish there from Edgar Ulrich. And uh, yeah, he's definitely uh, getting a little bit more height than Mark Jacobs uh, was getting. But uh, these guys are going head to head. Cool, that DJ's going for it down there, Ruben. DJ lost the plot. Oi, ay, not getting the height to get away with that. But that, he did. Yeah, just barely, but I didn't like the look of that. Tell me, why, why didn't you like the look of it, Ruben? Because he's riding too small for Kite. He's not getting the height. It's like, no, it's, no, it's not happening. It wasn't big. It you wasn't ne big. You never want to be landing any of your mega loops like that, where you just come down and you think, oh, I'm just making it. It's never a good feeling. And it's typically associated with riding um, in winds that aren't strong enough. And as we learn our mega loop journeys, we like to try, you know, 25 knots. And But, but the more you get into the journey of the mega loops, the safety is actually in over 35, 40. You get that extra space. One must think of an airline pilot that has more room to manoeuvre. And this is his signature move. He's got his odds on for this, Ruben. Ooh. I think it was a double front roll kite loop. I've got to make sure we get but this But was right. it a contra? Like he's riding Let's to the see. right. He is taking no, off his not. board. No, it's a kite loop. Yeah, he's taking off his board with his front hand. So pulling with his back hand, making it a kite loop. And uh, letting it clean in full speed again there from Edgar Ulrich. But Mark Jacobs. What does he need? He can also jump both ways. His... Uh, preferred way of jumping was always to the right side and he was uh, having to learn everything switch because that's what uh, scored good in the Red Bull Mega Loop uh, or sorry in the Red Bull King of the Air in Cape Town where the wind comes from the left let's bring you up to speed here now then we are just getting a replay actually of Mark Jacobs with his move to the right but we are in round three double loop from him he needs the height really to start scoring a bit more but if you just look well, these riders are filling the score sheets now. That's the difference we have now from the earlier heats. They're all the way up to 20s already, and we can only start to think about who needs what and when when we get to that stage. It's six, uh, sorry, seven trick attempts, their best three Look count. at full speed going into the air massively. Edgar Ulrich. Triple, four, four rotations with a board off oh. and a loop. Ah, oh, no, that's... Counted as a butt check, so they all tried to rotate him, Ruben, as he hit the water there. He had an extra one, so one, one two, three, three, and then what? One more, and they in the back roll still wanted more into four and a half. Actually, took it though, he did take it's it. It will check. count as a butt check for that move for him. We go straight back over to Mark Jacobs. Let's take a look at what he's been doing I, so far. He's got his kite loop front roll. I love the height there. uh Edgar is getting though on that uh, D lap. Uh, I don't think that's enough to uh, to take on Edgar Ulrich at this time. Might have been a double loop there. So on our screens there, we don't get to see the kite. We can look out the window at times. We didn't choose to that time. So let's see what the judges say about that. Our scores aren't refreshing as I'd like in front of me, which hence I've gone a little bit quiet. 
Yeah, okay, you're right, uh, Michael Erard in the comments there. Um, why do we call it an S-loop for Mark? Uh, it's more like a loop plus a contra loop. That is uh, very true. But I, uh, actually, it's not what it's called. I, I agree with you on the on the critical. An S-loop needs to be pulled at the critical uh, time. Otherwise, it is indeed just a yeah, kite loop with a contra loop, uh, making it uh, yeah less extreme. We're just talking about the trick families in front of us here and how they uh, score this. This one actually comes up as innovation. Okay, we're up to date here with my scores. So this heat, pretty tight here, 20.97 to 19.90. There is 1.7 in this heat at the moment, Ruben. And now we draw our attention to Edgar Uric. He's going to be going for his fifth trick attempt. His lowest trick score counting at this moment in time is a 6.7. Oh, double board off. Yeah, double loop board off. There we go with Edgar Ulrich and putting the board on time. Will that replace his 6.87, Ruben? Ooh. Which uh, trick was the 6.87? So it was it was in a contra loop front roll board off. Yeah, this I, I think this was better. It wasn't necessarily that high or the lines were not that angled. It's big. I can see some scores coming in here so far. It's gone into uh, an eight as we see. Oh, what has wow. happened there? So he uh, scored very well there, Edgar Ulrich, for the double kite loop board off. And, uh, oh, it's Jacobs. a double. It's a double contra on that that Mark Jacobs went for. Now, we're looking at scores. We're looking out the window. There's so much going on with the speed of these tricks. So sometimes we miss one of them. But we're definitely looking at Edgar Ulrich. They're testing us now, Ruben. This is what's happening. And Whoa, big contra loop. Front row contra oh, loop board off. Can he stick it? Um, he's got the whole oh, yes, he's pulled through it. on there. What a speed, what a height. This was absolutely massive from Edgar Ulrich. He's taken off, boom, almost getting leveled with that contra loop. And look at this last minute rotation onto the water. I think oh. they have to score some of that, Ruben. Yeah, yeah, definitely get some points deducted. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to better his score. So no, no worries on that. Mark Jacobs in a bit of spot of bother here then as Edgar Ulrich with that 8.13 came in for that kite loop board off of his that's the category here we might be saying kite loop board off we're not necessarily saying it wasn't a double but that's the category it goes on this is a double as well for mark jacobs in the back roll board off uh, category as well landing that super clean ruben so unless we're looking out the window here you aren't seeing if the kite is double looped or one. not on that screen and he goes for the second one yeah you have to look at the bar and the lines how many times they go up and down but a double loop for uh, for Mark Jacobs there. He's just missing some of the height. He should have gone for a, a size bigger kite, I think. That is going to get rid of one of those six point somethings of his, though, I think. 6.57 is going to get knocked out. The 7.27 gets put into his scores. But there's still a big... There's, there's a difference here. Edgar Uric with his two moves over seven, is uh, ed, ed, edging this right now. Edgar is edging it up. Like, he is... Getting the height here. Oh, oh, double contra loop board off. No, oui, almost landing on his board with two so cartwheels. Your signature, your signature My signature crash. move, yeah, well done, Edgar. <laughs> Ten. Well, <laughs> so here we see back roll, and then he loops the kite forward twice. So double contra loop, but wasn't getting the height from the start. So still ballsy to still go for it. Yeah, he didn't go out and get the height. I hope he's okay there. Now, was that his seventh? One, two... This guy's made of rubber. Four, I'm sure he's five. fine. That was his seventh trick attempt. He was really trying to up it here. So let's think about what Mark Jacobs needs. He's currently... needs 1.10 on his lowest score already, which would be a seven point seven point seven three. I think he needs here, Mark Jacobs. And I don't think he's bothered with it. I think he's... Uh, what do we miss there he, from Mark Jacobs? Done. Was, was he done already? He's done. Yeah, he kicked off the heat, so um, he, okay. had, he had So he's kicked attempts. off the heat, but he's been kicked out of this one. The former Red Bull King of the Air winner, not quite sticking it together. I want to know what size. It was a six meter, Ruben. He was on a six yeah, meter. Yeah, that's outlet. why. That's why. That's why you get for holding back, Mark Jacobs. You're a big guy. You're strong. You should have been on a seven. Come on, make me proud next time, brother. No, thanks for the show. I uh, hope the, the wind... Yeah, that's a gamble too. You know, the wind can kick right back in and then the six meter would have been perfect for him and he was able to perform all of his S loops, double contra loops and double kite loops. But unfortunately, the wind wasn't pulling through uh, for Mark Jacobs there. We move on, Ruben, to Liam Whaley from Spain and Jason van der Spy from South Africa. He looks like he means business. That's a scary profile picture. 
No? Does that guy not look like he yeah, just he's, wants to, like, he's, jump through the camera lens and do a triple loop? Yeah. Yeah, he looks like a convict. But, uh... What? <laughs> I actually did think that, but I thought... Um, what a mugshot. No, uh... <laughs> a convicted kite addict. But very interesting... That's what he looks like. Very interesting heat coming right up uh, with Liam Whaley, a uh, known competitor, world champion, and just knows how to uh, handle himself in competitions. So, um, yeah, let's see what he's got for us. He's got the double loops. He's got all the board offs, the rotations, and the style. And what is unique from uh, Liam as well is that he uh, sometimes tried to land blind after a big air trick, which is uh, yeah, definitely upping the the difficulty. Are we going to see anything like that from Liam, do you think? As, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you, mate. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, sorry. Again. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Here there, he starts with a double mega loop. Uh, from Liam Whaley there, but I was just going to say, he is on a very small kite there as well, very long lines, uh, so I hope he can get the right uh, critical angle. Is this a six meter, uh, Lewis? Oh, booby loop, uh, straight out of the bed, what an opening. I think it might be a seven, I don't know, just the way that kite was looping. I'm being offered a sweet and I'm saying yes, I don't know what it is. Such a sweet. Why am I being film taking this? What's in I'll here? I'll no, we should be talking about this replay here. Uh, the man in white, Jason van der Spey. Uh, that looked like a nice big one. Mm, Is that a contrary variation? I got distracted. You never get distracted, especially by a chocolate. But there is a... Wow. There's the replay, actually. So it was of a kite loop variation. It looked like a doobie loop uh, for me from Jason van der Spey. His score's coming in here now. They look pretty good. 6.90 for a kite loop. That was a board off as well. We missed that bit. In the previous heat, it was not uh, Shredgar, it was Edgar Ulrich. Shredgar is uh, notorious from uh, from the US. And this is uh, Edgar from uh, from France. But here, Liam Whaley, absolutely going massive. Landing it clean, full speed, very well contained. Putting scores on the board. Here we see the replay. It was a double kite loop with a back roll. Very well done. But like I say, he's riding also a six meter, spins very fast. I like to see some uh, more critical angles, but we're just getting started in this heat uh, between Liam Whaley and Jason van der Spau. Both racking up some good scores, so they're hungry for the win. They're hungry to continue and uh, make it to the top of, uh, of the riders list here. It's day two of the Lords of Tram. It's the GKA Big Air here, Kite World Cup in the south of France. The collaboration between the GKA and Lords of Tram now. Fully in place. This is high in the sky, Ruben Lenton. And this is Jason van der Spy. High in the sky. My oh my. Oh, but unfortunately, bombing out on the landing. Look what he did here. He went up with a back roll. Got some massive height and a yank through that loop whilst he was taking off his board. Oh, but just not stomping that landing. Too much downforce. Couldn't hold on to it. Just couldn't take it. VDS, Jason van der Spy, as he's known. But here's another double loop. Board off from Liam Whaley, who lands it so effortlessly. Look at that control with the kite bar. It's not over until you ride out of that. So he's getting really good acceleration up into the air. Gets the second loop done. Lovely and extended out of his board offs as well, Ruben, which the judges do like to see. So Liam Whaley is uh, really in the mood here today. Yeah, and what was making that move extra critical is that he wasn't jumping that high, but still performing a double loop and a board off. And the angle of the second loop was... Yeah, getting closer to my liking. So, um, yeah, nice one from Liam Whaley there and uh, scoring well into the sevens. Well done, Liam. Over we go to Jason Van de Spey with a back roll variation. Now we start to see the momentum firmly in place with Liam Whaley, who's already got three sevens over, over the South African, who kicks the board off there and will have to body drag back. I don't get the sensation here, Ruben, that we're looking at that mental nuking wins just yet. We just look out to see. It looks a bit calm. Look at that arm off the bar from Liam Whaley. We just don't see that sort of body language from our kiteboarders when it's pushing 40, 45 knots in. We know that's going to come through at some point, Ruben, when we least expect it, probably, as it does so often in this region of the world. We are just a couple of hours north of Barcelona. The nearest city here really is Perpignan. On the Mediterranean side of the south of France, we are now looking towards the southwest as we look to our rider coming left foot forwards. The rider is, of course, Liam Whaley, well known in the kiteboarding industry, freestyle master and big air. Here he comes, accelerating. Lots of speed there. What's he got for us, Ruben? 
He's got a six meter flying and taking off, going for the... Oof, not getting the height. That's because of the six meters. I want riders to step it up, maybe take a kite kite size bigger, just to make sure you have the power to get that height. He was going again for that uh, booby loop, oh, but just crashing it out. I'm eh? not sure he's on a six. I'm not sure. Are you sure about that? Yeah. I feel uh, I feel it's a six. You feel it. I don't these, know. These little kites just, I don't know, they feel a little twitchy, a little too tweaky, a little too easy. I look at that kite and think it's the width from tip to tip that lends me to think maybe it's seven. And the way it's kite looping, I don't feel his kite's looping too quick. So we'd love to get to the bottom of that. Maybe you can tell us what you think online in the comments. But I'm going seven. Ruben's going seven. six. But he's seven. going seven. Uh, he's uh -huh. going well enough. But this man here, Jason Van Der Spy, there he is going for the back roll variation, double back roll uh, with the ball off on a, was that a mega loop or a contra loop? Didn't quite see his hand on the bar there. But Jason Van Der Spy definitely needed a score. And so we can watch, yes, it's a kite loop variation backhand from uh, the South African. But uh, yeah, thank you for the comments. Thanks for joining us there on uh, YouTube uh, during the live stream here uh, of the GKA World Tour, Big Air Discipline. And um, yeah, people are commenting that we shouldn't be calling an S loop an S loop if it's actually just a loop uh, combined with a contra loop. And I totally agree with that. We will uh, watch our words with the S loop. And here we see Liam Whaley going for an absolute banger of a trick. I'd like to see the replay on that one. Okay, so here he's edging, he's doing a little pre-pop, edges, one, oh, that was the S loop, boogie S, absolutely incredible. Curious to see uh, what score uh, comes in uh, there for Liam. Here's Liam Whaley, focused as ever with that lovely stance he has. He's in control here of uh, men's round three, heat number four. And Jason van der Spy getting his 6.10 score on there. We'll still be in this now. Both riders have completed four moves. In fact, Liam's done five. So we now go over to Jason van der Spy. Those of you paying real attention here, just as we are, will notice that he's changed kite. And I wonder, is that good? You never know what sort of wind you're going to get. But he's lining up some doubles here now, is uh, VDS. JVDS, if you want to be critical here. Definitely, here he comes. definitely critical. We're here at the top of the game of the big air discipline. The best riders in the world throwing down at this beautifully flat water spot in Barcares. And here, Jason from the Spy focusing on getting height and the double loop with a late back roll. And unfortunately, crashing out. And he needs to do better than that to uh, edge out uh, Liam Whaley because Liam is on fire. Here's the replay. It wasn't super high. Uh, he went for the Delayed back roll on the second loop, interestingly, that time, which may, may be down to how he felt on the way up. But Liam Whaley's got this by 10 points at the moment. And Jensen van der Spy is only going to have two more trick attempts to try and improve on uh, his score so far. Liam Whaley then, what's he going to try and improve on as he jumps up? Ooh, he almost wanted to go for the Eslu board off again, try and better his score on that one. But, uh, yeah, he wasn't getting the height and, unfortunately, not, uh, not no time to take his board off. Ruben, here is, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Here sorry. you see him take off and just yeah, not getting the height to uh, to take his board off. Yeah, well worth talking about that replay. Uh, do we think he's going to land blind here? Too dangerous, too risky? I mean, with all the chops and all the distance covered and especially the gusts that uh, keep blasting through this place, I think it's going to be very tricky and I don't think we're going to see it. Maybe later on. But uh, Liam Whaley is definitely doing good with a 22.7 score. Uh, with his three highest scoring tricks here in this heat in uh, round number three, heat number four of the men's division. Here, Jason van der Spy, oh, unfortunately, have to abort the trick because uh, a lack of wind, no good takeoff. It's not a bad display. This heat is not ran by minutes. It's not a time is not a, really a factor. Uh, the riders get seven attempts, seven trick attempts, that is, of which the three highest scoring tricks will be uh, making up the overall score. And um, they get 40 seconds, roughly 40 seconds to uh, take off to perform their trick. So they might be able to ride back and forth one time if, uh, if it's not right, as long as they don't take off. Liam not happy there with the, that gust of wind. I think, I, you know, I think what we'd like to be seeing here actually up there is perhaps which trick number that they're on, Ruben. That could be useful for us to see. But 
I take that as bad communication. We need to be updating you a bit more about how these tricks are scored. It is their best three scoring tricks. The maximum score of 30 will be scored because it's out of 10 for their best three tricks. And right now, Liam Whaley looks to me like he's got this one well in the bag. He's messing around down there. He knows, actually, the scores. In fact, Jason van der Spy cannot get back oh, into this one. It's an S-loop for the crowd. Oh, yeah. S-loop. And, uh, and like we're talking about, did he just land it blind after an S-loop? Holy moly. I don't believe it. How has someone told him what we're talking about? Jason van der Spy, just as we talked about sketchy landings blind, he just... <laughs> he just what? He just just and he held it. He what held what it would you score this? The, uh, I, I want to uh, say a 10, uh, Ruben. It, it is very innovative. I definitely yeah. sh should say like a 9. Yeah. This is because the S loop wasn't super critical, it wasn't massive high, but just <laughs> Defin like the, the definitely not a 0 0.4. No, seven. so let's see what happens with the scores. But I don't think he's gonna outperform uh, uh, Liam Whaley here. But nice innovation there by Jason van der Spire to land this S loop into blind. Where did that come from, <laughs> Ruben? We said it, we manifested that. And he didn't just land it and quickly switch round, he landed it and looked at the judges. He was riding blind for ages, <laughs> like, I got <laughs> this. <laughs> Just when you think it can't surprise you, so it's actually just come in, I think, at uh, 7.13. But this could still change, I think. Uh, this could still change. So let's Why? see. Why? Why could that still? Ooh, well, because someone uh, might, one of the judges might be sitting there just thinking, oh, come on. No, yeah, it did change a little yeah, bit. 7.5. Seven, seven <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are uh, allowed potentially. Oh, it's gone up again. It's 7.7 .7 now. <laughs> it keeps going. What a deal! What an absolute great performance. Unfortunately, Jason wasn't able to uh, to get all his best tricks done. But um, yeah, Liam Whaley, congratulations! Very nice performance. Thanks for the show. And uh, we will be moving on to uh, heat number five with Jeremy Berlando and Luca Ceruti. Now, if we really want to be critical, we got a comment here saying, "Was that loop to blind? Was it to wrapped?" Is no. the real question. No, it was too blind. Trust me, wrapped will be the other way. He was moving left as he took off, correct? Yeah, but it's about the direction he's riding. Well, he was riding left when he took off. When there. he took off, yeah, but like when he was landing, like if he would be... He's going straight downwind. No, it, it was blind, mate. It was not... Okay, all right. Uh, his kite was on the I right just side. Thought I'd just throw it out there. As, yeah, uh, fair enough. You know... Someone asked it's always good to analyze what's actually yeah. going down. But uh, yeah, at the replay, I saw correctly that... Uh, it was definitely backwards. Yeah, I agree with you. I also saw that. But right so I'm going to have to put the microphone down here yeah. so we try, and, uh, <laughs> to, we try and look at this. So I think it was like this, Ruben. So he's going this way and gone like that, yeah? He was yeah, with yeah. the kite on that side. But he's going yeah, it's kind of edging that way, so... Uh, I think it's blind, I think right, it's blind. okay, I don't know if it's... Uh, but we will I remember on. having this uh, big discussion once with Joe Siastolo, who's regularly commentating here on the GK, and we spent about two hours up, um, I want to say in the bedroom, but I know where this many minds would start going, but actually we had the boards on our feet, but, and we were thinking about which way <laughs> these things all have to be landed, and we, it was brilliant exploring... But with wrapped, you're landing. with wrapped, your bar should be on, on your uh, upwind side, and with blind, the bar's on the downwind side. Try telling that to a wakeboarder. All right. They Spend don't more have an upwind or a downwind side, do they? Spend more time at the bar. We need, uh, <laughs> we need no way font to, to, to wrap that one up for us, perhaps. But, a um, and he might have even closed his eyes for that landing, so then it was definitely a blind landing and not okay. a wrapped landing. All right. So that's sealed the deal. But unfortunately, uh, Jason van der Spy, uh, his competition is coming uh, to an end. And uh, Jeremy Berlando and Lucas Ceruti, two young guns, the new generation, ready to fire off their best big air tricks right here at the GKA Kite World Tour in Barcares in uh, France. We're one, uh, one and a half hour away from Montpellier and uh, two hours from Toulouse, about two and a half hours above uh, Barcelona. So uh, a really beautiful place here uh, by the Mediterranean Sea. J Bo up against Luca Ceruti then. Another big heat here, Ruben, and we go straight in with Jeremy Bellando, who doesn't go so big there. As, it, oh, the wind's calmed down. You can almost hear a pin drop here in the live stream booth. Yeah, yeah the water has calmed down. Uh, you can see the flags are even uh, playing around a little bit. So let's see uh, what the race director thinks about the conditions. But the riders will let us know if it's not really suitable, if uh, the lull is too long. 
Um, but yeah, maybe they just have to wait around a little bit until the wind kicks back in because it can change any second here in Barcares. Come on, Billy, you can't just give me a no. I want a descriptive report on what that move was because I'm not letting that go yet. Um, back to the action then. It's Lewis Crathen here commentating in the south of France. It is, of course, the Lords of Tram for the fifth edition of Lords of Tram at the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup. It's the second time we've been here at this spot in Bacares. Uh, those of you who have competed in the past or travelled around the world will know it's a big one on the calendar, the Mondial du Vent, which is not what the event is part of anymore. But this region, famous for its cold Tramontana wind, which comes from the Pyrenees as we pan left from south to southeast, following this rider on his direction to the northeast as he goes for a tic tac. Uh, I think it was a front row with a contra loop. Correct. Perhaps, but no big height on that one, Ruben. In fact, 9.4 meters. Yeah, he wasn't having the wind for that. Like he took off out of the screen, but uh, completed um, his uh, forward rotation with tic tac and a contra loop indeed. Uh, but yeah, with the butt check, it's not going to score too well. So I'm being told here that Luca is flying under Italian. No, he's got the South African flag here. Maybe they changed it back. Maybe they changed it back. Uh, here's uh, Jeremy Belando, a bit higher this time with the uh, Mega Loop back roll board off, multiple rotations and grabs. But the wind just on one of those infamous lulls here at the moment, Ruben. Yeah, here goes Jeremy. He's going up in the sky. Taken off his board during that back roll and the loop and a very stylish nose grab to finish things off. If I had to guess, he may well have become Italian just to get through the passport gate. A bit easier in Europe than maybe his South African passport. I should know. I've got two daughters with South African passports. Here we go. Whoa, how many rotations was that, Ruben, with that contra loop? I'd say three rotations, but uh, I got a little bit dizzy looking at that. So let's see the replay here from Luca Ceruti in the white lycra. He's going forward once. Taken off his board twice, three, three, three rotations. Yeah, we can agree on that. Nice, I like yeah, it. That's good. Love you. What a team. What a team. We're finally agreeing here at 2.27 in the afternoon. You've got to have that competitive edge, even, uh, of course, on the water, but in the live stream booth. We want to make this the best we can, and uh, we want to be giving this as much accurate description as we can. So here comes j -Bo, Jeremy Belando from Spain. He's flying under... Oh, no, sorry. That's not j -Bo. No, yeah, it blue, is. Blue it was j yeah, So yeah, yeah. on my screen, is oh, I was looking at the Surfer app. Come on, idiot. Nice. Come on. But yeah, somebody uh, was saying that Jason should have won his previous heat with the last trick that ah, he did. Come on, he should have won. Come on, come man. Come on, man. This is robber robbery. Yeah. Uh, no, but uh, it is uh, the three highest scoring tricks. You cannot win with just one high scoring trick. So... Um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, for for uh, Jason, Liam uh, just had a few uh, more technical tricks with some more height. You know, you can win with one trick at the Mega Loop, Red Bull Mega Loop. Red Bull Mega Loop event, different format, extreme conditions, a gnarly Dutch storm. Um, also coming up, the the wind window opened yesterday as well, so we're on standby for that and uh, can't wait for it. j -Bo left foot forwards then with that green slingshot. The overcast sky, very visible on uh, your screens as uh, this is a bit higher Ruben I like a bit of this this was very big uh, multiple front rotations with the board off and a, a kite loop as well uh, maybe two and a half if you want to be really Whoppa. critical straight into that front spin with the board off with his front hand looping the kite back two nice. and a half for me that Rubes perfect not three Fine. Yeah, we agree. Yeah. Oh, we agree on yeah, that. Nice. That's good. <laughs> 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 oh, tic-tac and into a mega loop backbreaker. So, oh. unfortunately, that one's not going to score, I think, for Luca Ceruti, who changes positions, these two in the scoring now. It's getting pretty close. What went wrong here, Ruben? Yeah, he wasn't high enough to uh, end the kite, not in the right position. So, uh, yeah, he needed some more wind, some more height in order to, uh, to rock it. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in here into the GKA World Kite Tour uh, here in Barcares in France. You're here with me, Ruben Lenten, and of course, uh, Louis Crathern, bringing you some, uh, some nice reports here from the, from the live streaming tower as we are looking out over the nice flat water spot where the wind is cranking. And we've got the, the world's best big air riders. So right now, Luca Ceruti taking on Jeremy Berlando and uh, Jeremy well in the lead here. But um, yeah, it's only the three highest scoring tricks and the guys have seven attempts in order to put them on the board. 
Maybe you've just tuned in here and you're thinking, right, we've got 10 meter jumps going on in our data in the bottom left hand corner. Like, what's actually going on here? I would not be going anywhere because at any given moment, this wind will come in, go over 40 knots, and we see the, the guys up there over 20 meters. Right now, it's uh, just a double back roll from J Bo, who didn't quite get the feeling there. But there's definitely a feeling around here at the moment, Ruben, of a, a bit of a light wind breeze blowing. You can just see it on the water, no white caps. And I wonder if any of these riders would be tempted to swap kites here, Ruben. Yeah, I mean, that's a gamble, and uh, that's why you have to uh, to choose for yourself on the water. It is a strategy. It is also competition. Um, yeah, the race directors are looking closely at the action, and if the law lasts for too long and the riders really cannot perform. But, uh, yeah, here, now he's already powered again, so it just changes every second, every minute here. And uh, with a little bit of patience, you can find the gust. And here we are looking at Luca Ceruti in the white Lycra, ready to build up some speed, riding just past the shoreline where the water is nice and flat, looking to build up the speed, build up that tension. No, he is not uh, not finding uh, finding the connection there. But that was a drone. I thought it was a rider through under the water. That was a bit strange. I think that was Yoppy flying his drone. Oh, who's that? Oops. Oh, getting the action. Yeah, no height there, really. Ruben, this is a oh, this is a tough heat, a tomahawk, a tough oh. tomahawk of a heat. There, here's the replay, and they just aren't getting the the jumps and the height that they uh, so often want. Yeah, just no time for it. He just chucked his board away and bombed it. But Had here, to get rid. Jeremy Berlando with the double back roll, board off Mega Loop. Unfortunately, also crashing this trick. Normally, he's uh, very consistent on this one. Still jumping a nice uh, 17 meters here. Woo, yeah, look at just that. like that, you find a gust, and uh, there you go. You're back off again. So this is really a, a tough heat we've joined now, or you've just joined us. We've been here all day talking you through it. But this one's close at the moment. It's not the usual consistent top scores we see, as this looks pretty nice to me. It looked like the left hand was on the bar there to me uh, for Luca uh, Teruti. So I think we've got a Contraloop family there, Ruben. Nice. So the contra loop, remember, is with the front hand. Yes, you see him do the board off with his back hand and then looping the kite forward. So that is a contra loop with uh, two rotations there for uh, Luca Ceruti putting a nice score on the board, I believe. Ooh, yeah. into the sevens. Yeah, wind is coming back again here, Ruben. It's just got that feeling around the But You can actually hear it in the live stream booth. You'll start to see that water change. Sun's starting to appear as well. You can just get this sense. You have to visit those, this location as any kite board in the world. It is extreme. It's wild. There's something beautiful about the intensity of the kiteboarding the wind is very strong great place to be in a motorhome as well you can drive around pretty much stay everywhere and stay in campsites and the port of Bacares are just so supportive of this event and it's wonderful to see that it's become an official world tour event with the GKA now but up into the skies is a doobie loop oh, it's a doobie contra with I edit, think. edit yeah. rotation on the way down so very nice from Jeremy Berlando here he goes, right foot forward. You see the little pre-pop, and then Rob edges right into it, chucks himself into the forward spin uh, three times with a contra loop. Not going to score too high because it wasn't super massive or extreme, but um, I don't think it's going to better his score. Oh, he is uh, improving a little bit there, moving up into the 18. Getting to crunch time in this heat, Ruben. There's not much in this at all. Point... Nine seven. Yeah, whoever wins this heat is uh, is on the money and moves on to the next round. Unfortunately, the loser is out of the competition, so it is really uh, crunch time, Lewis, and it is uh, no holding back at this time. Unfortunately, it is uh, very hard to find the gust at this minute, but. And it's going to go down to the last two tricks here. As we get the replay of Luca Truti. He would not have wanted this. I was. What was that outside? Sounded like one of the speakers blew up out there, but maybe that's a good thing. Um, yeah, now this heat. Still, and there's Jason van der Spy, well, Not Jason van der Spy, Jeremy Belando also performing a move very quickly. So things just happened very quickly around us there, Ruben. As uh, Jason... Jay Bo performing a double back roll with the board of as well. Didn't look too happy about it as he landed, but I think that heat is uh, almost, almost done. It's going to be Luca oh. Teruti. What's he going to need here to overtake him? It's very tight. He needs to upgrade. He's still got a 3.73 scoring, which is a contra loop front roll tic tac. 
which he can do like with his eyes closed. So let's see if he's going to better his contra loop. I believe so. Oh, no. Not getting the height on this one. So still going for the double. What? Oh, landing blind. He had to be blind. Wow. Can you believe it? With this wind's dying down, Ruben, we are seeing he needed 0 0.9. Or was it grabbed? Well, he was going he left. He, he was going the... left. That's all I'm saying. And then he, he He's was... going left. Oh, no. So that one, I think. Yeah, blind. But that was different than the last one. Yeah, but his kite was on this side. All right. His was blind. Okay, blind so landings. No rep. What he needed there, he had 3.73 scoring, and he only need, he needed a three. Oh, sorry, a 4.71 to advance there, Luca Turuti. And I think he's just thrown an absolute devastator here, oh. perhaps. Although, was he already in the lead? Yeah, no, he, he wasn't. Was, he, he wasn't. He, he, was was already, he was already in the lead. I've got it. It says second here on the back end. So, and uh, there's j -Bo with just a big loop, but... Big jump. Oh, so Jaybo actually this, had another this is just move. Just first rider, second rider. It doesn't say anything. No, but it, I think maybe they actually had one uh, more trick are, attempt uh, yeah. than we thought. Yes. So let's get to the bottom of this. So he still only scored. Well, flying out the screen there. Let's just be straight up here. Our scoring system's gone off a little bit here, so I can't tell you exactly what's going on. Apparently, unfortunately, because that was a really tight heat. I haven't got the the seventh trick come up on my back end scoring system and now it's just turned off so we always get this access directly to the judges scores what you can see on your screens is final so we are on so yeah what we can tell you is that was a tight heat so apologize we're not giving you the real insight that we're used to doing luke and jeremy didn't really have much in that at all and you see the riders getting very creative with those blind landings. As we started talking about it, then uh, they started throwing it. We saw uh, Jason van der Spy with his blind landing after the S-loop. And now after the double kite loop, uh, Lucas Ruti decided to land blind. And landing blind is super difficult, especially uh, with those kind of speeds coming down from such a height and landing in choppy conditions. So I think Lucas sneaked that. I'm um, just looking now. I can see his low score of three has been booted out on your screens mm -hmm. right there. Even though we've just had Lorenzo Casati on Cabrino versus Aaron Hadlow in the background there. How could that have been in the background whilst we're trying to work this one out? I think Luca might have sneaked that. Uh, and again, utilizing the wind, just being a bit lighter there. The water was flatter, Ruben. And we talked about it being too choppy to land blind or wrapped or whatever you want to call it backwards. Um, there, Sideways. Side Backside block side. Um, Aaron Hadlow's heat here with uh, Lorenzo Cassati, Italy versus England, and we all know how that turned out the other day. And a 2 1 drubbing over in Italy. We're good now. We're getting good at football again. It's like you don't watch football. You're more of a what, like a cricket person? A baller. More of a baller. That well, there's loads of sports with balls. What sort of balls do you, do you... Luca Turuti? The high performance one. <laughs> the big ones. <laughs> oh, the big ones like beach balls uh. and things like this. Basketballs. Well, we are definitely going to see some balls in the in the next heat. Moving on to heat six, we will see Lorenzo Cassati from Italy taking on Aaron Hedlow um, from the UK. And uh, this is going to be a very interesting heat. New generation versus the old dog. How can Aaron Hadlow be an own goal? Work that out. I'm reading the comments, mate. You just don't know what OG means. You just can't deal with it. Mate, if you score an OG, you score an own goal. Mate, it's not all about football. There's more in life than football, Lewis. Well, just about with kiteboarding as well. I was brought up on football, <laughs> Ruben. That's why I'm here today commentating. I've learned everything from the wonderful, complete polished package that is soccer You're around right. the oh, world. I thought you were speaking about your head. No. <laughs> <laughs> the complete polished package. Well, that's kind of you to uh, give me that compliment too, but... Uh, come nice. on, what are these scores doing up here? We know, we're pretty sure that Luke has <laughs> done this. Uh, just cracking up in the DJ or in the DJ booth. <laughs> in Original the gangster. <laughs> oh god, none of you guys uh, watch football, do you? No, no, stop it. This is not a football competition, Lewis. Move on. OG. Talk to any of my mates about an OG. It's not something you yeah. want to have on your title. My mates will know straight up what it means. So Hadlow versus 
Lorenzo Casati that just got that in there. You didn't help me there, Ruben. You was, I wasn't lending it for you to fill that. Actually, both of us had to be. These scores are not helping us on the score. So it's an AP flag up, Ruben. There it goes. That's nice. Uh, at least our director's paying why? attention. Uh, why is the AP flag uh, risen? I Ruben? don't know. Maybe the flag was bored and needed some airtime too. But uh, the AP flag is uh, actually just up for a break. Uh, now we will be taking a look at the. Uh, the p perfect polish package, the triple nice. P. There it is. The oh, can I touch it? I'm already P, touching yeah. it. Ooh, <laughs> it feels good. So it's Lewis Crathen here in the live stream booth, and I'm joined by Ruben Lenton. Ruben, are you enjoying yourself here? Absolutely fantastic. I mean, standing here with you, looking at the live stream, and uh, obviously looking out the window to uh, see the action, the big air action that all the riders are throwing down is absolutely phenomenal. I love being here. I love being part of it, and uh, the atmosphere is great. Sun is shining. The wind looks to be in a little lull, so I think that's why the AP flag is up right now. So on a little standby, so maybe uh, head to the fridge, grab yourself a, a nice bevy, and um, yeah, get entertained that way. Yeah, it's one of the most entertaining events, certainly, to, to watch. You can really get close to the action, and the view that we have here out the window is second to none, but we've got our screens here. We can see everything, and we hope that you're enjoying the show wherever you're watching from around the world. I think these camera guys are doing a wonderful job here. And sometimes in such strong winds, they're complaining their tripods uh, almost getting blown over. We saw, get this, Ruben, we had a gust yesterday that someone seriously said to my face, without laughing, they said it was a 70-knot gust. Yeah, Straight up, to my 70-knot gust. Yeah, 70-knot gust, that's like absolutely this, this crazy. This serious tale is a 70-knot gust. <laughs> <laughs> Staring away the 70-knot gust. I uh, experienced a 74 knot gust on the water once. But, Rubbish. Uh, I was told it was 20. <laughs> My yeah, mates were there on 13s. Just, 13. just what are you bragging about, about the knots I've ridden, mate. Okay. Let, me, let me. Now, yesterday in the women's division, who were absolutely throwing down, you can also look at the live stream from yesterday, day one of the GKA uh, Kite World Tour here in Barcares. It was actually mind blowing action as well. And the wind was actually pumping, coming through. And uh, I think it's going to go in a little lull right now. So that's why we're on a break. And uh, it will come right back uh, back up for some more epic action. So definitely stay tuned here. If you have just joined us and maybe you're not aware, we did see the first attempt at a triple kite loop today. That's right. Not one, not two, not double G or any of that. Triple kite loop from, uh, it was Clement Huaut who really actually ended himself with that. We are told he's in a stable condition. He did get whisked off to hospital with our wonderful safety team. But he really took one for the team there trying to push the limits of kiteboarding. We still feel that this might be on the cards if the wind picks up. Ruben, give me a name. Who do you think might perform the triple kite loop? 100%. I mean, these riders are definitely putting it all on the line. And uh, yeah, I don't think Clement had the height to really go for the triple, but he had the kite for it. He had a small kite, which was very fast. Uh, I think uh, Andrea Principi is uh, definitely going to go uh, for a triple sometime soon. Uh, Lorenzo Cassati uh, might pull one. I mean, anyone here with a small kite and if the wind picks up can probably go for it, but it definitely takes some balls and it doesn't come without any risk. So, Yeah, I echo that, Ruben. It's definitely not about the size. It's about what you do with it. Um, so it's not all about taking the big kites these days, Ruben, and just sending the biggies. We want to see some variation in these double loops in the form of contra loops. Kite loops really are, I mean, we're actually even saying the words triple loops now. We're, we're saying that. Trips. Trips. Kieran Trippier, Newcastle back. Very good player. Mate. So, well, All right, I'm out. Okay. <laughs> you said Trips. He's known as Trips. Okay. Aaron Hadlow coming in left foot forwards here. And this may well be him opening up his account. Nope. He's, uh, the AP flag is uh, down, I think. I can't see the AP flag up there. So let's take a look. You probably support Alkmaar or something, don't you? AZ Alkmaar. Eindhoven. Nordvik. You're from Nordvik, Ruben. A town with very strong uh, strong links to strong wind, kiteboarding. It's your hometown? Sorry, you're busy uh, <laughs> having your burger down there. <laughs> just <re> <laughs> <laughs> Lose your one funny man. <laughs> Sorry, okay, no, I'll continue. I can handle no, uh, this. No, but, but my hometown is definitely known for the strong winds. And um, yeah, I think Europe has definitely some uh, some hot spots where the wind pumps through uh, nicely. At this particular location, the conditions do blow from the same direction quite often. 
Uh, whereas uh, in my hometown on the North Sea, uh, yeah, we get all directions of wind, all strengths of wind, and uh, here it all, uh, all it's always blowing offshore at this spot and just pumping through. So uh, very beautiful to to be here and uh, to see all this action unfold in uh, in front of our eyes. And uh, Aaron Hadlow against uh, Lorenzo Cassati kicking off any time now. Both riders have got a uh, a backload of tricks. Lovely compliments coming here. Uh, compliments coming in the form of the comments. Someone mentioning that I've got a really bright head. I mean, I know I'm smart and clever. I'm very bright. That's obviously beautiful. what they mean here. Bold and beautiful. Bold and beautiful. Thank you, Ruben. Um, can we get a replay of Clement's triple? Um, I think you're going to have to wait for the highlights. Although, I guess if you wanted to get a replay of it, you could go back. Back in time. Just like... You know, you can either go back in YouTube. There's two options here, Ruben, for how you go back and watch that. You can do what most people might do, which is to go back on the YouTube, or you could do what Superman used to do in those shows. He used to fly around the world backwards. Did you ever see that? That's how he went about that um, going back in time thing. Probably the YouTube. But do you know who Superman is? Do you get him in your country? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe it's an American thing. Let's get back to the action here, then. It's Lorenzo... Casati on your screens right now and it looks to me like they might be kicking off here here he comes then he looks very pumped up here riding in he'll be opening up his account the former duotone teammate of Aaron Hadlow now flying Cabrina starting with a double loop board off back roll it must have been a double loop Ruben I think it was a single loop you think it was a single I just yeah. presumed it these days let's have a look at the replay he had his hand on that backhand of that kite for quite some time there goes one yes you're right sorry Ruben yeah it wasn't that high it was not what he was looking for um, and uh, yeah I think he's gonna try harder in the next attempt and I think uh, Aaron Hetlow also knows what to do against Lorenzo Cassati uh, definitely get some uh, some scores on the board uh, Aaron Hetlow's uh, strategy Get the three trick families uh, on the board and then uh, start improving and progressing. I think Aaron's going to open with that almost identical move, Ruben, here. He loves the back roll, mega loop, board off. It's something that he practices a lot of the time. I know uh, we can see a 6.07 coming in for... What? For that trick? For, for that... You're not happy about that? No, it wasn't that high. I was not expecting... It was 9.9 uh, .9 meters. It wasn't actually okay. that special. Let's... Uh, I know you're an Aaron fan, but um, we have to put this aside. Oh, I love the oh, new generation. I love the new generation too. I'm not biased. Um, I was just uh, looking about what I was seeing, and I wasn't uh, seeing the height that I like. And let's see Aaron. Whoa! On the bit bigger. Double back roll kite loop board off, and uh, he's stomping it. it. So getting the yeah. score on the board. And this is where it's nice to see this data. So it's a couple of meters more height. What uh, do you think this will score? Well. I've but personally, I feel it should score more than a 6.07. Exactly. Um, we can see from the surfer data that it was a little bit higher. So let's see what the judges reward these riders yeah, with. I was going to say Hadlow, 6.5, but a 6.63. 6.63. So Aaron Hadlow getting on the, a nice start here. He's going to be up against the king of the air winner. Two king of the air champions yeah. on the water right now, Ruben. Yeah, this is absolutely... Oh, look at the control in this trick. A nice uh, doobie loop board off for... Uh, Lorenzo Cassati with the added rotation. 14 so, meters that time, Ruben. He really connected one, on the way up. Two, and then an added rotation. So three forward spins while taking the board off and looping the kite, landing it super clean and uh, and confident. And uh, the question is, have I performed a double mega loop? Uh, I have not tried the double yet. Um, I. I'm sure I can do it, and I will do it sometime soon, so stay tuned. But here, Aaron Hetlow takes it to the skies with a nice preload pop. Just a mega loop late back roll and a board off and extra rotation on the way down, covering some nice distance and uh, landing it clean. I loved how long Aaron had the board off his feet there. We see that from the likes of Edgar Ulrich. Just look how long he was comfortable floating through the air. He's he took always it off been, a bit late. He's always, yeah, yeah, you could argue that. He's always been a master of board offs, Aaron. He's comfortable with the board off of his feet. So Aaron Hadlow with a 15.4 metre high jump there, but may well not get the best score as far as extremity. As you said, the board came off afterwards, but Aaron is currently matching Lorenzo. Was that in the same trick family, though? 
No, because... Uh, no, it just hasn't he, come up on our screen. Score. Yeah, here is his... Uh, oh, he's diving forward and taking the board off for that Contra loop. Three rotations, four rotations. Are we going to... Yeah, four rotations with a Contra loop and a board off. So, absolutely nice one. And what, what was the height on that? 17? Look how big. It was big. I think the Contra loop was a bit later. In other you could almost see him wait for the right time. But the height there, the height was really impressive with that. 17.9 um, meters coming in from the surfer app. And, and interestingly, 117 meters of distance, Ruben. That's another metric I like to see. Uh, and over eight seconds in, in the air. So Aaron had low score. We can't see just yet for his second Edging, score coming in. going hard. Also for the boogie. Tic-tac. Boogie board spin. No, it was not a tic-tac. Tic-tac is when you grab it by the fin and then flip it around and grab it by the handle. Sorry, boogie board spin. Exactly. Cheers, mate. That's okay. Uh, some nice height. Who would have thought Aaron had these moves? Yeah, you know, well, be people, I mean, we, you do. We do. We see this a lot when you ride with him. But he's really showing the rest of the feet here. That he's well comfortable. with. I don't think we've seen many of those done today. No, and uh, why did this uh, preview? I think they missed a score for Aaron. Yeah, there's only us two scores, and he did three tricks. I think one of them still being worked out. Perhaps that can happen. We can only talk to you about what we see on our screens. And right, that wasn't the best oh. takeoff. You could just see it. He got a bit too grippy on that edge sometimes. Sometimes your fins can dig in there, Ruben, right? And it just digs in. It doesn't give you the takeoff. Just look at this takeoff here as he went up. It just didn't release uh, in the way that he would have liked. I and don't then think. all you can do is just float down safely and uh, try again on your next attempt. If you've got some attempts left. This was his fourth attempt. So uh, Lorenzo's got three attempts left. And uh, Aaron Hedlow, yeah, his score came in, uh, which is into the six as well, a 6.60. But it was a kite loop back roll board off. They're both being scored that. What was that? I was watching the scores. Let's yeah. go for a replay for Aaron's move here. Contra loop. Yeah. Two, two spins. Oh and, an, oh, and another one, <laughs> yes, uh, dealing with it. <laughs> How did we miss Extra that? Extra lofty. Wow, so. what a move for Aaron. So we very much uh, glued to the scores there because he actually repeated the same trick family at the start, scoring the same thing. But now he has three scores in it. Now we're getting a bigger picture of how things are at the moment. 0.61 currently separating these two riders. See Lorenzo Cassati preloading, popping. Taking it to the skies with a double back row board off and also that signature extra spin, spinning three times in this trick uh, in the back rolls. So if this was the backhand, which I feel it was yeah. the backhand, so he's upgrading one of his previous moves. He's already got a kite loop back roll board off scoring a 6.07, Ruben. So we expect yeah. that, I think, to be pushed out here. And he's starting to work for a few upgrades. So... The 6.07, we feel, will be yeah. replaced. It is replaced, Ruben, and nice. uh, it's a pretty decent score for him there. Yeah, very well done by uh, by Lorenzo Cassati. Still in the lead here with uh, 20.8 points. Whereas uh, I'm curious to see what Aaron is going to bust out. Yeah, me too here. I think he uh, will he start to double. He's got the power. He's gone right foot forwards. Oh, almost onto the beach there. He's going a massive contra loop board off with a nice rotation there. Was there a rewind? And landing Was clean. there a rewind? No, Ruben? no rewind. Okay, I want to see. There we go. He's riding right foot forward. He's got. Did he go in the back roll? Uh, two back rolls. Yeah, he did end up in uh, the back roll. So that's a that's a move. I haven't seen so nice. much of from Aaron. Aaron seems to have an answer back at the moment for Lorenzo Ooh. Casati, and there's only 0.8 in this. Aaron Hadlow, the former five times world champion, is giving him a real run for his money. The current Red Bull King of the Air champion up against the multiple former Red Bull King of the Air champion. Ruben, this is a real highlight of a heat and a wonderful heat. I've just found myself realizing what we're watching here right now. This is definitely the man of the, the older generation against one of the men, definitely representing the, the younger generation, the new generation. Yeah, what a heat. Aaron is uh, twice the age of uh, here, Lorenzo Cassati. So it is uh, great to see the new generation pushing the old generation to, uh, to the next level. And here, Lorenzo Cassati stomping another beautiful move. Let's uh, go into the replay here. Preloading, popping, diving into that front spin. 
taken off the board with the front hand, so looping the kite backwards and controlling that landing. Wasn't covering a whole lot of distance, but um, and I don't think it's going to better his score. Or just, just a bit, yeah, yeah, it has done. So it's kicked out one of his lower scores as he enters in the Tic Tac family of board off. So here comes Aaron Hadlow. What's he thinking? God, this is a great heat, Ruben. He's going for the double. Oh, no, just a boogie board off. That's not going to... Oh, oh, what? Oh, now we got a problem. Oh, now we... <laughs> <laughs> I think was it wrapped. I think it was wrapped. Aaron did it wrapped and then turned around. So it's a doobie board uh, and then mega loop board yeah off. this is oh, rap. This, this, is, was rap. this is nuts Aaron Hadlow stepping up now can you believe it? of all the people we haven't thought about oh. <laughs> that knows how to land things backwards on it's flabbergasted absolutely bamboozled is Lorenzo Cusati here here at the first big air event of the year on the GK world tour what are the judges going to do with that I don't know what they, how they're going oh, to they do they already with did it. something with it perhaps I think that might get boosted power boosted here's Lorenzo Casati he's just seen that incredible move from Aaron Hadlow can he do it that's not going to be high enough for oh. me there's lots of board spins in that one Ruben but Ooh. I don't think I, he's shaking him up here Aaron Hadlow has sent a message out here to Lorenzo Casati this could go down as one of the best one comebacks two, in history three and the board spin in there so a triple back roll kite loop with a board spin uh, unfortunately crashing the landing there but uh, what a heat between uh, Lorenzo Casati and Aaron Hadlow. Aaron Hadlow on a D-Lab Evo. Oh, yeah, but here. Uh, so, yeah, this is, uh, this is getting very close. I want to see Aaron's score. Still waiting for this score to come. It hasn't fully cleared this score. Um, his lowest score. Let's take a look what his lowest score is right now for Aaron Hadlow. You keep looking at the action. He's got a 6.3, and I think that should boost Aaron that going out. right foot forward. What is he going to do? A mega loop KGB, is it? He's oh, oh, he's he wanted he to go, go for it. it. He wanted oh. to go for it. What goes on in that mind? Holy moly. So Aaron Hetlow uh, went for the back roll kite loop, and then mid-air, here you see he's etching. He's rotating backwards, looping the kite. And at this point, he wanted to unhook and pass the bar to, uh, behind his back. But unfortunately, he couldn't make it. But that would have definitely sealed the deal for Aaron Hetlow. Wow, can we? Can you believe that we're talking about? It? So he hasn't quite got the scores at the moment to overcome Lorenzo Casati, but he's got. He's going to have, uh, I think, one more chance, or is are we all done here? I think we're done. This uh, no, one more chance. No, that was his last chance. Yes, you're right, Ruben. So it very much looks like the writing's on the wall for Aaron losing so close. Was that heat? Now, if he'd have managed Why is he still to riding out, does he? maybe he just wants to have that trick done. Yeah. I don't know. We haven't seen that trick. Can't uh, get over it. go in the world, one airline goes further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. We're back then at the Lords of Tram. It is the GKA Big Air Kite World 
cup here in the south of France. I'm Lewis Krath and Ruben Lenton just standing next to me at the moment. and is uh, Stuffing my mouth with a nice sandwich, with a nice baguette. Well, I was trying to be kind and just said standing uh, next to me. But uh, in this heat then, Cohen van Dijk up against Josu Sam. We've just seen an incredible heat with two legends of the sport already. Aaron Hadlow, five times world champion and double king of the air champion, having a tough heat against Lorenzo Cassati. And it went down to the wire. And we're starting to see some old moves being brought back. We now can talk about the mega loop handle passes, the mega loop unhooks. Unhooking his back. Whoever said that was dead and buried can go and do one. Because it was never dead. It was just too far ahead of its time. It's simply the best way. You know, like the Concorde is the best way to think about that. The Concorde. Nobody can deal with that thing. It's too fast. Cohen van Dijk opening up with a 6.4 then. And then the reply here with a very inverted mega loop delayed back roll from Josu San from Brazil. Nice move, this one. Nice and high. Gets a really nice takeoff. Very Whoa. inverted. So upside down, Ruben. Little grab on the end. Double grab. Really double nice. Grabs. But no board off. And he's up against Cohen. So, uh, but he is, he's, uh, he's done well for himself here, uh, Jose San, coming up through the ranks like that. And now taking on Cohen van Dijk from the Netherlands here in the blue rush fast. Purple. Oh, was it a double? Was it a booby loop or just a dooby loop? Uh, a, a boogie loop. So here he, Cohen van Dijk spins once. Yeah, it was a... Yeah, booby loop for sure. So one forward rotation with two backward kite loops. So not getting the height he needed on that. Surfer app coming up with 6.3 meters there. I think it was That's a the lowest high double loops we <laughs> the lowest double loop we've ever seen. Nice smile from Aaron had though there as he walked. But I think he really enjoyed himself. I haven't seen that smile for a while coming he, back in competing. Have you, Ruben? That was nice. He to can see. be proud and uh, with a heat like that, and ranking into the 20s, taking on Lorenzo Casati, the current uh, Red Bull King of the Air uh, champion. Uh, Aaron Hadler did very well there, and uh, yeah, he tried it. If he landed that uh, Mega Loop KGB, that would be sick. But uh, it's on to the the next generation, the new generation, the young gun, the fresh energy in the sport. We are seeing uh, the level uh, get pushed in each heat, and it seems like the wind uh, will keep kicking, uh, kicking, kicking in throughout the day. So. So this is uh, heat number seven of round number three, and we have eight heats to go in this, uh, or sorry, we have eight heats in total in this round. So one more heat for this round uh, after this, uh, where we'll see Andrea Principi from Italy uh, taking on uh, Julian Hoon from France. Uh, but right now looking at Cohen van Dijk with uh, Jose San from Brazil. And um, Cohen van Dijk uh, showed us what he's capable of earlier. Absolutely insane double loops, S loops, board offs, you name it. And he throws it with style, with commitment. And that's what the judges love to see. Oh, the takeoff wasn't too good here, but dealing with it, doing the loop, the board of the rotation, and riding away full speed. He is stoked with that. Like, look at that. Jose is getting up in the air, looping the kite, taking off his board, getting flung into a forward rotation because he puts the board back on. But uh, very well done. Thanks for joining us in the comments here on, uh, on YouTube during the live stream of the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour. We're here at the stop in Barcares in the south of France where the wind is pumping and the water is nice and flat. The spectators are right by the action and uh, it's getting uh, full on today. Here we see Cohen van Dijk looking for the right power, the right gust, but unfortunately aborting the trick attempt. If you're just tuning in, the way it works... The riders get seven attempts to perform uh, their best tricks and three of their best tricks will actually uh, make up their overall score. And there needs to be a variety in the trick in the trick the riders do. So uh, they can be backwards rotation, forward rotations, looping the kite forward, looping the kite backwards, uh, riding left foot forward, right foot forward. They cannot be all the same moves. So um, that's what the judges are taking into consideration.
A double loop. Yeah, it's, the wind is just not here for uh, Cohen van Dijk to uh, to get the height he really needs. Here you see him looking for the gusts, pumping, jumping, double looping that that kite, but unfortunately not uh, not nailing it. Or he's nailing it, but uh, not what he was uh, was hoping for. If you have any questions about any tricks, about any rider, uh, please feel free to uh, to drop the comment in the YouTube comment box here on the live stream. And here we see uh, Jose San oh, crashing that uh, mega loop board off back roll. So here you see him throwing himself into the air with the kite loop and a late back roll board off. Unfortunately, landing a bit too hard there. Looks like you got an interesting heat going on here, Ruben. Yeah, it's uh, full on action, but the wind is uh, not playing a uh, game too good for us. Uh, Cohen van Dijk, we know that he likes all the power, and uh, the crazier the better. But I hope uh, it will kick in uh, shortly for him. Just putting my coat back on again as the sun goes back in. It's uh, interesting temperatures down here in Bacares at the moment, but. Um, Let's talk about this uh, failed jump here. F what has happened there from Koan? A question so in the comments is, uh, are any riders uh, using a soft shell harness or uh, are the pros all onto the hard shells? What do you think, Lou? Um, well, I would, f from my own perspective, I'd say I think it's somewhere in the middle is a good, pretty good answer. How do you feel about that? I think most of the riders do prefer the hard shell harness because uh, it just distributes uh, the power and pressure a bit better and uh, I feel that it uh, also helps with crashes. It does take some of the impact which uh, might come in handy here for Cohen van Dijk. So here is Cohen van Dijk then really trying to force this move in there. Gets the board off nicely extended but just got swung around in a rotation and thrown off. Now to just go back to what you're saying about the harness, the, the hard shell harness could also dig in a bit more. It doesn't flex as much maybe when you have those landings where you float above the water. But I think my reasoning to say somewhere in the middle is actually to, to, to really define, I think most riders are using a half shell, hard shell, but it's important that it's equal with a, balanced with a good bit of squidge in the harness too. You don't want it to be so solid and so hard that it's love really... Love a good squidge. You love a good squidge? Yeah, yeah I'll give you a good squidge. Oh, nice good one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some love going on here in the commentating box. Ed Barcares from the Lords of Tram edition of the GKA Kite World Tour, the big air discipline. And can you feel this downer? Can you feel this down on the live stream? Can you see the wind has gone slightly? I want you to remember this feeling you have right now where... We're talking, things aren't going mental right now at any time at all. One click of the fingers and this 40 knots comes in here and you see something unbelievable. It's so good at doing that to us. As we see here, a nice big move from uh, Jose San. Dubilu Bordov. It just can take you by surprise. This Two forward rotations and taking off his board. Very nicely performed. Not the height he was hoping for, but like Lewis says, the wind can kick in anytime, even mid-air. And uh, yeah, you just need to be ready for it. They're talking football talk on those comments, Ruben. It's not me oh anymore. Oh, God. Oh, God. His bar released earlier during a trick. What? His, uh, like, football goal bar. Back to the kiteboarding action here at the Lords of Tram. And I do want you to remember these hard times where the wind's a bit dropped here for these riders. This is a tough heat to deal with now. Look, we're barely going 10 meters. This can happen here. And as soon as that sun comes out, that can change the air temperature. It can affect the wind. It's been very much uh, an event with the differences of wind. These are the sorts of heights we don't want to see so much of in big air. But what can you do as a rider out there right now, Ruben? You go Complain. Straight up, go straight up to the judge's booth and start banging away on this metal <laughs> container. I would. I would be so gutted if the wind drops in my heat. But uh, yeah, I'm not such a competitive rider, so I'll just like, I don't know, just go back to the beach, have a beer. <laughs> no, what would you do here? Like you're out in a heat here, and you think, come on, this is a uh, big air. I just seen those other guys hitting 20 meters. Now you're putting me out in this. I've flown all around the world. I've come here, you know. But you also know, you also know that the wind can kick right back in, and that's what you're hoping for. 
And that's what gets the adrenaline going. And here you see a very beautiful move. As he's taking it. Yes, he's oh, got what it. What a move from <laughs> Jose Sam. Oh. They like that. Any of you South Americans, he has really lit up the atmosphere here at the Lords of Tram as we're, what, 309. What Look at this for Alan. He had that all day long, Ruben. So just as we're saying, if you can find that gust here and it's your time, which it certainly was there for for Josu, that was an amazing uh, boost there. Let's put him in the lead against Coan Van Dijk, Ruben. No way. Your compatriots massive. in trouble. He scored massive there with that, the I think it was a triple forward rotation board of contra loop. But Coan Van Dijk has got the moves. And if he has the wind, is he going for the double? Oh, what is he doing? Hi. Uh, just a boogie. Uh, was not a double, was it? I don't think so. Let's take a look. I've just been thinking about what's really going on here. Boogie loop. Ooh, yeah, no. That, boogie no. loop board off. Yeah, so I think what this is really working into the hands of uh, of uh, Joe Susan. He's a much smaller guy. Cohen's a big, uh, big strapping lad. You know, like, so he's a bit heavier. This Josu's like really up for this now. He's uh, really, it's just swapped over. Wow, 0.46 separating uh, these two riders. So here we go again with another very interesting heat. Line lengths tend to be around 24 meter lines these days. Are they going to take this heat into the 20s or uh, what's going to happen? The wind is kicking back in. So we're seeing some massive moves here. And Jose San is actually growing throughout this event. He's uh, performing very good. All the way from Brazil. It's going to upgrade his 5.30 to a 6.53. That might well put him back in the lead, Ruben. So this is getting really interesting. And Cohen now is definitely at panic stations here. As, uh, Only one more trick attempt. Yeah, and I want to see those uh, scores updated. Or is it done? No, Jose San, 19.67. No way. No is way. this the big devastator? I think he's got one more trick, though. Here he comes. Does he? No. Cohen. Three. Oh yeah, he does. Sorry. I think they. they how many but does Josu have? One, two, three, four, five. This is really going down to the wire here, and this will be an absolute devastator for Cohen Van Dyke. Who'll feel already. He needs to better his uh, 5.93 uh, to at least a uh, 6. Point, yeah, or 7. If Cohen doesn't score a 7 now, then uh, it's up to uh, Josue. He does. He needs something big here. Kohan, uh, he's going for the double. Oh uh, no, this is a devastator, no, devastator. Kohan Only a Van double back roll kite loop. Cohen Van Dyke uh, recently winning the the Big Air Kite League over in Cape Town, I believe, and he's just uh. I, I'm so devastated for him that I don't know what to say. But I'm also so ecstatic for Jose San that I think has caused a big upset here. Jose is uh, taking the lead in his heat against uh, Cohen van Dijk. It's not done yet, Ruben. I think there is a, a trick to go. Oh, they still have one trick to go? Oh, yeah, that's correct. One trick each. So it's not done yet here. But what can he look to upgrade? He's found himself with one hand on getting through to round four here. The, the young man from Brazil. This is very interesting. Scoring all online for you. GKOKiteWorldTour.com. Click right. He's a biggie, Ruben. Massive doobie loop. And he takes it. And we've definitely got a South American fan in here in the live stream booth that's loving <laughs> every moment of this. Oh, it's look at that. Massive. Oh, massive doobie. This is big. Is it going to replace? What's it going to replace? Jose Sun. This is incredible riding from him. Kite loop front roll board off at the moment. 6.03. Um, I it, think. It might not better his scores. Well, let's see. Is it better than a 6.20, which his lowest score was? Kite leap front roll board off. I think it was big room. I think I felt like but, it was. But uh, that was the last trick. No, I think he's got another one. Is Kohan. Two, four, six, seven. Yeah, maybe this is all over. Oh wow, Cohen is going to be upset with that one. But uh, yeah, Jose uh, definitely uh, gave it his all and started improving and progressing and landing all of his tricks. They can't deal with it either. Look, they're desperately looking at the live scores here below us. It's Finally. Oh, no, this one's just for the crowds. Was that Kohan or was that him just throwing a board of water? Devastating result here and how great this must be for the young Brazilian. Josu San looks like he's edged Kohan Van Dyke. This has got to be one of the biggest upsets that we've had so far here, Ruben, I'd say. Apart from Aaron Hadlow going out. 
And uh, yeah, the ladies' division will actually continue after round four of the men. Uh, the semi-finals of the women's division uh, coming up into the mix uh, in a little bit. So stay tuned and stay with us. But in the next heat, we will see Andrea Principi against Julian Hoon. Two very uh, good riders, young guns, uh, ready to give it their all. Uh, Andrea, super talented, uh, definitely uh, on the top of his game and uh, coming up with uh, basically a new trick almost every other day. Cohen van Dijk just leaving the water here, um, just to your left-hand side out the picture here, and he's going to be very upset about it. He didn't really get going, he didn't really have that strength that he he needs. Who's Joe and Sue? Nice answer from Rene there. Yellow flag is up there on the flag sequences. And that just tells the riders that we're in sequence and we've got under two minutes until the first rider will perform their move. It's un Andrea Principi against Julian Hoon. Got some uh, Brazil fans rooting for uh, Jose as he climbs through the ladder of this uh, competition. And uh, after this, we will uh, continue with round number four of, uh, of the men. Round uh, four? We're nearly in round four. Is that the quarters or is that just... That is quarterfinals, exactly. With Jamie Overbeek, Giel Vlucht, and then uh, waiting for the other guys to, uh, to get in there. Opening up his account then with a huge double front row. Oh, and he's got the mega lift on it. Look at this for an extended grab. That's like a five-second grab. How far did he travel? 150 meters? 132 is my guess. You go 150, I go... Well, look at this height. I think he's definitely up to around 20. Look at this extra lift. He's getting Andrea <laughs> Principi on his secret kite here. That's Boom. big. You've gone 150, I've gone 132. 123. 142. You changed, you changed it to 120. <laughs> you changed it. You, you changed it. Oh, shit. Andrea Principi really comfortable with these conditions then, finding the height. And he's really sent a message there to uh, Julian Hoon. Is that even, was that even his first move? Yeah. It has to have been. Scored a 7.73. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, good. He wasn't just warming up because that would have just been ridiculous. Well, it seems like he's always warmed up and ready to uh, throw the sickest tricks. Julian Hoon, I think that was a contra loop just by their body position. Let's take a look here. It's definitely gone into a front roll here. And uh, no, it wasn't. Sorry. It was a boogie loop and it was pulling on the left hand. I'm getting a bit stuck there. Yeah, it just got, got a bit. It wasn't as fluid as we like to see that nice control and power going into the body. But. Um, Someone is wondering how Andrea just kept floating after that last jump. Well, he was going absolutely massive, and then his kite was coming back up uh, to the yeah to the zenith and uh, giving him his second lift and third lift. And uh, as long as you've got the speed and the kite is climbing, then uh, it will produce lifts, and you get these lofty, lofty gusts that you can uh, just float on. Here he comes, then left foot forwards. Nice takeoff into a back roll got the I think there's a board off in there as well Two and here off. he goes he's really Three <laughs> this is getting silly what? what's going something he's, what? he's stuck to a helicopter yeah he's he got has the to be rope. stuck to a helicopter this is <laughs> it's ridiculous so 200 he's still going 200 meters <laughs> 200 meters yeah. he loves it oh my word a replay right can I get a replay here we go so back, back roll contra loop. loop into another board off I actually think... Into you another board off. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, way, oh, la, 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 la. It doesn't even look nuking out there. But Holy moly. He is finding the <laughs> lift there. He still went up again. Just but went. what did the surfer data you say? You said 200 Two meters. I say 235 meters. Come on. Ay, ay, Come ay, on. Ay, this ay, is ay, ridiculous now. That is a new record, now. is it? I think like over 100, I think there was a record before this. He just broke his own record. So you are witnessing wow. some incredible kiting going <laughs> on right now. Maybe this is the change. I'm going to predict it, Ruben. I think the nuking winds are following very shortly. I think the sun has come out. I think there's some interesting things going on with the wind here. And Andrea Principi, with his setup, is really in touch with his gear. He's getting <laughs> unbelievable floats. We can't believe what we're seeing. 18.1 seconds. We haven't even talked what? about <laughs> the hang time here. <laughs> Blimey, you could run the 100 meters nearly twice there and back if wow. he was a top pro. That's why he did three board offs. He was like, oh, should I put it back on? Oh, no, wait, oh, I can wow. keep it longer. And then, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm yeah. saying this guy's an alien. He's an Itali Itali alien. No. Italian. Italian. <laughs> Italian. 
<laughs> Easy now. Well, Let's put this in perspective now. Julian Hoon is really going for it here, and he's just can't jumping 30 meters far. He, That's he can't uh, get into the same stratosphere that we see. Oh, he's getting really unlucky. You know, maybe there's that to it, but different dimension. Wow, like we can't believe what we're seeing. I'm looking out to the water here, Ruben. I've looked out to the water many times here in Bacares. I'm not seeing 50 knots, berserk, crazy wind. I'm seeing a gusty kite from one of the riders. A prototype looks like a, a blank, uh, white kite. Blank face. Oh no, it's not cool. Maybe, that, is it? maybe it is from the blank kite test. What's that? Completely white, testing all I these kites. I paid you well for that. So well. Well, oh, I thought somebody okay. was flying away, but uh, it's all under control. And uh, we are actually looking, waiting for Andrea Principi to uh, kick off his next uh, big air trick, but he scored an 8.53. All right, people ordering uh, the D lap uh, as they see them floating through the sky. Wow, uh, where do we start here? So massive distances, starting off with a 7.83 and an 8.53. What has he got for us now? How long is he going to stay in the air for? Everything's going to be boring after that. Oh, move. well, cool. He's, He's like, oh, I'm just going to go for a swim. <laughs> I'm just going to remind everybody that <laughs> actually this doesn't always happen. So Andrea Principi finally running out of that magical uh, stuff. So it was a double back roll kite loop with a board off tic tac there, uh, Ruben. Oh, sorry, board flip. Board flip, Sorry. exactly. Sorry, Ruben. Of course, you were unhappy with that description, weren't you? <laughs> We've got to get, get about 10 tricks in one these days, especially as they're in the air for 18 seconds. You've got to be on the ball here. No wonder we sometimes stay quiet and just take a look uh, at the data coming in. But come on, Julian Hoon, can you reply to this? Is it your turn now to get a ridiculous jump? That's a tic-tac. But doesn't get the, the, the double lift floaty, let alone the triple lift, quadruple lift. So the Tic Tac is grabbing the board by the fin and then flipping it, grabbing it by the handle and putting it back on. Uh, he performed it very nicely here with a kite loop. Do you have to grab it back on the handle? Yeah, or by the rail. But, uh, or by the rail. At yeah, least that's you've so got to flip it and grab it by the middle. All right. by, the, by the middle, okay. Do you have a handle on your board? Yep, not only on my board. <laughs> Just grab it. You can't, you, we just can't deliver that much stoke on a regular basis after we've seen what we've seen in this heat as we see another nice manoeuvre in the back roll. Kateri, let's remind you then, it is seven trick attempts that these riders are getting. It's their three top tricks that count out of ten. So it's a maximum score of 30. Now look now look at the surfer dates here, okay? Just look at this. 39 metres. That wasn't a bad distance. 50 metres, pretty good. We have still over 200 metres of distance. That was... Uh, I wonder if we'll ever Whoa, see that. Going oh, unhooked, Whoa. Whoa. unhooked. Contra Whoa. loop. No, he's, mate. He's been, forced, he's, he's been forced into it, Ruben. He's been absolutely bamboozled by what he's seen right. here. Oh, and the coffee's getting Ooh, brought in. Wow, cool. Beautiful. Thank you. It's that in celebration of that amazing move. The coffee's so, come salud. out. Cheers, Ruben. Salute to Andre Principi's world record 200 plus. Now, I would love somebody from server to get on the case here and tell us, is that the longest distance we've seen before? Here he comes in, riding in left at forwards. He's not even totally lit, Ruben. That's the big thing here. I think He's that, not even totally lit. I think that must be the biggest number, uh, unless they uh, tied it to the Steven Seagull and go for a big float down the sky. Steven Seagull. Famous for his uh, action movies. Double S, they call him. <laughs> Oi! Look at the control. Right, here comes that strong wind then. I predicted it, Ruben, and I think it's going to come. It just had to. The wind doing all sorts of strange things. There's less and less kites now out on the, the beach in front of us as some of the riders are removed. Aaron Hadlow packing up his nine. He won't need that as wind coming in a bit. There, there it is. There's the mega loop. Unhooked. Unhooked. But just a straight uh, mega loop unhook doesn't really do it for me, though. It's a nice feeling, though, isn't it? Every now and then you, you want it, but you kind of want... It is risky, though. Like, imagine if... That <laughs> if was before. It was before. Before the loop, yeah. You don't want to be letting go of that. Like, imagine if you get a gust and the thing just gets ripped out of your hands and then you just come crashing like down, down so hard. Yeah, the kite yanks you down and then it's like... Woo. Do you think you could blow a leading edge, sending it that hard down there? You can blow everything, mate. But uh, besides uh, some kites disappearing from the riders who got kicked out of the contest, there's also some kites being raked up by the ladies who will uh, continue their uh, semi-finals uh, after round four of the men. And look at this massive contra loop again, and he's going to get another floaty. Yep, look at that. Eww, coming down for the landing. What we got there, Ruben, distance-wise? 
Yeah, I think 89? 150. 150? Oh, what? yeah, I've just realised how high it was there. Well, maybe no. Um, one I did. Um, yeah, no, I'm going to lose this one. I subtract my 89 and go 112. Because you're allowed to do that before the scores come up. You weren't getting that earlier. Oh, 119. That's nice uh, one. Yeah, nice one. Nice. Yeah, cheers, yeah. What are you measuring there? Uh, was I measuring? Organic measurement. I put my ruler away. 22.1 metres in height, that was. Uh, and this is really entertaining stuff. And the real... Oh, no, no. Oh, oh he didn't. No, 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 <laughs> what's going on? No, 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 no. <laughs> Please, to <the> blind. <laughs> oh, it's cold in there. Oh, <laughs> oh <my mother. laughs> yeah. uh, What just is going on with this video? Cannot, you can't oh. even write this stuff. He was in the same position for ages. He, didn't, he wasn't even going downwind. He so was just jumping, unhooking, and trying to uh, to make the most is, of that kind of field takeoff. Any kiteboarders Woo. out there now that are looking at this wind thinking, what's going on? We've all been on the water when you experience those strange uplifts, right, Ruben, where you just jump, you go up, you come down, you go up again. You just feel this sensation that you're getting really a, a thermal or something different than the normal. That's definitely what we have on the water right now. They, they're not super lit, these riders, and it looks very calm. I, I feel like the wind's shifting angle, actually, here, but... The sun is coming out. It might be heating the air slightly different. The really beautiful thing about it is we'll never know what Andrea is going Prince on. Andrea Prince B going for that. Boy, not getting it together on a triple back row board off kite loop. But look how uh, handy he just gets back on his board. So he was taking off, going into that back row, second back row with the board off, looping the kite and spinning again. But he realized he wasn't high enough. But look how he gets back on his board. Like, whoop, he just got lifted out. Put his board under there, and uh, this guy is so talented. Also training very hard off the water to just stay fit and uh, prevent injuries from happening by just being super strong and flexible. We hope you're enjoying this as much as we are right here. This is the Lords of Tram. It's the GKA Kite World Tour. It's the big air, and we're having a wonderful time down here in the south of France, and we're not even in the quarterfinals just yet. It's the last heat. Oh, he's thinking of unhooking again. He's unhooked into, a, into another kite. Look, he's really playing the variations here and I think that was a mega loop unhooked then into another kite loop so let's just take a look here there's one there's unhooked then I think he sends another one unhooked he's, we're uh, timing we're timing going he's on he's exploring everything he can and this is really a platform for him to do so I think he's going to find it hard here to beat Andrea Principi who to me Ruben we must look at the, the scores here I think he's done it yeah so this one is done and dusted I think Andrea Principi will be taking the win here. Let's go to a commercial break. No, no commercial break. We do not want to miss the start of this Jamie Overbeek and Hill Do you hear me? No. Oh, we're live. Oh, sorry. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Hey. To, uh, to yep. Hi, the good job, director. Yeah. And uh, we are here at the Lords of Tram. And this is a heat that we do not want to miss. It's so nice to hear you enjoying this stream. Comments like, like that about you enjoying your Sunday, best one of the year. So it's not been many Sundays in the year, to be honest. So either way, Jamie Overbeek from the Netherlands up against Hilvloot from the Netherlands. Cool. Look at that. The Netherlands are going to win something here. As usual. Yeah, I guess. That's Maybe usual. not in the football, but hey, we're talking kiteboarding here and we're ready to kick ass. So we got Jamie Overbeek only at 17 years old. Absolutely going massive with a 35 meters jump height record. Um, so, yeah, super curious how he's going to take on uh, Double G, the inventor of the Double Mega Loop, uh, Giel Vlucht himself. If you look closely there, Jamie Overbeek's got two E's in his surname. He's got a double E in his surname. And there he goes, kicking off this heat. 
taking it to the skies with a massive mega loop. Board off, laid back roll, and an added rotation on the way down and landing it clean. Rewind rotation at the end there. That's a pretty good start. Was I that think. a rewind? Was it? I felt it was a rewind. What do you think? Do you think that was a re I thought that was a front roll rotation, this late one at the end there. So maybe you could tell okay. me what you think in the comments. But uh, you don't seem so sure, Ruben, as you asked me. I think he went for a massive mega loop. Uh, back roll. Back yeah, roll. no, he did. But I think he and re then put the board on. And I think then... he re round out of it, personally. Okay, yeah. I'm going to be Possibly. firm about that. Possibly. Um, because it appears that I'm not being firm enough, some of the comments on the, <laughs> the live stream. So I'm going to step things up here. So here goes uh -oh. Hill Flute. And he's, no, he's mugged that off. There's attack abortion there, Ruben. He said, no, I'm not going into that. I don't feel it. He comes back right foot forwards. and uh, I don't see Gil jumping to the right, though. He's no. all doing most of his tricks just to the left, performing very good double uh, mega loops and uh, S loops. Here comes the win, Ruben. It's pounding now on the That's live stream booth. What a great bit of timing this will be for this heat. Look at the difference now, everyone watching online. Can you see? I think this wind is about to enter this uh, competition box. It's like, almost like a fake shot with football, right? Like you're tricking the goalie. Like, I'm kicking. I'm not kicking yet, mate. I'll kick you out of this live stream booth in a minute. This is kite surfing, <laughs> not football. Here goes Hill Flute. I think that may well have been an S loop. Not happening. Didn't feel it, but look, there's power look, there, yep. Ruben. The power's back. There's the replay of Giel Vlucht's uh, last attempt. So he's going. Uh, no, he wanted an S loop, but uh, it unfortunately wasn't happening. He wasn't feeling it. And uh, Jamie Overbay going straight on to a doobie loop. Board off with an edit rotation. Is he getting it in time for the landing? Yes, oh, he is. What a landing, Ruben. He really landed that full speed. He had one chance to stick that board down. Overbeak really sending a message out here then. Not the signature height, but uh, definitely uh, a, a nice... Uh, impressive landing. Nice trick. I think uh, Jamie is on the 7 meter edge on the 24 meter lines. And Giel Vlucht, is he on the 7 again? Or did he step it up? But at least the wind is kicking in nicely for this heat. Here comes Giel Vlucht then. It's going to be double. Yeah, double laid back. Oh, he's sticking it. Not the height he was hoping for, but uh, definitely dealing with it. So here we go with the replay of uh, Giel's Vlucht double. Is he throwing the laid back like he's first looping it and then throwing it like in the middle of the two loops? Yeah, I think just after the first one. So I do think the wind is going to make a real appearance in this heat room. It's actually a bit more from the northerly direction, it looks like. Um, but here comes Jamie Overbeek. He looks like he's got the setup to deal with this sort of strange lighter wind. It's much more high aspect. Kite. Wow, look at that. He's found the height there. Contra loop, Ruben. Massive contra loop. Board off with two forward rotations. Absolutely going massive. Jamie Overbeek going 20 meters high. Here he goes into one forward rotation, two forward rotation, and actually three forward rotations with that contra loop. Very, very nicely performed by Jamie Overbeek there. That is uh, going to score him well, I believe. Overbeak, 20.99 to 10.04 here. I've had a word of the director. I said, let's zoom out a little bit to show you these kites. There you go. Look at that. How's that for a bit of directing there? Do so be double. No. How do we call that? We just named it today. It's got a new name. It's the booby loop. roll or something. It's the booby silly. loop. Come on, the boobies Booby. do reserve some respect there uh, with this epic move. So a double kite loop with a forward rotation. It's not called a dooby loop. It's a booby loop. So. There's enough respect for boobs out there right now. We don't need any more. I always need more, mate. Cool. This. Is, how quick is he replying here, Kiel uh, Fluke? Um, sorry, Jamie Overbeek. He gets on with his move so quick. He's up there again. Contra loop. Double back roll board off contra loop this time. Yeah, this time Sticks with the back, in back rotations indeed. So uh, Thank adding you to for confirming I said that right. Adding Ruben. to the trick family. Exactly, Lewis. You're saying it super duper right. Oh, How round is a football? Well, it depends what brand, obviously. What a stupid question. What does a football weigh? Standard weight? I don't know the answer. I'm sorry. Okay, you're a fake fan. It depends what it's filled with. Heliums. Cement. Oxygen. 
can't let you kick that. <laughs> what a football feels like to you. You don't have the strength, you know, to kick it. <laughs> there goes Gilflucht. Taken off into a double. Board off. Nice. Oh, with a, yeah, that added rotation. As he tucks to put the board back on, he flips into that last uh, added forward rotation. But here you can see a nicely performed double mega loop by the double G. Gilflucht. Yeah. And we listened to you. You wanted to see the kites in the screen? A quick word, the director is now getting some nice shots of the kites as we see these doubles here. So Jamie Overbeek, fresh from fresh, I guess fresh from a podium, um, a podium victory. I nearly said. I mean, he was victorious in his own way to get on the podium at King of the Air. But here he is. Look, he looks pretty chilled. Up he goes. This is big. Kite loop. He is going loop. massive, and here he goes for another lofty. Very nicely performed move. So clean, so much uh, control from Jamie Overbeek. He's riding his coat V3 from Ozone uh, along with his 7-meter uh, edge. And uh, that seems to be the right big air combination for him on 24-meter lines. Yeah, on the Ocean Rodeo is Gil of Lute. Is that, a, is that a rise? Is he going for the kite change? Yeah, he is. So Overbeek coming in down in front of us now to kite change. So the rash vest man has got a hand up as if to say stop right there. He's uh yeah, they want to make sure this is done safely. We must turn our attention back to Gil Vlugden in the white rash vest. This one's uh it's getting interesting, this one. They've been matching each other. Overbeek's got this at the moment, but there's a lot of action to go yet. But Gil is double looping on his uh ocean rodeo rise. I think uh, that's a seven. Very, very fast kite. And uh I'm curious to see uh, what Jamie's going to do on his 5-meter uh, enduro. You think it's Wh a 5 or a 6? It's a 5. Oh. Looks so small. What was the red one? The red one was a 7. Okay, so interesting tactics here. Swapping 2 meters down or maybe going somewhere in the middle for... Uh, I don't think he's going to swap, is he? Is this man here, Gil Vlug, who just can't find a gust? This is really challenging, and it's something the riders don't often have to deal with here. It's usually just mental strong all the time. It's bringing the best out of these riders. Is Gil going to double right foot forward? Oh, no, unfortunately, messing up this attempt. I think you get away with having... I don't know. He had a feeling, didn't he? He had a little feeling. So Are they going to let him come back left foot forward? No here? ways. He already went two tacks. Hey, he's from the Netherlands. You've got to support him, man. Oh, no, they both are. Give him a break, yeah. Give him a break, bro. And he's there goes for Gil for the... Oh, no, he wanted to go for the double, but... And there, there's the rewind. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I didn't see it. Oh, yeah. that was back. Yeah, 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 that was yeah, a rewind. Yeah, yeah. Nice. How many, degree how many, how many there. degrees did he rewind there? Three, so three, many. Three. 1080, like uh, you sounded earlier. 1080. Close. <laughs> close. 180. Close. I'll just take a thousand off that. Not bad. Or a thousand. It's not a thousand, is it? <laughs> the mathematicians are going wild up here. It's tough. It does But look at here. Mind. Jamie Overbeck on his five meter enduro. Is he going to perform the double loop? Unfortunately, messing up this attempt. And uh, I'm not sure why he's riding a five meter. You should definitely grab a six. But hey, who am I? You are Ruben Lenton and I'm Lewis Crathen here talking to you at, I nearly said Lord of the Rings. Where did that come from? Lords of Tram. Here. <laughs> <laughs> the Does These that here. ring a bell? Lords of Tram. It's the GKA. Kite World Tour. Big air here. First leg of the year because we now have multiple events. It won't just be the once-off World Championships in Tarifa. This event will count towards the Big Air Championships. And there are rumors of a third event after Tarifa, which they won't tell me where. Where's it going to be, Ruben? In some windy-ass place, I hope. Probably not Cape Town. Mm, Lord Mike? Oh, no, they got the mega loop. We don't know. Baby Shark is the name of the Brazilian. Yes, very good. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't get the takeoff. Ah. He's angry. He's angry about it, isn't Jamie he? Jamie Overbeck in the lead in this heat with uh, both of the riders only one trick attempt left. So, uh, yeah, Gil Vleug definitely needs to land something phenomenal to uh, edge out uh, countryman uh, Jamie Overbeck. Contraman. Con country. <laughs> Is that that's a pretty good <laughs> contraman? If you only did contra loops. Uh, like Andrea Principi is contraman, I think. Or yeah, well, Yannick he brought the contra loop, so he's contraman. I said country man, but it also sounds a bit weird, so let's not... That's okay. Yeah, You're okay, more thanks. than welcome to contradict yourself. sound weird, okay. Cheers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, definitely having a blast up here. And uh, let's see if Jamie can find 
the gust that he needs for his 5 meter enduro to double loop it or maybe S loop it. I think he wants a double loop board off because the, that's kind of what the what the standard is. His scores were just at 22 and now it just slightly got adjusted to 21.89. So um, interesting. Yeah, let's see what happened there, but uh, definitely a little adjustment. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, 85% chance to get this strong win, but this is interesting stuff right here. The riders are really being worked hard to think as best as they can about what they need to do. There's not much in this one now. It's Jamie Overbeek going for... He's got... They've both got one more move left here, Ruben. And what must be going through their minds? You know, if one of them goes for it, the other one's got to. Um, it, this is an interesting one for the race director here because it's tight. Yeah, does he there, get another There's nothing attempt. going on in the flag sequence there, Ruben. He's just letting this one play out. Almost like a really good uh, advantage played in, in football. You but know, it looks like, like a little law in football. Does. You know what they play in advantage and they're like, just get on with it. The race director exactly. here is just letting this one play out. And I kind of, well, this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> they can't even get going. Yeah, the wind is gone. So sometimes the race director gives them some slack just depending on the conditions. And uh, Hugh also needed a little bit of a, a little bit more time to uh, take off on his previous attempt. Surely this points to the direction that the wind is about to come and nuke here. We've seen the forecast. We've all seen the forecast down here today. It's got 30, 40, and even more knots forecast. There's barely 15 to 20 on the water right now for this crucial stage in this first heat of the quarterfinals between Gil Vluk, one of the biggest names in big air kiteboarding right now, against Jamie Overbeek. Also, huge name in kiteboarding, recently getting those massive 35-meter-plus jumps that we're all talking about. And right now, this is a tough time to be a competitor out there, Ruben. How do you deal with it? Or a judge, or a race director. Or a uh, commentator. Exactly. There's lots of uh, loose elements that have to come together for this uh, big air kiteboarding world cup but uh there was a waiting period started off uh, yesterday and we scored the conditions on the first day of the waiting period which is always super nice so i'm uh, super stoked to be here together with you lewis uh, crathern in the commentary booth uh, reporting live as these big air tricks unfold in front of our eyes you mentioned we scored uh, on the first day what, what did we score that first day like seven eight nil that sort of smashing it was a good one, wasn't it? It was a great day yesterday. Yesterday, uh, the ladies took it to the skies, and uh, we got all the way to the semi-finals, which will be uh, completed after this fourth round. Oh, look at Double G throwing his signature double mega loop and stomping it. And I think that will better his previous uh, double uh, mega loop. Let's see what the judges think yeah. about that. Here, he's taken off. He's got some nice height, and he's thrown in that laid back, so... 6.47 he's already got for a kite loop back roll, though. It's not going to yeah. upset it the scene that much, though, I think, Ruben. And I think there's no way he can can catch him, really, now. I think that well, is... Well, it's only yeah, one point apart. Oh, oh, yeah, I think Jamie, that was his Jamie, last move. Yeah, it was the last move. Jamie uh, got scored zero. Ooh, it got very close, but uh, not, get, not it, as close. Jamie Overbeck close. taking the lead here over Giel Vlucht. Very nice riding from these boys, a nice heat well into the 20s. And uh, yeah, we're going to go to a commercial break and shortly we are going to continue uh, with the next heat. Stay tuned. Next heat coming up then, it's Edgar Ulrich from France. He's really finding uh, his rhythm and he's finding his form here in the south of France. And he's up against none other than Liam Whaley from Spain. Duotone versus Duotone this heat. And uh, we have just seen Jamie Overbeek from Ozone advancing over Gilles Vluk from uh, Ocean Rodeo. And Gilles, I think, is going to be a bit 
frustrated by that heat. And there'll be a number of riders that find it. He's legging it right up to the beach here, heel, just in front of us. That's it. Ruben, you got you are stay. He's gone straight up to the race director, absolutely furious about something. Is heel fluked in front of us now. And I wonder if this is some form of protest here. Furious is heel fluked in the conditions of that last move. Just from his body language, I don't think he's happy about this. And we can see this discussion on the beach right in front of us here with race director Cedric. And uh, I'm just going to talk you through it whilst this next heat comes on. Because clearly this is a very unhappy Gil Vlugt, who's uh, at this moment in time out of the competition. I can also see Andrea Principi with a skipping rope, the big air world champion, getting the blood going to the veins, there's Luca Ceruti still in this kiteboarding competition. It's getting lots of interesting things to see down there, Ruben. 100%. And uh, the upcoming riders, Edgar Ulrich and Liam Whaley, both capable of scoring 10s. We saw um, uh, Liam Whaley in uh, the Red Bull King of the Air in South Africa earlier this year uh, perform uh, some incredible moves. And uh, I'm looking forward to see what, uh, what he's going to show us. And Edgar Ulrich, local Frenchie. Uh, definitely uh, showed us that he uh, also can do the double lofties and mega borders with plant for loops and um, and whatnot. So uh, let's get this started. How long uh, before we go? There's the yellow flag, which is uh, telling the riders that they're not ready to go just left to the left-hand side of your screen on top of the hill there. So some of you are wondering in the comments that you know they shouldn't run heats with this wind. The trouble is, is that some of the riders are finding gusts here. We only have to cast our minds back less than 20 minutes to Andrea Principi that scored apparently the world record distance ever on surf rap going over 200 meters. He had no problem finding those gusts. And all the while that some of the riders can find those gusts and still be boosting quite high, unfortunately the ones that don't quite get them gusts, it's just it's a bit harsh. There is an argument for the riders that because they're taking it in turns, they weren't exposed to that particular gust and that's for the riders to deal with the race directors that's why i sit nicely up here ruben away from the conflicts of those politics but right now the blue rash vest rider on the water his flag is up it's edgar ulrich and let's see what he's got for us ruben shredgar we see uh, some nice uh, fans of him in the comments stoking out these riders as they're gonna show us what they've got and who comes out on top this is uh, winner takes all so um Whoever wins the quarterfinals here moves on to the semifinals and uh, makes, a, makes a chance to go uh, go to the final. So looking forward. They do now have enough time to change their kites just to get back to you also. Some of you curious here, they are getting time to change it. These are professionals on the waters, by the way, everyone. They're used to dealing with not perfect conditions. And... Uh, Oh, oh, what? oh, no way, oh, no way, oh, no way. Oh, 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 wow, he's done it. Where did that come from? What? Megaloo KGB was that in Look front of our eyes? Look what he does. He jumps up, does the back, the back roll, roll, kite loop, unhooks. Boom, how about oh. that? Megaloo KGB, when was the last time we saw one of them landed? Red Bull, King of the Air, sometime. Eight years ago, perhaps. But uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't that high. It wasn't that high, but I don't care. It means that th these guys here are pushing the limits of the sport. Only 3.83. Yeah, because it was not high. He had a butt check, so definitely some deduction. But just to see where the minds are at of these riders, to they know really what they need to do in order to take home the win in this heat. That's giving their all. And uh, Liam, uh, no stranger to giving it his all. So let's see uh, what he's going to perform. That's an outrageous opening move. Whoa. Oh, they're unhooking now. So look at this. The riders are starting to adapt to ah. the slightly li lighter winds here, Ruben. And I think this is answering back some of you on the comments here wondering that they shouldn't compete in these winds. These are still over 25 knots winds. We might not get winds over 45 knots around the world. And Big Air, with the equipment available to us today, can be demonstrated in more ways than just the big mega loop. So this is really showing a level of maturity from these athletes, Ruben. But I do see Edgar Uri going for a kite change and not to a smaller kite to perform double loops. Now he actually needs more power and he just, uh, yeah, f uh, flying his eight meter into the air. I I'm going to put this out there, Ruben, and say we've never seen an opening trick in any competition. Unhooked. Un well, uh, hooked to unhooked. What's this guy doing? Someone just climbing down outside the window. But yeah, this is going to be a very interesting heat. Liam already uh, with a nice score of a 6.63 for that unhooked uh, Kung Fu uh, front spin handle pass. 
He was thinking about a blind landing there as well, which we've seen from him before. Liam scoring highly for that move. A 6.63 for that unhooked performance. There still is a place for unhooked riding, Ruben, in both lighter and strong winds. We've seen Thank that. God. And landing blinds or wraps or whatever you want to put it. This is really showing that... I mean, th this is what I get back to this. This is a new generation of bigger riders. They don't have to be doing these moves, but they're if choosing you want some to. If you want some adrenaline, then definitely unhooking in strong conditions and doing some big air is uh, definitely doing that. I uh, invented that uh, unhooked Kung Fu pass a uh, long time ago, and it was always upping my adrenaline. And uh, now I just cannot put myself to it anymore. Um, just don't feel confident or strong enough to uh, to do those moves. But luckily, these guys are and can show us what uh, what it's all about here in big air kiteboarding during the GKA Kite World Tour. Yeah, we're at the Lords of Tram down here in the south of France near Perpignan, just two hours uh, north of Barcelona. Liam Whaley all the way from the south of Spain. I think he's Cerezo. on a seven. Yeah, that's huge. The wind's definitely coming back here. And just shifting a little bit more to the west, Ruben, I'd have to guess uh, that's around... Switching, switching his kite again. It wasn't performing well or something, so... That's impossible. Is oh, it doing? somebody rolled up his lines already, so he's wasting some time. He's now unwinding his bar quickly. Yeah, he doesn't need this, so he's going. Uh, Sorry, you guys can't see it, but we can see it on the on the outside of our uh, of our window. I think he's going to get scored a crash for this next move. Oh, that would be harsh. What a what well, a gamble! Just, it's, oh, he's just got nailed over. Well, uh, just tripped over a kite. <laughs> Ooh, all the action taking place down here. All comes down to strategy, but it looks like uh, Edgar Ulrich's time is running out because he has 40 seconds in order to perform his move. So let's see if he can do it. I think we're there now, Ruben, with this solid wind that I keep banging on about. I mean, I hope so. But um, he looks really nicely powered now. And, on the seven. Uh, yeah, it looks like the wind is getting a bit consistent. Looking out in the bay, it's a bit cleaner. So I do think it's gonna, he's going to struggle to make it into this round of his tricks. Let's see. Only three of their best scores, of course, will count out of their seven trick attempts. You can see it's a nice clear sky with a bit of cloud. Um, it's warmer temperatures than we're used to down here for this time of year. Even uh, 15 degrees has been reported. But with this cold wind, someone asking me earlier why is it called Lords of Tram? And it's in reference to the Tramontana wind, which comes from the Pyrenees, the cold Pyrenees mountains out to our west, blowing towards the Mediterranean, the warmer Mediterranean, an unusual type of wind. Wind usually blowing onto the land. This one's offshore. Can he find that window right now, Edgar? Oh, it's massive, Rubes. Definitely getting his rotations in with the board off and, oh, butt checking it. The board off blowout. But was this still his attempt? Did they allow him to change the kite? Oh, what a move. I love how he just, like, comes out of the rotation, decides to stick, stretch out his legs and stick the board on only just before the landing. Unfortunately, uh, crashing this one. Here comes Liam Whaley now, who switches attention to more of the big air style moves. So lovely to see these two adapting to those conditions at the start. And a great answer to all the people saying, you know, it's a bit light, shouldn't be doing it. Still going massive, but using every ounce of their vocabulary of big air, Ruben. Because it's good to remind people that it's not just straight big air, the big air me mega loops sometimes. 100%. You need to come up with uh, all kinds of tricks consisting of contra loops, mega loops, double loops, S loops. Uh, combined with forward, backward rotations, and board offs, obviously. And uh, yeah, the winner who comes out on top needs to consist of all of them. Some big upsets, Ruben, already at this event. Heel Vlucht being knocked out by Jamie Overbeek. Uh, we also saw Cohen Van Dyke, Baby Shark, taking him out. Of all people, Baby Shark. Baby. Yes. <laughs> Also known as uh, Josu San, he's doing really well. From Brazil. Yeah, good for him. But here Liam Whaley with a nice... Oh, ooh, did he land on the board? Had to be careful to get rid of that board there, didn't he, Ruben? It's actually the arm I was more worried about that might come in contact with the board because that's here. where some of the injuries can come from, is landing on top of the board. Did he grab it yeah, by the handle? And then, ooh, he just chucked the board downwind of himself, but luckily enough to decide to not land on top of it. I landed on top of my board not long ago. My elbow still hurt from that. It's like two months ago. I'm sorry to hear that, Ruben. <laughs> it's also landed okay. on the beach a few weeks back, actually, but it was an un incredible beach landing, one of the best I've ever seen, I think. Yep, that's what we do these days.
We take off and we land. What goes up must come down. One way or another. Unless you're Andre Principi, breaking the record for distance covered earlier. If you were lucky enough to be with us watching that heat, he went over 200 metres in distance. To give you an idea of how good that is, 100 metres we start getting excited here. Something like 230 metres across the bay. Multiple uplifts that he was able to engage in that space above water out there, Ruben. And it's really that space above water that these riders are... Using as he was uh, in the air for 18 seconds, really having some fly time. He did about three board offs and uh, 18 seconds. No way, you ju you're joking me. 18, 18 seconds, 18 Lewis, seconds. and covering 230 meter, 32 meters, which is what the the surfer app data was showing us. Unfortunately, the data is not coming through right now, is it? Contra loop then from the man with the blue rash vest, which is Edgar Uric. These riders are having to show more vocabulary than most of these heats so far, as the wind is going from anything from 20 to 35. Not so high. I don't think it's going to be much higher than 9, 10 metres, Ruben, as we may well see the surfer out there. 10.8 metres to the left, bottom left-hand corner. And so these riders can jump all the way up to 35 metres. We turn our attention back to Liam Whaley then, flying into the box with that signature hand off the bar. He's gone in for a doobie into three rotations and it tried to rotate him into a fourth into that doobie front roll a board off mega loop. Oh, and there Liam Whaley goes down in this replay. And uh, the next trick attempt will be for uh, Edgar Ulrich. Both guys had uh, at least three tick trick attempts. I feel like it was more. Was this their fourth attempt? Yeah, this was a uh, fourth, fifth. Who opened up the seat? I think it was Liam. Or Edgar. You tell me. Well, sometimes there's a reason to stay silent. I know. On the air, it's when you just don't know. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I actually, actually wasn't even listening to you there, Ruben. <laughs> staring at the <laughs> Sorry, screen. Like yeah. yeah. Cross-eyed. You got a bit cross-eyed there, mate. No, it's dangerous, especially with these double <laughs> loops. <laughs> but yes, the wind is pumping, and we are here in heat number two of round four of the men's division of the big air discipline of the GKA Kite World Tour here in Barcares, France. We, where we see uh, the best riders in the world take each other on. And uh, it is, uh, yeah, with some pumping conditions, Lewis, we see anywhere between 20 knots and 40 knots uh, gusting through uh, the competition area today. Is it pumping, though? I mean, look at, at that. At some well, point. You can't tell me it's pumping. I'm looking at that, sitting at home, thinking, what are you talking about? It is part of the, part of the game because uh, this spot is just a bit up and down. It is a bit gusty, and uh, that's just something the riders have to deal with. And uh, the stronger the wind, the sicker the action. So uh, stay tuned and bear with us as the wind will kick right back in. Yeah, and it has been pumping. And we're getting these strange gusts come over our live stream booth now, which is formed of a, basically made out of a big uh, container. The biggie, maybe a double. Uh, it's like a tiny house. Container. Yeah, and we see... Uh, we, we feel it in here. It really rocks us in. It's coming and going, and it's still not quite set. But we just one just feels it has to be... Delivered here. Liam Whaley's riding around just like, well, what? There's no wind right now. And actually, look at how close this heat is right now, Ruben. We need to draw your attention to the scores here. 0.7 separating these two as we wait for these scores to update. Liam Whaley still hasn't got a... Maybe he actually hasn't got a third trick in yet, Ruben. This, uh, crash. But what, what was interesting to me is that uh, Edgar was feeling the need for more power and changing to his eighth, but uh, that wasn't pumped or flying correctly. So he changed back to his seven. And Liam Whaley on his 7 meter, looping it twice with a nice front loop. So that is the, doobie loop, uh, the booby loop. That's the danger in naming something so close to something else. The booby dooby boogie loop. The booby doop. <laughs> Lots of people lining the shores now uh, here in uh, Le Bacares. It's a world sailing special event. Sailing as you've never seen it before, Ruben. Our sailing craft taking off from the water after sailing back and forwards up to 200 metres across the bay. And it's lovely to see the local people coming here. The Port Bacares giving us so much support for this event. They've turned into something world class and have got the attention of the GKA, which is our official world body now hosting this big air competition it's nice to see just look how many people are watching on the side there it's filling up big time and they're here really Ruben to see the climax of our event here it is the big air focus 
on twin tip riding and we are all the way up to the quarterfinals we still have ruben let me remind you the semi-finals of the ladies and the finals to run of those fleets it is uh still impressive that liam is still scoring into the 20s here in uh, in this heat remember that they have seven trick attempts where the three high scoring tricks uh being shown at the top of the screen and uh liam is uh, well ahead of edgar ulrich right now who still needs to uh, to better his two uh, low scores Whoa, he's found it. He's gone almost out of the shot there. This is big from Edgar. Can he get... A le what a landing wow. that was, Ruben. That is a crucial stage of this heat. Are we going to see another upset, perhaps? Here? Edgar just so patiently waiting into that back roll, mega loop, taking the board off, taking the hand out, throwing it away to try and gain some balance there, Ruben. That was a crucial landing. And what is that going to do to the scores? And Liam replying very quickly, obviously sensed that there was a strong bit of wind there to take as well, Ruben. So didn't want to mess around. Definitely. And we're getting some comments about the, the booby loop, but it's just a natural progression of uh, the dooby loop uh, or the boogie loop, the dooby loop, and then the booby loop. So nothing sexist about it. There's uh, men boobs, there's uh, female boobs, all kinds of boobs. And they're here uh, for, for the better. And definitely keep checking them. Stay safe out there. And uh, also uh, check your balls to see if you can pull mega loops and if they're safe. So uh, yeah, health comes first, so we can keep shining bright and uh, spreading our love into the world. Thank you so much for tuning in uh, into the live stream of the GKA Kite World Tour with the big air discipline being thrown down here in Barcares with a beautiful flat water spot with uh, very gusty and challenging conditions, but we've got the world's best riders uh, dealing with it and it's gonna be uh, an epic show. We still have uh, the women's division coming up right after round four. Uh, of the man. So uh, definitely stay tuned and uh, bear with us. What's he signaling there? That's Edgar Ulrich with some sort of signaling going on there. I wonder if he's uh, he's not happy about something here, Ruben. You know, this is really getting tight, this heat here. One, two, three, four, five tricks for Liam Whaley. And I think uh, six perhaps for Edgar. This is also getting interesting here. The donkey dick needs needs renaming if we're going to go down this path. Yeah, don't bring the animals into this. Well, they might as well be part of this uh, beautiful sport, and uh, they're they're yeah they're invited. What about the chicken loop? I have to talk about the chicken loop. Yeah, you can loop like a chicken. No, the chicken loop is actually uh, the name which we call the the chicken loop, the the ring that we hook into our harness hook that hangs on uh, hangs us to the kite, attaches us to the kite. Um, so yes, we got animal names as well. Don't be offended. And sometimes the riders even chicken out or abort their um, their trick or their even their full takeoff. Do not start on trick abortions, Ruben. That's not legal in some countries, trick abortions. You've got to commit to your moves straight away everywhere around the world. You can't just you know change your mind halfway through. Yes, of course you can. Here is Liam Whaley, right foot forwards then here with the white rash vest. And he's, this is a real tough heat. It's one of our longest heats that we've had today, actually, because the judges really are giving them some grace here on their timing. Now, we told you they have 40 seconds to complete their moves. Sometimes they're giving them two, three, four, five minutes here. Left foot forward, he comes in here, Liam Whaley. This is a crucial time in this heat, Ruben. He's got the height here, but he didn't get the board off. He wanted the double uh, mega loop board off, but like you say, he couldn't get the board off. The way you can see in this replay, he's reaching for the board. Up, throwing out the hand, putting enough pressure. Oh, no, wasn't getting it. Not satisfied with that one. Was that his uh, last attempt in this heat? He is uh, still in the lead, so uh, nothing to worry about, I'd say, for Liam. A very competitive rider, very skilled, talented rider, definitely on top of his game. And uh, taking on Edgar Ulrich here in uh, heat number two of uh, round uh, one, the quarterfinals. Last trick. Uh, left here. He's three down Ulrich, so he needs to upgrade his 3.83. He needs a 3.34 to lead. If we add that onto it, wow, this could be it. Forget about the numbers. He's just gone oh, absolutely rewind. massive. This could be big. If Signature. he lands, just look, he's holding on for as long as he can. Oh. He sticks it. This is massive. Edgar Ulrich, what did he need then to go into the lead here? He needed more than three on top of that. He needed around a 7.2 or above, Ruben. Is here this is the, the replay. replay. 
this is going to be massive and it might be what he needed. It was a contra loop. Ball is massive. The kite oh. angle is beautiful, Ruben. But look at this technique. How confident is this to just wait for his right time? This was amazing, Ruben. This is going to be, for me, way above the eights and it's going to put him in the lead with Liam Whaley you still reckon? to perform a trick. I do think we're going to see oh, these scores change wow. around now. What is it? Show me the trick. It was an 8.43, but was it in the same category? No way. Yeah, because that uh, one it was is a contra loop. No, no, it's just been categorized correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a contra loop. Oh, Straight in the lead he goes, <laughs> Ruben. So Liam Whaley now. It's been thrown to him now, and he's 1.1 more than his lowest score, which is a 6.4 at this moment. So he needs roughly a 7.5 himself to stay in the competition. Just like that, Ruben. This can happen here at the Lords of Tram. Just while we're talking about all these other things. The action brings us back down to earth once more. The strong wind is coming here. What's he going to do, though? Is it going to be the double mega loop board off? Yeah, but I doubt it's going to be enough. But he has a... Uh, let's see, Liam, what is he going to do? He's got maybe an S loop board off. That will... A proper one, like getting leveled on the kite. But Edgar just busted out a massive one. Ooh, double, double kite loop back roll. And landing it clean, full speed. He is stoked with that trick. But is it going to be enough? I think he needs a 7.57 to equal Edgar, but he can't. Wow, he was pretty leveled on the long lines there. He can't equal Edgar here because Edgar's got a higher score trick. So he needs a 7.57, actually a 7.56 to take oh. this one. Is it going to be enough for Liam Whaley? We watch the scores. See. They're coming in high. I can already see some scores flying in here, Ruben, and I think he's going to be okay here. More than a 7.57 will do. For him, the category is in the kite loop back roll. 8.4. Category 8.4 coming in for yeah, Liam Whaley. Liam Whaley he's done it, it in the last move. What an incredible <laughs> heat we've just seen there. He's so good at that, Ruben, at oh, reacting wow. and knowing. And he looks devastated there. Edgar Urix on the beach, and I'm sure they're refreshing those scores. And unfortunately for him, he just didn't do oh. enough there. That 5.8 really just bringing his score down. So that was absolutely massive. Two super stylish, intelligent riders taking it on, taking each other on in the quarterfinals here at the GKA Kite World Tour. Absolutely mind-blowing action. And I am so surprised and aware by the absolute control Edgar was showing as well throughout that uh, contra loop with the rotations and the board off. And then keeping the board off, stretching out his legs until right before the landing and he actually trains that during snow kiting as well just to be so aware in the air and off his body off the kite off the lift and uh, yeah just absolutely epic performance uh, thank you very much and congratulations Liam Whaley for taking home uh, the win of this heat well I'm speechless there both these riders uh, congratulating them it's love look at that scene down there Ruben these two duotone team riders Ew. congratulating each other and what was an absolutely epic hit interesting that uh, Edgar actually using a click bar yeah and um, different bar are they on the same kite Liam? both on a seven uh, I don't know it don't looks know like they... Liam is riding a bigger bar I don't know where they are now oh, so they're just waiting for these tricks to be this is interesting what's happening here they're, they're so uh, close look at that they yeah. still got adjusted like the 8.4 got adjusted to the 8 uh, yeah 10. I, did, I did see something was adjusted so i there. think this is going to be it though but um and in the next heat we've got luca ceruti um against lorenzo cassati so luca ceruti coming uh, from south africa cape town one of our favorite places to ride in the world as well uh taking on uh, italian uh Lorenzo Cassati, current King of the Air, Red Bull King of the Air uh, champion. This one just for the crowds then, I think, here, as we turn our attention just to the crowds as well. I think he's boosting one there just for the crowds as the Frenchman comes into your screen now, floating from the right-hand side. There he is coming in at that. Nice. Very just, fast. Just to say goodbye as he's had that great support. But, wow, here we go straight into another biggie, Ruben. It is a slobber knocker of a heat as a kite falls out the sky in front of me. Luca Ceruti from uh, flying under the Italian flag, obviously from South Africa a lot of the time. And Lorenzo Cassati with the Spanish flag with Italy written it's, underneath. Uh, the country flags are getting a bit mixed up here, but um, luckily we're here to put things straight, Lewis. Isn't that right? And uh, I'm looking very forward to see these two young guns take it to the sky because uh, they can throw uh, S-loops combined with board offs and rotations. So this is definitely going to be a heat to watch. Thank you so much for tuning, uh, tuning in on this uh, wonderful Sunday. Uh, we hope you're doing well and uh, that you're enjoying this, uh, this show. I think we're pushing around 35, uh, 30, 35 knots now, uh, a bit more consistently than we were for those previous heats. You can see the AP flag being raised here, which is the triangular flag in the top corner. This seems like a good time. Let's go to a commercial break.
wherever you go in the world, one airline goes further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. Years and years, promise my brother soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. And I promise I'm trying to, before you count me out, homie, let me remind you, they was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to, careful them dollar signs, like lights, they'll blind you. Lords of Tram was the first real big air contest in France and started in 2019 in Coissant. After our third edition, the city of Barcares saw the potential of the event to develop their water sport appeal to the world. Barcares is a dynamic city, committed to events promoting their territory. Thanks to Barcares for their trust. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents.
So welcome back here, and uh, this is going to be an exciting heat. You're here with me, Ruben Lenton, Lewis Cretton. We'll, uh, we'll be right back, just going off for a little wee. But uh, we have about 10 heats left to finish off uh, the, uh, the event today, where we uh, almost finish off the, the quarterfinals here with this... Uh, this heat between uh, Luca Ceruti from actually South Africa, not Italy. Lorenzo Cassati, however, from Italy. Two young guns taking on each other. And uh, yeah, the wind looks stable, looks steady. It's not 45 knots, but uh, definitely uh, between 25 and 35 knots. So perfect for uh, big air kite surfing. And if you're just joining us, thank you very much. Um, you very uh, much appreciate the support. And uh, we hope you enjoy the show and uh, the tricks uh, that are coming right up. Uh, after the round four of the men, we will continue with the women's division, where we were left off yesterday in the semi-finals. So we will keep running the semi-finals for the ladies. Then we will dive into the semi-finals for the men. Uh, and then on to the mini-finals and uh, uh, finally the final. So some exciting action coming up. And hopefully the wind does increase and keeps picking up throughout the day. Um, it can change with the sun, with the warmth. It's uh, very uh, variable uh, conditions here. But I am uh, very excited for this heat. The yellow flag is still up, so we still have some time before the the kickoff of this uh, this heat between these two young guns. You can join us in the comments on uh, on YouTube. Let us know if you have any questions, and uh, we are happy to uh, to address those, to give you some more information on the things you're curious about, on the things you maybe not fully understand, or um, yes, yeah, some suggestions. Always welcome. So someone was asking, what is the biggest kite you can loop? Can I loop my 14 meter? Uh, I mean. If you don't loop yet, definitely start off uh, with a smaller size um, and even underpowered so you can get used to cranking the bar. And uh, yeah, then you can step up to bigger sizes. But um, yeah, don't recommend it really above the 10, 11 meters. However, the kites are getting quicker. And here we are with the first trick attempt of Luca Ceruti with a massive double back roll board of Contra Loop. One of his signatures is he yeah, now finally sticking it. He was having some trouble uh, getting the landing on this one uh, in earlier heats, but here he goes with the back double back roll, taking off uh, the board with his back hand and uh, looping the kite, contra looping the kite with the front hand. So very well performed. And uh, let's see what the, the judges will score this. If you want some more insights in the scoring, you can go over to the GKA kite world tour.com. Then click on live and uh, you can scroll down into the quick menu uh, to the live stream, the live ticker, the live scoring, the elimination letters, uh, just to find out a bit more on what is going on. So this is the first trick attempt in this heat from Lorenzo Cassati. Looking very, very good here for the first one. So let's see. He dives. into a booby loop with a board spin so that is a, a double uh, sorry not it was a dooby loop board spin so two front rotations hoppa luca answering back with a dooby loop and added rotation of his own not uh, doing the board off but uh, definitely getting very inverted on that uh, dooby loop one and then two, that second one goes right over his head, so very inverted. But uh, that needs to be combined with a board off even uh, to really uh, rack up the points. However, he did score a uh, 6.7 for that doobie loop. So uh, very, very nice. Here goes Lorenzo Cassati again with a uh, double forward board off uh, contra loop. Sticking it clean, I think an added rotation, so even three rotations, one, two, and then an added rotation on the way down, and even a stylish grab to finish things off before coming in for the landing. So a trick doesn't count if it's crashed or if you take off during your trick attempt and uh, you don't perform the trick. So. 
Contra loop, board off, two front rotations. Not going that massive, only 9.8 meters, as you can see in the bottom of your screen there. So one and two. Not super wild trick. So uh, I don't think it will uh, score close to uh, Lorenzo's previous trick. Wow, very nice. Now combining the board off with the, the back rolls. Uh, so here goes Lorenzo Cassati doing the kite loop uh, triple back roll board off. Very nicely performed. He stuck it clean there to uh, rack up his points. And Lorenzo Cassati in the lead here in this heat against Luca Ceruti from South Africa. So both riders uh, had three trick attempts and uh, they get seven attempts in total with the three highest scoring tricks visible in the screen on top making up the overall score which you see. Now it's up to uh, Luca Ceruti in the purple Lycra taking off going front roll Double front roll board off with a contra loop. He's looping his kite with his front hand. So that is a contra loop. Keeping the style and the rotations going. Covering some nice height on this one. Look at that. Nice angle. Not too much distance. But uh, yeah, the wind is maybe not fully cranking. Uh, but still performing some, uh, some epic moves here. Guess where I've been, Ruben? Um, going for a quick session. <laughs> no, yeah, right. I've actually just been down there, a couple of yards away from this angle right here. Um, I managed to walk around the back there. I wanted to feel the conditions and see how it felt. I could see what kite size was out there. This is an eight meter uh, from Luke for Lorenzo. I just wanted to see what it felt like. Wow, what a lovely move this is with multiple back rotations from Lorenzo Casati. And I'm going to send you down there shortly because I want you to see and feel that too with the wind it comes and goes and it's i was down there good. earlier and it's, it good definitely, to, uh, it's good to oh, see oh, it isn't oh, it and feel it wow look at this move though land just a bit of a butt check a for ruben give me an update what's going on in this heat yeah so uh, lorenzo cassati against luca Ceruti. um i feel that uh, lorenzo is getting a bit more technical uh getting some uh, some more tricks done and luca oh four rotations oh just not getting the landing on that one that was a direct reply to me. He's just showing that he can do the old windmill, I believe you called it, Ruben. Um, he can do that move too. So he really did start powering through uh, the rotations there. That seemed like a bit of a reply to uh, Lorenzo. So where are we at with the scores here? It's not too far away from each other. About 1.5 separating these two riders. How many trick attempts do they have left? It looks like uh, Lorenzo is indeed riding without a helmet. Usually we always see him riding with a helmet, but uh, I might have just forgotten it. Lost his head. He lost his head. It's not a good time to do it in the quarterfinals of. Uh, well, you're not wearing a helmet. The World Championships. It's not mandatory to wear a helmet, of course. Mandatory to wear an impact vest, though. Is it mandatory to wear an impact vest? That's true. Yeah. Oh, that is good to know. Left foot forwards then as he comes uh, right towards the crowd here with this massive Way. back roll mega loop board off into multiple rotation and sticks it clean. Ruben, that was really well executed. Four rotations, there. I believe. We're going to see it in the replay. And it was 16.2 meters high. Look at this. One, board off, two, three, and four rotations for Lorenzo Cassati with a board off and a massive kite loop. So what a skill. What a landing. What have you done to my laptop here? I changed around the been, size of your screens and it's not working for me. It's not working. Right. You, do you know how to change the size of the screens? Yeah. You start Should hammering down. <laughs> hammering on the edge of your glass. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're back there. 
Thanks, everyone, for uh, staying on board with us for this epic Sunday of action. It's 4.27 p.m. I've been told we are going to get this thing wrapped up today, men and women. So women still got the semifinals and finals, but this is the quarterfinals of uh, the men right now. And uh, we're nearly getting to the edge of their trick attempts. They've got two more trick attempts left each. And Lorenzo Casati really edging in front there, especially with that last manoeuvre. What's the low score from Luca Taruti here? He's got a 6-2-6. Six, six. He's actually got three sixes on the board. He's really going to have to nail these next two moves, Ruben, as Lorenzo has got the opportunity to try and upgrade some of his. So the 6.4 lowest scorer for Luca at the moment is a kite loop front roll. So I expect this might be in the family of a kite loop front roll. Super zoomed in here. You can uh, see his board racing through the water. He's going to zoom off this guy. Yeah, the director shouting, like, what are you doing, mate? If I translated that from French to English, probably like, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> you got one more chance. There he is. Raphael. What, what size was he riding, say, seven? I think he was on an eight as well, but he's not oh, happy right. here with the... Uh, oh, the wind is not there If he has to go right foot forwards, what will he do? Maybe contra loops? Yeah, Did he do them that way? Them. No. Uh, two not, of it, not two sure. of his tricks are contra loop. But he's going to jump left foot forward, like he's going to turn around. Interesting, Ruben. Very, very interesting. This 50 knots that we really thought were it was going to happen hasn't quite happened so far. Here he goes then. He's taking off to the skies here. Oh, he's going for the double. Did he go for it? Though? Yeah, double kite loop uh, with a back roll. Delayed back roll, yeah. Yep. Uh, let's take a look at the replay there. Yeah, it's he, hard to tell if you're not He kept pulling his backhand here, one. And yeah, the, he did. And but I think he's riding a six meter. This kite went around super fast. Maybe he swapped. I don't know. Yeah, and meanwhile, look at the height difference. It's a big contra wow. loop here from Lorenzo Casati looking to upgrade his 6.8, I expect. And his 6.8 at the moment from Lorenzo Casati is a contra loop back roll board off. So that was from the front roll variety. Ooh. So this should give us a good idea of what... So he got on with that, didn't he? What an instant reply. Handing it back over then to uh, Luca. Both these riders vying for a place in the semi-final. They'll come up against the winner of Baby Shark and Andrea Principi. That looked like a double kite loop board off to me, Ruben Lenton. Looked like an S loop board off to me because he was... Uh, How do you swap hands and do that? Look at that. One... He's right. Yep. He's right. He did swap in hands and I, doing it. I did see uh, him taking his board off with his right hand, so the second loop, yeah, would have had to be with his left hand. But maybe it wasn't really an S loop because the kite already came up, kind of, yeah, uh, too high for my likings for an S loop. So maybe this was just a, a kite loop uh, board off contra loop. Well, whatever it was, I don't think it's going to be enough now. Seven trick attempts on the board for Luca Taruti, and he is nowhere near Lorenzo's high score of 22.49. So he really looks like he's got this one in the bag. It was an eight meter. I was down there, Ruben. I saw it with my own eyes, that white Cabrina. And Cabrina it Nitro. It's a new, new kite from Cabrina, apparently, and uh, it's performing very well. Lorenzo is showing off. Interestingly, it's white, that Cabrina Nitro. Wouldn't you expect like a dark nighttime color like the nitro no nitrous oxide man keep it light what color is that see-through <laughs> laughing gas ha 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 see-through <laughs> can't have a see-through car oh, the judges oh! wouldn't see it but do the judges see that this is getting popular Ruben this landing okay how has he landed there uh, yeah so okay blind you're gonna say blind I know no this reps but he already swung around. It's just a last-minute rotation, I think. Yeah, interesting. He didn't land. What I can tell you, though, is Lorenzo Casati has definitely taken that one, bar a judging miracle for that to be turned around. So Lorenzo Casati continuing on his power power surge up uh, the rankings here. He will be in the semi-finals. And uh, people are wondering what happened with uh, Gilles and uh, Jamie's uh, uh, heat. 
do need to find that out. Whoa, there's they did, whoa, cha- they did change deal, things around. Something. So it wasn't Jamie yeah, Overbeek. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, Giel Vlucht, indeed, uh, now put on to the semi-finals instead of uh, Jamie need, Overbeek. We, we need to bring you this. We, we need to get to the bottom of this. Some, more importantly, someone needs to bring this to us. Yeah, How exactly. can you be telling us that in the comments and we don't know? We, uh, really. we only saw that now. It was that. Thank you very much, uh, Rene. Maybe you can tell us. Yeah, what happened there? Which trick got thrown out? Let's Maybe find it is out. worth going up to the race director. We did see uh, Hill doing the, that. Let's go to the heat. Let's look at the scores there. Do we bring someone? Do we bring someone live on air here? So in the heat number four of uh, the quarterfinals here in uh, Barcares between Jose San, Baby Shark they call him, from Brazil taking on Andrea Principi um, who yeah, basically uh, can keep flying for days. He just uh, had a 232 meters uh, long jump spending 18 seconds in the sky which uh, was absolutely phenomenal. So uh, let's see what Baby Shark can do to uh, try and kick out uh, Andrea Principi in this heat coming right up. Well I have officially put that on our special WhatsApp group. I want to find out what's happened with that heat and we want to bring that to you. There is the crowd there waiting in anticipation still for this. Uh, it really hasn't had this 55 knots, that you know, 50 knots, 100 knots that we talk about here, Ruben. It's been a difficult competition for the riders to get uh, to get into the swing of things here. Let's take a look out the window. Yeah, it is the blue rash vest here of Josu San, Baby Shark as he's known, uh, starting off with a big doobie loop. Nice. Yeah, you saw him uh, grow the confidence uh, throughout his tricks in the event and uh, feeling uh, well at home here on the flat water. Here you see a replay of that uh, nice, nicely performed uh, doobie loop. Two front rotations and a back kite loop. But Andrea Principi, known for his height, his technicality and extreme moves. What can he do? He is definitely going huge on this... Double front spin, contra loop, board off, and exactly again covering a lot of distance here. How much distance, Ruben? I 112 meters worth of distance? 102. Okay, interesting. I mean, look at the height he is here. I mean, he must be around 20 meters, that's for starters. That's lovely with his surfer app data that we should be able to bring you. How far? 112? From Lewis Crathen, 102 from Ruben Linton. 138 oh, wow. meters distance. He really is the standout rider here getting these distances and heights 18.1 meters in the sky here he's in another seconds. level here 10 seconds airtime in this trick and uh, getting a maximum speed of 78 kilometers per hour absolutely incredible height and distance uh, from uh, Andrea Principi but Baby Shark answering right back with a massive move but only 10, 10 meters height here's the replay Double back roll, mega loop with an added rotation on the way down. If he would have taken his board off, it would have stood a chance against Andrea Principi. But Baby Shark really has to take it all out of the tank to uh, try and match Andrea's moves. All right, let's answer that question quickly before the next move. Now, how can scores be amended? Sometimes the judges' scores have either been entered incorrectly, maybe they've been uh, labelled as the wrong category, and they can, it can sometimes change it's not always exactly the same so here we see a lovely double back roll contra loop uh, board off here Ruben nice and controlled the hand just came off the bar set just a second there just but to again balance himself out. Yeah, to balance himself you throw that hand out sometimes to balance yourself let's watch that key moment here where the contra loop happens gets the board on here the right hand just swinging around as if to say whoa hold on a minute i'm not ready to be uh, yank yankee doodled <laughs> into just, into that bar so it helps him uh, stay balanced and stop his rotation to uh, just uh, be up straight for the landing very nicely done uh, by andrea principi we apologize if the live scoring isn't currently refreshing properly on your uh, on your direct access to the back end of the gk kiteworldtour.com we are seeing it nicely on our stream so we can continue to talk about that and we do have a bit of a an access me and Ruben here to 
the back end just to give you all the details it's lovely to follow all of that action so oh big contralute this is massive wow and baby shark here from brazil josu san he's now been able to access those big wins up the top there ruben this is big take a look at this replay ruben it was a contralute you don't often see heights of contraloops quite like that and look at the distance traveled here any guesses here ruben this is going to be up to 100 and 130 meters i think I'm 150 gonna go. You want 50? 111, 111 meters. Bad guess. It's a bit further, yeah. Well, isn't it fun that we can play that game thanks to the surfer app? 8.4 seconds in the air here. So back over we go to Andrea Principi. Riding right up to the shore, almost touching his board on the sand. But look at this triple back roll, board spin. Good. Oof. Uh, kite loop, I think. Yep, let's see. Was it the front hand or the back hand? A lot to work out here. One. Back hand. Yeah, there goes the kite backhand. So it's uh, with four. Don't know how many rotations, Ruben. But what I'm this dizzy. indicates to us, commentating up here, the riders are getting on with things very quickly. There's obviously good wind there, Ruben. They're not waiting around 40 seconds or more, wondering where the gusts are. When we see the riders going boom, 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 we know that they want to access this nice, lifty wind. It's just like any session you're out kiteboarding yourself, you want to be jumping. When you feel that it's good, you don't mess around. So these two are absolutely thrown down here. And Josu, Josu San, I'd love to know how old this young Brazilian is because he's come out of nowhere here, also known as Baby Shark. I believe he's flying into the box now, left foot forwards, Ruben. Uh, just not getting the board off uh, during his tricks, and that's something uh, that is going to be crucial to up his scores. Definitely against Andrea Principi, one of the best riders out there at the moment. See, he was reaching for the board, just couldn't get it off. Otherwise, he would have had a nice uh, doobie loop board off. I think that's fair to say. He's underrated, Ruben. He wasn't even on the radar. Do you know what? He wasn't even rated before as much. To me, I'd never seen this guy ride so much before. Certainly, riding conditions which have been... Uh, which is you know, really being allowed to express himself. Often we see riders in lighter winds and having to deal with the experienced riders that know how to deal with that. But he really is up against it here, against uh, Andrea oh, Principi, who is the big air world champion, by the way. Uh, also got to the podium. People don't talk about that much. Got to the podium for his first ever King of the Air. So much expectation was on him <laughs> as uh, we see this board spin here, Ruben, just go wrong for him. You know, everyone thought he was going to take that final out and obviously he finished third. And he was uh, very graceful about that and was happy for his... Uh, his friend, his close friend, a team rider of a long time, has worked duo time before he moved. Lorenzo, that is. But um, here, I think he'll be wanting to make a statement. Big Megalute with a delayed back roll. Whoa. And, uh, cool. How, what a landing. What a oh, take. Wow, and he takes the kite as well here. So here we're going to see this replay. It's always at the bottom. You don't think it's at the bottom, but it's at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, nice kite work then. From Josu. And get this, Ruben. The winner of this heat will go against Lorenzo Casati. We could see an Andre Principe Casati semi final. Here he comes with the yellow helmet here, flying through this heat. Look at that. Doobie loop. Water control and flipping the board. Oy! He got rid. He was not handling that, but look how he uh, was flying with the board besides him and then flipped it. Here he goes into the front roll. Contra loop, and then there he flipped the board, and he was like, oh, too much speed to the left, and uh, couldn't come in for a proper soft landing. It's a really good point someone's made here. Just, uh, of course, always reading what you're up to here on our live stream. Of course, paying attention to the action, but it's nice to interact with you. You don't often see big air riders coming from Brazil, Ruben. Why, why do you think that is? Well, I mean, Brazil has got phenomenal kite surfing conditions all along the, the shores, especially in the north. The wind is cranking and uh, yeah, the conditions are just like a, a hair dryer. Every day from the same direction it kicks in and it's a really great training ground for uh, all kinds of technical maneuvers. And if you can do all the rotations, you can do all the kite loops, then yeah, you just have to go somewhere else with some more wind, just like Barcares, to get the height and then show uh, that you have all the technical tricks, just like Baby Shark is doing here. Three rotations there on that mega loop delayed roll, I think, here. If we count them back here, Ruben, taking off, pulling that backhand. It's the right hand getting One, lovely in. Two, One, two, three. three, locking it out nicely there. I think that's going to be a nice score for Jusu. It's going to definitely replace his 6.0, which is currently his kite loop back roll. Only a 6.10. So 
He's getting showed there, Andrea Principi, the scores live. We hope they're working for you at the moment. But just my thoughts about that with Brazil, we've seen lots of wonderful freestylers. Of course, Bruno Cagia uh, being one of them and also Carlos Mario Bebe amongst many others. But we're also seeing here Michele Sol from Brazil as well, flying under the United States flag here, Ruben. We'll get back to that in a minute. That's a kite loop variation with the front roll, board spin, I believe, Ruben. Um, yeah, so Andrea Principi well in control of this one, but Michele Sol now turning her attention to Big Air, and she's dominating at the moment. She's currently the Big Air world champion and the freestyle world champion as well. So we are seeing it in the ladies, but in the men, not so much so. I think the density of the wind, which you covered a little bit there, Ruben, this colder wind, which we're more used to in Europe and uh, places like here and maybe Cape Town, it takes some training to but get used to these gusts. Baby Shark seems to be loving it. He's uh, getting some good airtime today and uh, really showing that he's uh, he's got some moves. But Andrea Principe definitely, uh, yeah, it's going to be hard to beat. How many uh, trick attempts do they have left? They've both got one trick attempt left and it will be uh, Josu San. A.K.A. Baby Shark here in the purple Lycra riding right foot forward. What is he going for? Pre-pop? Jump, and it's a triple front roll contra loop. Not uh, not going to score that well, I'm afraid. Here he goes for a little preload, and then Rob edge right into it. One double front roll contra loop, but no, not uh, what the judges like to see. And also crashing his kite as he rides out of that trick. So uh, I think it's up to Andrea Principe to just... Uh, yeah, do one for the show and uh, save his energy for the for the semifinals, because this is the the last heat of round four of the quarterfinals uh, of the men's division here at the GKA World Cup Big Air Kite Surfing. There we go, Andrea Principe going for that massive, massive contra loop with quadruple or triple uh, front roll and that board flip that we saw him try earlier but this time he lands it there he goes in the replay edging full speed look at how high he goes ridiculous scores coming here Ruben I can see massive scores coming in from all of our five judges one board off up Whoa. two up and that board flip that is so tricky three up so how good how controlled is that that is really um, so controlled absorbs that landing and that most likely being uh one of the biggest moves, I think, of the heat. So that is the end of the quarterfinals, Ruben. We'll be back after a commercial break, and it is semi-final time. Are we first going to do the women's or uh, continue uh, with the semis uh, of the men? I think the ladies are up now. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry about that. I wasn't informed on that. But, yeah, no, actually, that's still correct. I said semi-final time. Semi-final oh, yeah, time. I, did. I said semi-final time. I didn't say which... Uh, Women's division which coming up. Uh, some uh, standout riders from yesterday. Definitely Michaeli Sol from Brazil. Uh, showing that she has all the tricks in the bag to uh, to take home the win. But also uh, Angeli uh, from France. She was absolutely going massive and riding really aggressive. Uh, so it's going to be uh, an epic semi-final coming up. I don't think we're going anywhere, are we? we <laughs> and I don't think we should. Let's, let's remind you, no, we stay, it's okay, we stay with the action. So, Natalie Lambrecht against Angeli Boulay. You might be wondering why uh, the scores are on the screen there, if you just missed 10 minutes. Um, but no, you haven't, they're recontinuing, re continue is restarting. that a word? Re no, no, not restarting. No, 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 sorry. Yeah. Um, re continuing. It's got to be re-something. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can help me in the comments there, I've been talking a lot today. <laughs> But um, they are going to continue with the heat from yesterday, which was uh, abandoned due to the, the... Actually, I think it was the ridiculous strength of the wind, actually. So Yeah, gusts of 72 knots, Lewis. Uh, we're pumping through the competition area yesterday. So, uh, yeah, Natalie Lombrecht from Sweden taking on uh, French girl Angeli Boulou. Boulou. For a place in the final as well. So it's uh, winner takes all. Continue. If you uh, yeah miss uh, if you lose in the semi-finals then you uh, get another chance to fight for uh, third and fourth position in the mini final. So uh, definitely riding twice these girls. But uh, they definitely want a spot in the final and uh, they're gonna give it their all. So I'm curious to see who is gonna take home the win in this heat between Natalie Lambrecht 
from Sweden and Angelie Boulot from France. It's an interesting dynamic this heat, Ruben, because it's not necessarily as simple as saying this is for a space on the podium. It guarantees your place on the podium because it's going to put you in the two women final, but you will get a chance in the mini final to, to fight for third and fourth, but you'd like to have it done here, right? And maybe if you've got that sort of mindset, you might be just thinking, I only want to get first. I'm, go I'm doing it. I'm going all the way. But to some, getting onto the podium is an achievement. For others, like Aaron Hadlow, it's not good enough. Not good enough, just need a win, otherwise I'm devastated. <laughs> yeah, all these riders are uh, quite competitive and uh, dedicating their life to kite surfing. Such a lovely passion we all uh, have for this sport. If you're not kite surfing yet and just uh, enjoying uh, the epic dynamics of this beautiful sport, definitely uh, give it a try. There's many of awesome kite schools around the world where you can get started, get informed online and uh, yeah, then get a couple lessons and get started. Here goes Natalie then, who's uh, opening up. Straight into a boogie loop. Nice landing. Cool. That was like a tech. That board just sucked to the water there, Ruben. Let's take another look at the replay on this landing here. Didn't get super high on this. They had stronger win yesterday, but nice kite position. Kite did. Say, what a landing. That was Taking outrageous it. landing. Yeah, that uh, tap down on the water pretty uh, tight. So Nigel Bannon absolutely nailing that word. It was reconvene. Do you know this word? It's a good British word, this. Reconvene was the exact word. Thank you very much, Nigel. That was just out of my reach here, as it sometimes is. Um, with so many things with, going with, on, Lewis. No, 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 with, with words. <laughs> just with key words sometimes. Everything else I've got covered, Ruben, as we know. But there has been a lot going on here. And again, these scores aren't currently uh, refreshing. Massive uh, shout out to all the Dutchies watching uh, this epic live stream today, supporting all the, the Dutchies in this event and uh, everyone around the world. Thanks for joining, tuning in. You're here with me, Ruben Lenten and Lewis Cretern, reporting live from the uh, GKA Kite World Tour stop here in Barcares, France. Just the Bacares. Just into the semi-finals, uh, which we reconvene uh, from yesterday's uh, stoppage of the event due to uh, too much wind. And now we're actually looking at Angelie Bully in the white lycra, doing her massive mega loop late back roll, getting a super nice kite angle and uh, landing it clean. That was good power, good angle. Let's look at the replay here. Going massively, nicely inverted. And landing it with speed, super clean. I think that's going to be some nice scores coming in for Angeli. Still waiting for Natalie's trick score to come in here. She had a kite loop back roll already on the board. Oh, there it is. Uh, there is Natalie's. It's the kite loop front roll that we were looking for, which is the 6.13. So this heat already quite close. Less than a point in it. And just to remind you about this heat, they already did perform some moves yesterday. So they're already four trick attempts each here. Three trick attempts left for these riders to try and get into the final. Will it be the French lady, Angeli Boulois, with all that support off the beach? Will it be Natalie Lambrecht, who's really storming onto the big air scene right now, Ruben Lenton? 100%. Edging hard, going massive with a kite loop nose grab. Not going too high. Let's see what the surfer app data says. Uh, around the 10 meter mark there. Here she's edging. Yeah, nice, uh, yeah. nicely controlled uh, one-handed kite loop with a nose grab. And what I love about that grab was on the way up, Ruben, the real big grabs in mega loops are done on the way up for me. Not afterwards. Exactly. You can grab it after. You do it on the way up. You want to get serious about grabbing mega loops. Feels so good. I love just doing the massive mega loop and then grabbing the nose on the way up and then just swinging yourself into that laid back. It feels absolutely ridiculous. But here we got Angeli going for a kite loop board off. And is she sticking it? Wow, that's going to be epic scores for Angeli right here. Well done. Wow. Yeah, a crowd like that on the beach. Here is the replay of this, Ruben. And you really can't pick uh, this apart much at all. Lovely height. Got the legs out nicely and controlled. And she always looked odds on to land this. And now just look at the, the ocean, actually. Or, or the lake, whatever. The water. How about that? It's a lot flatter. We've not got such strong wind hitting us right now. I'd say this is in the region of about 30, maybe 35 knots maximum, Ruben. Because the water is so much flatter. The landings, even here, look how glassy the takeoff area is. And so downwind is also flatter. We're not seeing as many uh, trips over the nose. Uh, quite a, a weird stance there from Natalie before she takes off. 
trying to hang on to that kite. We're gonna need her. a we're gonna need a replay on this one. He found her in the end. Oh, she still had to repair the damage on that, and she hasn't, Ruben. I can tell you, whilst this replay yeah. cut Whoa. in out the window, Ruben, she didn't manage to save this. So this won't be scored. It all looks good here, but then that kite just diving. We need a couple more seconds on those clips. Will that count? No, it won't. I'll tell you. It won't. She was riding she's out, out quite for the far. Count. She's out for the count right now, Ruben. She's got a kite leading edge down, facing into the wind. The jet ski's coming over to offer assistance. She needs to rescue it. She's got a good chance here yeah. of rescuing it, as long as she doesn't have a line wrap around the tip. But this is really handing the advantage. There is that kite there. Great shot. She's okay. No equipment malfunction there. Just a bit of gusty wind sends it in the water. But has she got the board on? Yeah, I think she has, Ruben. Boom. Yeah, so she's still in this. Anjali Buwa now will feel like she's really close to the final. And what a moment this will be for her. She's really starting to get herself uh, together now. As this wind looks like, ah, oh, she's looking for a different kite then. She wants a smaller kite than on the beach. We can talk to you just in the background here, riding in. You get just as she goes past here. Anjali, I don't know, but Anjali Buwa, meanwhile. Well, going on a boogie loop to the right side. Right foot forward boogie loop with a nice tail grab there from Anjali. Showing that she is boss. Natalie needs a quick uh, job here. And I think she's going to have to pull Daniels that kite bar. She needs that kite launcher to keep the kite there. She's got a tangle. This isn't help. We need to see this on the beach right now. On La Plage. La Plage. I'm telling the director. She's got this green kite here. Okay. Desperate to see. I think she's fixed it, Ruben. She needed to pull Daniels. He's actually a magician in the UK. Whenever you get that line wrap, I think her lines were tangled. And uh, she really needed to get that kite sorted. And if she's managed to do that, Natty, yeah. that's a brilliant turnaround. You haven't seen that. I can tell you out the window, I've just seen Natalie Lambrecht come in. There she is fixing. Her uh, kite flipped, so her lines were twisted. So she had to rec lend her kite and throw her bar through her lines and unwrap that. So she did, and she, now she's back for her next trick attempt. Even more impressive, Ruben, is that the launcher there brought the kite right back towards her. All the lines went slack. It's much easier to visualize where you've got to push your bar through the lines to fix that with the kite being held nicely. But Natalie Lambrecht will get back into the zone and she will get a chance for a seventh trick attempt. But it's going to have to be a big one because Angelie Boulois is absolutely walking away with this at the moment. She needs, she needs over a nine here, Ruben. She's got a 5.13 scoring as her lowest trick. Angelie is absolutely caned it in this heat so I don't think she can quite get this score it's, it's, it's looking like it's, it's a high nines Ruben so yeah people are wondering what kite uh, Angeli is on it's uh, a core with the Alula leading edge so uh, what we see in the development of kites is that they're getting lighter more tighter more stiff more direct more performance so uh, yeah definitely lots of development and prototypes uh, being flown around and uh, they're actually quite slippery. I tried to grab one by the leading edge the other day and it slipped out of my hands. I was like, oh, this thing is slippery. So watch that if you ever grab a, an Alula kite by the leading edge and uh, just wondering. make sure you hang on tight. I'm wondering what you were talking about. Slippery leading For edge. For a right. second there, but um, I understand now. Yep. Slippery people. Here, oh, Anjali taking off with a double back row mega loop. Didn't even need to. She had the heat, oh. Oh, she had the heat in the bag. Hope she's not picked up a, a bit rip, of a rip cane up. Or, yeah, it looked like a big uh, little rib one. So she had this one, just warming herself oh. up for the final. That kite sticking out the side there for me, Ruby. She's hit a power <laughs> spike there, and uh, wow. she's away from her board. So I wonder if she wonder if she needed that. She didn't need that, but she just couldn't resist herself. There's the spectators on the beach, and they're always going to give it that extra. So uh, nicely done from Angeli. Unfortunately, not... Uh, yeah, nailing that landing right there, there and then. But um, Ruben, do you, I mean, we talk about don't, she didn't need that. Do you sometimes need that? A big caner to you wake yourself up? You never need a big caner. Trust me, I've tried many times, but you don't need a big caner. Nobody I needs a big know. caner. I, Maybe the spectators. I, do you know what, Ruben? There are some times where you receive a big caner, a big crash in the water. I've always felt if you can take that big crash, come out of that big crash, you think, oh, I must be in a good... You can turn that into a positive. Well, I took that. I took that. I'm physically fit. I'm able to bounce off the water like that. I'm in a good place. Sometimes a big caner can be good for you. Yeah, I, I will pass on the next big caner. I've had enough big caners in my life, with the last one being uh, two weeks ago in Vietnam, coming down hard from 11 meters uh, without the kite catching me. So that was uh, was gnarly. I've uh, luckily walked away without any uh, permanent damage. So uh, stoked on that. Hey, but hold on a minute here. There's big caners and there's stupid crashes. 
True that. Yeah, that was definitely a stupid move on my, from my side. But, uh, well, they told me to. What happened there? You had a foil kite, right? How big was this kite? It was uh, massive, and okay, it, okay. it didn't didn't work out. So I, I, I learned my lesson there, mate. You don't want to talk about it. That's fair enough. Sometimes he's just giving you that quiet well, signal we do to commentators where we zip it. We're not going to talk about foil kites just yet. As soon as the first rider is going to use one in competition, we will start talking about it. Okay. It wasn't you training or anything to be back in the comps like this, or you just you're just curious, right? Yeah, you just uh, take you that thing out on short lines, mate. Good luck. Mass, think, oh, look, look at this, think Dimitri Mario Mendes. I haven't heard that name for a while. I think last time he competed, he was booted out first round. Oh God. Wow, the wind is pumping through. We see Angeli just edging super hard against her kite. But uh, yeah, that was the end of this heat, and um, yeah, and here we are then. So uh, well on the uh, on the ne yeah on this next semi-final heat for the women's division, we got uh, Francesca uh, taking on Mikali, and uh, this is gonna be an interesting heat because the winner will move on to the final and take on Angeli Bulu. Eww, she is stoked, claiming it. And so we're yet to bring you the, the full rundown then on what's happened with Hills Heat, but I have requested it here. It's a protest to be discussed, to be resolved shortly, Ruben. Cool. That sounds interesting. I'd love to be in that protest. And actually, ironically, somehow the back end system's given me the scores of Jamie Overbeek and Hillvlug, even though we're on this heat with the ladies here, which we look at the way I've got this scores right now, Ruben. There's a protest, that's all I know, and I have to stick officially. There was about 0.5 or 6 difference from them, Jamie Overbeek winning over Gil Vlug. But as far as we know, Gil or somebody has had to uh, do a protest. So, we will get to the bomb here. It still says uh, Gil Vlucht in the semi-finals, but uh, the scores here say different on our screen, so let's see. Ah, here we go. Francesca Mani from the UK up against Michaeli Sol flying under the USA flag. That is correct. I was informed yesterday by Craig, of course, Cunningham from Duotone. Whoa! Meanwhile, Francesca Mani going out of focus. Oh. She can't just ride through that first powered mega loop. That was high. 14.6 meters opening up her account, Ruben. This is a biggie. Nice. Yeah, she just got yanked out of balance a little bit there. So, oh, unfortunately, crashing on the landing here. So, uh, ending up in a zero score for her first trick attempt. Yeah, that's unfortunate for her. So, she's up against the world champion, Michele. So, so flying under the USA flag. She actually has dual uh, citizenship, apparently Brazil and the United States. So, this was... a. Uh, Deliberate. So uh, in the end, it turned out that uh, Jamie Overbeek is indeed uh, through over that heat uh, against uh, Gil, Gil Vlucht, who seemed uh, very upset about uh, the first initial uh, scores that came in. But after reassessing everything, uh, Jamie Overbeek did make it through to the semifinals and is uh, on to Liam Whaley in a little bit in the men's semifinals of the men's division. But right now, here in the semifinals, Francesca taking on Mikaeli Sol. Um, who is uh, absolutely champion in freestyle and big air. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, the hottest in the sport right now. The wind is on. I think the girls are riding five or six meter kites. Where are you getting that info from? Am I not on the same WhatsApp groups as you? Well, you're just looking at the scores. Yeah, I know, but that could still change. It, it, you know? it did change. It did change? I Again, thought I wasn't now. on a WhatsApp group that I should have been on, that you yeah. were or something, but... Uh, no, not that WhatsApp group. Uh, yeah, here we go. Another big biggie then from uh, Francesca Mani. And uh, she can't stick that one. Or was that the same one? There was no re oh, it was a replay. There's the replay. Mm. And uh, maybe that was, was that the second attempt from Francesca Mani? Yeah. It looked uh, yeah, very yeah, similar yeah. to oh, the oh, first yeah. though, Ruben. Very similar, but crashing even harder on this attempt. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, and uh, that's correct. In the previous heat against uh, Jamie and Gil, um, the wind was kind of challenging. There were some lulls in there, but the race directors uh, decided to keep it going as uh, the guys were still getting the scores on the board when they found the gust. So that's how it also works in uh, yeah, condition-dependent uh, co uh, competitions. It's the Lords of Tram 2023 here at the GKA Big Air Kitesurf World Cup. We're in the south of France. There you go. You can see the buildings, the terracotta tiled look that we see all around this area of the Mediterranean. And we are in the Mediterranean. I mean, are we in the Mediterranean Sea here? Would you call this the Mediterranean? We're just off the... This is the, this is the sea of the Mediterranean. Even though it's a lagoon off the, off the shore, the Mediterranean's actually to the left-hand side here behind those trees. As we see Michaeli Sol just shaking off her hair. What's up with the scores here, Rubes? Point blank. Point blank. Point blank out. The wind blew away the scores. At least they're both going through to the final at this rate. Oh, that wind got scary. What was that for a gust of wind on the lives? That was really scary. A gust of terror. That was a gust of terror. That was a uh, straight out of Augusta. Yeah, promote the air style, bro. Nice one, Toby, with your uh, one million trick uh, variations. Nice floaty, lofty jumps. And uh, these guys definitely uh, taking that to the next level, combining it with big air. So that's absolutely epic. Putting the extremity to the board of maneuvers with plenty of rotations, epic height. And the stronger the wind, the stronger these riders can jump. And uh, Francesca and Mika are battling it out to get a spot in the final. I know what you're thinking. You're watching this just thinking, what is going on here? Don't worry. I'm thinking the same here. We've got a replay here of uh, Francesca just trying to get one of her mega loops in. We'll get the scores sorted out here for the moment. Um, we are also in the dark here, me and Rubes. Got a dead iPad here, Rubes. But uh, 5.03 from Michaeli Soul is up there on the board. And uh, I thought there were more landed tricks. In. Oh, there we go. Some scores coming in now. So we start to make a bit more sense of this semi final heat number two. It's day two down here near Perpignan, two hours north of Barcelona. The locals have come out in force here and we've had great support from uh, Bacares, the port. Uh, cool, what a camera change that was, Ruben. Am I going cross-eyed? Mega loop delayed back roll for Michaeli Sol. Couldn't, couldn't take that landing, Ruben. It was a bit of a dropout. It had to really absorb it. Nicely done. Let's look at a little replay here. She did the loop, then threw herself into the late back roll. Unfortunately, uh, bouncing too far forward uh, for her balance to uh, ride out clean. So Mika is normally uh, a lot more consistent, but here goes Francesca with a kite loop uh, laid back roll of her own. Not going super high, only 5.1 meters. Well, there we see it from Francesca, but she's landing it and that's always better than crashing, but I doubt this will be a high score because it wasn't super high. What the judges are looking for is definitely height, uh, the variation in the tricks, uh, also the style, the commitment, and the kite angle, uh, which all, uh, yeah, are looked at very closely by the judges. Ruben, these ladies have had to wait around all day for this. You know, you've been in these positions before. As we see, uh, Michaeli Sol going straight into it. Is she going to go into another rotation? Just uh, the boogie loop, the move that you. Uh, Brought to the fray, Ruben Lenton. But I'm um, just getting back to that. How must they feel? You know, there's a long day waiting for this semi final. So we see another nice replay. That was a nice oh, move. Ruben. That was an epic how do they keep themselves, uh, b you know, not from getting cold or staying motivated on the beach in those situations, Ruben? Yeah, I just want to say I'm so proud of the, all the ladies uh, stepping it up in the big air discipline. And here Mika shows that throwing epic boogie loops, no props. And uh, she can even do the, the board off uh, mega loops as well. And I'm looking forward to uh, to see this heat unfold further. They're going uh, pretty close, but um, yeah, how are they feeling in uh, in these type of conditions? Uh, they're training more and more in strong winds and uh, really practicing their tricks. So uh, yeah, it's all uh, eyes. Oh, what is this? A very low contra loop. It was probably only one meter above uh, above the water. That was the lowest contra loop I've ever seen. Look at that. There she goes in a forward and a contra loop. Still landing it though. It was, uh, yeah, not gonna score that well. 
Stay with us because uh, we will have the finals coming up for both the ladies and the men very shortly. What a way to end your Sunday here. Or maybe to start your Sunday or start your Monday. How about that, Ruben, for wherever you are? Monday? Oh, well, easy. We uh, still well, have a party to go. Yeah. For, what, on a Sunday? Yeah. Sunday night. We're throwing okay. a big party after the event. All oh, right. Nice. Let's go. Ready to play some music. Get everybody grooving, dancing. Woo! On yeah. the disco vibes. Let's go. But not there yet. We still have uh, the semis of the men and the finals of the men and women's division coming up. So, yeah, now she is sticking it. Mikael Sol from Brazil landing that move properly. Let's look at the replay here coming up. Here she goes. Mega loop, laid back roll, and this time landing it clean. She looks like she's really riding well in this heat, Ruben, Mikael Sol, but uh, she's not quite through the woods yet. She has... Uh, what is this? They're both on about fourth or fifth trick here. So she's going to have some more attempts here. Look at the wind just dying down again, Ruben. It's almost gone quiet again in this live stream booth. It's been a very interesting day of Tramontana, and it's come very much from the north to me. So, I mean, look at the angle that Francesca Mani is going back into the beach here now, and it's more of a cut than usual, which uh, you can't quite tell from that angle, but this is not as perpendicular with the beach. Perpendicular? There's a... It's a joke to be had there with Perpignan. But, uh, we're in the <laughs> Perpignan-dicular. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Luke. It was clear to you, Ruben. Well, I wasn't ready for that Totally one. made Perp sense. Totally Perpendicular. <laughs> Perpignan-dicular to uh, the beach. Here she comes, left foot forwards, riding towards the crowd, breaking off again, right foot forward. She just changed kite there. What's happened? She's uh, ended up quite far out the zone. 4.0 is her lowest score at the moment, Ruben, and she'd like to boot that other scores. And that's a kite loop front roll. I think we're going to see a bigger kite loop front roll from her now. I think also from uh, from Mika, I think she has a, has a, a bigger uh, straight kite loop in her repertoire, so uh, she can get more critical on that one uh, to better that uh, five score. She uh, she didn't really get that takeoff there, and uh, I wonder if she's thinking maybe I can sneak another go, but I think the judges will score that a zero. Let's see. And some people were wondering about the, the prize money involved in this event. And uh, this event is, uh, I think, uh, a combined total of uh, 16K only. And, uh, yeah, I think the big air discipline definitely deserves more for the amount of risk, the amount of time, the effort, skills that go into this. But uh, the sport is rising, and uh, we are uh, trying to give you the best show possible. So uh, I think it's 8K for the women and 8K for the men, uh, divided over the top four. Um, so, yeah. Taking home a couple K and uh, some good sponsor deals, hopefully, for the riders. Yeah, and we've got to put it out there as well. Events like this, we can put it out there to the world. Seeing you all interacting with us on the live stream and putting on a good live stream, getting some good content, images, videos. We've got the top riders in the world here. We've got huge channels on social media. So it's getting it out there to attract these sponsors, which it's all about. As we see uh, Francesca Mani with a... Just a mega loop. What was she? Th I think she was thinking double trouble there, Roos. No. You know, I, what, you tell me what she was thinking. Okay, well that will be interesting. She's You're going for the takeoff. Kite loop? No, definitely not high enough for a double. She's already got a 4.73 kite loop in the bag, bag here. Why would she have just gone? Because for she doesn't one? know what she scored. Maybe she felt like it wasn't good enough and she could better the score by a lot, but. Yeah, uh, besides the prize money, obviously, there's a uh, huge pride being taken away. If you uh, yeah, do well in the event, that uh, definitely uh, ups your confidence and uh, makes your name in the grow in the kite sport, which is nice. There's a lot of passion in the sport, a lot of respect for each other amongst the riders. Great sportsmanship always in the events. Uh, we're a tight community. We love each other. We love uh, riding and progressing all together. So that's what this is about, the love for the sport and the love for each other and uh, yeah, seeing everybody fly through the sky. Mega loop delayed back roll then to the right hand side for Michaeli Sol, which is her preferred tack to perform that move. She's got a lovely technique as she gets nicely backwards on for that move. And it looks like she's coasting to this one, Ruben. And uh, I think she's going to need something special, Francesca Miani. She's going to need a 7.3. But she's done. She done? Yeah. This is the last uh, trick of this uh, heat in the yeah, semi finals. Right. Sorry, yeah. Forget about that. Oh, she that, needs a miracle. It's done. Yeah, it's done, Ruben. So, Michele uh, Sol uh, advancing to the final against Anjali Boulou. Amazing final coming up. Uh, first, we will go to the semis for the men, where we see Liam Whaley taking on Jamie Overbeck. So, a uh, very exciting heat 
coming up between the boys to see who can claim a spot in the final and have a chance to win this event, put this event to their name. This is one out of two, maybe three events this year. The tour is growing and hopefully we can add the stop so we have nice three events this year and uh, then we can crown a proper big air world champion hopefully later in this year. But right now here at the GKA World Tour stop, uh, kite surfing big air in Barcares, France. You're here with me, Ruben Lenten, and obviously Louis Kratter, and bringing you all the live news and the insights that we uh, we can see and share with you. Ruben, you're getting my surname pronounced absolutely perfectly these days. After all these years, you're absolutely nailing it. Thank you. I bet you're so tempted to say it wrong, aren't you? But you're just <laughs> too you're just too professional now, Ruben, aren't you? You're too professional for that. And talking about professionals Ruben we got two on the water right now Liam Whaley Jamie Overbeek Jamie Overbeek avoiding a bit of a scare protest from a Gil Vlucht earlier where it looked for one moment like we might see Gil Vlucht advancing into the final but Jamie Overbeek actually uh, was deemed to be uh, okay we, we don't really know the the nitty-gritty of that but what yeah, well I know the nitty-gritty that Gil was pissed off and ready to take someone out but uh, luckily he contained himself and the judges reassessed uh, the heat and uh, if they didn't miss any tricks and uh, yeah I think it's uh, basically compared to football where they go to the VAR no it was worse than that I think it was worse than that it was like going straight up to the directors or something here we go then meanwhile Jamie Overbeek starting off this semi-final very inverted back roll mega loop board off lots of distance there Ruben where's that other angle we had from downwind it was lovely but this here, one here boom how high Ruben uh, 18 it, meters no no it was uh, 15 something 15.9 isn't it lovely that we can just do that and look at this live data, bottom left-hand corner? 15.9, Ruben, you got me on that one. But he got uh, nicely angled with his kite there. But here, Liam Whaley riding full speed, having a nice edge, going massive on this. Whoa! Wow. Boogie S-loop. So a forward rotation with an S-loop. Absolutely mind-blowing action. First start from uh, from Liam Whaley. Look here. He's diving forward whilst looping the kite back and now readjusting to, uh, to pull the kite in an S-loop the other way. Very nasty move from Liam Whaley. Ruben, I watched that one out the window and it was something really special because that kite, I think it's looping quite low and I didn't think we were going to see another double, uh, you know, another move, another kite loop in that move, but we did. And he's, he just seems to easily have the time in here. He's so in tune with his kite right now. we got the duo tone versus Ozone, Ruben, here. Very much our, our teams in a way, but it's not about... Our teammates here right now, it's about the level of the sport being pushed. And Jamie Overbeat going this time for the Doobie Loop board off. Uh, Doobie Loop board off. off. With the added rotation, getting some nice height on the six, above the 16 meters. Here's a nice replay of Jamie Overbeat diving forward, not once, not twice, but three times in this epic boogie loop with an added rotation board off. And we do need to fill you in again if you've joined us late in the day now. We did see the first triple mega loop attempt earlier from Clement Hoa. That seems like a long time ago now, Ruben. He got picked up a bit of an injury of that and did get uh, packed off to the hospital. Our latest on that is that he's in a stable condition. But uh, right now, these riders are being gifted with some nice win now, Ruben, coming in to showcase their big air moves. And it's now working through the doubles. Liam Whaley with a Ooh. mega loop delayed back roll, double mega loop delayed back roll. He's, uh, he's gone straight into the doubles, Rubes. Exactly. He's not holding back. He's uh, showing what he's made of. And he is looping his kite twice and throwing himself into the late back hole. And, uh, yeah, landing it just in time. But uh, definitely putting a nice score on the board for uh, Liam Whaley. Liam Insanely. I like that. Yeah, Liam Insanely at it again. Already onto the 15. So uh, we're going to see scores well into the 20 as these guys are firing off each other. Whoa, and this is big, Ruben. Sorry to interrupt you. That is a anytime. sin of a commentator, but I had to there because this is big. We're talking maybe a few 150 meters at least on the way down here as Jamie Overbeek stepping things up with a 19.1 meter jump, 125 meters. Look at the height here, Ruben. He got off this. This was a belter of a takeoff. What a control. Here he's etching full power into the wind and flying so high whilst looping that kite. And uh, he's keeping his board off and just flying, putting his board back on, enjoying the second lift of his, uh, of his kite and just landing clean. What a control. Nicely done. Straight over to Liam then. There's obviously good wind in the box right now. That hand coming off to steady himself. Well, Mega loop. Oh, ow, ow, double ow. board off. 
Yeah, double double kite loop board off. Absolutely mind blowing here from uh, from Liam Whaley. Uh, no holding back. What an epic heat we've got on our hands. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining this epic action. Liam Whaley getting kite leveled whilst having his board off and looping the kite twice. Nice work, Liam Insanely. Wow, uh, it's kicking off again here, Ruben. Is this finally? I feel like we've got a bit of consistency in the wind today. It's been a tough day for wind, but these don't say that, otherwise it might. Uh, sorry, so lull it in again. We've got a bit of consistency in the wind now. But Oi. here we go. <laughs> oh, big contra loop. Moving into the contra loops now is Jamie Overbeek, who's currently down three points on this. That landing is going to help. I think we might see a six point three kicked out of this. What would that be? A kite loop board off that's already on his top three scores right now. Ruben, for you, does that score more than a 6.33? But it was a contra loop, no, not a kite loop. Yeah, but I think it will replace that, and it doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure. I'll leave this one up to the judges. I think it kicks out that category. I don't think it replaces it. I think it just becomes a new category for him. S loop by Liam Whaley. He is not getting the height, but he is performing the move, so uh, nicely done by Liam Whaley. Only 10 meters, but still S looping that. Is it an S loop? Is he? Yeah, there is a, a little discussion going on whether the S loop is pulled at the right time, but uh, I feel this was uh, was okay. Let's see what the judges say about that. So yeah, the contra loop uh, board off from Jamie before scored nicely, and now he's doing another insane contra loop with. Two or three back rolls and a board off. So uh, spin as well, actually. Ruben. And a board spin. That one. So yeah. much spinning. One, two, spinning the board, and three. Insane. I'm starting to see these different styles between these two. I know it's similar moves, but you can just see the aggressive nature of Liam Whaley and the the floaty control here. Oh, and here we go again then from Jamie Overbeek, changing down to what you think is a... A baby five. kite. But Liam Whaley, he's staying on uh, what is working for him now. Big scores these right now for Liam Whaley. He's already up there. Looks like he might go right foot forwards here, Ruben. Or he's just decided to come back. No, I think he's going to come back. I don't know why Jamie is riding a five-meter kite, but he obviously feels well, uh, well comfortable on that kite. So hopefully the wind kicks in because in this last heat... He didn't get the goods on this kite, so a very risky kite change. But to stand up uh, against uh, Liam Whaley's double moves, he has to throw in doubles as well. And he knows that. So he's heading out on his 5-meter enduro, which has a different shape and uh, will uh, allow him to double loop a little easier. But Liam looking very comfortable here. And uh, yeah, well in the lead for now with a nice 8.27, a 7, and another 8.13. Whereas uh, Jamie's scores are just in the seven. So um, let's see. We still have uh, some trick attempts left. Crucial stage of this heat, Ruben, here at the Lords of Tram at the GKA Big Air Kite World Cup down in France. This for a place definitely on the podium. There will be a mini final to decide third and fourth positions, but you'd rather get in first or second. Liam Whaley, he's got one hand <gasps> on the podium. Oh, oh, we didn't like it, Rubens. We didn't think it was high enough. You were scared there, Ruben, weren't you? What a caner, but yeah, he uh, managed to save himself. It is the forward speed that he, uh, he had that saves himself. So one... Oh. He, committed to that. he committed to that, and it didn't look like he got the uplift he was expecting, but he was committed. Committed to the booby loop there. Double kite loop with a front spin. But, uh, yeah, not really getting the height and also not the landing, so it's not going to better his scores at the moment. You really think that's going to stick, the booby loop? Well, who knows, at least for now, unless uh, someone else comes uh, with a better name. I, uh, we first have to find out who did it first, and he can uh, name the trick. But otherwise, it's just a double kite loop front roll that works. Or a boogie, do double boogie, boogie, double loop. Boogie, double loop. That's better. It sounds like a different language you're speaking. Boogie, double loop. Boogie, double loop. Tell us in the comments. Is it a booby loop when you do a double kite loop for, uh, front roll? Or is it a uh, boogie loop, double loop? Boogie, double loop. <laughs> I, I just get lost with it. I really do. There's just so many different names, so many different new tricks coming about. Here. And this is the sort of platform the riders want. Strong winds over 30, 40 knots here at the Lords of Tram in Bacheres in the south. This cold wind coming from the Pyrenees Mountains to the northwest that rushes out to the warmer Mediterranean Sea. It's unusual. We're seeing 
um, you know, a bit of tense, tense uh, moments here, Ruben, as uh, Liam Whaley coming in to complete his sixth trick here. No, it's uh, Jamie Overbeck on his little baby five meter kite with a double. S loop, I think that might have been. Sorry, you're right. Just caught the hair. It was a doobie double loop. Yeah, that is that is a, a doobie booby loop then. If it's <laughs> if it's a double loop with two forward rotations, and I can't stop uh, the temptation of reminding you that we did see a triple loop done today. Go back to that um, Clement uh, heat where he wasn't even really that super high, about 10 meters. Um, but we got to talk about this action in front of us right now. Look at those lulls coming in there. That drop in wind, Ruben, from Liam Whaley, who's pumping his bar, physically pumping it. We've all been there. We've done that. Hand comes off the bar, and now he will ride away from the beach and have his private word with the wind. Like, come on now. here. I'm in the semi-final. Can you just deal with this now? Got two points over. Barely two points over Jamie Overbeek here. I could just do with one more biggie. Please give it to me. Come on, please give it to me. These, 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 we say these things, Ruben, don't we? 100%. Yeah, give yeah, it yeah. to me. Yes, you have to talk positively there, not to yourself, but also not only to yourself, but also to Mother Nature. And then few herders feeding you the wind. And then Liam Whaley can take off for a massive uh, doobie loop. It's a double front spin uh, kite loop. Double loop as well, that, Ruben. Oh, yeah? I didn't yeah, miss so that. what does that become? Is that the booby? Yep, dooby booby. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. So Liam finding that wind gust, calming himself down, just go. Well, he probably wasn't even angry. Going to the right hand side, coming back, big scores coming in for it. The judges are like this, Ruben. I'm seeing scores of eights coming in here from these five judges. One more trick has to come in, trick score of one of the judges until it will be averaged out of these five judges. High score and low score kicked out and the three scores remaining will be averaged and this will be the score given to Liam Whaley who's currently leading this one and now he's leading it by a bigger margin, 24.63 to 21.74. It is the last trick then from Jamie Overbeek and he's going to need something a bit special. I think he needs something higher than an 8 here. His lowest score is a 7.10. He's going for an S-loop board off or the double loop board off, I think. I think he needs an 8.21. I think he needs a bigger kite. I just cannot deal with this kite. This is too small for my eyes. But um, look at how small the thing is. It's a 5 meter. Liam is on a 6, doing doubles as well. So you think he's on a 6 or I, 7? I'm going to have a chat, to, a chat with Jamie to see what his thoughts are uh, on uh, picking such a small kite. Here comes Jamie Overbeek. To my maths, needs an 8.21 is how I feel about this. He'll have to replace the 7.10, and it's telling me he needs 1.10 more than that. Here we go. I don't think he's going to do it, Rubes. S-loop. Double back roll S-loop, but not too high and just pushing it and unfortunately not, uh, not making the most of this, uh, this trick attempt. Well, Ruben... I think that heat coming to a close here, and as far as I've got it here, Liam Whaley still has one more trick attempt, but I think he has this one in the bag. He's in the white rash vest, so that means he was second to perform his trick. Blue goes first here. Liam Whaley coming in, looking very calm. He's got one more move as he goes back right foot forwards again. And these riders are so good at that, that sort of feeling that they have about whether or not they're winning. They can go in and speak to any of their caddies who have the live scores. You can look at the live scores too at the gkakiteworldtour.com. Just click on the live button. You will see currently running is Liam Whaley and Jamie Overbeek. They can't perform the same three tricks, Ruben. We haven't said that for a bit, so I should probably say it, right? 100%. Explain them the trick family, bro. Well, there's just so many trick families, but really it's about doing mega loops in both ways. But with, you know, you do the back roll mega loop, the front roll mega loop. I don't even want to get started on the booby loop. Uh, they do the contra loops, the, you know, but double loops are considered to be an evolution of, let's say, a, a boogie loop, a front roll kite loop. If you then go and do a front roll double kite loop, that's considered an evolution of that family now. So it will replace that score. Um, it won't be scored separately. So you can't just do three of the same thing. That's the main thing. So here comes Liam Whaley here. He can find the wind with that setup. And uh, I wonder if someone's... Well, riding up the beach there, well, running well. out of space, but uh, staying in control there, right in front of all the spectators that are chilling on the beach there. What a beautiful spot we got here in Barcares, France. They gave him a crash for that. 
I oh. think they didn't like him riding up the beach there. They've just given him a zero for that, Ruben. Yeah, out. But he he's in the lead. So um, that over the back there was that Angeli. Uh, I need to get a name no, right. Someone no, no, no. came me for it. So uh, after this heat, now Liam, your heat is over. Save your energy. Oh, he's going for an S loop board off just for the sake of it. The heat is already over, but. That would have definitely sealed the deal for him there. Look at this replay of this trick that he didn't even need. It didn't even count. S loop, board off. Very nasty trick. Where, ooh, very, very nice. And after this heat, we will see two Italians battle it out against each other. Lorenzo Cassati and Andrea Principi. Two legends who also found themselves at the Red Bull King of the Air podium earlier this year in Cape Town, South Africa, where Lorenzo Cassati took home the win and is now a crowned Red Bull King of the Air champion. Whereas Andrea Principi is always ready to kick some ass, and we saw him perform earlier. This is definitely going to be a heat to watch. It's called a semi-final, but it might as well would have been the final. It is just how the letter turned out, but we are in for a treat. Live chat is getting dirty. It's going down. It's happening. Buyo. That's how you say Angeli's surname. I've just got it in my head now. Corrected very nicely. Buyo. Buyo. That's how you remember it. Not Perfect. Buyo. Apparently, Ma buyo. I've, Ma buyo. apparently I've been murdering her surname. So why? She should have told me. You know, buyo. Buyo. Say, there's me saying thanks for been forgetting my surname. Right? I've been doing 10 years of buyo. Angeli's. Buyo. That's how you remember. Liam Whaley there looking very happy, just obviously hearing the news that he will finish in either first or second place. Making it to another final in his life. He is stoked. It is uh, kind of where he belongs as a champion, a champion of freestyle, a champion of big air, a champion of kitesurfing for sure. Uh, always pushing it with so much style, so much commitment to, uh, to pushing the sport and pushing himself to new heights. So thank you so much, Liam, and congratulations on uh, making it into the final. Do you know what an inter do you want an interesting stat on Liam? Do you know where he was born? In the UK, man. Straight into a final. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there I we go. With Lorenzo Cassati opening up this heat with his trick attempt. I need to see a replay of that. Ruben, what do you think the wind speed is here? Looking at the wind, I think Lorenzo is riding his eight meter. It is a consistent 35 knots. Well, 32, 35. Andrea, ooh, ooh just uh, going for a nice carve in front of the spectators. Just didn't feel uh, the right timing or gust uh, for this, uh, this trick attempt. So he does have time to turn around. Remember that the heats are not really run by time, but really by trick attempts. The riders get seven attempts where the three best scores will make up their final score. You see Lorenzo Cassati, he already took off for his first trick attempt. And here is Andrea Principi with his answer to that. And again, not feeling it or riding too close to the beach. He's almost running up the beach there. Uh, maybe the judges are not giving him any more time to go for this and scoring a zero for this. Well, this is interesting. Unhooked TV and Toby strictly hooked on our comments right now. Maybe those guys are going to get into a big old debate. I like this contribute here, Ruben, going to a double front roll rotation. Looked like a board spin as well in here. So let's see what he gets scored for this, Andrea Principi, the current Big Air World Champion. Lots of height in that move, Ruben. Looked very controlled. I love how he grabs out of this. He's in lots of control. So let's see what he's going to get for this. I am curious if they do... Goes into the Tic Tac uh, family, the Contraloop Tic Tac Seven. family. 7.03 coming in for Andrea Principi. That rhymed. Lorenzo Cassati, is he going to spin forward? Is he going to spin backwards? He is going to maybe jump to the right. Or he's going to turn around and look for some better speed. No, Where have no. you been today? It's Sunday. Surely you haven't just joined us now. 5.31 p.m. We were here, or I was here at 7 p.m. 7 a.m. in the morning. 
I can't even do the maths on how many hours ago that was for this long day of action on day two of the Lords of Tram at the GK Big Air Kite World Cup down here in Bacares for the second time. It is the fifth time with the Lords of Tram and it's just wonderful that you can be here to watch this action. It's Big Air. It's not as windy as maybe we would like, but we're, it's not always like that Big Air, Ruben. And we've seen riders start bringing out unhooked manoeuvres during this event. And blind landings to spice things up. Look how high they can go, even when things aren't absolutely yeah, nuking. And this that's... was not what uh, Lorenzo was uh, was going for. This was a very late contra loop. Um, could almost not call it a contra loop anymore, but just a down loop. Like he was pulling it very late, not off. Yeah, he just didn't get the get the board off and get the right rotation. So unfortunately, not uh, scoring well for this trick attempt. Big heat this one, Ruben. You know, we we've got to talk about these two teammates for so long on duo tone and. Lorenzo Casati deciding it was time to go to Cabrina just after the King of the Air. And uh, there he is just riding through. The good friends, of course, these two. But Lorenzo Casati thinking, right, it's time for me to do you know, a new challenge. He then wins, you know, wins King of the Air. And Jerry Principi, though, big air world champion winning in three. But this is a huge heat. Massive. These guys are big air kiteboarding in the heat of the moment. Look at that. Very nice. Mega loop board off with a back roll rotation. Here's the replay there. You can't deny that, Ruben. This is actually the heat of the Into moment. Into the back roll with a board off. And that kite loop. He looped a bit late. I think the guys would love a little bit more wind, but isn't that always the case? Are we ever satisfied? Well, yesterday with the gust up to 72 knots was uh, absolutely crazy. But uh, glad that the, the wind is back here today for more epic big air action here. Lorenzo Cassati from Italy doing an absolute banger of a move with three rotations and a board off. He liked it. During that kite loop. Why do you think he liked this one, Ruben? One, I think the two, multiple rotations. three. Oh, he did four rotations. So that's why he liked he it. He liked it. That's Spinning it. Yeah, four times. Goes up into the air. One, did you know, is there a little element to that where the judges might think, oh, well, blimey, he's happy with that. He can do anything, but he's happy with it. Maybe I should score him a bit more here, you know, like... I wonder if the judge and even, uh, judges even uh, saw that it was uh, four, four rotations instead of three. So uh, they need to have a very close eye on all the action here. Especially when the action of these riders is so close together. These are the two top riders in the sport right now. Andrea Principi and Lorenzo Cassati here during the se semi-final of the GKA Kite World Tour in Barcares, France. Kite change coming, I think, possibly for Andrea Principi. Where is he? He grabbed an 8 meter, or he's on an 8 meter. Did he just change already? I think he just changed to an 8. He's got something up with his straps here as well. They're being done on the beach right now. Um, so he's on the beach right in front of us, Ruben, down here to the left-hand side. So this is interesting. Andrea Principi running back upwind. What a beach start. We just How easy did he make that? Look, out of the corner of our screens here. You didn't see that. He's just running, changed his foot straps, and enters back into this semi-final. He looks quick flash over to see. I think the judges will give him a bit of flexibility on the time, although... I'm seeing a zero here, Ruben, for that time to change. And they really are being quite harsh on that. They want to... They want action. And uh, this was his time to shine, but he uh, decided to uh, go for a kite change instead and uh, fix his foot strap. Uh, but now with the right setup on his 8-meter kite, I think uh, the trick attempt goes over to Lorenzo Cassati. I reckon this is 25 knots, Ruben, if I had to have a guess here. 25, uh, yeah. You reckon? I don't yeah. think it's much more than that. No. But these riders are so good at extracting every bit of height with these kites. Now we thought it was going to be near a 50 today, but such is the way with the wind. We never truly know all this sun out now. Maybe this extra heat around here has uh, messed things up a little bit. But uh, Lorenzo Casati coming in for his next trick it is the blue rash vest flag is up. And uh, so, yeah, unfortunately for Andre Principi, he had to take a zero for that kite change here, but it might pay off dividends. But this massive... Double front roll, triple front roll, contra loop. Might have even been more than a triple, Ruben. Uh, contra loop, big from Lorenzo Casati, who's currently leading this. Let's take a look at this replay, Ruben. There's uh, the first rotation, then the board comes off. Two rotations, three rotations, four rotations then for that contra loop board off with the front roll. So Andrea Principi still not to get his third trick on here, but he's changed up a size, Ruben, and that is what we find interesting here he's gone up a size 
He's gone up a size, Ruben. Yeah, I'm also he has, yeah, <laughs> I think you know. More power. You I was, I'm just trying to look at the forecast here, and uh, it still looks windy. Um, yeah, let's hope it uh, continues to deliver. Sometimes. Don't just compute that. That guy's got Wingu Pro. Of course he's nice. got. He's a, he's a pro. But uh, Andrea Principi ready for his uh, trick attempt to put a third score on the board. But uh, Lorenzo Cassati currently in the lead of this heat in the semifinals of the men's big air division here. Andrea Principi going for a double front spin, tic tac, contra loop, but unfortunately crashing it. So almost rode out of that. Not in his element. So He's almost rode out of that, you know. I know it's not it's not really a scorer, right, but if we watch that carefully, somehow he ends up actually yeah. riding out of this. Like it's like a skipping rock. What do you think the world record for skipping rock is? How many times did it skip? Is it 20? Is it 30? Is it 50? Or is it uh, 70? Or 100? I don't know. What do you I think? How many times can a rock skip by a single throw by a man? I don't a know. Human. This is not where I want to be focusing my attention right now, Ruben. That's a, it is close a nasty, to 100. You know the answer? Yeah, close to 100. Okay. Thank you for that. That's Very uh, informative that information. That's the sort of info I want at a semi-finals at uh, a world championship <laughs> event here. Just uh, When they crash, they're like a skipping rock, Lewis. And uh, you know it. You've been skipping rock. Skimming um, stones, we call it. Skimming back stones. Home. You, you can't read the rock. You need a good shape, you know. <laughs> Small pebble. You can't go for the big ones. It's got to be round. Shapes, sizes. It matters. Also with kites. 88 skips. That wasn't a bad guess. 88 skips. Pumping nice. up and down on the board here now. This is really an interesting stage of this big semi-final here. And with a higher score so far, this is what I find interesting about these heats. Room. The wind's died. You can't deny that. The wind has really dropped now. Lorenzo Casati is winning this now by a healthy margin. He doesn't want this heat abandoned right now, right? He's happy to push on here. He's still out there. He's comfortable. Unfortunately, Andrea Principi had to change kite size. He's out of his rhythm. He's got two crashes scored for his last two moves, Ruben. That's harsh. What? How are you feeling here if you're Lorenzo? You want to carry this on? I want to give it my all. And with so many spectators on the beach and showing that you're the best. Oh, is he getting his board? No, he wasn't getting his board on there. I wonder if uh, Andrea's going to get himself together and uh, perform some epic moves in the lower kind of wins we've seen today. Here's a question for you, Ruben. Who do you think is going to win this today in the men's? How's that for a question? Let stick it. that in your pipe. Yeah, I'll uh, stick it in there. And um, I think Liam Whaley can take home the win or Lorenzo. I think Liam... Is a great shout here because in these conditions, you know what he was doing in his heat? In these conditions, he was going unhooked. Started to send some big kung fu passes, the mm. moves that you invented a long time ago, Ruben. And I think this will be right up his street. He's not bothered if the wind does this in his heat. And these two don't really have that. And it's often, you, you don't often say that with these two, to see that in their repertoire. We know that some of these guys on the water right now can land to blind. And they must be starting to think, surely, maybe I need to really squeeze every bit of the points out of this heat. Well, there's no wind. The riders are kind of complaining whilst uh, we're experiencing uh, a lull, a lull in the wind. And you know what uh, a lull in Dutch means? No, I don't. Please inform me. Yeah, it's a lull in the wind, man. But that's in English. A lull means <laughs> a, a drop in. It's a drop in the wind, right? You got a gust, the strength for the. Lull. Does it mean something else? Laughing out loud, man. Lull. It's not spelt like that. It's L-U-L-L. -L -L. <laughs> Yeah, double L. Boy, but here, he's finding the gust. Andrea Principe entering oh, back with another one of his lofty jumps. I cannot wait to see the replay of that one. Double L. Who's double L? Double Lewis. Double loop. Let's take a look at this replay, Ruben, because he really did find that what we saw earlier with him. He got right up there. Let's remind you, he got over 200 meters in his distance here with that big contrib. He started to find that extra lift. Again, is Andre Principi, where he just, this is just ridiculous. When you see that angle, Ruben, you think, what is there, what are his lines attached to? It's outrageous. Look, he knew it. That was the big head slam there where you just know you've done something special on the water. 
That was a big moment in this heat, and it's put Andrea Principi in first place, Ruben. And just when you think there's a lull in the wind, it kicks right back in and puts the action right in front of her eyes. And uh, absolutely incredible. Andrea Principi flying absolutely massive with uh, 15 meters height and 120 meters distance uh, with 11.7 seconds in the air, performing his three rotations, board off contra loop into a one-footer just before the landing. Getting a 7.6 Highest scoring oh, trick so far, so... Uh, yeah, so, you know, who's laughing out loud now? <laughs> uh, I am for sure, because this is fun to watch, and uh, the riders are going from being frustrated to really focused to just nailing the biggest and baddest trick, so let's see Lorenzo Cassati entering with a double back roll board spin kite loop. Here's a replay on that one, Ruben. You could just see the height, the uplift wasn't there on the way up. We often see with these these guys and girls, it's all about that uplift, that elevator up into the sky. And he didn't access those uh, those lifting winds. Some of the riders telling me down there when I was down there recently, Ruben, this isn't lifty wind today. You know, what, what does that mean when someone says it's not lifty wind? It's not lifty wind. Yeah, sometimes the wind is really like lofty, lifty, more dense, more kind of blowing upwards and sometimes the wind is just a little bit different and not giving you the power and lift that you want to feel so yeah there's a definitely uh, different conditions every day what is this oh pulling a bit late there on the on that kite loop but yeah not a not a really nice angle not super high so let's see what the judges uh, will score that he's taking off not going super high, going in a double back roll, nice and stylish. Stretched his legs out, but um, yeah, the kite angle wasn't too critical. And uh, after this heat, we'll go into the mini final. So fighting for third and fourth place of the women's division, big air here at the GKA World Tour, will be uh, Natalie Lambrecht against uh, Francesca Mani. We're getting to the end of the day nearly, Ruben, here on a Sunday, 5.43 p.m. Lots of action still left today, though, as we get to the finals. Lots more power on the water, and this is a biggie from Lorenzo Casati. Was that a rewind on the end there? He just can't take it, Ruben. He just can't take it. Andrea Principi now looks like he's taking control of this heat, Ruben Lenton. But, uh, yeah, he has one more trick attempt left. Oh, that was a good move, but just falling from the sky a little bit faster than he anticipated. And it's, uh, it's close though, Ruben. Look, it's about 0.29 at the moment. This heat is separate for a place in uh, for a chance in the main final for first and second. Who's going to get it here? Coming in left foot forwards, then wanting to access these wins is Andrea Principi. What's he going to look to improve here, Ruben? He's got a 6.17 on the board right now. I don't see it in his score here. Where is that? Which one? It says 6.17. That's what he's looking to upgrade. Whoa! Oh, speaking of upgrades, he upgraded himself to the sky. And a rewind. No board off, though. No rotation. Yeah, a rewind. Oh, he's stoked on that jump. Why? It must have felt great. Don't think the scores are uh, going to be great. So here's you the don't replay. Think so? Why not? Andrea Principi going for a. He shot into the sky like that. Whoop! A massive mega loop laid back roll. And it's then, a rewind at yeah, the end. Yeah, a rewind. He's getting flung into his forward uh, rotation. We're seeing things with his setup today, Ruben, that I don't think I've seen so much of before. Not just the first time. He's getting a secondary lift so far at the end of that move. And we're just not seeing that from some of the other riders as uh, going for, I think, his last move there is Lorenzo Casati that may well regret how that last move just turned out. Sorry, we're a bit out of focus on this shot here. What is going on there? And a bit of an anti-climax for you at the end of that heat. But it looks like Andrea Principi, to me, is going to take that one. And it was very, very close. Andrea going to probably advance to the final where he's going to take on uh, Liam Whaley. Um, but let's wait 
for the final results. Hey, that's you on TV there, Ruben. Hello, well, hello, Mum. How's it going? Long time no see. It's Lewis Crathen here with Ruben Denton alongside me. He's to my right hand side in the studio, but on your screens, he's uh, to to your left hand, left. to my le I'll, left hand side. You can't do that. We're live on TV here. It is uh, the Lords of Tram down here in the south of France at the GKA Big Air Kite Surfing World Cup. It's twin tip big air and we've had some epic action today. It hasn't been the strength that we thought it might be. It was windier yesterday as those ladies got all the way up to the semi-finals, Rubens. We've got the, me the, the mini-finals coming up now and the main finals. It looks to me like Andrea Pinchibi has got into the main final um, alongside Liam Whaley. That's correct. So we're, this is exciting, Ruben. You know, and the wind could do anything right now. It still could come up crazy. But even if it doesn't, I think what I'm taking from today, Ruben, was so many new unhooked, well, maybe not even new unhooked tricks, unhooked tricks coming back. We could see anything, right? I definitely love uh, how creative the riders got today. Sometimes there was a low in the wind. Sometimes there was proper wind. Uh, but they had to get creative even with blind landings. And especially combining big air maneuvers with unhooks is very risky and uh, critical, which I love to see. I love to see the riders uh, push this even further. But uh, we've seen some insane, uh, insane tricks today already. And uh, we still have the finals coming up. So first we'll move into the mini finals of the, of the women's division, big air with um, Natalie Lambrecht and Francesca Mani uh, taking on each other in a little bit. Looks like they're ready to go, Ruben. Massive first trick here from Natalie, unfortunately crashing there. You saw her mega looping and laid back rolling as a first trick attempt, but unfortunately not handling the landing on that one. Handling the landing. <laughs> <laughs> nice landing. So Natalie. This was uh, Francesca. Here's a replay of her straight mega loop, landing it clean. Just waiting for the for the scores to come in. Francesca with a, a five point one. Now it's up to uh, Natalie to answer with a trick that she uh, will land. Important this heat, really, Ruben. They call it a mini final, but this is for the real final third place on the podium. I think fourth will get to stand up there. Big boogie loop then from Natalie Lambrecht. There's a drone flying, so you obviously know the wind isn't that strong uh, as far as it was yesterday when you would never have flown a drone in your wildest uh, dreams. Watch him go. They will fly a drone in anything your wildest these days. dreams. You wouldn't have flown a drone yesterday. Yeah, you yesterday. will. Not yeah. in your yeah, wildest Lewis. dreams. What do you know about drones, man? Ask Janek. He will fly up to 16, mate. Oh, a cool guy. Yeah, just fly Getting that his drone. drone out. Exactly. Well, I hope he's got uh, a proper license and he does things by the book. Of course, safety third. Because I cut my face one then once. Don't ever try and handle one oh, of them. Oh, that's what happened. Yeah, I did. It shot into... <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, yeah, uh, Natalie uh, scored a 6.7. I'm just uh, trying to refresh my screen for some actual live scoring here. But well, uh, on our screens right here, we've yeah, got uh, two scores error. right here. This is the mini final. So Natalie Lambrecht fighting against Francesca Mani uh, for that third position, the critical moment. Who's going to land on the podium? These ladies are uh, definitely pushing it, going for a nice takeoff, mega loop, laid back roll. Lovely technique. And, and, uh, ah, oh, added rotation, but on back mountain, Ruben. Again. Here's the replay when she uh, tries to add the second rotation. She just not high enough to complete it. And that means uh, landing on her back. Yeah, I don't know, she over rotated. Almost rode out a bit though. But yeah, unfortunately for her, that was a lovely technique on the way around there. Really getting underneath the bar, which is key to that delayed back roll. You can't get locked up forwards on. You've got to commit to it, almost be sent towards the kite a bit, but just turn the body there. She really has that move down well. But here goes Natalie Lambrecht here coming in. Nice kite position. Lovely shot there, actually. She rides away from the beach. And a good landing, Ruben Linton. Very nice landing there. And uh, let's look at the replay here. Where she shoots into the air with a back roll. Or a kite loop late back roll. And uh, landing it clean and fast. 
She has a, a funny landing style. Just sticks the board to the water and psh, cruises out of there. Yeah, it's a very tall lady as well. But here's Francesca Miani. Can she repair the damage on that mega loop delayed back roll? Going into another over rotation. She's just really going into that back roll quite hard, Ruben. So we almost see again an exact same uh, replica of that move. As meanwhile, outside, I can see Anjali Buyo. Buyo. She's getting ready for that final. This is for third and fourth position, let's remind you. After this, we'll have the, the mini final for the men. And then straight into the women's final before finishing off the event with the men's final today here, this beautiful Sunday, where we see Natalie Lambrecht performing an epic move. Look at this replay here. Nice one-handed loop there with the nose grab. Covering some nice distance. Sorry, a bit out of focus there. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to score well. This is the women's mini final here at the Lords of Tram down in Bacares. It's the GKA Big Air kite surfing world cup here in france and this is francesca miani going for the back roll mega loop this time just to get i think that's a good decision to change it up a little bit there ruben she's had a few crashes on the mega loop delayed back roll and this uh, showed some nice control a bit better yeah nice sorted his focus out there been a long day here on sunday and uh, yeah it's been a few caners here today uh ruben. Action, action packed actually i could not believe when clement hot went for that triple loop the first triple loop we've seen uh, unfortunately, yeah, he was riding a, a very small kite, but he was only jumping, I think, around 12 meters and trying to get that triple loop in. Uh, unfortunately, crashing, wiping out, and getting taken away by the safety uh, safety crew. Oh, what a nice landing here by Natalie Lambrecht. She loved it. I tell you who else loved it is Woo! that beach PA guy. Hopefully, that's not too loud for you on the stream because I know it was a problem yesterday. But that's a biggie room. Look at that lovely angle there with the mountain in the background. A one footed mega loop. And she punches the sky, Natalie, as if to say, finally, I've got a biggie on the board. Yep, that's uh, exactly what you want in a mini final to claim that third position. So these girls are not holding back. Oh, no, she's going for a uh, front roll contra loop, but only. Uh, I think four meters high, yeah, 3.9. So not too massive, that's not what you want in big air, you want to go more high and uh, that will get scored well. She was uh, adding a rotation and a contra loop, so that's great. Uh, I hope she can find some more height in her next trick attempt. So remember the heats are not uh, ran by time, but only by trick attempts. Each rider gets seven attempts, whereof the best three tricks will make up your overall score. And we can see Natalie Lambrecht well in the lead here with some nice sixes, high sixes, and a, a seven and a half. Oh, unfortunately losing her. Oh, trying to still land it. Accidentally, her foot came out during the kite loop. And uh, here you can see it in the replay. Hopefully. Nope. Oh, nope. Sorry about that. But uh, Natalie Lambrecht uh, in the lead, and uh, Francesca uh, needs to find some better wind, some more height in this mini final of the women's division here of the B Big Air GKA Kite World Tour in Barcares. Landing this one clean, not too spectacular of a move. Unfortunately for Francesca, it's just a straight back roll. The Nick Jacobs on one footer, just uh, do a one footer without even touching your board. But it looks like the wind is coming through right now. The scent is starting to fly again. And uh, we are seeing Lorenzo Cassati getting ready for the men's mini final straight after this. Uh, against Jamie Overbeek. So Lorenzo Cassati and Jamie Overbeek will battle it out for the third and fourth position in the men's division. Yeah, the wind's definitely picking up. You can see the body position just fully hanging out, sheeting out that bar for some deep power. 
And then trying to find a, a good takeoff. Yep, there she goes. Oh, unfortunately not feeling it for this uh, trick attempt. Wind is picking up. Perfect timing for these mini finals and finals coming up, Ruben. This is uh, great timing as uh, things starting to blow around here in the live stream booth. Who's left these sunglasses up? Oh, they're crap. Oh, it must be me. Oh, sorry. Cheers, mate. Live from Bacares, then. It's Lewis Crathen here with Ruben Lenton bringing you through the final stages here on a Sunday as Francesca Miani chased by that drone there, not quite feeling the win that she wanted. And they're almost at the end of their trick attempts, Ruben. This is for the third position. Yep. I think that's all over. That's it. So Natalie Lambrecht uh, finishing in third here in the women's division with Francesca Mani in fourth place. We are going to get underway with the mini final of the man. I don't know if you can call it mini when you have Lorenzo Cassati from Italy taking on Dutchman Jamie Overbeek. This is definitely going to be some insane action as the wind is kicking back in. What a timing, Ruben. What a timing. Mother Nature really does have its way with timing, right? She knew we needed this, and we deserve this. The riders deserve this because they are ready. They trained all year long to uh, catch uh, yeah, the best wind, the best gusts, and uh, perform their most insane tricks right in front of our eyes here at Barcares in France. Now, this is a big key, all right? You might be thinking they're just playing for third and fourth place, but they're really after the points here, Ruben, because it will be a total of this event here and Tarifa's Big Air World Championships taking place later on uh, in around May and June. There may, there's even rumours of there being a third event on the tour too, so... Bring it on! Wow, that was keen. <laughs> was that a sound effect? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you keen about that. Bring it on. You love the sound of this uh, this Big Air Tour here. So to crown the Big Air World Champion this year, Ruben, it won't just be a once-off winner-takes-all event in Tarifa. It's going to be possibly three events. So just getting back to that before we had that bring it on moment that uh, might be replayed many times over the coming years. This really is about some points here for these two. Jamie Overbeek and Lorenzo Casati. Every point more you can get might help them towards their, their goals to become big air world champion here. So this heat just about to take place. The yeah. yellow flag I can Look see on the, the beach. Flying, Ruben, man. It the is wind going. is kicking in. The guys, I think Lorenzo just took his eight meter out. He's going to be oh, well there's powered. there's a about to go, Ruben. Seven meter duo tone SLS about Ready to be to blown fly away off. on the beach. That's with these light kites. You just fly away, man. And everyone's looking at the big action now. Yeah. So the rash vests. Kites just at the end of disappearing. Yeah, they are. They, I don't think they've seen it. We've got these wonderful helpers down there. That duo tone's about to go, Ruben. Which kite do you think's about to go first? I think nobody's seeing it. Well, I mean, we have. The crowd is I dancing. The crowd is loving it. I feel like I should get out there and save it. Congratulating uh, Natalie Lambrecht with her uh, win in that uh, mini final, landing herself uh, on the podium at this uh, GKA World Tour Big Air kite surfing. Should I get out of there and save that? That might be a fellow. Yeah, nobody friend sees of it. Mine. I wouldn't get it if it was an ozone. It's going, Ruben. It's on its way. And then it's going to fly no, to I those people. I think this guy's there. seen it. This guy's seen it here. Somebody, He's walked away from it. Somebody must see it. I think it's still stuck on that kite enough. I don't know. It only takes one big gust here, Ruben. As yeah. the yellow flag has come down, the blue flag has been raised, Ruben. This second to last heat of the men. With Jamie Overbeck riding his 7-meter edge on 24-meter lines. And Lorenzo Cassati riding his Cabrina Nitro on, I believe, 23-meter lines or also 24. But here is a great opening move from uh, Jamie Overbeck. With a mega loop, laid back roll board off, and an added rotation. 15 meters high, 84 meters uh, distance covered. It's funny how he always flings his head back just before the landing, or just before the takeoff. Look at the distance and the power. I love it. Great speed. Let's see uh, what uh, Lorenzo Cassati is going to answer with. He's riding his 8 meter. Not getting the height. He's getting his board off. Rewind? Yeah, rewind. Rewind. Oh, he couldn't crashing. take it. He couldn't take it. Someone get that duo tone. Doesn't want it. Nice replay there of that move. We thought there might have been a rewind in that. It just got bounced out. And as the wind picks up here, the sea and the landing area, or, or the lagoon, whatever you want to call it, it just gets choppy. Look at that dead flat water here with this nice angle we've got. The takeoffs aren't the problem and the aerial maneuvers, usually these riders are nailing here. It's the landings that causes anything. There's the signature side head from Whoa. Jamie Overbeek. Ooh, and it's I a thought he was going to go for an S loop, but no. 
Oh, some great height there. 17 meters height. Let's look at that replay here from this epic boogie loop. So the mega loop <laughs> with a front roll. And uh, he was already loving it in the air, putting his hand up. Just uh, getting the adrenaline pumping. And uh, Jamie Overbeek feeling it in this heat. Taking on Red Bull King of the Air, Lorenzo Cassati. Unfortunately, get not getting the height, not getting a proper takeoff. Ooh, just landing this trick. But uh, that was not what he was hoping for. Sometimes you ride a bit too overpowered and then it's very hard to get a proper takeoff. Although this looked proper. The wind was just not there for him uh, during this takeoff. This is four positions, third and fourth, let's remind you. And I've been told that fourth place will also get up onto the podium. So, uh, you know, they'll be up there, but this is about points, pride and, and money. I was looking for another P there. And Perpignan? <laughs> Perpin Perpignan Dicula? Well, I think that's one of our top words that's come out of this one, Ruben. We are in the Pure case, happiness. Uh, yeah, Perpignan Dicula, pure happiness. Well, that's the city slogan as you drive in. Yep. The closest city around here is Perpignan. We're two hours to the north of Barcelona. What's happening here? Was there a hand signal or gesture given to the two riders? But Overbeek currently leading this right at the moment with some uh, with the big 7.20 of that kite loop back roll board off the, K the KLBRBO. Look at the spray coming off his board and you will see him do a little pre-pop before catching the airtime and he's going for a double back roll contra loop and the rewind or not no no i'm sure he was looking for a board off in there as well but unfortunately not uh, reaching his uh, his board in time boom look at the control at the takeoff so consistent on his ozone edge seven meter jamie overbeek putting another score on the board let's see uh <laughs> you cannot stop looking at this guy that is about to fly away the whole time <laughs> Oh, he, Lewis is just heading out, running after uh, after this kite. Nice save. Go save the, the kite, Lewis. So here we got um, Lorenzo Cassati. Finally getting it. Oh, no. Not getting a good takeoff. It's all about the timing. Kite position, body position, and hoping for that gust to kick in right as you try and take off. You can kind of read the water where the gust will kick in. You can also feel it. And, uh, yeah, you just have to be ready to pull the trigger and uh, send it the biggest and baddest you can. What is a rewind? A rewind is actually when you initiate the rotation backwards and after that you, yeah, rewind the other way. Nice one. Here, uh, Lorenzo Cassati putting a score on the board. Let's look at the replay. He is going into the front roll with a... Whoa, I kind of got lost during that move. Trying to look at the kite and the rider at the same time is quite difficult. That's why it always helps me to look. Oh, oh. that's what he wanted. He, no, that's what he wanted. Yeah, and another one. Oh, no. But landing it. Fuck. Nice. Oops. Very nice move here. Let's look at the replay. Jamie Overbeck shooting in the air with a double back roll, board off, contra loop, and rotating another time when he puts his board back on. So three back rotations with a board off and a contra loop. Very nicely done by Jamie Overbeck. Performed at 18.7 meters and covering 100 meters distance with 8 seconds airtime. Reading the surfer app data in the left uh, bottom of your screen. Very nice riding and uh, I'm curious to see how Lorenzo Cassati is going to step it up. And uh, we also see the little baby enduro kite, uh, five meter, waiting by the caddy of Jamie Overbeek. Um, he's going to go for a kite change at some point. He's got three well-scoring tricks on the board already. And Lorenzo is not going to do doubles on this eight meter, I suppose. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, again, that quick release just opened up like that. Is he okay? Is he okay? I what think he, I think he makes a good entrance into the water here, Ruben. Something blows out there. No way. This is oh not at oh. <laughs> This brings back some trauma of uh, of my trick like that. Uh, it happened. Is he okay? Yes, he is okay. He signals with his thumbs up. Woo! Thank God. That is absolutely scary when in big air you're at the that that height and you're actually uh, just oh no way. So what? Sorry. 
scary moves. Glad uh, glad things are turning out all right. And uh, yeah, this is uh, done for uh, for Lorenzo. Unfortunately, uh, some failure there. I think there's some equipment failure. These are the hardest times we've been here to talk. I think he's okay there. We don't know. So he's. Um, I think he might have maybe taken a bit of a caner. Yeah, maybe, maybe. a bloody nose, but um, who maybe, knows? But it looked to me, Ruben, there that he entered the water in the best way he could have done. Two feet down, there was still a lot of work to be done there. These riders don't just end up in positions where they just crash. Once that happened, he's going for the best chances that he can get there. So he managed to get two feet in the water. He's managed to keep away from the kite. Uh, I'm sorry, keep away from the board. Yeah, so a um, bit tricky now only with Jamie Overbeck, uh, got the competition box for himself. Um, yeah, whereas Lorenzo is out of this uh, out of this heat, landing uh, Jamie Overbeck in a third position here at the GKA Kite World Tour in Barcares in this uh, mini final. Um, yep, that was some scary action. So he's uh, being looked after now by the by the safety Lorenzo Cassati that is, and um, yeah, hopefully he's still be, going uh, here, Ruben. Interesting that he is still going. He's off the water, and uh, do you know what? I think he's just coming to terms with things to the left hand side of your shot here, just about how I mean, what that must have been like to see that, and what must be Jamie Overbeek be thinking here as well, Ruben? Because I say this once again, these riders are sometimes going 25, 30 meters up in the sky, Ruben. Unfortunately, that we weren't in 50 knots territory right there because you're coming in from double the how high. I, how high it was, he came crashing down from 13.4 uh, meters, just falling straight down without the kite helping him up. And uh, that's a scary situation to find yourself in. And luckily he was able to uh, to get rid of the board and uh, yeah, land as safe as he possibly could. So um, yeah, big shout out to uh, Lorenzo Cassati for pushing the limits and giving it his all. And uh, congratulations with your uh, fourth place our current Red Bull King of the Air, yeah, Lorenzo no. Cassati. Overbeek will know that also, that he's uh, had to take assistance from the jet ski there in one way or another. So it just comes in to check if everything's okay here. But this heat is going to be done after that. Overbeek was currently in the lead, but it was it comes as a disqualification for touching the jet ski. Ruben, they're always hard things to see in big air. Uh, have you ever had, um, had to deal with something like that in competition? Um, well, with big crashes, yes. Uh, always have to overcome uh, the challenges, uh, which which happen sometimes. You obviously don't uh, don't hope for it, but they uh, definitely part of the game, especially in big air kiteboarding. Uh, no risk, no story. I always say, if uh, if you don't take the risk or uh, there's no risk involved, what are you going to talk about? What are the gambles? What are the chances? So uh, yeah, big air is filled with it. So um, yeah. There's a hill flug down there, just. Uh that affected him. I can see he's seen that crash. He's looking up here like, yeah, I, that, that was a big one. Seen a few big ones uh, over the court. But we kind of knew that was going to happen. It's big air, Ruben, at the extremes. These guys are pushing the equipment, and we will see crash. We've seen, I mean, however many crashes we've seen here. This sport now, it takes its toll uh, on the body. And, you, I mean, my mind goes back, Ruben, to when we were all in bindings for so long. Ooh. And I know there was a few biggies back then, but... You know, there wasn't actually that many for how many there might have been. I think that's down to the types of moves we're seeing now and the way they're pushing the moves with double loops, taking the board off. There's more hands off the bar, which can perhaps come into contact with chicken loop releases. We were just holding on two hands back then, you know, like kind of straightforward, super powered moves. But, um, but yeah, comparing also the risks to other sports, like in snowboarding, you see massive risks taken with so many rotations on these massive ramps. And there are people are crashing on the ice as well and uh, with motocross people overshooting the the landing or with mountain biking landing in the flats uh, also with snowboarding the slope style you see people tumble down the mountain it's all part of the game but these are is the top in the world uh, yeah pushing the limits so it's obviously part of it kite surfing is obviously not always scary you can do it at your own pace in your own conditions you can uh, ride in the sunny egypt you can go to Brazil, you can ride in Greece, you can have all types of disciplines and conditions that suit your likings, your level, your age, your physics, your uh, capabilities, basically. So kiteboarding is for everyone. The youngest kite surfer is three years old. I three. I think uh, David Ribeiro in Brazil was riding his uh, trainer kite on a surfboard down the lagoon. 
uh, only at three years old. And I've also been tangled up with a guy over 80 years old. So this sport has uh, definitely a broad uh, range of spectator or uh, participants and also spectators. People sometimes love to watch uh, uh, kite surfing, but they don't necessarily want to or need to partake to, uh, to enjoy this sport. And I hope uh, today you are enjoying and still at the tip of your uh, seat as uh, we are going to continue with the ladies final where we will see Angela Buyo uh, 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 taking on Mika Sol from Brazil. Ruben, lots of um, skepticism on whether that was uh, was uh, actually the bar or what do you think? Were you pretty confident this was a chicken loop blowout? I think the quick release opened up. Um, not too sure what he's riding, what he's using, but um, easy to assume, some might think. But he didn't lose the kite. One thing is for sure, this should never happen again, and we need to look closely on how we're gonna, yeah, make big air riders uh, safer in the near future because uh, this is uh, unacceptable. I think we're right uh, to not. We are presuming, Ruben. Um, we can only go off what we think up here we don't know the bottom line of that and once again just an eerie silence falling over the event site with the crowd there pretty shaken up by yet another big massive caner i mean looking back at that replay when we do see it um or if you go back on the stream i thought that was a pretty decent effort to minimize the damage here but we go straight into the final of the ladies now then it is final times ladies and gentlemen it is the angeli Buyo versus Michele Sol to see who will be the champion of the women's division here at the first round of the GKA. Only champions here, Lewis. These girls have been pushing big air. Uh, they, they've been yeah, changing also from freestyle uh, to the big air discipline, which is uh, very different. But Michele Sol has her competitive mindset, her uh, yeah, athletic capabilities to perform everything like she landed I think the kite loop board off the first try so that just shows what a talent uh, she is and uh, Angeli uh, has been competing in big air for I would say a decade uh, she's been on top of uh, yeah big air uh, kite surfing pushing it for the women nice to see her in the finals and stuff now Ruben because very she well was, deserved she was far ahead competing wasn't always her thing in the old days you know but now here she is in a final against the current Ladies world champion, big air world champion, it's Michaeli Sol. Here we go then, we've worked all the way up to here in two days of action here on the 1st and 2nd of April. Could have run any time in April, Ruben, but here we are in just the first two days. So good is the wind here and the strong Tramontana wind that blows in from the northwest down here in southern France. We're on the Mediterranean side. I'm Lewis Crathen and I'm joined by Ruben Lenton at this special Way up. world... That was a serious... Thing I was doing there yep. at this world sailing event and uh, and now I've lost my chain of thought we're over to you nice one. just a little way out there man as we get <laughs> underway with the woman's it final takes sometimes is a way out, especially <laughs> a, a bayo I mean that's next level here we got uh, Anjali riding super powered glad the wind is kicking in for the finals here just going for a straight booster not feeling it I'm pretty sure these riders aren't hooking in incorrectly as the extreme professionals but hey you're welcome to presume all you want yeah it's not uh, really about blaming brands here it's uh, nobody that does this on purpose this happens but it's definitely uh, time for us to uh, take a closer look and how we can make this safer all together we are uh, all working together to make this sport as safe as possible and that also includes looking at the equipment and making it better over time and as soon as possible as well you know what I think could work, Ruben, with uh, AI being such a big thing now? Alexa, release my kite. No? Good idea? Hey, Siri, double mega loop for me. I could make millions. Is this heat uh, been going or what? The yellow flag is still up. Ah, so, so no, this heat hasn't just, started. Uh, no, Sorry about that. Just uh, okay. losing a bit, um, bit of timing here. So uh, still see some surfer data uh, coming through from uh, Angeli, who is just warming up before her final. She must be frothing to be uh, in the final against Michaeli Sol. And uh, both riders with a, a slightly different style, whereas Angeli goes absolutely massive and aggressive. Michaeli Sol goes really technical. And uh, yeah, I uh, can only uh, keep my eyes open and see what uh, how this will turn out. Well, thanks, Ruben, for keeping your eyes open. That's very kind of you as we go into the ladies' final here. Who do you think? Come on, Ruben. Tell me who you think's got this here. 
Well, I mean, the wind can kick in strong or the wind can kind of go lower. And yeah, now Angeli is fully powered, which is definitely in her uh, favor because she can get the height and power that she loves. Is she going for a mega loop late back roll? Classic signature. And she shoots that kite out right to the side, yeah, making her fall so fast. Ah, oh, unfortunately not getting the landing on this one, so this will score a zero. I love that technique of shooting out the side though, Ruben, because it's actually quite a, more of an old school mega loop type. You never, threw, you never threw it all the way 360 with the old kite. You didn't want it to be up there. You saved that for the end so that you could decide up or around, and she does that. I quite like it. Yeah, she shoots out, let the kite fly all the way to the side, and then accelerating and yeah, looping that kite uh, up again. Here goes Mikaeli Sol, also with a nice mega loop laid back roll, sticking it clean. 12.9 meters was Angeli's uh, Brio's height. I think this one's going to be nearer to 10. Nice replay of the jet ski and Angeli riding along. Yeah, I like that. Top. It's in my top three, that one. Some nice kite discussions going on in the comments here on YouTube, so keep it going, guys, and uh, enjoy the action being thrown down by uh, Angeli and Michele Sol um, as this heat is well underway now with Angeli coming up for her second trick attempt in this women's final of the GKA Kite World Tour Big Air. Yeah, we've had some great interaction on board with you today. Thank you for joining us all around the world. I wonder what she's got for Oi. us here, Angeli Buyo. Just repairing the damage. Yeah, she, 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 oh, she couldn't deal with it, Ruben. Oh, butt checky. Was a bit butt checky, wasn't it, Ruben? Looked like she had it in the bag and she would have been scoring a similar, maybe a little bit more than Michaeli. I don't know, I like that inverted position, but... She was a bit delayed on there, getting a little bit stuck and not, uh, not doing it as fluent or as big as she would love to. But uh, yeah, she has... Uh, Five more attempts left to better her score, so, so uh, let's see what she does. Not the start she wanted, though, Ruben. Especially against Mikali, who is such a consistent rider and uh, can perform so many moves. Like, let's see what she's going to do here. What was that? I'll have to uh, check a little replay on that. I think she wanted to go for the contra loop, but here she's just going for a front spin. Double front spin. Can't even see her kite loop, so not that radical, not that extreme, so it won't be a massive score. 1.7. So here comes uh, Angeli. And after the women's final, we will continue with the men's final between Liam Whaley and Andrea Principi. Yeah, that's going to be a biggie. Don't go anywhere for that one. to a good 11 hours down here on the beach today and it's been absolutely epic of action and would you believe it we didn't have that 50 knots yet that's come through whoa um, what well, he's just beach starting with a kite loop <laughs> kite loop board on just uh, getting onto the water ready for his final KLBO kite loop board on from Andre Principi getting ready for his final they're not bothered about these uh, fluctuating winds and here is Angeli Bura. She would have loved this to have been up into the 40s, Ruben. I can tell you that much. But it's a sign of how uh, the maturity of her riding has really come on here. To have found herself in a final uh, here when the winds have been everything from 20 knots to 40 from yesterday. Oh, boogie loop to the right. Yes, and she's got this one. Nice one. Good decision to head right foot forwards there. Maybe that's where the wind's a bit better right now. Changing it up after her two crashes, really. She did get a three earlier on gets nice and inverted not super powered with the pull of the kite but you can't get that power if the wind's not there Ruben 100% you need the wind in order to perform your trick and uh, that's all part of the game here in this challenging spot it's a lovely flat water spot but the conditions are definitely challenging for the riders Michael Sol also entering with a nice boogie loop and an added rotation and coming out uh, straight on her board she was just shaking that one off couldn't believe it it was a sketchy one she, well, she liked it though I think like, Woo! And they are going for the boogie loop, so the front roll with the kite loop. And then on the way down, she added another rotation. Really is interesting to look at her takeoff room. She likes to go right foot forwards in a lot of the moves, but her oh. pop and takeoff, I mean, that comes a lot from the experience of being an unhooked freestyler as well, world champion that she is. That takeoff just looks so perfect every time. That's it's a big thing in kiteboarding, your takeoff, whether or not you're a professional or an advanced rider as well. But Anjali uh, Buyo indicating here got a bit confused by the flags 
Yeah. You need your flag to be up in order to go for a trick attempt. But uh, it's it looks a white like, uh, one up at the moment. Now the blue one has been raised. So somebody's she's... been slacking on the flags there. Sorry, sloppy. I don't know. Well, we she can only confused. presume. We can only presume. True that. But I think it's uh, Angie's turn to uh, to really find the ghost and uh, perform her move. Pumping the kite, pumping the bar, going for the kite, little board off, and is she getting it? Is her foot in enough? Yes. yes, it is. Big move, Ruben, for that. I just was hoping for her there. She got her foot in enough for that. She steps it up again, Angie. She's not bothered by these challenges anymore. Look, right over the horizon, performing the mega loop board off. I think she's back in this one big time. 7.73 coming in on my back end here. Uh, Ruben, that's big. That's really Angie. taking it to the current world champion. Yeah, she scored a 6.7 for her boogie loop earlier and now a 7.73 for her kite loop board off. And Mika is going to answer with a straight kite loop. She also wanted the kite loop board off, but unfortunately couldn't get it together in this trick attempt. Does she have it? She definitely, yeah. I've seen her perform it in Brazil and, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, here she can do it as well. She can do everything. She's a world champion. Wow, this has really changed things around then in this final here. Angeli Buyo, you can just see it now with the crowds. Can I get a Buyo? Buyo. You know, is she going to have that moment up on top of the podium? One of these riders will take the winner. It's the sun breaking through the clouds once more here. This overcast, then cloudy, then the sun's out again. And Angeli Buyo, wow, this is tight, this one, Ruben. At the moment, there is hardly anything in this. 0 0.21. We hope that you are... Staying on board with us here at the Lords of Tram 2023. It is the GKA Big Air Kite Surf World Cup down here in France. I'm Lewis Crath and Ruben Lenton still standing next to me. Seems like forever he's been here. What are we going to see here, Ruben Lenton? Angie going full pool, getting the height. No, unfortunately, the wind wasn't there for her, not finding the right takeoff. And uh, yeah, that is true. Mika also has the boogie board off in her repertoire. So let's see if she can get it together and bust it out to overtake Angeli. In this heat, Angeli just uh, scoring a 0 0.83 for that uh, missed trick attempt. Angeli's got to stay calm out there now because she'll be thinking, come on, I'm in the final here. Give me some win. Oh, but me Mika is in first with a doobie loop. Textbook. No Ruben. way. Yes. I loved it. She I loved it. She absolutely stomped that. So a doobie loop. Nice two forward rotations from Mika and Sol with that, that loop. Oh, getting inverted on the second one. In the one. second one. And that's what I love about the doobie loop. That's how I envisioned it, that that move to always be. You go around, you've got to go fast into those front walls as well because you want to hit the apex or just before heading into that second one. It's no good just doing a slow one up there, thing, going into the second one. Send it in there in the cannonball on the way up. <laughs> it looks really good. It was a scary move. I uh, just learned this move uh, past season in Cape Town. And what is Angie going to do? The Mega Loop late back roll. And is she going to land it? Yes, she is. Oh, she is crashing this. How unfortunate. Oh, nicely done right in front of the spectators. But unfortunately, riding full speed. Oh, just butt checking and crashing out of this move. And uh, we got uh, Mikaeli Sol in the lead here. At the final of the women's division of the GKA or Kite World Tour here in Barcarest, France. Oh, this action, that is why we were still standing. Mika Lissol replying with a mega loop board off of her own. Here you can see the replay. She's riding right foot forward, jumping, looping the kite with one hand, with her back hand. Grabbing the kite or the board with her front hand and landing clean. Nothing too massive, nothing too crazy, but definitely a nice score and a variety on the board. Both ladies definitely capable of scoring well into the sevens, maybe eights if they uh, get a good gust. But it is all about if Angelique can find a good gust to perform her favorite trick. Her signature mega loop. Oh, double. Oh, unfortunately, not feeling it on this one. And that's her last trick, I think, Ruben. She just couldn't find the win that she so desperately wanted there for Angelique. Where was that 40 knots when she wanted it? But if she can perform this well, Ruben, and get to the top two, I think she's going to be still in for a shout 
um, when we get to Tarifa and potentially the third event that's going to take place as well. It's rumoured at the moment. So not confirmed yet, but Michaeli Sol is leading this with one trick left and she can't catch her up, I don't think, Ruben. Incredible and uh, absolutely no shame uh, on anyone here, but uh, Angie unfortunately couldn't get it uh, together fully in this final, ending her in the second place. With Mikael Isol with one trick attempt left. Where's the flag? She's saying, where's my flag here? you got the blue one up here. I want my last go. What are you doing? Where's my white flag? Interesting. She wants her go. She can only jump when her uh, flag is up. So the judges are already... Oh, what? she got a second go here. What? So Anjali Buya, uh, Buyo has been given a second go. Maybe there was a confusion what? with the flag sequence. Ruben, that was interesting. Possibly that zero with a crash. Now, this could get interesting, Ruben. What happened there? Well, the scores are gone, so... Uh, what happened to her seventh trick attempt then? She just didn't get... <laughs> what a deal. Went from having her last trick to it being given to the other rider. And what was that last move from Angie? I couldn't see it. It says SJ. No the reply. Super jump. No reply. Well, now we're going back to Michaeli Sol. We don't have that score coming in. Oh, yeah, there's the boogie loop board off. Oh, oh. Unfortunately, going for a massive wipeout here for Michaeli Sol in the final here. She is already in the lead, so she didn't really need that, but it would be great to top off the final with a boogie loop board off. Unfortunately, ending up in a crash. Hopefully the wind will kick in for the men's final, which is coming right up. You came to the right place for a big air kiteboarding. We got Liam Whaley and Andrea Principi ready to take it to the skies and fire off their most extreme big air moves. Their names will pop up in the... No, it's the mini final now, right? Oh no, we know this one. <laughs> we already know this one. That was done. That was the massive crash from Lorenzo, remember? Oh yeah, the biggie. So there's their names, ready for uh, for an epic final here on the GKA Kite World Tour in Barcarest, France. So this is uh, the last heat of the event before we can wrap it up with a beautiful sunset party here in France at the GKA Kite World Tour. Thank you so much for joining us, for supporting us, for interacting with us. We love having you here. We love ha having you to spread the love of this sport and support these riders, pushing it to the limit. And sometimes even beyond the limit, which we've seen today as well. Many times today, Ruben, it really has been uh, pushed to the limit. Where are these riders? Are they out there just yet? So if you want to tune into the live scores for this final, you can go to the GKA KiteWorldTour.com and scroll down. This is the final, Ruben. It's the big time here. We're in the final. It's the last heat of the weekend. Lots of tension put up for this. Liam Whaley against Andrea Principi. It is the current uh, bigger world champion, Ruben. Who do you think is going to take this? Phenomenal riding. Both of these legends can definitely take it. Whereas Liam has been around competing for longer, so his experience is on his side. But I think uh, Andrea does have a few more tricks in his bag and definitely has the height, style and commitment. So this is get definitely going to be a final to watch and uh, I can't wait to see this unfold. Ruben, I'm going to go straight out there now and say we're going to see unhooked moves from Liam Whaley there. He knows he's had some good scores from that Kung Fu pass. The wind isn't as strong as it has been. I really do think we're going to see uh, everything thrown out the books here from Liam Whaley. He's going to use all of his vocabulary of unhooked riding. Doesn't seem to be bothering him at all here that the wind is on the lower side of things. Andrea Principi, we know that he can find the gust of that setup that he's got here. He has had some of the most incredible jumps here, so it's going to be... Andrea Principi up against Liam Whaley here at the Lords of Tram 2023 for the last heat of the day, the GKA Big Air Kitesurf World Cup.
Yeah, nicely put there. And very aware, Lewis, of uh, both of their different riding styles. I haven't seen uh, Andrea unhook that much. I've seen him throw a few handle passes here and there. But Liam Whaley is a world champion in freestyle. He knows how to unhook and combine this with Big Air. So here, his first trick attempt is a Kung Fu pass. And he is landing it, getting it together. Not the height he was hoping for, but definitely putting a nice score on the board to open things off with in this final against Andrea Principi. Unhooking is definitely a bit more scary than uh, staying hooked in because it puts all the power and pressure on your arms and the kite, if the gusts come, then it can be just ripped out of your hands and come in for a massive crash. But here we see Andrea with his answer. Left foot forwards coming into the box here and Andrea Principi finding a nice board spin into uh, that looks like a kite loop. Is oh, double back row board spin contra loop. Was his foot even in the board there? <laughs> no, no I don't know. It could be. <laughs> could I be just out of the strap. I think he's landed it on the strap here, Ruben, because this foot... Oh, no, it did, did look a bit clearer from this angle here, but he's able to find the height. But I really do feel like this man here, Liam Whaley, is going to turn to some of his unhooked riding so this is just too close to call and you've got to take the emotion out of this as a big air rider and think oh i want it to be 40 50 knots you've got to be realistic we don't get delivered those conditions all the time this sort of condition may surprise us ruben and we have been surprised here with some of these tricks being landed to wrap to blind uh we've even seen attempts so we've actually seen a mega loop kgb landed today who would have thought that and it was the lighter winds that gave us those uh, wonderful opportunities to see what these riders can do. Because all around the world won't always be 40 knots. But here is Liam Whaley. Look, he's gone high enough, hasn't he? With a massive mega loop back roll board off around his body in a clean landing, Ruben. What are we thinking here? 13 meters? Yeah, 100%. Here's Liam Whaley. Definitely finding the height in a bit of a lull in the wind. But still performing this massive mega loop uh, laid back roll board off. And putting a nice score on the board. And uh, people are complaining that the wind is too light, but this, this is, is winding me up now, Ruben. Yeah. This is what is part of kiteboarding and what you have to deal with in competition. And uh, of course, it is big air. We would love 40 to 50, even 60 knots of wind, but this is what we uh, have to work with. And within a second, the wind can kick right back in. And here he didn't get the height that nearly hurt his arm there, did Andrea Principi. So, no, what do you expect him to do out there now? Just call the whole event off? On into the final. Don't be no, ridiculous. The, uh, this is kiteboarding and we get things done. And uh, I think we're still going to see a spectacle here between these two riders. Yeah, 100%. Definitely a great uh, decision to uh, to run the finals. And uh, yeah, the, the guys uh, will be allowed maybe some more time to really find uh, the right takeoff spot. But once they connect the dots, they're able to fly and perform. And like Lewis says, this does open up the door for new kind of tricks. They can unhook better now in a little bit of lighter winds which will up the creativity for the riders and uh, even blind landings. Let's see what the, what the riders are thinking. They are riding the same kite. So uh, that is uh, mostly down to skill. Yes, this is true, Ruben. And I can hear this wind picking up a little bit over the top of our live stream booth now. So maybe there's one more return of this Tramontana to wrap things up on our final heat of the day. I think we've ran, what, 1,000 heats today? Feels that way. But they've each been equally exciting we've had absolutely everything here at this competition and meanwhile liam whaley you tell me that this isn't special uh, and interesting as a big air rider in 25 knots oh. okay maybe you'd have a case there <laughs> <laughs> i knew that would happen just missed the gust there like he had it before he's putting up his hands he's complaining where's the wind of course he wants more wind i want more wind everybody wants more wind unfortunately not finding the gust there and uh, missing his trick attempt so um Let's see what Andrea Principi has uh, has got in his bag, in these lighter conditions, trying to find the wind, trying to keep his head cool, trying to uh, maneuver his strategy through this final. In his uh, kite bag of tricks? Yeah, in his bag of tricks, his repertoire of tricks. He will uh, be able to... Repertoire. Sounds like a French word, doesn't it? Exactly. Bring it on. What other French words have we got here? Perpin Perpignan Dicula. One of our top, move, top words of the event so far. Oui, oui, merci. See if we play. Que glace, Louis. Je ne comprends pas. The <laughs> best one, that. You answer that with everything and somehow you get respect when actually you don't understand. Like, <laughs> brilliant. Coming oh. into the beach then. Sorry, Ruben, you're about to lead on me there. There is Cedric to the left-hand side with the blue coat. Here's our race director. 
Um, Race director in a tough spot. What do you do in the final with two of these top guys waiting for more wind and uh, kind of complaining that it's uh, maybe not suitable enough for a final? We might just wait a couple minutes to see if the wind kicks back in. Let's think about his options here, Ruben. So he could, one, wait for more wind. He could, two force these guys to go out now. He could three, he could also just go home and leave. That's also one of his Look at the trees, options. look look at the flags. I can see sand flying. It is gusty. That is this, this, uh, this, the typical spot here in Barcares. Uh, this is something that the riders will have to deal with. And I am looking forward to see what they're gonna pull out of the bag right now. Ooh, there's a drone. Sneaking up into the little uh, pass of water there, which links to the main Lagoon here. Maybe just having a little peek to see what's coming in as uh, we've lost our screen temporarily. No, we're back again. So the tension can be cut on a knife edge here right now, Ruben. Lots of tension on the beach with the crowd, the riders. This the decisions, decisions, the stakes are high at this moment. The stakes are high. For the race director, for the riders, uh, it will be great to finish the event. It could also be a good idea to wait a little bit for the wind to really kick back in. But uh, yeah. It is, uh, it's all on the line. Be a good name for a meat restaurant now, wouldn't it? Steaks are high. <laughs> you know, on top of maybe a skyscraper, the steaks are high, you know? Did you say steak? Nobody is going to make a mistake in the final. I said steaks. Steaks. The steaks are high, not the mistakes. The mistakes have been high as well today. Miss oh. Steaks! Wins the Mrs. Steaks Award for <laughs> looking at the female steaks. <laughs> Oh, hey, there we go with a contra loop, one of his signature moves, landing it clean and full speed. There he found a gust in order to perform uh, the, the move he was after. Was it three front rotations? There he goes, one, board off, two, and the board spin. Yep, three rotations, oh, just getting in time. You know what, Ruben, that looked like big air to me. That was an unhooked freestyle or racing. But Liam Whaley riding full speed. Is he going to find the gust? No. Nice turn there. Good carve. Carving background, right foot forwards now he comes. Riding a slightly bigger bar. That uh, looks like the big truss bar for me. And uh, as he rides out towards the right in a southwesterly direction, he'll then return. Nice little transition there. Trying not to lose too much ground. He's got to refocus himself here. This is the final. We can't emphasize it enough. Lots of uh, drama already in this final. What's Liam Whaley got for us here? Oh, he wants a doobie loop board off. Oh, whoa. How did he deal with that impact? I don't know how he dealt with that impact. That would have been scary. Oh. He's angry. Visibly angry. Ruben, look at this. He looks like he found the gust then. The wind did come in. He flew, did two forward rotations, got the board off, but then he just dropped a bit too fast. Oh, fr that's... From behind, that looked well harsher. I bet that's higher than most of the people complaining it's not big air. How high do you jump? Let us know in the comments. Uh, uh, 30 meters. Uh, uh, nice should. move then uh, from Andrea Principi, Ruben. He has no problem there. The white caps are returning, Ruben. The flags are starting to go here. And he goes into, it was a double front roll and a kite loop and uh, looked like a board spin as well in there Ruben. He loves throwing in the variation there with the board spin. It does add a factor uh, that the judges love giving you some extra points but is it going to be enough to stand up to uh, to Liam who is now coming in for a kite change. He is on his 8 meter at the moment and I think a 7 meter is waiting for him because uh, he knows he can double loop that a little better and it will score well for him. So let's see uh, what the uh, what he's going to pull out of the bag with that. So he obviously feels the wind is picking up here. And I think you need to keep this in mind uh, at home if you're thinking this isn't quite big air conditions. It, they're, they're voluntarily changing down to sevens here. Okay, so you could be easy on a 10 here uh, going big. But obviously the style of tricks that they want to do and just how well these new lightweight kites are performing, Ruben, is giving them a kite. He's edging fine out there. You know, he's powered. He's gone out on a set. He's on a seven meter. Okay, so we usually need 30 knots for that. But... It looks like we're not far off that, Ruben, because we can see those white caps are back. And uh, Liam's obviously getting ready for his doubles and felt that the wind was uh, suitable enough for that. And I'm pretty sure they're going to let him return into the box, no problems. 
So we see even the, the, the viewers online, they're jumping uh, up to 20 meters, they say. 9 meters, 10 meters, 21.6 meters. That's some, uh, some good results there. 20 meters high at 14 years old. Epic one. Keep that performance going and enjoy the progression. Every day you learn something new. And here Liam Whaley finds the gust, gets the height and goes for the double loop. And landing it clean and claiming it. He stomped it. I want to get a replay on that to see exactly what the kite did. So he took off. He did a kite loop, double kite loop with a massive laid back roll and getting really leveled with that kite, Lewis. Yeah, and what a reminder, Ruben, about big air and strong wind. That it, sometimes it's not always that strong, but there's a rider staying patient and waiting for that wind to build. Cancelling event, stupid idea. Bit of patience from the race director. And now we're starting to see these moves really take place. Into the front roll. This and it's a contra for. loop. It's a contra loop here, Ruben. And it's big. Lots of distance. Riders now hitting the 15 meters mark. 16.8 meters meters on height with a there. tic tac during that contra loop this so he big. grabs it by the fin he, oh nice what a momentum to just flick the board around like that and uh grab it by the handle and landing it clean it's going to be a good score for uh, andrea nice to read something about clement there of course this isn't official but if that is true that he's left the hospital with those scans then uh wow what a great result that is again that's not official that i had that i'm just uh Feeding yep. that back off uh, someone who's politely shared that with us. But Liam Whaley here in this final. He is on his sixth trick and he's starting to score biggies here, Ruben. Is that a doobie double? Yep. I think he looped the kite twice and he did. Yeah, he's claiming it must be. So uh, doobie loop, two forward rotations with two kite loops. One loop and two loops. Oh, get it. Look at that height and the angle. Very, very, very nice from Liam Whaley. Wow. Pretty special this final here as we reminded once again to just be patient with Mother Nature. It's delivered right here as now we get a few clouds passing over the sun now. Andrea Principi being asked questions of Liam Whaley. He's got two in the eight so far as Liam Whaley. Andrea Principi about to perform his sixth manoeuvre. But uh, did Andrea just change his kite as well? He it looks is, like it. He is on a different kite, so this is his double loop kite. What a sneaky change. Didn't even see it, mate. Maybe he's gone for that see-through kite color that you were talking about earlier. But hopefully the wind stays there for him so that he can perform on this smaller kite, uh, the same height that Liam Whaley already was able to put some doubles on the map, scoring him a well 8.4 and 8.6. We often don't talk about the the sailing aspects of these competitions and the knowledge of the wind right there liam's come in during a spell of wind which we were even talking about it underpowered needs a bigger kite this isn't big air these words were being talked about liam's come in changed from uh, an eight to a seven right ruben in preparation and anticipation he felt the wind was going to be strong that was really uh, a gamble for him but he felt I mean he doesn't know this place inside out but he's been here the last few days that was really amazing piece of what I like to call seamanship he knows mother nature inside out seamanship also no that. reply also that seamanship mother nature go hand in hand and uh, here Andre Principe knows exactly what he needs to do he was just looking at what scores well and he needs a oh, double control loop but he was not getting the height I was impact. already feeling, I thought he was aborting this trick, but he still went for it, for a double contra loop board off. Here, in the beginning, I thought he was going to, I thought he was going to uh, stop it, but then uh, he went for it anyway. Ah, with the long lines, not having enough height for the kite to, uh, to catch him on time, resulting in a crash, which fires up Liam Whaley, coming in full speed, left foot forward, chucking himself into a massive double kite loop board off and landing it clean, Liam Whaley. Liam Whaley looks to me... Like he's got this one, Ruben. What an epic move that was from Liam Whaley to complete his seven. The scores are going off the scale here. Look at that. He's getting oh. leveled with his kite, even with those long lines. Absolutely mind-blowing action here in the final of the GKA Kite World Tour here in Barcares. A 9.37. Are you kidding me, what? Ruben? I think that was the biggest move of the day. He always had it in the bank. But how can there be any reply to this? Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. I already saw that was not going to turn out well. Unfortunately, Andrea Principi crashing out hard on that one. Didn't get as high as he would like to, and it was about. And he just committed. He just kept pulling, and look at that! Ah, oh, that is so scary to find yourself in a situation like that. Still got the kite above him though, there, Ruben. That was pretty special. But what that must is the be going through this man's head? 
that is the end of this final heat here and uh, we can safely say that Liam Whaley is the champion here today at the GKA Kite World Tour Big Air Discipline. Oh, I don't even know where to start, Ruben. That was really special. Liam Whaley just, he always had something extra. He had an answer for everything here. He's uh, looking back to the beach to say like, you know, what's going on here? Uh, do I need to put on more show? What do you want from me? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Come on, really. I've had to do every single <laughs> discipline here today. Surely <laughs> you don't want to make <laughs> these uh, guys. What have I got to do to win this? <laughs> but Liam Whaley uh, going to do some crowd pleasers maybe? Or no, they're, maybe they're done. given an extra trick. I was told it was seven tricks. So uh, Yeah, know. the guys already think it's done. And Liam Whaley, is he smiling? Yeah, he must be smiling. He kind of knows that he performed well and that Andrea was crashing out. So, look at the scores. Uh, Liam Whaley with the highest scoring heat of the day in the final. Very well. It's always great to see him build up his performance throughout an event and actually feeding off this competitiveness and of all the spectators uh, right here. Oh, I always get goosebumps when I see somebody else win and uh, he absolutely deserved this win. So uh, very well done, Liam Whaley. And congratulations, Andrea Principe. Too bad you couldn't get it together here in the final, but uh, a well-deserved second spot here for you today at the GKA Kite World Tour Big Air. Well, Ruben, that was pretty epic scene. So, oh, a little uh, high five for that. Nice to see that the fans get Oh, watch your board, mate. Watch your board. Although, to be honest with you, I know that board can take it. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> nice to see those scenes for the crowds who are now going to come down for this prize giving and I think I'm going to have to leave you up here Ruben I think Liam's going to join you while I think I'm going down to perform this prize giving as the scenes are set after this incredible two-day event we've had absolutely everything here Ruben we've had um, really it's been relit that fire under the unhooked category which is often not to we didn't talk about the mega loop panel pass for years Ruben and I've yeah. always wanted to address it and it's back now firmly in the sport unhooking isn't dead and we've seen that today but uh ruben i think we're going to sign off officially well, i am going to sign off uh, officially onto the camera with you i've got my coat on here and uh got all my right stuff on to go down there we come back into the studio big hello to you and thank you for joining us over the last two days that are very special i'm going to leave you now ruben and get ready for the podium down there and i think i'm going to leave you up here but I think Liam's going to be in here with you. Ruben, what were your highlights for this event so far? The highlight for me was definitely uh, this final heat. I still think that it was quite challenging given the conditions with a bit of a lull in there with the debate. Should we go on? Should we cancel? Should we like all the stress that was accumulated in this final definitely uh, up the yeah, up the adrenaline, up the vibe. And then to see Liam Whaley uh, going for the correct kite choice and uh, performing those massive double loops. Absolutely great performance. But throughout the event, we have seen some incredible riding also from the, in the women's division who already showed us yesterday that they truly belong here in the big air discipline. And today with Mikael Isol uh, taking the win, absolutely mind-blowing action. And how often are the women often sent out here in slightly lighter winds, but how ironic it would turn out to be that yesterday being the stronger day with Gus, seriously, we've been told we're up to 70 knots. They were out there all day yesterday. So what a day for them to show. Actually, they can deal with that. No problems. It was the men that had the slightly lighter win today or actually significantly lighter, but they still performed. And it was lovely for me, Ruben. I think the highlight for me of this event is that there's no complaints if the wind dies. The equipment has come on so far now that even on the smaller kites, the riders can still go big, which is great news for big air as we try to expand around the world to different places. We're not always going to get the 40 knots that we crave. Big air is in a wonderful place right now, Ruben. And it's so uh, there's so much variety in big air, including unhooked. That's the highlight for me. I'm signing out. Now I'm going to leave you here, Ruben, as Liam comes in shortly. So thanks, everybody, on the live. Not uh, Liam Whaley. Liam will be on the podium. but uh, uh, Liam, <laughs> Liam Dredge will be in here as well. So see you later. Ruben, it's been thank a pleasure you, thank to, you so much, to work with you. And you give me a nice hug. We get on okay, uh, uh, don't we? We're yeah, yeah, for sure. Friends. Even well, though I just met you. <laughs> no, thank you, Lewis. That was absolutely great. Always great to hear your commentary and to join you here today at the GK uh, Kite World Tour Big Air. They're going to move on to uh, the prize giving. Uh, I'm going to start a little party right now, right after. So uh, looking forward. All the spectators are making their way down. So um, Also a great result, what I find. 
despite all the epic action we saw, we also saw some great crashes and to uh, yeah, walk away with everybody being okay uh, makes, uh, makes my heart warm. The riders, these are the best riders in the world, pushing it to the limit and sometimes uh, due to the wind, some equipment failure or just uh, a pilot error, things can happen and things can turn out uh, pretty badly. We saw one uh, knee getting hurt. We saw uh, yeah, Clement trying the triple uh, loop and uh, unfortunately crashing really, really hard and uh, definitely into some pain. But news is that he is sort of okay. I don't want to confirm this fully because I haven't spoken to him, haven't gotten the official news, but it all looks to be pretty good. Joris, uh, his knee will have to be looked at, but um, yeah, from what we've seen, it's a, it's a pretty okay price to pay, I'd say. Yeah, as well. Firstly, th good to join you here, Ruben, back up in the, in the stream. I mean, what a day of action. Thoroughly enjoyed. I must say the vibe down on the beach. I spent the probably the last hour down there running a few errands, but also, uh, you know, being right on the shoreline there. And I mean, great event and uh, really good to see, obviously, Liam Whaley taking the crown there, just nipping it from uh, Principe, who's won the last two events here. But uh, yeah, as you said, we saw some big crashes throughout the day, you know, Good to hear that uh, everyone is, you know, on the mend and, and feeling good. And, uh, you know, we've got an exciting... Uh, but first, the are going to shortly get underway. 100%. And all these riders deserve to be on the podium. Also, uh, Angeli Buyo, uh, ch yeah, challenging uh, Mikael Isol for the win there in the final. And uh, that was uh, some great action as well. Yeah, Mika didn't really put her foot wrong in that final. She was looking uh, very confident down there and... Definitely uh, challenging conditions towards the final back end of this this event. Uh, it's definitely a little bit gusty, but uh, the riders here, they are the best in the business, so they made it work. And as you can see on your screen now, the uh, the crowd's starting to form as we will be crowning and going through those podiums very shortly. And uh, cameraman getting a lovely view of the, uh, the ankles down there. Just gathering. And uh, I just want to give a massive shout out to, uh, of course, all the riders for uh, putting their skills on the line, showing an epic display of big air kiteboarding. Obviously, to the organizers from Lords of Tram, the GKA, the whole team, all the partners, uh, yeah, the host here at the, the Port of Barcarest, uh, absolutely beautiful. So thank you very much and uh, sending a lot of love to all of you for this uh, combined effort for uh, putting this live stream up. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in and really enjoying this uh, this show. Yeah, it's been a fantastic show. We're gonna just uh, we're gonna keep you guys entertained just with this uh, with these podiums here. So. Very shortly, we've got Lewis actually gone down now. He's gathering the crowd together, gathering our athletes, and we'll shortly present those podiums, those third, second, and first positions. And uh, I was also uh, a little bit sneaky. I had a little cheek at the tr cheeky look at the trophies, Ruben, and I must say there, first place is rather special. Not just cake? No, not just cake. It's uh, it's unique. Put yeah. it that way. It's definitely unique. Uh -oh. and, uh, is it going to be some sort of mask as well? Or uh, uh, you're not, I mean, that's not that's not too bad. Not not a, not a bad guess. I mean, second, third, and second, very nice. But the first place, I must say, it's different. Well, looking at the Lords of Tram and kind of the style that it yeah. has with all these <laughs> graphics, uh, it is wild. And uh, yeah, the Lords of Tram. The Tram stands for the Tramontana winds that uh, trade here. And uh, Lords of Tram, obviously, who masters uh, the wind the best, is coming out on top. Yeah, and there you can see the podium just waiting for our riders to take centre stage. wonder if they'll get a couple of bottles of champagne as well. That I don't know, but maybe we'll, uh, we'll be, see a bit of a spray shower. Did you like a little champagne sh shower on the podium? Obviously, definitely. Don't waste too much of it. Well, I mean, there's, al <laughs> there's always another bottle, so definitely spray it and celebrate. It's uh, the moment for the riders. This is what they've been training for, this is what they've been dreaming of, what they've been aiming for. So a well-deserved win and uh, definitely it comes with a celebration. If you don't celebrate your highs, then uh, yeah, you definitely sh uh, should start. Exactly. And uh, just waiting now, it's all the crowd pretty much here and ready to go. It's uh, local time is just coming up to five to seven. So we've been you know, pre pretty flat out since uh, first thing this morning. We gathered all the riders here for a riders briefing at 7.30 a.m. And it was a first possible start at 8, which happened, you know, pretty much straight away. So, you know, we have been here oh, coming up to 12 hours now. And uh, the aim of the game today was to finish the competition. We, we wanted to try and wrap things up today. Although the, the forecast is really good tomorrow, you know, we wanted to be hopeful today. And it's all worked out very well. And there you can see our, the GK photographer, Samuel Cardan's just getting those all-important shots. Yeah, this man has got some skills as well. It's uh, also a great effort from the media team around here. So a uh, big up to them. Always uh, picturing it perfect. So uh, loving to see the, the footage after the event as well. 
looking at some of the highlights which uh, will be brought to you shortly um, after the event as well so definitely keep an eye out for that a uh, massive thank you to the port of Barcares for uh, for having us and uh, Qatar Airways for being the tour sponsor uh, Ian Anio Duotone thank you very much for uh, for all the support it's been uh, it's been a phenomenal event and uh, I'm glad that we got it over and done with today as um, Liam was saying the wind doesn't look too good for the next couple of days however yesterday was beautiful today was absolutely massive and uh, yeah loving it I mean, what, what's not to love? You know, the sun is shining at the moment, the wind is blowing, there's plenty of people here to watch all these riders just throw down to the absolute max. So, you know, that's what these riders want. They thrive off that. And we're just going to wait patiently now while the riders are just, oh, we're just gathering the riders. You can see there on the left-hand side in the blue coat, that is the tour manager of the GKA, Tom Hartman. He's probably around the back looking for those country flags. We're always searching for those. They seem to go missing at every single event. But, you know, nonetheless... We're going to give our riders the flags, the trophies, hopefully the champagne. And then uh, rumour has it there might be a little bit of a, uh, a party tonight. Ooh, in the comments I read, Ruben is just here for the party. Well, life is a party, you know. So let's keep celebrating all together, spending time together and uh, having be beautiful moments. Uh, also on this Sunday, fun day, with some epic action. Lots of spectators down at the beach gathered around the podium. Uh, this oh, is, is. Uh, going to be a great moment of celebration. We can see Lewis. Can we also hear him on the live stream soon, so we don't have to... I don't think we're going to be able to hear him, so we're... Oh, no, I think we are going to be able to hear him, so let's... Uh, we're going to wait and see and see if we can cut through to Lewis now. for me, being the triple Kylie we saw some big crashes in the What about for you, there? What did you enjoy? I'm going to play with you today. I'm going to start the music with you today. If you're calm, but if you're ready, we'll make a round of applause for the competition for the Fram. Vous êtes content On a vu des choses incroyables, on a vu des premières. Euh, les riders ont repoussé les limites, les conditions étaient vraiment extrêmes. Donc euh, voilà, on peut vraiment euh, applaudir tout le monde. Et euh, je pense que Lewis, qui était derrière le live, a aussi euh, beaucoup apprécié. Je vais dire que le plus grand chose ici maintenant est Big Air. C'est que nous avons vu une variété de Big Air Moves. Nous avons vu des Moves que nous n'avons pas encore parlé, let alone vu pour des années. Nous avons vu une forte strong wind. Yesterday, which is so often associated with the male fleet, it was the female riders out there yesterday showing they can handle the strong winds too. We saw the winds lighter today, Val, which forced the riders to really explore every type of trick we've seen in kiteboarding, from unhooked riding, megaloop, unhooking. Who knows where the future of big air right now is going, but one thing's for sure, it's extremely exciting. Watching that today and yesterday was just amazing, magnificent. Donc aujourd'hui, on a vu vraiment, entre hier et aujourd'hui, on a vu des conditions incroyables. Le vent a soufflé à plus de 70 nœuds hier. D'habitude, on envoie les hommes dans le vent fort. Mais hier, c'était les femmes qui ont envoyé Angélie, euh, Nathalie, toutes les filles dans la compétition. Elles ont envoyé des loupes dans plus de 70 nœuds. Donc on peut les appeler hier. Voilà, les filles, elles ont fait un peu très formidable aussi. Et ça, c'est important pour les sports. On a vu des nouveaux trucs aussi en hiver. Donc euh, voilà, c'est une très belle compétition et euh, le sport il s'est décommencé chaque année, ça se de plus en plus. Et donc on a une équipe de grands qui a fait l'année prochaine, donc c'est déjà incroyable. On peut voir maintenant avec les formats de formalité. Et une chose que nous devons faire, c'est que cette belle performance, nous devons faire des choses qui sont en ligne, qui sont en ligne, et ce qui doit se passer, nous devons le dire à ce stade de la course de Qatar et qui est une chance. Un wonderful support to this event. Donc, aussi, on a de la chance d'habiter dans le sud de la France, dans la région de la Tramontagne Suisse. Et c'est grâce à la Tramontagne de Barcarès qu'on a pu avoir ce show. Et euh, grâce à la ville de Barcarès, donc un grand merci à Barcarès, à Bouchot. On fait toujours aussi d'avoir un comité de compétition. Et euh, voilà, de, de, euh, merci à la nature, à la nature de nous offrir euh, de tels choix dans le sud de la France. Et tous les meilleurs riders mondiaux étaient là pour rider à Barcarès. Come on, let's have a nice enjoy some fun at the back of the We're doing something special here. We also want to thank the following Stuart Craig, Adam Owen, Ion, Sol Craig, and of course, Will Sailing. And of course, Federation, and Craig, lots of good riders coming with us to pour as well now. Donc on remercie aussi les sponsors de la compétition, Duoton, Ion, Anio, Paul Barcarès, sans qui ça serait pas possible. A big thank you also to our squad. Big noise for them. Come on, everyone. Thank you so much for our crowd. Grab the 
Et on remercie également aussi au Stoltz de se à côté. Il y a une grosse soirée ce soir aussi. Donc là, on va célébrer. Donc un gros bravo aussi au Stoltz. Ce soir, on va faire pour le restaurant à côté. Merci aussi à Jonathan pour cette heure. Surf pour la maison de Kai Sikoté. Surf and Kai. Et je voudrais dire que c'est vraiment un grand et un grand merci également à toute l'équipe, la sécurité, le GK, donc, euh, qui est le tour mondial de Kai qui s'associe au Landorf cette année pour être la première étape de la Coupe du Monde de Big Air. Donc un grand merci à toute l'équipe qui a rendu cet événement possible aussi et qui a fait un incroyable travail pour euh, les riders et euh, toute l'équipe et pour vous aussi public de vous, euh, vous offrir un magnifique show aujourd'hui. All right, let's get to the point here now. Two days of kiteboarding action has led us to this moment. But we're going to start with the best crash. As is customary here, uh, for some reason, at Lords of Tram, we have an award for the best crash. And for the best crash in the ladies' division, it goes to Natalie Lambre. <laughs> Et ça revient à Nathalie. On peut l'applaudir pour nous. Here you go, here's your best friend. Yeah. Okay, on peut l'applaudir. Like Elle est belle, c'est-à-dire qu'elle envoie le plus fort et on peut vraiment l'applaudir. Très très fort. I get to keep the hat? No, you can pick it up. And for the men, the best crash. They tell me to keep this prize feeling serious, but hey, you've got to have a bit of bench in this as well. Well done for uh, your best. Well done for those yeah. crashes. I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now we can get serious here with the results coming now for the ladies, for the big air. In fourth place from the United Kingdom, Francesca Mani. Well done, Francesca. Thank you. And now we go to the top three and back up here once more. Natalie Lambrecht in third place. Yeah, like you are. <laughs> well and that really was an epic final between the two ladies out there at the end. And I'd like to welcome and make some massive noise. Now I'm finally going to get her name correct. Anjali Fuyo in second place. <laughs> Right now, the conditions 
were tough out there for you? Was it hard to keep your head in that final perform your thing? Um, the conditions definitely were a little tricky. I expected it to be a little windier. I mean, yesterday was absolutely nuking and it was insane. And yeah, I really don't know if I would have gotten the win if it was yesterday, probably this one over here. <laughs> or those two, definitely crazier than I am. Um, but yeah, super stoked and yeah, just wanted to thank everyone for inviting me back. Well, you're on top of the fight, you're going to give a kind of round of applause for you, our winner of the event. Big Ray is so. Oh, Darren Ray. I think I don't want to go. something even more special to beat you here at this event and I'd like to bring up in first place our event winner in the men's Liam there we have it it's gonna get messy again in a second the champagne where's the champagne Thank you. 
like in the three last competition so it felt so damn good to beat him today my gear was working amazingly to its own really finding out that tuning up that gear making it perfect so couldn't be happier and yeah see you guys at the next stop congrats man thank you bro. are you filmed at the same time yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now I can bring you here. That's why I have to yesterday. Oh. oh. Just closing the live stream, yeah? Thanks for coming. See, see you next year. You tell me when to go. Yeah. Babby. Oh, sorry. Perfect. <laughs> Just closing the live. So there you have it. What a fantastic event here in France. And Liam Whaley, Mikael Isol taking the championships. And now you guys and girls are going to have to wait another year before we're back here because what an event, what a place. We are absolutely stoked for the rest of the year with this Big Air event and the GK Big Air calendar. Thank you to Lord of Trams. And let's go and party now because next year we'll be back bigger and better than ever before. Done? Yeah? further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. Welcome everybody to the Qatar Airways GK Kite World Tour. Inside the water, like everybody want to win. It's gonna be a good show. Oh, no, I just really enjoyed this event, even if it was super freaking cold. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not, it's like, like hometown for me. But, uh, I live in Brazil, uh, okay? I have right. the luxury. Exactly, you got the luxury, I've got the, the, the freezing cold minus five weather. But nonetheless, obviously on the freestyle tour as well, you know, we've got a, a pretty busy GK calendar on that front as well. So I know. I know last year you were sort of up in, you know, you weren't quite sure how 2022 was gonna look for you, but you've you know, you start off in Qatar, not with the result you wanted, but you bounce back in Colombia, taking the win. Freestyle back in the in the game for around, I believe it's around August time. So we, we're going to see you there as well? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Freestyle Big Air, I'll definitely be there. I don't know how many years, but at least for this year, you can count on me to be there. Plan tonight, a few more bottles of champagne, going to party, or are we going to take it easy? Uh, I don't know. I'm feeling kind of tired, but... We see what the people want. <laughs> oh, I know what the people want. We're going to get you out for it. at least one, at least a little, little bit, little bit of a boogie. Right, but that I'm legal. Grab the bottle. Yeah, exactly. Grab the bottle. Finish that thing off. Holy and, shit, dude! <laughs> and we'll Jesus. see you in the next one. <laughs> see you guys. Uh, we're going to 
All right, we're going to finish there. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you very soon. Lots of Tram is more than a competition. Oh, it's ready to catch you on the spot. <laughs> From the beginning, the desire has been to bring together the best riders in the world to develop the big air kite discipline. To make an event, you need a lot of things. A team, organization, authorizations, budgets and more. We are very grateful to our volunteers, our media team and our judges. Everyone takes part in and is passionate about extreme sports. You will find them in the air or on the water. Partners are also a big part of the event. We are committed to creating meaningful links and building long-term relationships with them. Thank you.